hello. Is there anybody out there? Can you hear me? Testing, testing. One, two, three. We are live on YouTube here. Welcome to another uh, Ryan Hall, y'all. A YouTube new tornado stream. warning we has been issued. We are monitoring a very serious situation where uh, we have a tornado watch. We have a moderate risk for severe weather today. Uh, and we're already starting to see tornado warnings coming out right now. Uh, in fact, we've got a tornado warning that just came out for Atoka and Bryan County in Oklahoma. We are going to go over all of this uh, very shortly uh, in depth uh, and detailed. Um, but uh, first, I, I do want to show you the tornado watch. And I also want to say hi to everybody. I'm seeing the chat. It is going a million miles an hour. Hopefully, we've got a lot of people watching. Um, before we get deep into this, this once again, we think that there's going to be some uh, bad storms today, some tornadoes. Uh, let's all uh, share this stream. Uh, let's copy the link onto Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever we can get it uh, so that we can get this vital information out to as many people as possible. This doesn't work without the, uh, the collaboration here. Uh, the people, the reason people watch Ryan Hall is because of y'all. Okay. So let's, uh, send a text message to a family member or a friend. Um, and let's get this out there and let's go ahead and take a look at this tornado watch, uh, which was, uh, just issued not too long ago. It's going to go until 8 PM CDT tonight. A few tornadoes are likely from Tulsa to Fort Smith, all the way down to Dallas, Waco, uh, and Tyler. All right. This is the first tornado watch of the day. And this is on the Western extent of our risk area. The eastern extent over there towards Texarkana and southwestern portions of Arkansas is not even included in this watch. So we will see another watch later, more than likely, with higher probabilities. All right. So um, it, it doesn't really matter. We've got 11 million, almost 12 million people. Um, that are getting ready to uh, experience this uh, potential tornado outbreak. So we want everybody uh, to be, uh, you know, as informed as possible and paying attention uh, to this um, uh, situation as it unfolds. Currently, we've got those two tornado warnings uh, up here. Uh, to the north of Dallas, okay? So this is in the Red River Valley, uh, pretty close to uh, Durant, okay? So Durant and Cotto, uh, north of Tulip here, all these places are included in this tornado warning. That's gonna be for Atoka and Bryan counties. Uh, this is not a confirmed tornado, as far as we can tell right now, but there is some rotation, and you can see it here uh, pretty clearly on the velocity, but this is a problem that we're gonna experience quite a bit today, all right? The entire moderate risk area today is in a radar hole. We are going to have a very hard time seeing these storms on radar. So thankfully, we have a team of six of the most talented uh, and, and just best storm chasers on earth um, uh, working with us today. We've got Chris Hall, Brad Arnold, uh, Zach Hall, Brandon Kopik, Vince Welty, and Brett Adair in the, 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 the danger zone today, sending us live pictures and videos of what's going on. Now, uh, we're not currently getting their locations. We're not currently seeing their locations pop up on our end, but hopefully we can get that fixed pretty soon. But you can see uh, pretty clearly uh, that we have Brandon Kopic very close to this tornado warn storm. So there's this little marker. He's down here near Denison, south of Colbert, uh, and he's Looking to the east, I'm pretty sure we're not seeing anything on his feed, uh, but I do want to talk to him and see what's going on. Uh, if I can get a hold of him here. And once again, this is a low service area. Brandon, we are live on YouTube right now. We see that you're close to this uh, tornado worn storm. Uh, let us know if you're seeing anything and uh, if you're hearing anything. What's going on out there, man? So we're going to get here from Brandon Comic here pretty soon. And not there much go. going on, to be quite honest. We actually just flipped around to abandon that storm. Uh, we feel the environment's going to be more unstable to the south. It was really dealing with dueling mesocyclones uh, when I was watching it. Nothing was really able to tighten up and then just had this really wet, cool RMD wrapping around. It didn't seem like it was tornado imminent. Uh, there was also massive construction backups that became a safety hazard for us to even pursue at that point. All right. Okay, so that was Brandon, and uh, he's telling us that there's really not a whole lot going on uh, where he is. Uh, so he's turning around. So uh, he's got a, a view of this storm and he's not seeing anything, but there is still a tornado warning all the way up through um, uh, Bochito, Armstrong and Durant. So we want you to stay in your safe spots. Um, our, uh, I see some people saying we, we might have some problems with the microphone. Are, are we sounding okay? 
Am, am I sounding all right coming through on the stream? I, I see that there's a weird thing happening with the the volume meter, but as long as you can hear me, that's all I care about. We'll, we won't worry about the uh, the intricate details here. Um, as soon as I see something, uh, I will move on here. But I want much better with the mic. You sound good. You sound good. Okay. All right. I'm not going to worry about it too much, but I am adjusting my volume up just a little bit so you guys can hear me a little bit better. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so what are we looking at? What is the overall uh, thing that we're, we're talking about today? What is a moderate risk? Why? What, what's happening? Let's go over to uh, this map to let me show you what's going on here. Everybody in the red has a moderate risk of severe weather today. Moderate doesn't sound that bad, but it's actually the second highest risk area that they can uh, issue, all right? So we've got um, a four out of five on the severe weather scale here for northeastern Texas, southeastern Oklahoma, and southwestern portions of Arkansas. This is driven by wind and the, the chance for tornadoes. All right, so let's take a look at that real quick. Um, if we can uh, look at the tornado outlook, everybody in the red here has a 15% probability of seeing a tornado within 25 miles of a given point. That's generally how this works. Everybody in the yellow has got a 10% and then brown's gonna be five, uh, green's two. And then you see this hatched area here, which does include the, the DFW Metro. Um, uh, this is where we could see potentially uh, significant tornadoes. And a significant tornado is uh, one that could potentially produce uh, EF2 damage or higher. So they only issue this whenever, not only whenever we're going to see tornadoes, but potentially strong ones. All right. So I want everybody in this area to understand the severity of what we're getting ready to see here. Now, if we don't get uh, a bunch of tornadoes today, and hope to goodness we don't, uh, we do still have... Um, a, a risk for wind, all right? So if you're in the orange or the red here, uh, pretty much anybody in there, uh, at some point today, we're gonna have a squall line uh, come through, uh, and this is gonna bring 60, 70 mile an hour wind gusts, and of course we have to worry about flooding and all that, maybe even spin up tornadoes within that line. So the main thing that we're looking for right now, the, what we're monitoring right now, is the uh, chance that we're going to see some isolated tornadoes pop up in these cells that are that are popping up out in front of the main convection. So you see back here is the cold front. This is the dry line, the cold front way back here uh, west of uh, Wichita Falls right now. Uh, all of this, uh, all of these storms that are popping up out here in front of it near Dallas uh, are in the warm sector, all right? And, and these are kind of being discreet right now. They're not necessarily uh, kind of uh, congealing uh, together yet, not forming a, a line out in front of the, uh, the the dry line yet. So each of these storms has the ability to kind of uh, use up all of the ingredients, all the nadir juice in the atmosphere for itself and get stronger and pot potentially produce uh, a tornado. So we're really concerned within the next, I don't know, three hours or so for everybody out in front of that cold front, because if we see a new storm pop up here, uh, it's going to have, it's basically going to be in a perfect environment uh, for uh, cyclogenesis and, and maybe even uh, a tornado genesis as we go forward, okay? So uh, we're going to watch the radar closely. We're going to keep a close eye on our storm chasers, and every time we get a new piece of information, we're going to bring that to you as quickly as possible. There is a really interesting-looking storm that's popped up to the west and southwest of Dallas. It's uh, uh, south of uh, Fort Worth right now. If you're in Fort Worth, you, it's right on top of you. There's a lot of uh, you know rain and possibly some hail happening with this storm. But what we are looking for, what we're paying attention to, is the dangly bit. Today, we're going to see a bunch of storms, okay, with big, like, red cores, and, and they're going to look really intense. But what we have to pay attention to is this little dangly bit that hangs off the bottom of them, okay? This is technically the base of the storm, all right? So whenever we're looking at a 2D slice on the radar, we're not seeing the whole thing. We're seeing in two dimensions. This is the bottom of the storm. This is probably near the middle of it, and this way up here is the, uh, uh, the stratus, you know, crap that's coming off the top of it. The bottom of the storm, the part closest to the ground, is the part that could interact with that lower level jet and uh, surface winds and, and kind of start spinning and producing uh, you know tornadoes today. So we're, we're gonna watch this very closely. If we see the dangly bit start to get curved, 
All right. If we start to see this uh, kind of uh, curl up a little bit, that's when we might have to start looking for a potential, uh, you know, uh, mesocyclone in there, maybe uh, eventually a tornado. Right now, that that storm in particular, the one that's moving towards Dallas, doesn't have any indicative, uh, you know, imminent signs of, uh, you know, there being a tornado in it right now. But we're keeping a very close eye on it. We've got more storms popping up down here near Waco. And you can see that they are curved a little bit. Okay, we got little beans popping up. And the curvature of these storms uh, shows us that there is turning winds with height in the atmosphere. The, the higher up you get in the atmosphere, the more uh, wind shear there is. And the, and the taller these storms get, the, the more they're going to be able to interact with that. And we're likely going to see some uh, big time uh, you know, uh, rotating storms as we go into the near future. That's why we have this elevated risk of severe weather right now. Once again, if you're tuning in for just now, um, we're doing live severe weather coverage for places in Texas, Oklahoma, um, Arkansas, Louisiana. We currently have a tornado warning uh, for uh, Atoka and Bryan County in Oklahoma, uh, but we're not currently seeing any signs that there's definitely a tornado on the ground with this. Uh, it's kind of like a... Um, a precautionary warning because this is outside of our area where we can really inspect it on radar. But thankfully, we just had a professional storm chaser, Brandon Kopic, uh, go down there and, uh, you know, look at it himself. He got up underneath it with a man magnifying glass and examined the storm. All right. He performed a full examination on the storm and he found no dangly bits. All right. So uh, or as of right now, or at least as of 20 or 30 minutes ago, this storm wasn't producing a tornado, but the National Weather Service uh, does believe uh, that it could, uh, you know, within the next uh, you know hour or so. So if we are in Atoka or, or Bryan counties, let's take shelter and we'll let you know whenever it's time to come out. Either I'll do that verbally or you will hear or, or see the county uh, disappear from the, the ticker on the bottom there. Looking at Twitter, by the way, uh, Twitter is going to be a vital uh, part of the show today. This is how we uh, interact with each other. Obviously, I'm looking at chat. Thanks, everybody, for uh, tuning in. Uh, I'm going to continue to look at chat. But uh, the number one way that we can kind of uh, interact with each other by you sending me reports and pictures and stuff is through Twitter. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, at Ryan Hall, y'all is the way to go. This is uh, one of the people that helps out in the background, Riley. All right, and this is his setup. This is what it takes. This is the... Um, <laughs> The requirement to be on the, the Ryan Hall y'all team, you got to have a million computer monitors in front of you. And Riley's got it all taken care of there. He's helping us, um, you know, coordinate with the storm chasers out there, helping us, you know, get the um, the locations fixed and, and a lot of uh, cool nerdy stuff that goes on in the background. So thank you so much, Riley, for being here. And thank you guys for sharing. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it all over uh, Twitter, Facebook, we are getting out there. So thank you guys so much for sharing this, putting the links out there. It's, um, it's a group effort. It's a group effort. That's how we always end up reaching hundreds of thousands of people during these things. I uh, couldn't do it without you. And then, of course, of course, we've got Barry Bones. We have uh, Barry Bones uh, watching right now. Uh, and this is the most weather aware and weather concerned dog on earth. Uh, this, uh, <laughs> this dog is no joke. He is actually watching during every stream. Um, and he is, uh, kind of really paying attention, uh, to what's going on there. So, uh, we, we love Barry Bones. Um, let me see if there's, uh, any other, uh, kind of updates from the storm prediction center. And then we will go towards, uh, back on the radar here and diving into that storm near Dallas. Um, here is, uh, let's see here, a hodograph. Look at this hodograph. This is an observed sounding uh, from near Fort Worth. Uh, and as you can see, there's a little bit of a curvature here. So once again, this is just basically showing us wind speed and direction with height. And the, the reason we're seeing some of these storms start to curve a little bit and, and look a little bent like a bean is because the winds do shift from kind of south to uh, out of the west at, to out of the northwest as you go higher into the atmosphere. And you can really see that on this latest observed sounding. Basically, National Weather Service sends a balloon up. Uh, the balloon has uh, instruments on it and it kind of tracks all of that information and, and, and sends it back to us and plots it on a hodograph. And that's what we're looking at there. So we, we are likely seeing 
even more curvature, even more, uh, like even larger hodographs uh, just to the east of Dallas and Fort Worth. And I'm sure we'll start seeing those uh, images here uh, very soon. Let's take a look at where all of our storm chasers are right now. Once again, Chris Hall is uh, at race time. What is that uh, gas station out there? Uh, we've got Brad, uh, Arnold, and Zach. Everybody's in Texas, and it looks like we're having a hard time getting their exact locations up. But we, as soon as we get that uh, worked out, you'll be able to see their exact locations updating in real time. And um, looks like we're up on the, uh, the whiteboard in class there, according to Ashley. What time is it? Okay, it's it's still it's still school's time out there in the uh, central time zone. So um, hopefully everybody has their plan in place. If you're under the gun today for severe weather, uh, make sure you know what you're going to do if that warning comes through. You want to get into the most interior room of your home. You want to preferably get in a basement. Um, or uh, if you don't have that, you want to get into like a closet or something without a bunch of windows or glass and just hunker down. Whenever the warning comes through, you and your family or your coworkers or wherever you are should know, should have a plan right now so that instead of being scared, you can be prepared and, and you, you know what you're going to do. You're not going to freak out and make the wrong move, forget to do this, go to the wrong place. You know now while you're calm what you're going to do. When the warning comes through, okay, execute plan. We're going to get through this. It drastically increases your uh, chance of um, getting through this unscathed. Okay, so uh, for the most part, everybody's doing all right right now. And the lights just turned green. You know what that means. We've got to talk to the weather machine, meteorologist Andy Hill. Go ahead, Andy. Hi, Ryan. Thanks. Um, there's a there's a few things I want to point out. Not only are we thinking of our friends in the uh, enhanced and moderate risk areas here, uh, today put out by the storm prediction center but also those of you in the pacific northwest so washington oregon portland oregon uh, even seattle you guys are seeing a super windy day with uh, actually some a slight chance at flash flooding in the area per the weather prediction center lots of rain coming in from an atmospheric river up there i'm sure you guys are familiar with that or maybe the pineapple express uh, in that area. So two to four inches of widespread rain there and also heavy winds like 30 and 40 mile an hour gusts. I've seen uh, widespread across Oregon and uh, the Seattle area. So uh, hopefully your garbage cans are safe outside and your lawn chairs are put in and of course, keep your pets inside in those conditions. It's good to see you all again, though. Um, I just wanted to tell you guys that we do have our full analyst team monitoring. I'm captaining them. So um, we will, of course, deliver you the best possible information with the radar coverage that we have at hand and the knowledge of many awesome individuals on the team. Absolutely, Andy. Uh, just to get us started here, is there anything you have to say uh, before we, I guess, before we start diving into these storms individually? Like, is what's your broad yeah. synoptic, like, what, what's your opinion on what's going on here? So actually a great precursor to looking at those storms, I put it in stream text for you, is a look at the cold front that is um, essentially provoking uh, most of these storms and also out ahead of this, the storms out ahead of the cold front. It's very uh, drastic uh, of a cold front, which you do see in the transitional seasons in fall and spring. Um, so it's not a big surprise there, but it's just a it is a um, quick reminder to you know let everyone know that we're dealing with this sort of weather again. We've got dramatic temperature gradients, so things are changing very quickly. And uh, when you have something as wild as that, um, you know you're going to get good storms with it, which we're about to cover. Uh, one thing I do see right now that I believe is actually um, ground truth here is just east of Fort, just southeast of Fort Worth near Dal Worthington Gardens, headed towards Pantago and Arlington. Uh, so I believe that's headed towards the DFW International Airport is a pocket of um, 65 to 80 mile an hour winds right over the Lindbergh. So if you know someone just north of I-20, I think that is probably a local um, downburst, if I had to guess. Um, but those are some pretty powerful winds showing up just above the surface. Ryan's looking at them now. Uh, that's about all I see that's of interest so far, though. But things are definitely going to ramp up. All right. Thank you very much, Andy. That's uh, meteorologist Andy Hill. And we will be talking to him uh, quite a bit today as we will probably be 
monitoring multiple storms at some point. Uh, currently, we do have that tornado warning in Atoka and Bryan County. Uh, but still, the latest um, uh, the latest information we have on that is that it's rotating and you should be in your shelter uh, in these counties. But uh, that's that's pretty much all we have uh, for you right now. Brandon Coppock went and inspected it. Didn't see anything too concerning, but it's there could be a tornado at any moment. So you need to get in your safe spot. The storm that's getting ready to come through Dallas uh, does look pretty intense. Uh, it's going to bring some hail. It's going to bring some strong winds. Um, but as of right now, it's not showing us any signs of, uh, of producing a tornado, even though uh, Dallas is under that tornado watch. Okay, you guys you need to be uh, prepared. You need to have that plan just in case something happens here. I think some of the storms that we're going to start watching more intensely are these ones that are popping up to the south down here. Uh, we've got a storm near Gatesville. We've got some down here near uh, Valley Mills and Waco. Uh, and none of these are rotating a lot just yet, but these are the kind of uh, convection. These are the kind of storms that we really have to pay attention to as we go forward, because uh, as they grow, uh, they may start to rotate and produce our, uh, you know, our, uh, our tornadoes and, and uh, uh, you know, all that stuff. So let me show you the models. Let's go to the models. Uh, and let me show you the latest HRRR. This is a, a technically um, a simulation of what the radar could look like as we go into the future. It's not exact, obviously, um, but this is what the radar could look like uh, around 4 p.m. Eastern today. So that's an hour from now, according to the uh, 17Z HRRR. We'll look at the 18Z here in a second. Um, but look at how much more convection we're expected to have here. Um, all of these storms are going to very quickly pop up. They're go we're going to see a ton of severe thunderstorm warnings. We're going to see a ton of uh, small hail and, you know, damaging winds and all this stuff out here. Uh, but a few of them, whichever ones can kind of maintain their discreteness the most, more than likely, are going to rotate and, and more than likely produce tornadoes. I can't tell you which ones it's going to be. I can't tell you exactly where that where that's going to happen. But the more isolated in nature these storms are as they pop up, the more likely it is that we will see uh, some tornadoes, maybe even some strong ones. So we're going to be dealing with this steel from Dallas all the way over towards uh, Sulphur Springs, Quitman, Gilmer, Tyler, all these places uh, by 4 p.m. Eastern. Um, and then as we go to 4 p.m. Central, uh, 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Central, they're all still over here in the same general area. But as we go farther into the day, um, we're going to see these kind of congeal together and they're going to lose their individuality. They're going to lose their discreteness. And the more like a line or a multicellular cluster that we have, uh, the less likely it is that we're going to see a bunch of, you know, strong tornadoes. Now, this big line of storms is probably going to form here on the backside around 7 p.m. You can see that coming through the Dallas area. There's still going to be some uh, very good possibilities that we see some spin up tornadoes within that line. But our possibility of seeing like big tornadoes in supercells kind of starts going down around 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern and on uh, as these storms become uh, more congealed and, and, and stuck together and, and it becomes more of a mess. Now at any time during the progression of this, uh, there could be new cells, new supercells, new storms that pop up in front of the line and we'll have to watch those as well. But for the most part, the next three hours are going to be prime time uh, for what we're looking for here. All right, let's go back to the radar and uh, look at this storm coming into Dallas. How many people do we have watching right now from Dallas and the uh, Fort Worth area? Hopefully we've got a bunch. We're watching this storm very closely uh, and you could probably see it pretty well um, if you were to look to your west in Dallas. Uh, but um, it's going to be there in town here before too long. And we're looking at the possibility for some, for some hail, some strong winds. And if this storm, if for whatever reason, this storm did want to become surface based and produce a, uh, a rot rotating area of concern, it would probably go over the, uh, the, the Dallas area. Let me put this into motion. Yeah, look at this. So it would skirt just to on the western side of town. Thankfully, right now, the, the part of the storm that we would watch for that isn't showing any incredible signs um, of, of rotation just yet. So we're going to keep a close eye on that. With or without a tornado, though, it's going to be a loud storm. It's going to bring a lot of rain uh, and some hail to uh, quite more specifically the western side of Dallas. Uh, so we're going to keep a very close eye on that. Uh, Caleb Fugate. 
is also saying that they're watching in class. How many classrooms are we in right now? <laughs> Uh, guys, I'm, I'm glad, uh, very honored to have uh, so many people putting their faith in us and, and their trust in us and allowing us to get them through this uh, severe weather event. Once again, if you are just now tuning in, we are live with severe weather coverage on what's going on in Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, where we have a moderate risk of severe weather. Uh, four out of five, we have a 15% hatched risk of significant tornadoes, and we currently have a tornado watch that goes from Tulsa to Fort Smith all the way down to Dallas and Waco, and we have a tornado warning for uh, Atoka and Bryan counties in Oklahoma. We have a team of the best storm chasers on earth out there giving us live footage of what's going on, but none of them are currently uh, intercepting a tornado uh, right now. All right, but you can see their feeds. You can see what it looks like there in Terrell, Texas, in Greenville, Texas. Uh, all of our guys are in Texas right now, but you can see uh, exactly what the conditions are like. Most of these guys, it looks to me like they're in an area where there's a lot of cloud cover. All right, we're not seeing a lot of breaks in the clouds. We're not seeing uh, a lot of sunlight, which might be a little bit of a, a good thing that might lower our um, uh, instability uh, just a little bit, but I don't think that we were ever expected to see clear blue skies. So uh, that was uh, factored into some of the model simulations that we've been looking at leading up to this, which tells me that more than likely we, we are still going to see uh, a lot of strong storms here in the very near future that are that we're going to have to keep a very close eye on. With, without uh, tornado concerns, we, we do have some strong storms and severe thunderstorms in Tarrant County, Texas. Uh, that one's going to be bringing maybe some golf ball size hail. We also have way up in Wisconsin, <laughs> uh, Green and Lafayette counties under a severe thunderstorm warning. And then in Oklahoma, we got Comanche, Colton, and Tillman counties under a severe thunderstorm warning. So uh, we're going to see a lot of those today, too. With or without tornadoes, we're going to be seeing damaging wind. Uh, we're going to see all kinds of uh, uh, nasty stuff coming out of these storms. But th I think the most interesting or the most significant uh, one that we're seeing right now is this one approaching Dallas. So we're going to keep a very close eye on it as we go forward. Thanks everybody who's tuning in right now. I see you, Tiffany Gannon. Thank you so much for the super chat. Phil, thank you. And of course, we got to say thanks to Mary for becoming a slight risk member and Twisted Sparks. He says, uh, uh, thoughts a little bit more towards Temple and Benton. Uh, we are in a tornado watch, but it looks like we aren't getting the worst of this. Uh, if you're in the more southern part of the watch, that's actually where I would watch the closest right now for um, new storms to pop up. Remember, we're concerned about the storms that are most by themselves, right? So whenever these things start congealing together into big uh, messes of storms, that's when the tornado threat starts to go down a little bit. So if you're down here south of Waco, for example, and a new storm pops up and it's all by itself, uh, you, we have to watch it very closely because those are the ones that might start uh, causing problems with um, uh, new tornado concerns. We just got a new severe thunderstorm warning that encompasses the entire Dallas, the downtown Dallas area. It also includes Richardson, uh, Allen, and uh, up towards McKinney. Okay, so Dallas, the storm that we've been watching is now uh, promoting a severe thunderstorm warning for you. And um, we're, we're going to keep kind of zoomed in on this uh, as it continues to get stronger. Uh, what else? We'll see here. Thank you guys, by the way, for going over to Twitter and sending me information. If you see anything newsworthy, if you see anything um, interesting at all, feel free to tag me in it on Twitter and I'll try to show it here. Um, it's, it's how we work. Like you guys are the producers, you're the researchers. <laughs> um, if, if you have anything at all that you think is going to be uh, useful for our viewers, just tag me in it there on uh, Twitter. And of course, we've got a lot of students out there watching today. Uh, <laughs> thanks for sending in these pictures too. That's super awesome of you. Tornado Watch uh, does include uh, Tulsa, Fort Smith, Sherman, Dallas, Waco, um, and this will be the first of probably a couple of tornado watches tonight. The, the next one that will be issued will happen whenever these storms get closer to the Tyler area um, in the Fort Smith area. They'll probably issue another one that encompasses Shreveport and Texarkana, maybe even all the way up there towards Little Rock. This is going to be a long duration event. Uh, we're <laughs> we're going to be watching this for a while. Um, so... <laughs> 
buckle in. If you're going to be sticking with us throughout this whole thing, we will be here for quite some time. Uh, Brian, thank you. Random Moment says, keep up the great work. Thank you, guys. I really, really appreciate the support. Um, let's get an update from some of our chasers, shall we? Let's go ahead and talk to Brad Arnold. Hey, Brad, we're live on YouTube. Just wanted to get an update from you and see what your plans are. What are you thinking about the environment? What do you think is going to happen out there today? We'll talk to him first, and then we'll just go through the list. One by one. Oh, there's Chris. You see him walking in front of the camera. <laughs> I don't know if uh, Brad heard me or not. There we go. Hey, Ryan. Hey, I am just south of Rockwell, uh, northeast of Dallas, uh, watching that storm, obviously, as most of the uh, storm chasers with you are. Um, it looks like it's starting to get a little bit of a hook on it northwest of Dallas, a little, little bit of an appendage. Uh, so keeping an eye on that. Also watching some storms down to the south as well, uh, watching to see if those can grow and mature uh, near the Waco area and points northeast or northwest. Um, anything east of that cold front should be good to go today. Um, the further northeast you go, the better shear, but there's still ample, ample, amount, of, or ample amount of shear down by Waco. So I think the best combination of, of shear and instability is probably going to be anywhere between Sherman, Dallas, and Waco at this point. Uh, I know it's a pretty large area, but that's, that's what we're looking at right now. But right now my, my plan is to head to that storm that is uh, pretty much about to come through Dallas right now. I'm gonna to try to get on the north side of it just for the simple fact of staying away from the rush hour traffic because if you get stuck behind that, it can ruin your day. So uh, I'm gonna to try to get toward, I think it's Carrollton is where I'm, I've got the GPS right now and then uh, we'll adjust from there. Uh, but keep an eye on those storms to the south too. We don't need to lose focus on those. Awesome, sounds good. We're keeping up with you and just let us know if you see anything. So what he's talking about, by the way, Brad Arnold, his exact location is over here near Rockwall. Um, he's pretty close to Dallas, but what he's talking about is this little appendage here near uh, Irving. All right. Uh, it kind of looks, I mean, it kind of looks like a hook uh, at first glance, uh, but that last little uh, update there shows us that it's probably more outflow dominant than anything, but it's those little <laughs> dangly bits that we have to really watch as we go forward. It's something like that that would eventually produce a tornado if a storm like this is going to. So uh, out in front of this towards University Park, Richardson, this whole area on the northwest side of Dallas, um, uh, we, we really got to watch these uh, parts that are uh, hanging down here as, and see if they interact with that uh, shear at all and start rotating. Right now, we are not seeing that, though. Uh, thankfully, we've got uh, storm chasers on the ground keeping an eye on it. And we've got uh, meteorologists in the background keeping an eye on it. And if anything happens that you need to know, you'll hear it here first. Um, let's see. Uh, I also want to talk to Brett Adair because he's close. Brett, we're live on YouTube. I see you're close to Dallas, and um, the storm is looking like it might try to do something. I just want to hear what your thoughts are, what your plans are. Are you going to stick with this storm, or are you going to shoot south? What are you thinking, Brett? Brett Adair is Live Storms Media, if you've ever seen them on YouTube. Um, we'll see if we can uh, hear back from him here in just a second. Uh, and, of course, I've just got so much information coming in. I'm trying to uh, absorb it all. Okay, so we'll see if um, Brett can hear us. And then let's also talk to Zach Hall, uh, who is approaching uh, Dallas as well. So, Zach, we are live on YouTube. Uh, we see you're moving towards Dallas. What do you think about that storm? Are you going after it or are you going to shoot south? What's your plan, man? We've got the dream team today, y'all. we got all the halls. We got uh, Vince and Brandon, we got Brett. We've got it going on. Hey, Ron. Yeah, we, me and Frankie, uh, we're east of DFW right now, trying to make a decision on whether or not we're going to stay with this or move south to the developing storms. Uh, haven't quite made a decision yet, but definitely keeping an eye on DFW Metro. Yeah, Ryan, we're seeing a uh, pickup of the uh, cloud of ground lightning quite a bit with this cell that's coming toward the uh, Carrollton Richardson area. We're on the George Washington, or uh, George Bush turnpike right now. Moving eastbound, trying to get into the clear forward flank here to watch this come up. It had a little bit of rotation. Looks like it's flattened out at the moment, but uh, we're gonna keep an eye on it as it approaches us here from the 
south and west pretty rapidly. It's down near Irving right now, moving toward the northeast at a clip of about 55 miles per hour. All right, so there you go. Uh, Brett Adair giving us a great view of what the outside of the storm looks like right now as it approaches Dallas. This is Brett's exact location right here. You can see it's already raining pretty hard there. And this is the part of the storm that we're watching closely as to see uh, you know, uh, whether or not something's going to happen with it. Um, we also just got a considerable severe thunderstorm warning that was issued for Atoka County, Oklahoma. Uh, that means that there's likely going to be some very, very strong winds and some large hail with that. So I would treat that as if it was a tornado warning and stay in your safe spot um, because uh, there is also a, a tornado warning in Atoka and Bryan counties, Oklahoma. Uh, those storms are still doing uh, incredibly well. They're, they're healthy storms up here in, near the Red River Valley, but they're not necessarily, in my opinion, looking like they're producing tornadoes maybe as much as they were earlier. So this is now becoming a significant severe weather threat with hail and damaging winds as it approaches Antlers and Boswell. All right. So uh, let me zoom out here. Let me see if there's anything else going on. There's still new storms popping up down here near Waco. I would say that all of our storm chasers, if I was storm chasing today and I wanted to see a tornado, um, I would definitely come towards Dallas here, give this storm a shot as it goes off to the north and east and then continue to go south because this does look like the, the prime zone for us right now uh, for maybe uh, development in the near future. That includes um, uh, Hillsboro, Waxahachie, um, uh, Kaufman, Athens, Fairfield, Jacksonville, all the way over towards Tyler. So uh, that's kind of an area that we're watching. We're going to see a lot more storms pop up here soon. Um, if we don't, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if we see less storms than modeled or more um, and, and how that will interact with uh, the other parameters that are in place. Remember, theoretically, the less storms that we see, the more likely it is that they will be discrete. Uh, and maybe that means we see more uh, tornadic activity. The more storms, the more intense storms that we see that kind of throw these big updrafts into the atmosphere and mess everything uh, up and mix everything around, uh, the, the, the more the more tight of a window, I guess, there will be for uh, big tornadoes here. So we're right on the cusp of uh, figuring that out as this strong storm continues to push through the western side of Dallas. It moved through Fort Worth already, and now we've got some really strong winds uh, moving near the uh, Irving area, the Carrollton area. <coughs> and there's probably some hail in that as well. Okay, downtown, like the actual center of downtown Dallas, might get missed by the strongest part of the storm. Uh, so we're going to keep an eye on that. But there's another one forming just to the south. So uh, we're watching that extremely closely. If you are um, just now tuning in, let me show you some graphics again, because I know we're, we're constantly having people filter in and out of uh, the stream here. I wanna show you the main story, the big broad concepts behind what we're talking about today. This is the Storm Prediction Center's moderate risk of severe weather, a rare November moderate risk. I think I heard earlier that it was um, what, like 2016 or something the last time we saw a uh, moderate risk in, in, in November, but um, that includes Northeast Texas, uh, South, uh, East uh, Oklahoma, Southwestern portions of Arkansas. Uh, and that's a four out of five. That's almost the highest level risk outlook that they will put out. And it's driven by wind and tornadoes. Okay, so uh, we do have a very good chance of seeing tornadoes today, especially in that red zone. But don't pay too much attention to that. Even if you're in the yellow or the orange, um, make sure you're weather aware today and you know what you're going to do when and if that tornado warning comes through. It's very important that you don't let your guard down at any point today for any reason. Uh, there's going to be new storms popping up constantly. And um, it's just always going to be best to be hyper vigilant throughout the entire thing until tomorrow. So let's also then show you the tornado watch. National Weather Service issued a tornado watch for Tulsa, Fayetteville, Fort Smith, all the way down to Sherman, Dallas, Tyler, um, Waco, Granbury, uh, all these places in the yellow here. Uh, where until uh, 8 p.m. Central, a few tornadoes are likely, scattered hail up to two inch in diameter is possible, and wind gusts up to 80 miles per hour are likely. This encompasses 12 million people. 12 million people are under this tornado watch and 4,132 schools. That explains all the pictures we're getting on Twitter of the students watching in their classrooms. 
Uh, lots of people in school uh, in this area, uh, probably about to let out, what, in about 30, 45 minutes or so, um, kind of keeping an eye on the weather situation here. And, and 290 hospitals also uh, under the gun for these storms today. That goes until 8 p.m. Central. A new tornado watch will likely be issued somewhere to the uh, east at some point. Uh, and we will let you know as soon as that happens, but that'll be later uh, before we have to really worry about that. Coming back over to the radar, we still have that one tornado warning up here for Atoka and Bryant County in Oklahoma. The tornadic portion of that storm, in my opinion, is gone. Uh, now this is a uh, severe thunderstorm kind of situation where we're mostly worried about hail and damaging winds. Um, so if you're in antlers, get ready for that. It's coming for you with big hail and potentially winds above 70 miles per hour. Downtown Dallas, it's thundering, probably looking pretty eerie out there. Um, but the big storm, the severe thunderstorm that our chasers are after right now, looks like it's going to go to the north. So it's going through Carrollton right now. It'll go through Hebron and then eventually up towards Allen, Richardson, uh, Lucas, uh, McKinney, all these places. Uh, but downtown Dallas, it looks like you're dodging the, the core of that storm. But a new storm is forming down here uh, near uh, A Ball new Springs. tornado warning has been issued. Okay, so a new tornado warning has been issued for Atoka County, uh, Oklahoma. That is going to be the storm up here that we've been watching. Latest look at the uh, velocity returns really doesn't tell us anything about it. And that might be. That might be one of the main reasons we're going to, we see this warning. Uh, it's precautionary. So this storm earlier, when it was closer to our radar site, it, we did see the rotation in it. Okay, there was some broad rotation in that storm, and it looked like it could potentially at some point produce a tornado. We're assuming that that's continuing to be the case as it gets deeper into this radar hole, and we'll, we'll probably see a couple tornado warnings on this all the way up towards uh, uh, Moyers and Antlers, maybe even beyond that. So we want everybody in this new warning from Atoka County uh, all the way up through uh, the, the new area um, uh, near Moyers uh, to take this one seriously and get into shelter. Of course, uh, the lights are turning green, so we, got, we need to talk to meteorologist Andy Hill. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Um, that's that current tornado warning uh, that just went through Bryan County. There were a few reports of damage. I'm not sure if you covered these already, but if you didn't, uh, there were some uh, trailers, some mobile homes that were damaged in uh, Bryan County uh, near Calera, Oklahoma. And also the high school there took damage with some trees and power lines down. So if not a, a brief spin up tornado that we couldn't observe at the surface due to how high up we're looking at this storm uh, from the radar site, then uh, possibly also a strong microburst uh, with uh, really fast damaging winds uh, may have moved through that area. They've got um, responders moving back there to assist per our radio scan or our radio scanners. Uh, so that is definitely a storm to uh, be taken seriously, uh, even though we can't really show you what's happening at the surface. We now have uh, ground truth as to what could happen with the storm as it moves to the northeast. Okay, and that's all coming from uh, radio scanners. We don't have any pictures of this damage, right? No pictures yet. Okay. All right. So uh, like Andy said, adding even more uncertainty to what could be going on underneath this storm, we've got damage. Not sure if it's coming from a tornado or, or straight line damaging winds, but let's assume it's a tornado and let's be, it's better to be safe uh, than sorry. And let's get the shelter here out in front of this thing near lane, uh, all the way up there towards Peyton crossing, half bank crossing, uh, everybody over here near highway three in Southeastern um, uh, Oklahoma between Bruno and Darwin needs to be bracing for impact for maybe a damaging storm as this gets closer. Uh, we're gonna keep a very close eye on that through radar Omega. Uh, which is what we're monitoring the radar with here. Um, and uh, Andy's chiming back in. Go ahead, Andy. Just kidding, Ryan. We do have a damage picture of that now. I sent that to you so you can bring it up. Uh, trucks actually flipped off the road as well as semi flipped off. Um, so yeah, definitely, again, a dangerous storm there. There's also a storm in its wake that's now southeast of Sherman, Texas, and will be traveling uh, roughly parallel to where that uh, current tornado warning is headed. So um uh, residents who are just south and east of that storm. Now you're in the path of that as it goes to the northeast in the same or a similar environment. Um, so definitely something to watch out for because, yeah, that damage is not insignificant. All right. Yeah, thank you, Andy. As you can see here, this is um, just south of Durant, Oklahoma, where we've got uh, a semi-truck flipped over and also looks like some structural damage over there. Um, and this is 
the, the kind of storm uh, that's coming for Lane uh, and uh, Peyton's Crossing right now. So we want you to take shelter here and just uh, get, I can't tell you, I can't show you on the map exactly where the tornado might be, but let's assume it's going to go through the entire polygon here. In the words of James Spann, respect the polygon and everybody in this purple box, get to shelter until the warning's allowed to be um, lifted and we'll, all, we'll, we'll get through this one just fine. Also, hopefully, um, uh, people are staying off the roads. Uh, the, the, we do have Highway 3 that comes through here. This big blast of wind is also going to continue to be uh, going uh, through um, uh, 69 and 75 over there near Atoka and Stringtown. Uh, th these are the kinds of storms that do exactly what we just saw, flip over tractor trailers. Whether you're in one or not, that's dangerous for you because you got to drive around them, right? So if you don't have to be um, uh, on the roads right now in, in really anywhere in the moderate risk zone, but especially uh, in southeastern Oklahoma right now, let's not uh, let's not be doing that. Hey, John, thank you so much for gifting five memberships. Very, very generous of you. Thank you so much. And um, uh, Rye, Rye Guy Rocky, thanks for becoming a member. I appreciate you. Thanks for all the support, y'all. Uh, if you're just now tuning in, we're monitoring a tornado warning up here in Atoka and Bryan counties. We've got damage reports and pictures coming in. Um, this is uh, what we've got right now, and we're hearing through the um, uh, the scanners and like the volunteer fire departments and stuff out here that there's a lot more damage than just this. Uh, so we're we're probably going to see more as time goes on. Um, but the, as you can see, this is already causing some problems out here. We're at the beginning of a very long uh, coverage uh, bout here, though. All right. So we're probably going to see more um, over the next couple of hours. And we're going to go back and talk to Andy. Go ahead. Hello, Ryan. Uh, north and west of Waco. I think you looked at the storm once or twice. It's north of Valley Mills and east of Clifton, Texas. Now has a pretty strong and relatively tight mesocyclone aloft. Uh, you can take a look at that from both uh, the Fort Worth, Dallas Fort Worth, Dallas Fort Worth radar and the uh, GRK radar, so you can get a good look at that mesocyclone since it's equidistant from both radar sites. Um, I imagine that this is definitely a viable candidate for a tornado warning soon as it slowly develops with our uh, rather slim but supportive thermodynamics. All right, thank you so much. So these are the storms. These are the storms that I was talking about earlier that we we have to start watching uh, closely um, as they get stronger. And of course, uh, Andy and and everybody is are watching these like a hawk. Even when I'm focusing on a damage picture or something else, we're, we are all uh, working together to make sure we don't miss anything here. And it does look like we are seeing enough rotation here near Clifton uh, and uh, Laguna Park and north of Valley Mills uh, to potentially start to be concerned about th this storm. This doesn't look much. Right. Like if you were just opening a radar app, let's say you downloaded Radar Omega right now by clicking the link in the description and you opened it up and you you saw this storm, you'd be like, oh, well, OK, I've seen that before. It doesn't look like anything special. Well, on a day like today where the um, uh, ingredients in the atmosphere are so primed for tornadoes, every single storm is a little bit more on the gnarly side than what it would normally be. And we can peek into it. Uh, by looking at the velocity here and see that not only is this a storm, it's got convection, it's got rain, it's got a little bit of hail, uh, but it's rotating down here. Um, and if that rotation gets a little bit more tight and a little bit more intense as it goes off to the north and east, uh, we might see a tornado come out of it. So we're, we're monitoring that. Uh, and really all of these storms. The good news is, is a lot of these are, are congealing together. So look at this one near west. See how all these cells are kind of clumping together already right after they uh, formed. They're kind of uh, merging together. That means that if this continues to happen, we might see less tornadoes. Not no tornadoes, but less than what if, if every single one that popped up looked like this. Okay, so... Um, we're going to watch that very closely. we got more popping up south of Grossbeck, Marlin, Gatesville. Like th Things are really about to get interesting, I guess, uh, as we uh, go forward here because the more convection we get, the more of those individual storms we have to watch out for uh, dangly bits on, all right? Uh, coming back up here to the Dallas storm, both of the big cores, 
Both of the heavy rain cores and hail have missed downtown Dallas, and now these storms are moving off to the north and east. Looks like uh, Rockwall, McKinney, Allen, you guys are next in line to get in on the severe thunderstorm aspect of this. But here's what I want you to know, Dallas, you're not out of the um, you're not out of the woods just yet. Just because these big storms have moved past you, you are still under a tornado watch, and we still have a lot more to go. We got these storms that are popping up. Okay, these are going to cause a problem in the Dallas Fort Worth metro in the next couple of hours. And we've got even more storms behind that that will cause problems later tonight uh, in Dallas. So this whole area in the moderate risk zone is going to see multiple rounds of uh, storms at some point today. Uh, so definitely when one gets past you, uh, don't let your guard down until the tornado watch has been allowed to expire. Once again, in Dallas, more than likely around 8 p.m. this evening is when we will be able to move past this. Uh, strong winds, large hail. Looks like we do have a almost an inch in diameter hailstone reported north of, uh, what is that, Louisville near Little Elm. Uh, estimated penny size hail outside of Little Elm, Texas, a little bit earlier. That's what we're looking at. Uh, that's approaching Rockwall, Allen, and McKinney. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some quarter size stones, especially on the more southern one near Rockwall. Back down here towards the storms that we are paying really close attention to near Laguna Park. That is still showing increased signs of, a, you know, rotation, but it's not necessarily to the point where I, I guess we're going to pull the trigger on a tornado warning just yet. Okay. But everybody in Laguna Park and Whitney, uh, y'all, you know, heads up. Okay. Uh, because this is the kind of the exact kind of storm that we have all like went into this looking for. All right. We knew that if, if we saw storms like this today, those are the ones that had the best chance of producing uh, maybe tornadoes. So uh, not saying that that's going to happen, but we're watching it closely, and you guys should be ready to go to shelter if it, um, if it comes to that. Uh, Wilder side, thanks for becoming a high-risk member. Appreciate you. Uh, we got a lot of people watching. Guys, thanks for tuning in. And remember, please, uh, if you can, if you haven't done so already, share this on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all over the Internet. Let's get it, this in front of as many people as possible. We're sharing uh, life-saving, vital information that a lot of people may not either have access to or even care about uh, from traditional means, right? How many people we got over here near Dallas that don't have cable and, and just don't want to watch the weather? Well, if they knew the, you know, the risks if they knew the kind of, uh, you know, atmosphere that we had today and how uh, elevated some of the chances for severe weather are, they might be a little bit more interested. So if you can uh, help us get this out there, uh, we might be able to reach those people and, and help some people out today. If you don't have social media, if you don't want to share us, if you don't want to send us in a text message to a family member or a friend, at least just hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. That'll tell the YouTube algorithm to do the work for you, and it'll hopefully get us in front of the right people here. Uh, through the recommended uh, section on YouTube. Uh, latest update here does show a little bit of a, a tiny little hook here near Laguna Park. Still haven't gotten uh, an update from the velocity yet that tells me anything about that, but these storms are looking um, like kind of how we thought they would look uh, for, uh, based on uh, modeling. So we're, we're watching that. We're still watching the storm up here near Dallas, and we still have a tornado warning for Lane and Crystal up here in Atoka County, Oklahoma. Uh, and that's the one, I think that's the only one really so far that we've seen or heard of a sig kind of significant damage so far. Uh, so that's the one that we have to really keep an eye on. Antlers, uh, get ready, and Redden, Oklahoma, get ready as well. Melissa, thank you for becoming a, or thanks for being a slight risk member for 10 months. Super awesome of you. Um, this is, oh, so we had that uh, severe thunderstorm warning up there near Madison, Wisconsin. Look at the hail. We, we had a hail in uh, Wisconsin just moments ago. You can see it coming down there. It almost looks like snow on the ground in some spots. So th this storm is essentially associated with the same system overall uh, that's producing our big time storms uh, a little bit farther to the south. So that's interesting to see there. We've got some hailers up there in Wisconsin. Go back and take a look at our storm chasers. Nobody's in a tornado right now, thankfully, uh, but they are all converging on the Dallas area. Like the vast majority of our storm chasers are in the same little spot between Rockwall, uh, Allen, McKinney, Greenville. So um, it, I, I think that 
they are waiting to see if anything happens with this sale and then they're going to go south. If I was in their position, I would be going south. I would be setting up near Kaufman right now to intercept these storms that are forming to the southwest near Waco as they move into that more uh, primed environment there. Thank you, Jace. Uh, Pea-sized hail and flash flooding um, near the Dane County Regional Airport up there in Wisconsin once again. Take a look at that. Thank you all for sending this stuff to me. So right now, we still have a severe thunderstorm warning for Columbia, Dane, and Dodge counties in Wisconsin. And we'll take a look at those uh, up close here in just a minute. But for right now, I'm going through Twitter. If you guys have any pictures, videos you want to share with me, anything at all, um, share it with me on Twitter, at Ryan Hall, y'all. We got a lot of people watching with a lot of monitors. This is the perfect setup. Uh, Fish back here has got us pulled up. He's got Radar Omega and uh, Reed Timmer. All side by side here. I love it. Brian, thanks so much. Thanks for the support. Uh, Brad says, I live in Rockwall. The temperature, and, the temperature and humidity is going up. Yeah, you'll continue to see that. If you're east of the cold front right now, this storm is sucking in um, Gulf of Mexico moisture. Like the, you know, It's kind of intense how much uh, inflow, I guess, the, the, the low pressure system as a whole has. Um, uh, I talked to Vince earlier, and um, he said he could literally smell uh, the, the severe weather in the air, the, you know, the, the, the deep, rich moisture that's connected to the Gulf of Mexico that is currently uh, kind of like lofting over eastern portions of Texas. So you'll feel that warmth and uh, the humidity and the, the instability in the air continue to uh, increase until the cold front comes through, or at least until a, a big storm comes through and kind of stabilizes the atmosphere. What about the storm in Iowa? We've got storms a little bit of everywhere. Um, let me take you through some of these real quick. Um, this is our tornado watch right now in uh, uh, Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. We've got heavy rain and storms in uh, Kansas, Missouri, Iowa. All of this is really pretty much just that, though. It, it's heavy rain, maybe some small hail, and we're really starting to see that small hail and, and maybe some gustier winds kind of uh, show their uh, teeth, I guess, near Milwaukee uh, in southeastern portions of uh, Wisconsin. None of this up here is expected to be really severe. Don't get me wrong. We're going to see flooding. We're going to see uh, some hail. Uh, but all of this is just rain for the most part. Definitely want to keep an eye on flooding, though, especially in Iowa. Uh, if you live in a flood-prone area, pay attention to that. Uh, but the really strong storms, the most important area to pay attention to is going to be right in here, right in this zone right here. Once the cold front comes through, um, that's when uh, we can kind of breathe uh, because when when the air is stable after that gulf of mexico moisture gets pushed out of the way uh we're going to be all right look and look speaking of cold front look at how cold it is we're currently you know we're warm it's humid in dallas uh, and then back here in amarillo we got a little bit of snow up here in the uh, panhandle of texas it looks like it, there's a little bit of snow trying to mix in uh, with this uh, precipitation on the back side of the low pressure system there so a very dynamic system a cold core uh, kind of a piece, uh, like a lobe of uh, this trough that is kind of cut off down here in the uh, southern part of the U.S. Uh, that's what's causing all this problem, all, all these problems right now. Uh, and that's um, uh, one of the reasons why we're seeing snow in Amarillo and uh, severe weather in Dallas. So quite the sight to see uh, here. And you can see why everything's so intense where those air masses meet up. Back to the radar. Zooming in on the Dallas storm, nothing tornadic from what I can see, which is good news. Um, we do still have that tornado warning up here for Lane and Crystal. We want you to stay in your safe spots in uh, Atoka County, Oklahoma. A new tornado and warning. And we got a has new tornado warning for Bryan County, Oklahoma. And I'm, I'm pretty sure, yep, that's going to be for. Okay, that's actually for a different storm. So that's going to be for this storm down here near Durant and Albany. So another storm is going tornado warned here. And unfortunately, I can't 
tell you much about it. I can't see much on the velocities. I, I can tell you that it looks like it's pretty intense. It looks like this has got a big hail core on it. Probably going to cause some more problems with damaging winds and hail, whether it's got a tornado on there or not. But we do now have a tornado warning uh, for Bryan County, Oklahoma. Take shelter immediately. This is going to be a big storm. All right. This one definitely looks intense on radar. Uh, we'll take a closer look at that on Radar Omega. If there was a tornado associated with the storm, the rotation would be somewhere between Yarnaby and Yuba. Okay, and it would be moving to the northeast towards Romeo, Albany, Wade, Utica, Bennington, all these places in southeastern Oklahoma. Latest update from the Storm Prediction Center maintains the moderate risk. We've got, um, so we're, we still have a moderate risk. I'll, I'll show you the graphic on that if, we're there, if there's any major changes. Um, right here in a second but i uh, from what i can see there's not much there's not much that has changed uh we've also got uh, some flash flooding here this is from chrissy where exactly is this Thanks for sending this in. You can see how the, the rain is already causing some problems with flooding. She says, we got more rain coming. Oh, boy. I don't know. Where are you from? I'll tell you. I'll tell you for sure if you've got more rain coming. There's the polygon, by the way, for our new tornado warning. Right down here. Uh, Wade, Bennington, Utica. Get ready. That one's going to be a very strong storm. Uh, this is what uh, it looks like uh, from Strider's point of view. Uh, near the Durant Municipal Airport. You can see that big storm in the distance. Um, nothing going on at, at this exact moment. But thank you so much for that report. More hail. More hail photos and, and videos coming in from uh, uh, Wisconsin near Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Thank y'all. It's, it's amazing. We have like thousands of reporters out on the ground here. Uh, it doesn't matter where the weather happens. All, somebody's always there <laughs> to send us a picture of it. All right, Andy, go ahead. Hi, Ryan. Yeah, I'm watching storms mostly down south uh, along I-35 near Waco, north of Waco, Texas. Um, the one just, just north of Waco has intensified quite a bit and only the uh, last radar scan. So only the last five minutes, the uh, inflow to it has increased quite a bit. So when something is, you know, rapidly forming and beginning to rotate more apparently in that short of a span, um, it's definitely something to keep an eye on. In addition to that, no, no tornado warnings have been down issued down here uh, north of Waco, uh, but we're still watching all the cells there that are maturing and now it now presenting, you know, um, formidable rotation that needs to be monitored. Awesome. Thank you, uh, meteorologist Andy Hill. Taking our attention back down here to these storms, there's two, uh, like he's saying, uh, there's two that we're watching. One's just to the north of Waco. There's the rotation near Ross. Okay, it's it's not extremely tight. Oh, there we go. I think we got a tornado warning on that. Yeah, there we a go. A new tornado warning uh, So a has tornado been warning was just issued for Hill County, Texas. And that's the second storm that I was getting ready to mark off and that Andy called out, what, what was it, 20 minutes ago? Um, and that's going to be for Whitney, Hillsboro, Carl's Corner, uh, and Covington in Texas. That's our first tornado warning of the day in Texas. And um, this is one that we're going to have to watch closely because if it continues to intensify, if it continues to show more signs of uh, uh, intensification, this could be a problem near the Hillsboro area. So if you're in Hill County, Texas, uh, take shelter now. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another purple polygon pop up on this one if that area of rotation starts to get a little bit more uh, pronounced as well. So you see the discoloration here, the lighter blue next to the green. This is what we're talking about when we say we see uh, rotation. There's inflow here. We've got out um, like a rear flank downdraft tra trying to come behind this and where those meet near Whitney, uh, there could be enough um, uh, kind of uh, rotation there to produce a tornado. That's going to continue to go up right towards Hillsboro, really. Like if, if this continues on the same uh, path that it's on, it'll hopefully go just to the west of the main town area, but definitely close enough to where everybody in that town should be taking uh, shelter right now. We've got a tornado warning 
for Hill County, Texas. Uh, none of our storm chasers are close enough to this to give us a live view. They're all up here near Dallas. Um, but if we've got anybody in the area, first of all, if you're in Hill County, you need to be taking shelter. Uh, but if you're in Laguna Park, for example, you're not under the tornado warning, you could probably step outside and look to your north and see the storm. Um, so if we've got anybody down there that wants to take a quick picture and send it to us on uh, Twitter, we would love to see that. But if you are in Whitney, Hillsboro, Carl's Corner, Covington, or anybody, anywhere in Hill County, uh, especially in this purple polygon here, uh, we want you in your safe spot. Don't, don't go out there and uh, get yourself in, in, in trouble just to take a picture for us. Um, the radar tells the story. All right, we've got enough rotation here to promote a, uh, a tornado warning, and we need to be taking our... Um, Safety precautions right now. Get into the most interior room of your home, preferably a basement. If you don't have a basement or a storm cellar, get into a closet, a bathroom, something with the least amount of windows and glass and, and outward facing walls and hunker down. We'll let you know when it's time to come out. No signs of an imminent like big tornado on the ground right now, but that could change very quickly. Uh, the, and of course, if you know anybody in this general area, from uh, Hillsboro to Italy to uh, Waxahachie, any of these places south and east of Fort Worth, uh, let them know. Let them know that um, there's a tornado warning down here, and this, these storms are expected to continue to be intense as they go up towards that area. Give them a heads up. Um, Chelsea, we've got Chelsea <laughs> on Twitter again. Being the absolute goat, the greatest of all time. Look at this just taking screenshots of all of our super chats so that I don't miss any of them. That's awesome. Uh, Brian, thank you. Um, uh, Bay, thank you. Kimberly, thank you. Randy Smith, been a member for 19 months. That's awesome. And thank you so much, Chelsea, for keeping up with that for me. I, I miss a lot of them. We're trying to stay focused here on the, the radar, so I, I will miss a lot of the, the chats that come through, but thankfully we've got uh, Chelsea keeping an eye on everything for us. Still looks like a pretty intense area of, of developing rotation here near Whitney. Uh, and um, hopefully, hopefully we don't have anything uh, happening right now. Uh, but if something was to happen, it's going to happen between Whitney and Hillsboro here. So get this safety uh, immediately. I'm looking through Twitter just to see if there's anything... Anything happening? Uh, we do have somebody, uh, Alicia Black, sent us a picture from Highway 75 in Atoka County. Okay, so Atoka County is no longer under a tornado warning, by the way. That's, that's going to be for Bryan County, Oklahoma. But here in Atoka, you can see the, the dark clouds and the storm down there in the distance. This is where we saw some of the damage earlier uh, from that first storm that went through. Uh, oh, wow. So we've got um, something else interesting here, a special sounding uh, launched by uh, TAMU Meteorology at 1835Z. And you can see uh, that we've got a big beefy curved photograph here and uh, surface temperatures have warmed uh, and uh, it does look like we've got some broken cloud cover out here. And uh, this is pretty much exactly what was modeled. This is what we thought the, the atmosphere was going to be like. Um, so that means that these storms are going to continue to have the ability to produce tornadoes as they get stronger and more, uh, I guess, apparent in their appearance here, moving up towards the uh, area just to the south of Dallas. These three storms here are, are probably the most concerning looking right now. We'll have to watch this one near west uh, as it continues to grow the one the big cluster of storms that went through dallas earlier is really quickly turning into a, a linear mess which means that it will continue to cause wind damage hail and it's going to be a strong storm as it moves through uh bonham uh, leonard uh, up towards paris in texas but the tornado threat with that specifically has went down a little bit we are really going to focus our attention down here though because this is where things are starting to look a little bit more tornado-y if you know what I mean. What's the rest of the night look like for the Kansas City metro area? It looks pretty rainy. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we're ex expecting any significant severe weather up there. Um, but the, the rain 
from this system is going to be pretty like almost stationary for a lot of the Midwest for a brief period of time, uh, but long enough to potentially cause some flooding problems. So if you live in a flood prone area, make sure you are paying attention to those creeks and streams. Hey, Christy, Christy, thank you so much for the very generous $50 super chat. Everybody say thank you, Christy. That was very nice of you. Couldn't do what we do without y'all. We do have um, a new uh, mesoscale discussion here. Um, looks like the severe and tornado risk continues, particularly in the short term from the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex to southeastern Oklahoma. <coughs> All of our storm chasers are in and around the Dallas area. If anything happens in Dallas... If anything happens in or around Dallas, we are going to know. We've got, once again, six of the best storm chasers on earth in this area just waiting. Um, Andy's wanting to talk to us again. Go ahead, meteorologist Andy Hill. Hey, Ryan. Uh, I, had, I saw a few people asking about Wichita Falls in Kansas, or I'm sorry, in Texas. Of course, they got me with that one. Uh, but the severe thunderstorm warning over there is not really, it's not going to be a tornado uh, producer at all. In fact, that's actually slightly post frontal now, which means it's in the colder air. Uh, but back, uh, back out that cold front, there's some really good lapse rates that will allow uh, these storms to be hail producers so that storm near wichita falls is going to pass to the east of it uh, there's no little to no tornado threat with it but you should still be on the lookout for any strong winds that reach the ground and uh also up to ping pong ball size hail or, or at least quarter size so an inch in diameter or greater you don't want to get hit in the head by that absolutely all right thank you Andy for drawing our attention over here to Wichita Falls. This is a look at the storm, by the way, on radar. I know that we're, we're really focusing on this area. And, and the reason I'm doing that is not because it's not because we don't care about anybody else. <laughs> it's just because this is, this is the most dangerous zone right now that we're getting severe thunderstorms and, and heavy rain up here all the way through Wisconsin. Okay. Um, but the, the place we have to really zoom in on is Texas and Oklahoma right now. That's where we're, we may be on the cusp of a tornado outbreak. Um, so, but if we, if we take a very quick look at, um, uh, the whole radar here, the broad view, uh, you can see very clearly how much rain and how many storms we have going all the way up through Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, Wisconsin, even into Michigan. Uh, flooding and isolated small hail is going to be the biggest problem north of that tornado watch. In the purple box, though, that's where we're, we're actually concerned about uh, what may happen here over the next couple of hours. All right, back to the radar here. By the way, I'm using Radar Omega to show you the radar. And a cool thing about Radar Omega is we've got our storm chasers in the app. If you download the app right now, you can just click on Vince Welty's icon and bada bing bada boom there's his stream you can watch it right there all right he's also got uh, temperature he's got weather instruments on his car so you can uh, keep up with uh, him that way you can pull it into a window you can move it around you can do this I, hey listen ios android whatever it is click the link in the description they're a big supporter of the channel so i try to shout them out whenever i can we've also got brandon Kopic in here pulling him up and it looks like even Brett Adair now, Brett Adair now sends a live feed to Radar Omega. So the more the merrier, right? You've got a, so many different storm chasers to choose from now uh, if you're a Radar Omega user. So uh, Andy's got some weather news for us. Go ahead, Andy. Hey, Ryan, definitely concerned now. Things are uh, going upscale a little more quickly. Uh, the storm north of Waco first is uh definitely got a broad mesocyclone on it it's definitely it looks healthy you know you got strong rotation on both sides uh oh, wow. from the dallas fort worth radar and then also now east of dallas i'm or north and east of dallas i'm concerned about the storm that is headed towards greenville uh, i believe that it is starting to establish also a mesocyclone um it, it would it was been it has been struggling for a while but it definitely looks a lot better now on that latest scan so those are my two areas of interest 
Okay, thank you, Andy. Let's go through these one by one. There is no tornado warning for Greenville or any place up here to the north and east of Dallas and south of the Oklahoma border. But this whole storm here, this whole area, we are uh, kind of concerned about with the wind, the hail, but also a developing mesocyclone and maybe even a tornado here. So heads up in Greenville, Celeste, Caddo Mills, Wolf City, uh, get ready. There, there could be a tornado warning here soon. Know what you're going to do when it comes through. We do have a tornado warning for Hill County, Texas, and this is the area of rotation that we're concerned about there. It's going to the west of Hillsboro right now. It'll move up towards uh, Itasca uh, within the next little bit. Um, and then most recently, this storm is, is starting to pique our interest. And you can, out of all the storms today that we've seen, this is definitely the most uh, interesting looking on radar, especially on reflectivity here. You can really start to see the hook. You can see where that inflow is trying to come in. You can see how a uh, downdraft on the backside is trying to establish itself. And that is the area where a tornado may be forming right now. You can see on uh, velocity how we can see the, the rotation there as well. So heads up in uh, Malone, Bynum, Irene, all the way up towards a blooming grove. Pretty much if you live near Hillsboro on the west or east side, you've got pretty dangerous storms around you. So um, get ready, all right? I wouldn't be, I'm, I'm actually surprised we haven't already seen a tornado warning uh, for this storm down here, but pretty soon Malone, Bynum, and Irene will be under a tornado warning and it'll be time, it'll be your turn uh, to take shelter, get into the most interior room of your home um, and uh, hunker down. We'll let you know whenever it's time to come out. The lights are purple, so uh, Riley, must want to talk to us. Go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan. I just talked to um, Brandon, who's on that storm by Greenville, and he believes there's possibly a large wall cloud on that storm. Okay. All right. Thank you, Riley. I'm going to uh, talk to Brandon now, if I can get a hold of him. Uh, Brandon, we're hearing that uh, you're seeing something on the storm that you're on. Uh, why don't you give us an update? What do you think is going on there? Brandon Kopic is very close to this storm moving into Greenville. All of our storm chasers are actually. Look at this. So Brad Arnold's. Um, yeah, so I'm east of that area of circulation that Andy was talking about. I'm a little too far to tell concisely. It may be developing a wall cloud at this time. Um, definitely had some robust CGs with it as well. I definitely think it's rapidly intensifying right now. Okay, well, it looks like uh, Brad Arnold. Um, is that is that who you said, Riley? Was you did you say Brad or Brandon? Whenever you said somebody saw a wall club, I said Brandon. Oh, okay, but Brad right. is also right there. All right, yeah. So here's a live view from Brad Arnold, who's definitely who's in the same general area as uh, Brandon, and he's got something going on there. Let's see if we can't talk to him. Um, hey, Brad, we've got your feed uh, pulled up. Uh, what are you showing us there? You seeing anything interesting right now? These guys are all just to the west of Greenville, Texas, by the way. Let's see. Nothing as far as rotation, Ryan. We are, I am seeing a lot, a lot of cloud to ground lightning strikes, which, best, which definitely does show a that it's a very healthy storm. Has been uh, we're sitting right in the notch of this, so if we were to see a little bit of a lowering, I thought we did, but it was misplaced. Um, so I, I'm trying to look and see. I tried to get my drone up, but it started raining. Um, I'm trying to look over these trees to the left right here, actually back in that area, uh, to see if there is anything back there. It's tough to see right now. Um, it almost looks kind of outflow dominant, uh, just looking at the cloud deck. Um, but we're going to stay on this just for a little bit longer. I'm noticing those storms as well um, to the south. So uh, we're, we're, uh, if, if, if for whatever reason this one falls apart, we're going to definitely drop south. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Brad. We're going to go back to the radar. We just got a new tornado warning for um, uh, I, th I think Hill County as well. Uh, but this this one now in includes Malone, Irene, Blooming Grove, Italy, and Forest. And so this is the storm. Ryan, this is Zach. Uh, this is the storm that we've been talking about. This is the one that we've been watching. Uh, and that's for Ellis Hill and Navarro County in Texas. This is the most concerning looking tornado warning we've seen today. All right, so if you are in any of these places in the polygon here, um, please take shelter now. This is probably about to produce a tornado if it's not already. It, it, it will here soon if things keep going the way they're going. Um, 
Zach, I heard you. It was very quiet, though, but um, we've got you. What's up? I don't know if uh, I don't know if we're having problems with Zach or not. Ron, I was just giving you an update from our earlier conversation. I think myself and Frankie are going to go south to the developing storms that have tornado warnings near Waco. Kind of like that look a little bit better than the DFW stuff. So just wanted to give you an update. All right, so Zach's going to go to the south as well, and I mean that's that's the move. These storms here are definitely the ones that are going to produce tornadoes today. Um, not saying, obviously we're seeing damaging storms and we're probably going to see some tornadoes out of the storms that are moving up past Dallas towards Paris, Hugo, Antlers and all these places. But these are by far, uh, the most concerning looking ones that we have right now. Ellis Hill and Navarro counties are under a tornado warning. This one, this one in particular is rearing up. Um, it, it doesn't look good. If, if I'm in Irene, uh, blooming grove, uh, or any of these places um, to the north of Hubbard and Dawson, I am getting to my safe spot quickly because if this, uh, you, you notice how the the dangly bit, uh, the hook here on the storm is kind of lagging behind the core a little bit. It, um, a lot of times what's going to happen is the rain-cooled air from the core of this storm is going to come out from behind it and kick uh, this uh the southern extension of the storm up a little bit, move it into that inflow and really in, increase the amount of rotation that we're seeing here uh, in the rotating part of the storm. And when that happens in a storm like this, uh, we could sometimes see a, a, a pretty big tornado. So we're hoping that that doesn't happen, but we're assuming that it will because we are already under a tornado warning in Irene, uh, Mertens, Frost and Blooming Grove anyway. So get to shelter immediately. Let's actually flip over to uh, Radar Omega uh, because it's it's got a much better map on it. Uh, and you can see that if there was a tornado forming right now, it's happening somewhere near Malone. And it's going to go over uh, Highway 171, move up towards the Farmers uh, Road 308 that goes through Irene. And then eventually Mertens and Frost are going to be next in line there. So we've got two tornado warnings here south of Dallas in Texas. The one to the south, the, the most southern one, is the one that we are paying the most attention to right now. But that's not the only storms that are happening, of course. Uh, we've got a bunch of storms out there today. And we also have a tornado warning in Oklahoma. Bryan County, Oklahoma, Oklahoma is still under a tornado warning, and we're hoping that everybody up there is still in their safe spot. So um, we're going to continue to monitor this. I'm just waiting on radar updates at this point because I, I believe at some point um, we will see something kind of flip here uh, that gives us a little bit more direction on, on, on who we should zoom in on and who we should focus on, but this storm definitely is the one to uh, be paying attention to. First of all, before we get into diving into this, it's gonna be a while before I'm able to look at um, the chat again, I'm sure. I wanna say thank you to Christy once again for that very generous super chat and all of our new members. Thank you all, thanks for sharing, thanks for being here. Also, thank you, uh, Deanna um, and, and family from Sherman, Texas. Everybody's huddled up together with their pets and watching the Ryan Hall Y'all live stream. Seriously, thank you guys for trusting me and for tuning in making sure that you're spreading the word and we're able to get this life-saving information out to as many people as possible. The tornado warning here that was just most recently issued for uh, Ellis Hill and Navarro County is, um, uh, it's a pretty concerning one, okay? I, I, I just wanna make sure that we, we're effectively communicating um, that Blooming Grove and Irene in Texas need to be um, getting to their safe spot. If you live in Texas, you've been under a, a lot of tornado warnings. Some of you might even be tempted to ignore them. This one, in my opinion, I wouldn't ignore, okay? So uh, let's, if we know anybody out there, if we've got any family members or um, uh, friends, uh, even in, in the general vicinity, now's the time to let them know what's going on. A new tornado warning. And we got another tornado warning up there for Atoka and Bryan counties uh, in Oklahoma. This is another area that's been really active today. And we'll, we'll take a look at it real quick with um, uh, Radar Omega. Uh, basically, out here in this part of the world, it, it's a radar hole. We don't know what's going on via radar. 
they need to put a new Dagon radar in Atoka, all right, or Antlers, or Hugo. Somewhere out here, they need to put them a new uh, radar tower. If, you, if you're a local out here, write a letter to your senator. Be like, what in the heck am I paying taxes for? Put me a radar up here. It's been how many years have we had to deal with tornadoes in this area and not being able to see them? Anyways, what's happening is these strong storms that are showing signs of potential tornadic activity are moving into this area where we can't really see it on radar, so we're getting these precautionary tornado warnings. They are producing damage. We've gotten all kinds of reports today of significant damage in this area. So um, Bryan and Atoka County, stay in your safe spot. All right, we've got a new tornado warning for you. More storms are coming. It's, it lets up and then it comes back. It lets up and it comes back. Just stay in your safe spot. We'll let you know uh, when it's time to come out. Back down here towards the southernmost storm in uh, Ellis Hill and Navarro counties in Texas. If you're in Mertens right now or Milford or Frost, you're getting the heavy rain. You're probably getting some, uh, some hail. The concerning part of the storm, the base of the storm, the part that uh, is rotating is going to be just to the west of Irene, okay? It just crossed over uh, Highway 171 to the east of Bynum. This is the part that we're hoping this doesn't happen, but what could happen is this is going to curl up a little bit and really uh, start to uh, rotate enough to create a maybe even a big tornado here. Um, as it moves up to the north and to the east, once again, towards a frost and blooming grove, a nasty looking storm on radar. Um, we're going to hope that um, it just kind of goes away. But if it doesn't, we're prepared because um, I think we've we've done a good job getting the word out here about Blooming Grove and that area specifically. Um, we're also still watching very closely the storms that are just to the north and east of Dallas, okay, near Greenville. A lot of our storm chasers are in this area. And if we go to Brad Arnold's feed, you can see that he's got his eye on this lowering, this, this really interesting part of this storm that has been showing signs of not necessarily intense rotation, but like broad rotation for a while. Uh, even this area could potentially be uh, in for a tornado as we go into the future if, if this continues to kind of, I, I guess, intensify uh, as we go forward. And, and downstream from this, we're talking about um, Celeste, Kingston, Wolf City, and Pleasant Grove, and Leonard. These places in Texas to the north and east of Dallas. That's kind of what we're looking at for up there. Um, and sorry, about, every time I switch to a new camera, their, their, their feed goes out. There we go. There's Brad Arnold. And uh, no tornado, but that's what we're keeping an eye on up there. Hopefully, these guys can get close enough to this storm. Uh, that we can give you a, a view of it like that, because um, if this if this maintains its discreteness, right? If this continues to be a, a supercell that's all by itself here, nothing kind of runs into it. This will more than likely continue to produce a tornado or what could be a tornado for a while, right? It's going to go over I forty five near Innocent Rice. It's going to go up towards Kaufman, um, and our storm chasers, uh, Vince Welty, for example, is right here. They will be able to intercept this storm near Terrell or Kaufman if they continue to go uh, in that direction. Let's put this into motion. Yeah, so you can see that this is going uh, almost due north-northeast. So if this continues to go this way uh, and they continue to go this way, they'll meet somewhere in that general vicinity. More storms are forming to the south, though. Lots more storms are forming to the south, and these will also start to um, show attributes uh, that are concerning as well as we go forward. Um, let's come back over to this radar view. Let's take a look at what we've got going on here. The rotation does look more intense. Um, the greens represent uh, the parts of the cloud that are moving towards the radar. The red shows stuff going away from the radar. When you get that counterclockwise motion uh, indicated here uh, in such a tight area, that's when you really have to start worrying about a tornado coming down. Right now, more than likely, what we have is a big mesocyclone, and it's trying to get organized. It's trying to produce a tornado, but it, it, it more than likely isn't at this very moment. We don't know for sure, but um, if it does here in the near future, it could be a big one. Uh, this, this kind of storm here is the, the, kind, the exact kind that we look for to um, uh, maybe see a big tornado out of. We, we hope it falls apart, though. Uh, meteorologist Andy Hill is wanting to chime in. So um, go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan, on that cell that you're focused on, um, 
I uh, recommend looking at the uh, higher tilts, 0 0.9, 1.3 degree tilts uh, on velocity. You'll get a really good look at what the mesocyclone looks like that's not side lobed at the moment. Um, but what we're really watching for that cell and the audience here, chat, you can follow along. Uh, if we play a loop of it as it's moving, um, you can see that it's going, you know, it's beelining to the north northeast. But if it starts to turn more to the east, we call that a right moving supercell. That's when we know that it's latched onto the surface, when it's latched on to the, the best inflow. Uh, and that's when it becomes concerning. So when we see the supercell in the loop start to turn more to the east rather than north northeast, uh, that's a concerning sign. So that's the first thing we're looking out for the analyst team and myself. Um, but of course, it, this will likely remain tornado warned unless it falls apart. So a dangerous storm regardless. But if you want a visual for yourself at home, just uh, watch that loop it whenever we play it. If it starts to turn more to the east, that's how you know. All right. Thank you, Andy. Very good uh, stuff to point out there. Um, if we do start to see that more east kind of um, pull there, uh, we'll show that uh, loop again. And once again, that just kind of adds fuel to the fire for being concerned about the Blooming Grove area. I think that if this does what it could do, um, that that's around where things will start to go south. So hopefully everybody in, in Blooming Grove is um, uh, taking shelter. Also Frost. Uh, downstream, if this, if this storm doesn't fall apart and it continues to be a supercell and, and it continues to be tornado warned. Uh, Bardwell, uh, M House, Rice, Ennis, all these places. Uh, I'm giving you an early heads up. You're not under a warning just yet, but pay attention because you could be here very soon. Um, yeah, the, this is um, if we go up on the tilts a little bit, you can see a, a lot better what the mesocyclone looks like. Um, and then basically what I'm doing, by the way, is I'm uh, be able to look at different 2D slices of uh, the storm uh, the radar inside of the radar dome if you ever drove by the national weather service and you've seen the big white golf ball on the on a stick out there uh, it scans the storms not just one time in in like one layer there's a it does it at, at like a five degree tilt a one degree tilt and then it, it does that uh, all the way up and we can actually look at those different um, uh, slices here through this program so um, that's what we're looking at there and the latest update the latest frame from um, uh, this radar site uh, it continues to look concerning. You can see that this part of the storm is kind of like the, the contrast between all the red and, and the clear air is a little bit tighter. That tells me that there's a lot of inflow. There's a lot of air moving into the storm from this direction. This though, this part of the storm, the hook, you know, the actual area where we could maybe see the tornado, um, there has to be something that kind of kicks it into gear a little bit more, I guess, before we can indicate via radar that it's latched onto the surface. And that's another thing that uh, Andy was talking about. That will overall lead to a uh, more right-leaning or eastward progression of the storm. So we're going to keep a very close eye on that. Looks like the tornado warning for the storm uh, just to the west was allowed to expire, so that's good news. Um, Itasca, Covington, Carl's Corner, May Pearl, Grandview, all you guys can come out of your safe spots for now. There are more storms coming. There are more storms coming, but uh, for now, um, there is no tornado warning for you. The only tornado warning that we have in uh, Texas right now is going to be for uh, Ellis Hill and Navarro counties. All right, so take shelter. If you're out there, we're watching this storm very closely. Okay. <laughs> uh, my wife just showed up uh, bringing in some mail, but... Um, uh, we've got uh, we've got to watch this one uh, extremely closely. And if you uh, if you can, Andy, can you give me like a five minute uh, breather here and talk about this storm? I'm gonna go say hi to her real quick. Yeah, I got you, Ryan. All right, guys, I'm gonna hand this over to meteorologist Andy Hill, and um, let me get this let me get this radar on the right spot for you here. And uh, he's going to take it away. I'll be right back, y'all. Hello, Andy. guys. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> Hello, y'all. Uh, we're just getting started with this uh, event today, so no uh, major news to relay yet, but there are some uh, surprises in line with the stream later today, so... Um, 
definitely stick around for both the coverage so you can relay important information if you are the person relaying to your family in the area, in the risk area today in Texas, Northeast Texas, um, into Southwest Arkansas in the, in the vicinity. Yeah. It's good to see you all again. Uh, of course, a healthy reminder for those of you all watching, 23,000 of you right now, make sure you are taking regular hydration and uh, mental breaks, take deep breaths and so forth, okay? I care about all of you. Uh, the latest scan in uh, per velocity just east of Mertens, Texas on this current tornado warning that we're looking at east of Hillsboro, Texas, it is uh, incredibly concerning, actually. We're really starting to see what I was talking about earlier um, with uh, the beginning of the rightward movement. So instead of traveling north, northeast, we're now going to go northeast, uh, and that will pass over Frost, Texas, and north of Blooming Grove. And uh, primarily, we're concerned about the Alma, Rice, and Innis area along I-45. All right, so if you're in the chat now, uh, let me know how it feels if you're in the risk area. I've heard several of our chasers today who are up there, by the way, uh, that it kind of, what did what they say, it smells like tornadoes? So it kind of smells like tornadoes. I don't know if it smells like tornado juice, but it's definitely a primed environment uh, per their words and observations in person. Uh, we are not going to have ground truth from our chasers on the uh, the um, uh, the tornado warning east of Hillsboro until that storm makes it closer to I-45. Storm chaser Zach Hall is the closest, um, but... Yeah, beyond that, it's going to take a little bit of time to reach the I-45 vicinity. Uh, but uh, our analyst team is pretty concerned. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this at all. We're pretty concerned with this supercell in particular. It's in a good environment. Nothing is impeding it uh, as of now. So it is. It's really got time to move. I think and. Um, this might be the one we'll be watching for quite some time. So make sure that anyone well along this path uh, as it moves to the northeast. Uh, so heads up for Blooming Grove or Blooming Grove here in a tornado warning right now. So you should be taking shelter in the interior most room of your house or basement if you've got it. Uh, bring something soft and fluffy with you to protect your neck primarily. Uh, so heads up along I-45, the Alma Ennis area, Kemp, Texas, along Highway 175 and eventually near Myrtle Springs. Um, the cell will be headed generally in your area east of Kaufman. Um, so all, all along the line to the north and east of this cell. Um, please be watching out for the next few hours uh, as this uh, thunderstorm moves in your area. All right. Uh, thank you very much, meteorologist Andy Hill there, um, uh, filling us in on the latest developments here. It does look like we are starting to see uh, a pretty good squall line, a big line of storms forming uh, just west of Dallas, uh, getting ready to move through uh, the Fort Worth area. This big line of storms here is going to bring a, a pretty good gust of wind, probably some, some se severe winds uh, through uh, Fort Worth, Louisville, uh, Meridian, uh, Claiborne, uh, all the way up to uh, Denison here within the next couple of minutes. Uh, these storms, the ones that are linear like this, we have to watch out for maybe quick spin-up tornadoes in them. But these storms are not going to be the same kind of uh, problem makers, I guess, uh, as the the supercells. Okay, this is uh, the reason why we're kind of zoomed in and focused on uh, this storm in particular is because it's really our only, uh, you know, isolated supercell right now that that, that looks interesting. Um, but if this was to produce a tornado in the environment that currently exists out there, it would be a bad one. So we've got to keep an eye on it. We've got to um, be close to it and, and, and make sure that we're closely analyzing every frame as it comes in so that the people in Blooming Grove, uh, M House and, and Bardwell uh, know what to expect as we go forward. Uh, it looks like this storm also is probably going to go through uh, cycles, right? So we might see the, the hook here or the storm, it might seem like it's falling apart for a brief moment. Um, and then really quickly, it'll come back together. That will continue to be the case. Uh, until some of these storms to the south kind of slam into it and ruin the um, uh, the open warm sector it has on the southern side here. So if if we don't see a tornado right now uh, or in the next few minutes from frost to blooming grove, uh, there's going to be repeated chances for this thing to drop a tornado all the way up through Ennis 
uh, and rice and all these places. And the longer that this goes, uh, and the farther east and northeast that it goes, uh, the more uh, f- kind of favorable environment that it enters to uh, produce a tornado. So we're watching it closely. There is a lot of rotation there. Uh, it's broad right now. Uh, but uh, if I'm in Blooming Grove, I am taking shelter right now. Um, I'm looking through Twitter. I'm looking for updates. If you guys have anything for me over there, at Ryan Hall, y'all. At Ryan Hall, y'all. Follow me and um, uh, send me stuff. Tag me and stuff. Obviously, if you're in a storm, don't send me a picture of it if, if you're in a dangerous situation. Uh, but um, if you're outside of a storm, you can see it from a distance or something, you can send me a picture. I will show it live on the air here. Howard uh, is in Ellis County. And um, he's actually uh, looking at maybe some 60 mile an hour winds there uh, from the the severe, like the core of the storm, the severe thunderstorm side of it there. So uh, thank you so much for sending that in. Um, hopefully everybody in um, uh, Ellis County, uh, Navarro County and Hill County in Texas is getting to their safe spots. You are under a tornado warning. And um, wow. <laughs> My goodness, uh, Max Olson here just about got struck by lightning. Look at this. It's got audio. It doesn't. No, this is Storm Chaser Max Olson. I'm, I'm just seeing this uh, video on uh, Twitter. You can see that they were outside looking at that storm when <laughs> very, very obviously a, a big bolt hit somewhere very close to them and uh, uh, caused a shock there. So... Uh, lightning is another big danger uh, with this storms. We're hearing all kinds of reports from our storm chasers, and, and we can see on the radar, on Radar Omega, how frequent uh, the lightning is. That's going to continue to be a problem, especially with these supercells that we're kind of keeping a close eye on uh, down here uh, in um, uh, southern Texas. Uh, but even so, up here in the, the bigger storms, the more l- linear storms near Leonard, moving up towards uh, Honey Grove and Greenville. Uh, something interesting to point out, is our storm chasers are getting close to being in a place where they could potentially uh, see this storm that's our most concerning storm right now. Zach Hall is near Ennis, okay? So he's only minutes away from being in a position where we will actually be able to see the underside of the storm. So that's incredibly valuable. (laughs) If it produces a tornado, we will more than likely have, um, we will see it. Um, Go ahead, Riley. All right, so speaking of Zach Hall, I just talked to him. He's starting to be able to see the base of the storm, and he said there's nothing that looks like a tornado yet, but there's a lot of dangly bits sticking off the base of the storm. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Riley is helping us communicate with the storm chasers. Um, So let's actually pull up Zach's feed. Now, Zach is with Vortex Chasing, all right? So it's, it's Zach and Frankie. Zach is the one that's usually on the radio talking to us. So we, we say Zach, but it's Vortex Chasing and Zach and Frankie. Uh, let's talk to them now and see uh, a little bit more in detail what they've got going on. Uh, Zach, Frankie, how's it going, guys? You all are very close to this storm that we're kind of hyper-focusing on right now. Um, are you seeing anything new? Uh, what, what's your thoughts as you approach Ennis here? So many, so many of you. Brian, we're headed into Ennis now. We're not too far. We've been able to see the base on the storm a couple times. And it's got lowerings on it, but this thing is like really taking off. I'm going to look at the forward flanks. It's a little bit messy, but we're trying to get west so we can get south and give you a clear view. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, um, Zach. He's close. He's close. Right here is Zach. This is where the tornado is forming. All right. If it continues to look the way that it looks, and, and let's say that it produces a tornado, it will happen somewhere between Bardwell, M House, Rice, and Ennis. And I believe Zach's probably going to come down here to Ennis and then go down towards Rice, probably set up shop right here and wait for the storm to come to him. And uh, if there's a tornado in it, we'll see it um, because he's going to be giving us a live feed. So that's what we're looking at there. Um, Latest update on the velocity and on reflectivity looks intense. I mean, this this is going to do it at some point. Here's the thing, though. If it doesn't do it before it gets to Ennis or Rice, 
I do believe that these storms to the south, maybe even this area of conviction is going to slam into it and probably ruin the 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 balance that it has right now. And 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 maybe we won't have to worry about it as much after that. But in the next 30 minutes or so, I, I am just extremely concerned about this one. Um, once again, Blooming Grove, M House, Bardwell, Ennis, Elma, Rice in Texas to the south of Dallas. Get ready. A big storm's coming. It's trying its best to produce a tornado. It probably isn't yet, but if it does, it's going to happen soon, and it's going to be a big one. Get ready. Uh, otherwise, uh, other places that we are looking at right now uh, include um, uh, Dallas. We've got severe thunderstorms all around Dallas. Nothing tornado tornadic right now in Fort Worth or Dallas, but we're going to be watching that uh, closely as time goes on. Uh, we're also looking at a tornado watch that goes all the way up into eastern portions of Oklahoma and um, western portions of Arkansas and heavy rain all the way up uh, to Wisconsin and Michigan. So you guys are feeling the effects of this storm, millions of you, all the way up towards Canada. We just got a new tornado warning, and that's an extension of the one that we've been watching. So uh, Ellis and Navarro County is an extension of the warning for you. Uh, that's going to include uh, Interstate uh, 45, Ennis, Bardwell, Palmer. Uh, the tornado warning now includes you, and it includes Zach Hall's exact location. So we're going to keep an eye on that. We're going to switch over back to the radar. There's your new polygon. Respect it. Bardwell, Rice, Ennis, Palmer, get to shelter now. There's no time to play around. You're going to want to get into that safe spot as soon as possible. Um, very huge shout out to G DJ Spearman and Jason Hoover for being members for uh, six months and 13 months. You guys are awesome. If it wasn't for our members and all the people supporting us in the chat here, we couldn't do what we do. Thank you very much. That, that latest warning, by the way, that was just issued, um, this is a graphic for it. Let me show you that real quick. I'm actually going to share this. I'm going to retweet this on Twitter. So... Uh, if you're following me on Twitter, you retweet it as well. Uh, and that's just another way that we can kind of work together to get the information out to people. Because there are 37,000 people. 37,000 people. It's getting close to time for, you know, people are getting out of school. They're getting off work right now. We've got a couple interstates involved in this. All right. We've got Interstate 35, 45, sorry, uh, and 35 on the western side, but mostly I'm concerned about uh, Interstate 45, Rice, Alma, Ennis, Palmer, that area. If this thing produces a tornado, it's going to go over the interstate there between Ennis and Rice. So uh, if you know anybody out here, share this. It doesn't even have to be my stream. Just take a screenshot of the warning, send it to them, uh, and just let them know that you're concerned and, and maybe they should be too. Uh, you could end up saving a life if you know somebody out here. Uh, otherwise, just uh, share this, um, all the information about this far and wide. And, uh, of course, let YouTube do their job of promoting us in the algorithm just by hitting the like button here so that we can hey, Ryan, hopefully hey, this is Brad. reach people. I just want to let you know I'm dropping south like every other storm chaser in America right now. So um, we'll be done there in a little while. All right, so that was Storm Chaser Brad Arnold who said that he's dropping south like every other Storm Chaser in America uh, because most of them, most of them are up here. Vince Welty, Chris Hall, all these guys are up here. Brandon and Brad, uh, they've got to get down here so that they can intercept these storms as they come up in, into this region. So uh, Br Brad's going to be doing that. All of them are. And uh, Zach Hall... Uh, may end up being the MVP today uh, for making the early decision to head south and get on this storm early. Uh, still a lot of rotation. We're still seeing a, a big rotating mesocyclone here uh, south of Bardwell, just to the west of uh, Blooming Grove. Still no signs of a tornado just yet. So, um, wow. What, what an interesting progression of this storm. There, it looks to me like a new area of convection, maybe another storm has tried to start popping up here just to the north of Frost. This could do one or, one or two things. It could interfere with the inflow and the overall uh, balance that the storm has and kind of just turn it into a big blob. Or it could um, potentially add uh, some oomph to the rear flank here and, and cause a 
you know, a, a tornado in the short term. But something interesting is happening down here uh, with that. Look at that. Very, very weird stuff. But still, a lot of uh, rotation here. Bardwell, Ennis, Rice, take shelter now. Um, Zach Hall's going to be in a place to where we can see this thing very closely. I, I think 10 minutes from now, we'll be able to have a HD view of the base of this storm, and we'll be able to see the exact moment a tornado drops out of this thing if that happens. Looking through Twitter again. Yeah, the velocities are continuing to uh, get stronger. It's important that we go back and forth between the velocity and the um, uh, reflectivity. It's important to watch both of those. They can tell you completely different things about the storms. Oh, here's something interesting. This is a photo from Claiborne looking towards Godley in Texas. So thank you so much, Randy, for sending this. This is a, a view of our storm outside of it. So not underneath it, but we're looking at the updraft from a, a distance here. Very cool. Thank you for sending that in. Uh, in Bells, Texas, we've got a rainbow. Jess, thank you for sending that in. Once again, we got um, we got uh, storm chasers. Uh, of course, we've got the, the best storm chasers on Earth. Uh, giving us live feeds out there, tracking these tornadoes down. But we've got tens of thousands of storm chasers all across the country who are sending us pictures of, and videos of what's going on in their neck of the wood. Very thankful for you guys. We, this is the ultimate compilation of weather information. There's nothing else out there like it. It all comes together here, and I uh, couldn't do it without y'all. And, of course, we've got my wife who is taking a picture of me <laughs> over there eating her Jimmy John's sandwich, haunting me. Uh, and you can see me there on the, uh, on the computers. <laughs> All right. So if you're just now tuning in, we're doing live severe weather coverage uh, in, uh, for portions of Texas, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. We currently only have one tornado warning, okay? We have one tornado warning, and that's going to be for Ellis and Navarro counties in Texas. We have a bunch of severe thunderstorm warnings, uh, and we have a tornado watch um, that goes uh, all the way up into Oklahoma. But you're, you're seeing storms in Dallas. You're seeing storms near Greenville. You're seeing storms all the way up towards Tulsa and McAllister. None of those storms as of right now are as concerning as what we're looking at down here near uh, Rice and Ennis, okay? This could be producing a big tornado soon, so that's why we're kind of focusing on it. But all of these storms, we're seeing new storms pop up down here near Grosbeck, Fairfield, Athens. Like, there, there will be more tornadic storms as the, the day goes on, and we're going to keep a very close eye on them, all right? Another big storm, a line of storms, is going through Fort Worth right now. We will see that go through Dallas again here in the next couple of hours. Everybody that lives in between Fort Worth and Dallas, get ready for a severe thunderstorm with very strong winds. And we also, we have to start worrying about MLQCS tornadoes as well. There could be little spin up tornadoes, little um, areas of- uh, Ron, we've got the base of this storm live on our stream. Uh, we could see the uh, little spin ups happen in, in places like this. So we're gonna keep an eye on that. Everybody in Dallas, Fort Worth, just stay with us, okay? But we're gonna kind of focus on this because now, uh, professional storm chaser Zach Hall and Frankie out there from Vortex Chaser chasing it. They're able to give us a live view of the base of this storm right now. You can see it. They are currently on Interstate 45, um, uh, just to the south of Ennis, and they're giving us a look uh, towards Bardwell. All right. So this is what the storm looks like. And if there is a tornado that's going to come out of this, we will see it right here. They just took an exit. They're probably going to go towards Bardwell, I believe. All right, so you can see there's no tornado right now, but there is a lowering. And if there is going to be a tornado, it's going to happen somewhere right in the middle of the screen. That's what we're looking at, all right? So Zach Hall, once again, super thankful for our uh, storm chasers. Uh, this, this tells you so much, right? Like if you're watching this, if you're a concerned citizen out here in, in Rice or Ennis or uh, anywhere in Navarro County, yeah, red blobs, you've seen them. What, what about them, right? 
But this, being able to actually show you what the storm looks like on the ground uh, is next level. And we couldn't do it without our storm chasers. So huge shout out to Zach Hall for, for really going out into the dangerous situations and, uh, and letting us see this. So he's going to get closer to this. He's going to follow it. And uh, we'll, we'll keep up with him very closely. If we can get him in the number one position, uh, uh, Riley, Frank, whoever's listening, if we can get him above my head when I go back to the uh, uh, radar, uh, that would be very helpful. We're going to stick with him for a while. All right. So uh, latest radar scan does continue to show a pretty impressive area of rotation here. But that, that area of convection, that, that weird pop up area of moisture, I guess that that's interfering with the hook is doing something here uh, to uh, that, that I guess it's not, it, it, it doesn't look as impressive, I guess now that it did five minutes ago, but th the way that this is going to work is that we're going to see this cycle over and over and over again until something happens. So the longer that the storm has to, to do its thing, the more time it's going to have to organize and it, it still looks to me like there's not anything directly down here that's going to steal the energy from it. So this is something that we have to watch very closely um, as time goes forward. And of course, Zach's uh, feed is, uh, is above my head now. Yeah. Yeah. Giving my dinner order to Steph over there. Um, so... Let's take a look at this. Um, mes Actually, I'm just going to read this to you. Let's pull up Zach's feed full. Sorry. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to read you this latest mesoscale discussion here. An isolated and primarily urban flash flood threat is developing um, uh, through southeastern portions of Oklahoma, uh, western portions of uh, Arkansas, and extreme northeastern Texas. So all, all these storms where they're kind of converging together up here, uh, in southeastern Oklahoma, they're dumping a lot of rain in a very short period of time. So we could be looking at a, um, um, a flash flooding situation uh, happening there. Uh, and we've got an update from Riley. Go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan, I just spoke to Zach again. He said you can see the rotation and the inflow, especially on the left side. And this storm is rapidly, uh, it's producing more and more CGs. Okay. All right, thank you so much, uh, Riley. Riley's helping us keep up with the storm chasers. Okay, so once again, every different, every frame from this storm is it, it tells a different story. Now it looks like things are ramping up again. You can see how there, there's just so much inflow. There's so much coming into the storm. It's what's coming out of it and wrapping around that's not doing enough, if that makes sense. The reason we don't see a big tornado right now uh, is, is because for whatever reason, that maybe there's too much here. Maybe the, 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 the forward flank of the storm is just getting kind of caught up in, in that flow and separated from the base like too much. But whatever's happening here, now it's starting to look like it's a little bit more intense. And we're, we're back to being hyper-concerned about areas just in front of this area of rotation near Ennis and Alma. Take shelter now if you're anywhere in Ellis County, though. And... Uh, Zach is seeing a rotation start to tighten up. Let's see if we can't see it for ourselves here. This is Storm Chaser Zach Hall. If I think I think that I'm seeing it, I don't know. It's hard to tell because it is certainly broad. You can see that the the area where the camera is pointed uh, is right in the middle of what I believe what is what we're seeing on radar is the, the hook echo, but it, where it's messy on radar, it's also a little messy in real life as well. But you, I, I think I see it. I think I see rotation here uh, in that it's not tight. It's broad and there's no wall cloud or anything, but it's definitely coming together there. CG. Yeah. CG. Uh, whenever he says that um, he's talking about cloud to ground lightning strikes. Uh, Jason, <laughs> Jason's been a mem member for five months. Thank you so much. He says, uh, I used to have to wait for spring for these kind of storms. Not anymore, I guess. It's crazy that 
some of our most intense storms since I started this channel have been in the fall and winter. Um, yeah, I, I guess so. It's just the, the overall pattern that we're in right now. Quickly moving towards Ennis. Yes, it, I, I see. I'm trying to look at chat. It looks like we got a lot of people watching in Ennis, which is great. I'm glad you guys are here. Hopefully you're in your safe spots. Um, the storm is like right now it's raining hard. It's probably hailing a little bit in Ennis. What's more than likely going to happen is either it's going to continue to do that or it's going to stop right here in the next couple of minutes. You're going to be in the clear slot. And that's when the potential tornadic portion of the storm will be just to your south. Um, if this was to produce a tornado, it definitely still has a chance of coming into the Ennis area. But as of right now, um, the, we've got eyes on it. There is no tornado on the ground. It's developing. Here's a tweet from Dust to Glory, giving us a view of the I-45 area between Ennis and Rice. And listen to that. Sirens are going off uh, on I-45 between Ennis and Rice in Texas. And this is from Dust of Glory on Twitter. talked about this 30 minutes ago how i was concerned specifically about the i-45 area it's 3 40 p.m central this is an interstate school's letting out people are it's about time for people to you know start commuting and then now we have this tornadic supercell uh, getting ready to cross over a major interstate so hopefully we got the message out and hopefully people are not uh as many people as what would have been out there. Hopefully we've, we've reduced that a little bit. Alma and Ennis in Texas need to be in their safe spots. Everybody in Ellis County needs to be taking shelter right now. All right. Thank you for sending that in. And right here, we come back to the radar. This is where... Uh, storm chaser Zach Hall is and that's the camera feed that you're seeing above my head so if there is a tornado at any point from this storm uh, we will see it right now there isn't one thankfully but that doesn't mean that you could should you know disregard it, it we think that it could happen very quickly this storm is trying very hard. It's, it's probably the hardest I've ever seen a storm try to produce a tornado without actually doing it I, I don't know what's stopping it uh, necessarily. But we're thankful for whatever that is. Oh, let's see. Going through Twitter again. Thank you guys so much for sending me stuff. I, 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 I'm not able to show everything, but I am looking at it. It's going into the noggin, all right? I'm, I'm formulating everything. Every, every piece of information you guys send is valuable. Uh, five, five minutes ago from, what was that, Tumgato? This is a storm uh, west of Mexia, Texas. So I believe that's one, yeah, there you go. That's one of the more southern storms uh, that's trying to pop up that's more discreet. And you can see the, the whole thing there and the base and everything. So that's one that we'll have to watch. This, this is another storm down here near Mexia, Texas that could potentially produce a tornado here in the near future. We're kind of focused on this one, the one that's getting ready to cross I-45, but it's not producing a tornado right now. But boy, is it trying. It is trying very hard. Uh, Ban GG says, I remember when my local channels would cover the weather. Uh, I also remember they suck compared to Ryan Hall. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> Whenever you guys read, send in a super chat, I just read it, man. <laughs> Thanks for the, the compliment though. I, I appreciate it. <clears throat> uh, sirens are going off in Waxahachie. Nothing to see, but uh, a storm warning. Uh, Rocket medic. Thanks for sending that, that in. You can hear the um, the eerie sound of the uh, 
the sirens there. I don't think they're... I don't think there's any reason for that to be going off there. It might be associated with the fact that, that I believe that's that's in Ellis County, right? Waxahachie. So th th this is why it's very important not to rely on um, sirens to get your warnings because a lot of times they go off when they shouldn't or they don't go off when they should and they base it off of the entire county whenever you, you, like make sure you're getting your warnings from somebody like me or your local TV weatherman or uh, a really good, like make sure it's coming from the national weather service and it's a graphic of some sort or somebody explaining it to you. The, the sirens is it's such an old outdated uh, method of keeping up with that. Not, not saying that we should get rid of them. It's just, it's an extra tool. Looking at the uh, storm here near Ennis. Once again, it's trying its best to wrap up and produce a tornado. However, it isn't. It is not producing a tornado right now. The rotating part of the storm just pretty much went over where Zach is, and he didn't come through screaming about a tornado, so that's a good sign. FFW for Southern OK until 8.30 Central Daylight Time. So we're starting to get a flash flood warnings in Oklahoma associated with all that rain down there. It's countywide in Oklahoma as well. Yeah, I don't, I don't agree with that. Ryan, you got a copy? Zach. Uh-oh. Yeah, Zach, I got you. What's up? Man, it is so hard to make out stuff in this because of how much moisture there is, but I think we have Dude, just a ginormic base to our left with a lot of rising motion. We're trying to get back to the east to get a view for you. Okay, sounds good. We've got you pulled up, um, and we're watching. Uh, just let us know uh, if you see anything, and you're you're in the perfect position to see something if so, if anything was to happen. It looks like it's trying to curl up again. It's gone through so many different cycles, um, but yeah, we're we're keeping up with you. Just let us know. So here is Zach Hall's location. This is the area of rotation. Look at here. Oh, wow. So that, that looks better than anything we've seen so far. That's definitely a lowering. And, and he's right. It's hard to tell exactly what's going on because there is so much moisture out there. Um, it's not like a clear May sunny day where the you got a high contrast. You, you can see it from 50 miles away, you know. This, this, out, this, this severe weather situation is a lot like a Dixie Alley, Alabama, or Mississippi kind of deal. You got fast-moving storms, low cloud heights, um, lots of moisture. Like, you know, this is kind of uncommon for Texas, not just because it's November, but because of the overall nature of the, uh, the system. Yeah, as soon as Zach points this back over in that uh, direction, I'll pull that back up full. But once again, this storm's rearing up. It's trying. It's trying its best. But thankfully, it has not succeeded yet in producing a big tornado. This storm um, is just now, though, I believe. Actually, no, it's not even in it yet. I, I was going to say it's just now getting into our moderate risk zone, but it's not even made it that far yet. So the ingredients for tornadoes, the nadir juice in the air, it is much more present over here. Well, I guess I should say up here uh, than where this storm is now. So if this storm can survive that long, if, if it can make it past Will's point, it'll almost certainly produce a tornado. But it isn't right now, thank goodness. Greg, thank you so much for the very generous super chat. Shauna Williams, thank you. You guys are awesome. We got all kinds of new members. And we've got a considerable severe thunderstorm warning for Carter, Johnson, Love, and Marshall counties in Oklahoma. Wow. 
my goodness, the storm has been trying so hard for so long. But thankfully, we haven't seen anything come out of it just yet. Uh, Dallas, Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, big storm just went through Fort Worth. We've got a severe thunderstorm warning for Dallas. As this comes in, we're going to see high winds. We're going to see some hail. Um, but as of right now, the tornado threat looks low for like the downtown Dallas area. We'll, we'll keep you updated, but the big supercells are staying off to the east right now, it seems like. Wow. Lots of stuff going on. Um, Andy, are you with me? I'm here, Ryan. Okay. All right, so I'm going to take a, another brief uh, break here, if, if you can kind of take it over and maybe even uh, kind of incorporate some of our, our new guys this time. Um, and, but, of course, do uh, keep everybody updated on what's going on with the storm. Let me get the radar fixed back up here. And I'll be back in, I'd say, seven, eight minutes, okay? Sounds good. All right, guys, All right, this again. is meteorologist Andy Hill. I'm sorry, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> All right, guys, that's weather analyst Ryan leaving. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, Ryan. Okay. Um, yep, yeah, we're, we're still watching scan by scan. I Honestly, I can't believe how good this supercell has looked, guys, for how long it has. And we haven't had any uh, actual lowerings, or, or rather, we've had a wall cloud with it, but no tornado reports uh, yet. But still, a very dangerous storm, of course. Rosser, Oak Grove, and Kaufman in uh, Kaufman counties, you, you guys are up next for uh, the tornado warning, which will probably be extended based on um, a, uh, well, what we're seeing every time the radar scans this area. Uh, it's definitely looking to me like they will extend the tornado warning to include those areas along highway or road 34 and uh, along uh, highway 175 near Kaufman. Uh, that includes Gray's Prairie, Oak Grove, Cottonwood, Oak Ridge, Post Oak Bend City, and eventually Elmo and Wills Point along Highway 80. So you guys are uh, under the line of this thing in the next half hour or so. So please, uh, you've got to y'all watch out. No official tornado warning yet, uh, but that'll likely come through very soon as it exits the current tornado warning. Um, sorry, false alarm. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to do that in about five minutes. All right. Okay. I thought, I thought something had happened, but it didn't. So anyway, I'll take it back here and then we'll, we'll give it back to Andy in about five minutes. Um, but thank you so much, Andy, for, for always being there. Can we get a bunch of thank you? Uh, Andy's in the chat and he's always there just in case <laughs> next time I'm going to take a little bit of a break. Um, for now, though, we are going to continue to monitor uh, the radar here and, and look at all these uh, storms. We've got a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings now, and I, I want to kind of give those some light as well as we continue to track this tornadic uh, supercell to the south. We've got a severe thunderstorm warning up here for Balch Springs on the southeastern side of um, uh, Dallas. All of Dallas and Fort Worth is under a severe thunderstorm warning. Um. Uh, and we're going to continue to see this storm push through here within the next little bit. Strong winds, small hail, maybe an isolated spin-up tornado, but that's not the main threat there right now. Strong storms getting ready to go through Louisville, um, Sherman, all the way up towards Bells and McKinney as well. Another big storm uh, moving through Honey Grove within the next little bit. Large hail likely with this storm moving into Mill Creek uh, and uh, Tishomingo in Oklahoma. And we're even seeing um, a severe thunderstorm warnings as far north as Wilburton in southeastern Oklahoma. So that's that's all of the severe weather that we're dealing with right now. None of these storms are showing us signs of tornadic activity uh, in the same way that this one to the south is. So that's why we're focused on it. But lots of severe weather is moving through this area. Okay, um, let me switch over here to this more broad radar. Uh, if I can find it, there we go. Everybody in the big pink box is under a tornado watch. Fort Smith, Tulsa, Durant, Dallas, all these places. You're under a tornado watch, okay? And um, everybody in the red boxes inside of that is under a severe thunderstorm warning. And then the pink box 
down here is a tornado warning. We only have the one tornado warning right now for Ellis County, Texas. And um, outside of that, we have a lot of rain, a lot of heavy rain and some thunderstorms from uh, eastern Kansas up through Missouri, Iowa, uh, into Wisconsin and Michigan, all the way up into Canada. And on the back side of the storm, on the cold side, behind the cold front, we have um, uh, snow. It's snowing in the panhandle of Texas right now near Amarillo. So all that cold air is smashing down into the very warm air. The, the, you know how it is in Waco right now. Um, it's warm. All that cold air is smashing into that and causing our storms here. The, con the collision zone is where we're seeing the, uh, the, all the severe thunderstorm warnings and the tornado watch right now. Getting, it looks like a storm chaser Zach Hall is having a hard time keeping up with this storm. He's kind of like in, in, in a back road or something on a dirt road back here. He, a new tornado <laughs> warning has been issued. So he, but he's doing a good job. He's, he's really trying to keep up with the storm. Um, and he's going to give us another view of it here in a second. But Vince Welty uh, is also getting close. Okay. So Vince Welty now is in the area where that new tornado warning was just issued that includes Kaufman and Oak Grove and Rosser and uh, what is that, Talty and Crandall. Uh, so Vince Welty and Chris Hall are in that warning now. So now we have three storm chasers on this storm. Vince has given us a view. Uh, Chris Hall uh, is giving us a view as well, and Zach Hall. Uh, so we've got all kinds of... Uh, We've got all kinds of uh, bird's eye view or road eye view here of the of this storm as it continues to strengthen. It doesn't look as impressive now on radar. Uh, the The rotation has calmed down a bit. <coughs> the hook echo on it is kind of it's not as prominent, I, I guess, uh, as it was earlier. So hopefully, this trend continues and it kind of falls apart. But I already see a new storm that has formed just to the south. Uh, near Alma, uh, that it has the curved look to it. It has another presentation of like, a, well, this one might be the one, but all of them could be the one. That, that's why we're under a, a tornado watch and why every storm should be taken seriously. If you are in Ellis or Kaufman County in Texas on the southeastern side of Dallas, it is time, or to the southeast of Dallas, uh, it is time to get in your safe spot. Once again, <laughs> storm chasers, Chris Hall, Vince Welty, and Zach Hall are in your county. They've driven hours. Some of them have driven over a thousand miles to be there to see a tornado. They are in your county right now. If that doesn't tell you to get to shelter, I don't know a what will. A new tornado warning has been issued. We just got a new tornado warning. And our system is so fast. I don't know where that was for, if that was just a CWA warning area kind of thing. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan, that is for um, near Paris, Texas. So the one to the Northeast of Dallas, well, Northeast now. It's been maintaining rotation for a while. I failed to mention that actually. I thought that uh, Fort Worth might hold off on issuing a tornado warning for it until it got into uh, Norman's domain, but they, the, um, there is actually a noteworthy mesocyclone now, about 10,000 feet off. So uh, that is why that tornado warning is there. It includes Ladonia, Honey Grove, especially uh, along Highway 82. It will go just to the west of Paris, Texas. I know there are some Paris, Texas viewers. All right. Thank you, Andy. That's, that's up here uh, really close to the uh, Oklahoma border. And it's a big tornado warning. Lots of people... Uh, are going to be uh, under this one in uh, Fannin and Lamar counties. Paris is included. This is the storm. This is the area of rotation right in here. Do you see that? Um, so if there's a tornado, it's somewhere in that general. Sorry, I lost my pen. Uh, in that general vicinity, and it's going to move off to the north and uh, to the east uh, near Honey Grove, Summer, uh, Howderly, Author City, and Paris. Take shelter now. Now we have two tornado warnings in Texas, Ellis, Kaufman, Fannin, and Lamar counties. Um, this is what we've been talking about. This is what we've been trying to give you a heads up on for 
how I don't know how long we've been live, but it's been a little while. Uh, we, we've been building up to this point uh, where now the storms are getting into the moderate risk zone. And what that means is I, over the next hour or two hours, uh, that's when the storms will be in an environment that kind of support uh, tornadoes uh, more than they have been, okay? So we'll see what happens there. If I'm in Greenville, Sulphur Springs, Canton, Mount Pleasant, Pittsburgh, uh, Clarksville, uh, Bogota, uh, all the way up to Boston, Texas, um, and then even in Hugo and Idabel, Oklahoma, and then the Texarkana region, I am starting to prepare for a long night of severe weather. We're going to see more storms pop up. We're going to see these lines of storms come through. They're going to bring strong winds and spin up tornadoes, and we continue to have the risk of supercellular big tornadoes uh, over the next few hours. And whenever I say moderate risk, by the way, I want to show this because there are people filtering in and out just in case you don't know what I'm talking about. The Storm Prediction Center, it's not just me. It's not just me and Andy thinking that there's going to be tornadoes out here. It's the most capable and like the, the, pretty much the best meteorologists that there are have come together and produced this graphic that shows that there is a four out of five, one of the higher risks that you can get in the red zone there, a moderate, uh, for severe weather today. And that's a 15% hatch risk of significant tornadoes. Uh, and then also we have a very elevated uh, wind uh, probability as well. So everybody in the red is going to have to deal with severe weather tonight. And the orange and the, and the yellow as well, uh, but more, most specifically in that red zone. And as you can see, that's just now where the storms are moving into. I'll tell you what, let's look at that on Radar Omega. Because Radar Omega is the best radar app that there is. Uh, let me look at the day one outlook. And you guys can do this too on your phone app, iOS, Android. There's a link in the description. There you go. This storm literally just crossed into the moderate risk zone. The storm's been in it for a little bit, but you, as you can see, where we are expecting the most intense tornado or severe weather tonight, there is nothing going on right now. So that's concerning. The, the, we're going to see more storms pop up and move into to this area oh, during the evening and overnight period tonight and cause some problems. Now I'm going to turn that off just because I like the gray background better. Uh, how far will this progress towards the east? Will it stay strong as it moves east? So, yes, for the next couple of hours, if on that time frame, uh, the farther east it goes, actually it's going to get much stronger. But if you're talking about past Arkansas and Louisiana, past the Mississippi River, it's really not going to be much of a problem. This is uh, going to it's not going to kind of transfer the same energy that it has today into the deep south tomorrow in Dixie Alley. Um, we're going to be we're going to see the cold front come through. We might see some storms, uh, but it's not going to be anything like today. T today into tonight is going to be the time for the, these storm systems to uh, really shine if they're going to. Definitely a lot of rain, some strong gusty winds, some snow on the backside though for millions of people all up and down the central and. Uh, sort of eastern part of the U.S. I made a video about that not too long ago. It's on the channel if you want to watch it. I'm trying my best to keep up with all the chats and the Twitter messages. and Oh, yeah, here. <laughs> so in um, Kaufman, Texas right now, it, it's hailing. There's a tornado warning. It's just like 80 degrees. It's humid. And then in uh, Stinnett, Texas, it's snowing. It's snowing heavily, actually. Uh, very interesting stuff there. I feel like we're not getting any of our like radio sounds i don't know what's going on with that i'll i'll check into that after the break 
but I'm not hearing any traffic and I've got them all pulled up. Uh, Colt says I'm in uh, Paris, Texas on the West side. There's no sirens yet. Uh, Liz, thanks for becoming a slight risker. Jace. Jace, uh, thank you for the very generous super chat. It says, remember to drink fluids and stretch your legs. I appreciate it. I'm going to try. I, I try to get up at least once an hour. Uh, if there was enough moisture, would we have a tornado outbreak in the Missouri Valley? It's not just moisture for the Missouri Valley, the Ohio Valley, all the way up into the Great Lakes region. The storm does contain like uh, certain parameters that would make it for a, a big severe weather outbreak up in those areas. But there is not, there's not going to be enough moisture tomorrow uh, and a couple of other things. So we don't have to really worry about that. But you're right. Like, if you were to only look at the lower level jet tomorrow and you didn't know anything else about what was going on, you, you might think, oh, wow. Something's about to happen here, but it's, there's just, there's too many ingredients not available for us. Thankfully. The severe weather threat is not necessarily over in Fort Worth, but it is significantly, it, it is significantly less than what it was just an hour ago. Okay, so the tornado uh, watch, it continues until like 8 p.m. Central. Uh, I, I, I have to say continue to, you know, watch the weather until that is it allowed to expire. Uh, allowed to expire. But the, the big line here, probably one of the final lines, has moved through and the, the air is probably starting to cool down. When, that, when this line gets through um, uh, Dallas as well, the severe weather threat is going to go down. But for right now... Everybody is still uh, in a pretty primed zone uh, for severe weather east of that line. Thank you, NTH. Yeah, I'm watching that storm too. Somebody just said in chat the storm south of Kaufman. Um, we're all watching that one. Um, it looks to me like that one, if it can get any stronger, it might try to steal the show the the storm that's pr promoting the uh, tornado warning for Kaufman right now really doesn't look that impressive anymore. The, the area of rotation has let up. It's broad. It's still there. The hook is, is for the most part gone, but now a new storm, this storm sun is, is like, it's, it looks like it has a hook. It's starting to rotate. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with it. I'm also interested in this one south of Purden near Richland. Uh, both, well, there's quite a few storms down here uh, near Mexia that are rotating. And we've saw, we've seen a couple pictures of those and they look impressive. So we'll, we'll watch those uh, closely as we go forward as well. And I think now... I think now dinner has arrived. Am I right? Am I right? Is this, is this not a false alarm? Is this real? All right. All right, guys. <laughs> I want to take a break real quick, and I want to hand it over to meteorologist Andy Hill and co. So here we go. Take it away, Andy. Thanks, Ryan. All right, now I'm here for real, guys. Yes, I know it's Mahea. I got you guys. No worries. We 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 we've received the message. Thank you for the pronunciation uh, patrol. Pronunciation patrol. That's what I'm calling you guys. All right. Thank you, pronunciation patrol, Mahea. Yes, uh, we have some uh, better temperature surface temperatures down south. So cells developing along I-45 and the line from Corsicana. Probably got that one wrong too. Corsicana, Corsicana, you name it. Uh, down through Fairfield. We'll have to watch this area as it moves to the north and east into our risk area closer to Tyler, 
and uh, also in uh, Smith and Cherokee counties. So we're watching that area for the line of storms that is developing there. They're semi discreet, so they they'll have they'll have good they'll have good chances at uh, developing well. Um, I just want to say that it's pretty impressive. We've had this storm near Kaufman that we're looking at right now on the radar look so uh it, it looks so menacing for so long but we've escaped thus far without any real uh, negative impacts felt by uh, anyone here in terms of uh, tornadic potential uh and honestly it's the most impressive supercell i've seen in the past year that did not produce anything or has not yet but it is still tornado warned for uh, a lot of Kaufman County. So I do urge everyone to heed that warning as you would any other warning and uh, be in your tornado safe spots. Take us with you. If you're watching the stream, take us with you to your safe spot in the interior most room of your house or a basement or storm shelter, uh, bringing with you some something like a pillow or a, or a light mattress if you can to, if it gets bad out there, you know? Uh, so, um, Let's see. So those are, we still have the active tornado warning uh, to the west of Paris, Texas, as well in Fannin and Lamar counties. Uh, that one is also pretty far away from the radar. But again, anyone in Paris, you are in a tornado warning for most, most of the city town of Paris and Lamar County. Uh, and also Honey Grove along Highway 82, anywhere along there uh, to the east of Bonham. Uh, make sure that you guys uh, are hitting your. Uh, your safe spots okay so again we're watching cells all night i want to reiterate that this event is going to require more than one tornado watch okay we're not done after this tornado watch expires at 8 p.m central local time we're not going to be done because we're halfway through the moderate risk that you saw from the storm prediction center we're going to need another tornado watch uh for areas uh, of Brian, extreme northeast the texas blind. and to Local southwest fire department down here Arkansas at Coffin, and northwest of tornado Louisiana the as those areas experience uh, the right quick, but risk that would be just that west of this Coffin, day poses uh, in the evening two units have called that in now so i'm not quite sure if they're trying sorry or not, if i talk over the separation by the way i'm doing the best i can <laughs> uh for the storms that are in the dallas fort worth metro right now um, you guys are looking at, there's still some tornado, tornadic potential with these. Definitely keep an eye out. These will be more spin up tornadoes, so they'll be brief and quick more than anything. But uh, some powerful damaging window or damaging winds are possible with this. I see a 63 mile per hour wind gust uh, at the Dallas Fort Worth ASOS. All right, we did hear about a possible tornado on the ground uh, west of Kaufman. No, I cannot hear the storm chasers, guys. I hear it now. I see it. Thank you. So uh, the radar does not really look like there is a possible tornado west of Kaufman, but we can't see that far up. Okay. Thank you guys for uh, mentioning that. Yeah, the radar really does not look like there's a possible tornado. So we will heed the ground truth of the storm chasers on the scene. So again, like I said already, if you're in the Kaufman area, please make sure you're in your tornado safe spot. There you go. There's your there's your proof. There's your reason why to be in there because we have ground truth from our chasers there. That storm will be tracking north and east, uh, probably east of Terrell and uh, near the Elmo area along Highway 80 in Texas. All right. So Elmo, watch out. Uh, you're not in the tornado warning proper yet, but there is a per our storm chasers, uh, possibly a brief confirmed tornado west of Kaufman. Uh, with this supercell. Eventually, McCoy also will be under the gun here. So please, uh, please exercise well in advance. Get in your 20 to safe spot. No need to panic, of course. Just stay calm. Be prepared uh, for when the storm makes it to you. Bring us with you, of course. Hey, Andy, can I cut in? Go ahead, Riley. So I just heard from Chris Hall and Vin Twelty that there is a rain-wrapped tornado on the ground. You cannot see it. They've seen some debris, but you are completely unable to see this tornado. So everyone needs to be in their safe spots because you won't be able to see it coming. Yes. If you want to watch Zach's live, I know it's small, but it's right up here just to my uh, just to my right on the top of the screen. Zach Hall is there uh, as well as Brad Arnold. Both of them are in uh, the vis. I think, are both of them in the vicinity of the storm? I think they're behind. It's Where Vince is... and Chris that are in the vicinity. 
and Chris's feet's down, but Zach is the next closest. Where is Brad Arnold? Do you know? Uh, Brad Arnold is, he's pretty far to the north. Brett Adair okay. is also quite close, and so is Brandon. Okay, thank you, Riley. Yeah, sorry again, guys. I can't hear the chasers at all. I'm doing my best. Okay, um, this storm has not been upgraded to a radar confirmed tornado warning yet, but there is per ground truth from our storm chasers. Currently a tornado on the ground west of Kaufman heading north, northeast uh, towards post Oak Bend City, Oak Ridge. Uh, let me give you some locations, locales there if you guys are familiar with this area. Uh, that's the post Oak Bend store, the Witherspoon Ranch area. Um, uh, that area near post Oak Bend City. There's a there's a few streets there with some some buildings. So anyone in that area should be careful, exercise extreme caution in this tornado warning. Uh, no, I cannot show the velocity scan, but Ryan will be back very soon. Ryan is taking a dinner break right now, so do not worry. He'll be back very soon to cover this. Uh, more than likely, based on radar analysis, though, this tornado probably will lift pretty soon. It really does not look like, uh, per radar, it does not look like this will be a, a lasting tornado based on the current data that we have access to. So um, just go off the storm chaser truth. We will uh, hope that this thing lifts immediately. <laughs> and you can tell like the, the chasers are in a little bit of a, a difficult area for um, internet connection here. Uh, their, their feeds are going to go in and out, but we do have Chris on the scene where this possible rain wrap tornado is located um, to the west of Kaufman, Texas in Kaufman County. We still have the other tornado warning as well. Um, it is to the east, northeast of Honey Grove, Texas along Highway 82 near Petty, uh, right overhead Petty at the moment. If there is something happening on the ground there, uh, those people should be in their tornado safe spots. This will pass to the west of Paris, uh, possibly west of Toco and Brookston as well, along Highway 82, headed towards Sumner. So you guys are up there in Lamar County and the east of uh, Fannin County are still in a tornado warning. All right. Uh, we don't have any we don't have any damage reports yet, I believe, uh, from this, but those may be coming in soon if this indeed was a rain wrap tornado. Uh, chasers may be able to get ground truth pretty soon if it passed over this Highway 175 area. Uh, that's where I believe the tornado would be located to the a west of Kaufman, just past been Highway 175 and headed towards Oak Ridge and uh, probably overhead of post Oak Bend City right now. So that uh, new tornado warning is just for Navarro County, Texas. And that is actually for the cell that I mentioned earlier uh, near Corsicana. So Corsicana, Corsicana, that cell is headed to the south of the city proper near Angus along Highway 45, I-40, I sorry, I-45, south of Corsicana. That is a new tornado warning for Navarro County. Did get that one. I'm glad I uh, took a look at that uh, those cells earlier, right when I got on. So hopefully uh, you received that message in Navarro County. That's to the north of Mejia, everyone's favorite pronunciation. <laughs> so Corsicana proper is in the tornado warning. This also includes Corbet, Corbett, Oak Valley, Angus, Navarro, Mildred, Powell, and Rowan, Rowan in, Nav in Navarro County. It is uh, to the northeast of Dawson. If you're in Hubbard or Dawson, you're good. If you're in uh, Wortham, you've still got a cells to your south that may head up north to you, but west of, uh, west of Dawson at the moment is fine for now until possibly another round of storms heads in later. So guys, I wanna reiterate, this is probably a multi multiple or a multimodal storm day, okay? You may get some supercells headed your way in Northeast Texas first. Um, and then there's also going to be a line of storms after that quasi linear one. Uh, so the tornadic potential does not go down for these areas in the moderate and enhanced risk from the storm prediction center uh, as we head into the evening hours and even overnight hours. Our plan is to be here uh, until probably maybe even midnight Eastern. Okay, that it's possible that this risk will still be 
uh, relevant, uh, incredibly relevant, such that we should be covering it that late into the night tonight. So Eastern time zone or uh, 11 p.m. to midnight central time zone in this risk area. So Corsican, a new tor tornado warning for you guys. Um, the cell is beginning to ramp up. It is radar indicated. We do not have any confirmation of a tornado on the ground as it stands at the moment. Uh, but new given its trend, this tornado warning you guys has there been should be in your tornado safe spots. Into your most room of your house, basement, or storm shelter. Bring something soft to cover your head with if it gets bad, and bring us with you, okay? You probably know that by now in this area, but in case you don't, there's your reminder. Now that we have Ryan back, um, you got all that, right, Ryan? You were listening? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you so much, uh, Andy. We're going to come to the radar here. We just got uh, the update on the warning. Uh, confirmed a tornado warning for uh, Fannin and uh, Lamar County, I believe. And we've also got uh, Riley chiming in. Go ahead, Riley. All right. So we have Vince and Brandon on the tornado confirmed cell, and we also have Zach on the one to the south. And he said that, that storm's really picking up rotation and lightning. He's actually got the base of it on his feed right now. So oh, do you know outside of... Um... Uh, Vince and, and them seeing the rain wrap tornado. Do you know if there's anybody else that's confirmed a tornado out here? Is there any video or picture of it anywhere? Uh, there is no video or picture. It actually sounds like they're now saying that they didn't see it, but they've all heard it on radio feeds via the um, sheriff. But okay. they're seeing moving or wrapping rain curtains, but they haven't seen the tornado itself, so they're unable to confirm. Okay. All right. Thank you, Riley. Just getting up to speed here. Um, we do have a uh, a tornado, a confirmed tornado warning, though, for Fannin and Lamar counties. I, you guys need to take shelter uh, immediately. Um, I don't know where. I don't know where the like. Just looking at the radar, it doesn't look like there's a, a tornado here. But this is. Um, uh, apparently uh, confirmed so we we're going to uh take it seriously okay we're going to take it we're going to get into uh, a shelter uh, me personally looking at this I, i'm most concerned about this little dangly bit down here uh, south of kaufman so kaufman just received a big storm that just came through okay um think that it's over maybe but no we've got another one uh, a potentially new developing tornado uh down here near oak grove all right uh, so we got a confirmed tornado warning for uh, Fannin and Lamar counties. Um, and then Ellis and, and Kaufman's also under a tornado warning as well. Uh, please take shelter immediately. And um, uh, we are going to uh, kind of uh, continue to monitor. Okay, well, here we go. Look at this. Down here south of uh, Cors Cors Corsicana near Oak Valley and Corbet and Angus. This is the one that we should be looking at. Boy, I went to go eat a sandwich for five minutes. What in the world happened? How, <laughs> how has everything flipped uh, by the time I come back? Okay, all right, so this, this is our confirmation. Okay, this is not where our storm chasers are, by the way. Okay, down here near, near Oak Valley and Angus, this is where we have a, a tornado on the ground. My goodness. All right. So the National Weather Service um, has issued a, a tornado warning uh, for uh, Navarro County in north central Texas. Um, and we've got a tornado in quarter sized hail. Uh, that one looks more impressive to me than this one up here. But both of them, ignoring the tags, ignoring whether it's re reported, confirmed, or whatever. Uh, both of them are equally uh, concerning, okay? So we want everybody in Oak Valley, uh, Cor Corsicana, Mildred, Roan, Poal, we want you to uh, take shelter now. We also want everybody in Kaufman and Oak Ridge uh, to take shelter uh, as well. There's a tornado out here somewhere, okay? Uh, if, and if it's coming towards you, you're going to be want to be in your safe spot. Get into the most interior room of your home. You want to put as many walls between you and the outside world as possible. And uh, hopefully you can get to a basement or a storm cellar or something. Uh, but if you can't do that, a closet, a bathroom, something with no windows and, and uh, no, uh, hardly any glass. But um, uh, yeah, that's, uh, 
hopefully that's what we're dealing with there. Uh, and and like we we've got <laughs> all kinds of storm chasers on the the storm near Kaufman now, and there is no tornado on the ground right now. Okay, there is no tornado on the ground right now in Kaufman or near Kaufman. I want to make that clear. I know there was some confusion there, um, but there is no no tornado now. We do have that confirmed you know, warning. Maybe there was at one time, but I am looking at this storm from several angles, and you guys can too. Here you go. And there's no tornado there. We might see one soon, but um, there is not one right now. Go ahead, Andy. Uh, I wasn't going to say it, Ryan, but the, the confirmed tornado is the, the northernmost warning right, right near the border. Yeah, so that one, everyone wants to let you know that you're absolutely wrong. No way. <laughs> right. But I honestly, I mean, both of them are concerning. I am surprised that we, uh, I would be surprised if we don't see something pretty soon from the Corbet, Corbett into Corsicana, so. Right. Yeah, well, well, once again, first of all, thank you, Andy. And and once again, everybody, it doesn't matter. It, it literally doesn't matter. Neither of these storms, like, you should it's not like you should take one less seriously than the other okay um we've got a tornado warning for fannin and lamar and uh navarro uh, and, and kaufman and ellis counties everybody in those counties should be taking uh shelter because if we did have a tornado down a confirmed tornado in kaufman it's not there anymore all right a new one may be forming um and same thing down here for uh the the oak valley area so hopefully everybody's taking shelter and, and not paying too much attention to whether or not it's confirmed or radar confirmed or, or fire department confirmed, whatever it is. Um, and we're all treating these storms equally uh, and, and getting a shelter. Another severe thunderstorm warning uh, has been issued for Dallas. We've got that big storm getting ready to come through the downtown area. Uh, we still have a tornado warning up here uh, near Paris in, in northeastern Texas. All right, and uh, it still looks pretty impressive on radar, but the main threat there, I think, is, is it's going to be that potential tornado and then big hail and, and probably some strong winds as that moves up through the Red River area. We're going to stay zoomed in and focused on the storm near Oak Ridge and Kaufman. There's a lot of rotation here. Uh, there's two areas where there's rotation and a tornado could be forming. We might have had a brief tornado recently, here near uh, Kaufman that prompted the uh, the upgrade in the warning. But right now we're watching this new area of uh, rotation that could potentially produce a new tornado here. I, I would be surprised if they didn't issue a new warning that included Terrell, Elmo, and Wills Point within the next little bit. This, <laughs> this one looks way better, by the way. This one looks more concerning on radar, the one down here near uh, uh, Corsicana. It's broad rotation, okay? More, there's, there may not be a tornado down, uh, but that is certainly indicative of a big mesocyclone and uh, potentially a tornado getting ready to come down in that area. So hopefully everybody uh, from Purden to Oak Valley to Mildred to uh, Corinz and Rice uh, is uh, taking shelter now. Okay. And the, these storms are like if... If a tornado was 100%, right, all of these storms today have been 99. It's so crazy how close uh, we've come to seeing these uh, produce uh, big tornadoes, and, and they, they just they haven't. Thank goodness. I'm looking through Twitter. Trying to see if there's any other sort of uh, reports coming in. This is uh, Chris Hall. This is a video he just took not too long ago, uh, south of Kaufman. So that's the base of that storm there that we that we're looking at on radar. Not seeing a whole lot. I'm not seeing any sort of you know pictures or. Uh, or videos of a of a tornado here. But a lot of lowerings. 
A lot of scary looking clouds, a lot of SLCs showing up. Remember, these storms are just now moving into the most kind of like primed area for uh, potential uh, t tornadoes forming. Like the, the atmosphere is going to get more primed and, and more available to support tornadoes as th they go uh, farther to the north and to the east. We've also got more storms forming over here near Canton. We've got one that's popped up just south of Athens. These will be the ones that probably steal the show here over the next uh, hour or two. We'll keep watching them. Uh, and we, we have to just continue to watch very closely these storms that are already producing the rotation and uh, the problems right now. I, this one is, I mean, it's, it's probably producing a, a funnel cloud or something, but you can't see it. If you're in Mildred, uh, Corsicana, uh, or any of these uh, places, you're not going to be able to see this. Uh, it's rain wrapped. If there's a tornado in there, it is rain uh, wrapped in rain. Um, so definitely don't go out and try to look for it. Make sure you stay in your safe spot. Zach Hall is reporting significant flood, uh, road flooding in Kaufman. I'm trying to figure out where Brad... figure out where Brad Arnold is. I haven't gotten an update on his uh, location. I'm going to see, I'm going to see if I can't reach out to him. Hey Brad, um, we're looking at your feed, but it's been a while since we've got an update on your location. Where are you at? Okay. I see him now. <laughs> he just popped up. So he's pretty much where everybody else is. Hey Ryan. Hey, I'm, I'm pretty much in between uh, Terrell and uh, Will's Point on Highway 80, US Highway 80, um, waiting on this thing to kind of pass. I've got myself uh, set up to, be have, to have a northern route. There's nothing on the ground yet. I'm just, I'm just trying to see visually what it looks like. Um, gonna have to battle. There's a, uh, there's a lake. I don't know how to, to walk on I think is how you say that. Uh, and uh, there's a lake up there with only a couple of crossings. So I'm gonna try to get up there because I'm, I'm assuming that most storm chasers are gonna be on this storm and it's gonna, back up a little bit so i want to be one of the first ones on that so gonna probably head east a little bit to mills point uh, or wills point and then head northeast on that road all right sounds good thank you so much storm chaser brad arnold um who like all of our storm chasers once again are in and around the kaufman area they, they have kind of not necessarily followed each other but in a sense, they have. It, it, because really, there's only been one interesting storm so far today. Uh, which is surprising, but I think we're going to see more, probably a lot more, um, over the next few hours. A new tornado hours. warning has been issued. Uh, radar indicated tornado warning for Freestone, Limestone, and Navarro County in Texas. And that's a continuation of our storm. Uh, that produced maybe the brief uh, tornado near Kaufman. Uh, now that's going to uh, impact areas near uh, to the north and east. We've also got, my goodness. Yeah, go ahead, Andy. I, I just, I, I see it. Go ahead. <laughs> no problem, Ryan. The <laughs> new tornado warning is for north of Grosbeck, Grosbeck, and includes Mejia, your uh, the chat favorite. And I know every single person in chat's worried about Paris. Yes, guys, there was an observed tornado there. There is an observed tornado warning, including areas north and west of Paris, Texas, in Lamar County. We we are fully aware of that. Uh, I invite Ryan to go and look at the radar, which he should use Fort Worth. It doesn't really matter. We can't see anything there. Um, there, there. There's nothing else we can relay other than be in your tornado safe spots. There, there's nothing there. So if you are extremely concerned about this storm, like we are, of course, uh, we're relaying it regularly, but we need a weather radar there. We just need a weather radar. We, we can tell you to be in your safe spot. We can show you each radar update and give a very, you know, like 50 mile wide estimate of where this thing could possibly be doing damage if it is doing damage. There is no ground truth up there. We don't have storm chasers up there at the moment. 
Um, so again, you like you you need to be in your best interest exercising your you you should know what to do in a tornado warning up here, but we are here to tell you when it's happening. Uh, so Powderly, Hugo in Oklahoma, uh, Powderly, Texas, Grant and Sawyer, Oklahoma, and uh, Fort Towson and west of Swink and also Spencerville. You guys will eventually be under fire from the confirmed tornado warning in uh, Lamar County. We we have been watching it, but there is not much else we can say about that. Okay. So um, please be wary of that. And I would put your concerted efforts towards making sure we can get more weather radars. I feel just as strongly about it as you do. <laughs> I promise you that. Um, any, anyways, east of Corsicana, there's, uh, we, the rotation's still tight, but it isn't as impressive in the latest scans. But either way, you're still under a tornado warning there in Navarro County. Uh, if you're in Freestone County and near Fairfield, it, it, the storm will track very far to the west of you uh, as it stands. So Fairfield proper should not be concerned at the moment, but there are cells developing to the south uh, that may pose a threat down the line. Again, we're going to be here for many hours this evening into the nighttime hours uh, for this time zone in the risk area as these storms progress. All right. Thank you, uh, Andy. Um, this this is the newest polygon. This is the newest warning. The last one that just came through, it's down here uh, near uh, Mejia. Is that how you say it? Okay, I think I said it wrong the first time. Um, but down here, uh, that, that's the newest warning. So we've got uh, Forest Glade, Wortham, uh, and uh, Curvin uh, all under uh, a tornado warning with this storm. Go ahead, Andy. Uh, now, Ryan, impressively enough, actually, at 14,000 feet, we have reason to believe that a, um, a tornado just went through Sumner, Texas, to the northwest of Paris. Uh, okay. There is a, an observable CC drop at 14,000 feet, which you, you may realize is uh, indic indicative of a, a significant tornado, possibly. And which uh, so radar you can, are, you, are you on that's, Fort Worth? Yeah, that's Fort Worth. So just to the probably just through Sumner uh, there's probably some data uh, gaps there but uh, we do have reason to believe that there is a, a tornado debris signature now just north of Sumner west of Powderly and headed towards uh, the Red River near Arthur City uh, Texas should be um, definitely in their tornado safe spots right now you're in a confirmed tornado warning and we have reason to believe that there is a debris signature there uh, even though it's very far up. Okay. All right. Thank you, Andy. Uh, things are uh, unfolding here. Things are um, lots of uh, information coming in from all different uh, areas, but I think we're, we're getting it sorted out here. All right. We have the confirmed tornado warning for Lamar County up here as a dangerous storm uh, with um, more than likely a, a tornado on the ground right now near, near Sumner moving up towards Powderly and Arthur City. The reason I can't show you exactly where that is is because we don't have any storm chasers up here and you guys don't have a radar. We like th this is something that like obviously I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it because we've got to get these warnings out and get the information out. But this is something that everybody that lives up here should care deeply about. This is this is insane. People's lives are at stake and and like we can't y y y like it's like wh why do the people of Hugo and Powderly matter less to the government than people near Kaufman? Ask your local officials about that. Ask them. See what they say. Anyways, uh, it's, it's a mess up here. We can't see anything uh, on radar, but uh, we are getting reports in, uh, and, and it does look like there, there's, there may be a, a very highly elevated uh, correlation coefficient drop there near Pow Powderly, indicating that we have a tornado uh, getting ready to go through maybe areas near uh, Arthur City. So take shelter now, all right? I'm going to come back up to that one. We're going we're gonna to continue to watch that one and relay uh, warnings and information on it. Uh, but I want to mention our storm that went through Kaufman. That one does not have a tornado warning on it anymore. All right. So Elmo, Wills Point, McCoy, all these places that are getting ready to experience that storm, you're not under a tornado warning. It, this will probably eventually produce another one, though, as it approaches, gets closer to Emory and Sulphur Springs. To the south, Near Corsicana, Oak Valley, and Mildred, there is a tornado warning. There are a couple different areas of rotation. The most impressive one is to the west of Powell, near Roanne or Roan. 
uh, and it's moving off to the a northeast. A new tornado warning has been issued. All right, so we've got that confirmed tornado warning uh, popping up again there for Lamar County, Texas. Uh, and that is, uh, I believe that they've just extended that out uh, a little bit. Uh, uh, as soon as it pops up, we'll go inspect it. We'll go look at it. Um, but down here to the south, this is the, the tornado warning down here. And the newest one, the newest one that we have for Freestone Limestone counties, that includes Mejia, Wortham, uh, all the way up to towards um, uh, Streetman. Uh, this is a, a tornado warning. And this is the area of interest right here near Forest Glade doesn't look like there's a tornado down, but if there is one, it's going to go right through Mejia. So hopefully everybody in that town is taking shelter right now. All of our storm chasers are near Kaufman and they're spreading out. Looks like Brett Adair and Brad Arnold are going to try to follow that storm to the east that's going towards Emory. Uh, Chris Hall, Zach Hall, and, and pretty much everybody else is going to go to the south and try to meet up with these storms a new tornado that are going uh, towards Athens. And my lights are blinking, everything's freaking out because of the confirmed tornado that's now crossing uh, the border uh, between Texas and Oklahoma. So we, we had the weather service issue the warning for Texas, and then also uh, that's being carried into Oklahoma now. So confirmed tornado warning for Lamar County, Texas, and also uh, for uh, portions of Oklahoma, that's uh, Choctaw and Pushmahata, uh, or Push... Mataha counties in Oklahoma, uh, you are under that confirmed uh, tornado uh, warning as well. So please take shelter up here as it, it looks like a uh, probably a very dangerous tornado is on the ground right now. Um, we're, be, we're able to see what looks like debris in the air uh, 14,000 feet up. So this is, this is bad. This is um, something where if you know anybody up in this zone, you need to let them know what's happening here. They, they actually went ahead and issued this warning or allowed this warning to continue uh, deep into Oklahoma. Uh, let me see. Fort Smith. Yeah, we'll just look at it from this one. So as soon as that polygon pops up, we'll, we'll start talking about it. But this is the storm. We're going to see this tornado move up past Powderly uh, over the Arthur City area and then eventually towards Ord, Shoals, Grant, uh, Sawyer, now we're talking about Oklahoma, Sawyer, West, uh, Fort T Tosin, and Virgil. If any of those places sound familiar to you, you got to take shelter. Take shelter now. We have a confirmed tornado on the ground out here south of Hugo. There's your polygon. Look at that. Goes all the way up to Kareen, Pine Knot Crossing, and Burwell. This is the, the whole thing right here. Uh, confirmed tornado on the ground here causing damage. Uh, getting ready to cross the um, Red River. Now, thankfully, there's not a whole lot going on in this area other than Arthur City. So we've got, uh, what is this, the, the, the Pat Maisie Lake or the Pat Mays Lake. That's around where the tornado is right now. Uh, if, if what I'm looking at on radar is close to right, once again, it's hard for us to depict exactly where this is, but it, in the general area of that lake, the tornado, if it follows the path that it's been on, is going to go up towards Arthur City and uh, continue to pro cause problems uh, uh, near the um, Highway 271 area, right where the uh, Red River is, and then uh, near, let's see here, Grant. It's pretty much going to go to the east of 271, parallel that area all the way up towards Hugo. All right, so uh, make sure you're taking shelter if any of those areas sound familiar to you. It's not a huge residential area, but there are definitely some places that uh, are going to be uh, directly impacted by this here. All right, let me come back. Yeah, right there. This is the culprit. This is what makes us think that maybe um, we've got a big debris ball, a big damaging tornado down here. And if it's throwing up debris that far, it's got to be it's got to be nasty. Uh, and now it's going through the uh, Chicota Arthur City area next in line. Uh, we well, we've actually near Grant and, and it's hard to tell exactly where the tornado is, but if it goes through Grant, uh, the, the Choctaw Casino, all right, 
the 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 Harvest and Boxing and Fitness area, the Grant RV Park. All of these places are in the path of this thing. So hopefully we don't have anybody out there in the RV park. If we do, they've got to get to a more sturdy uh, shelter immediately. Uh, this is going to cross uh, Highway 271 somewhere right there near the Red Warrior Ballpark. All right, so make sure you are hunkered down and taking shelter. Oh, wow. Here's an incredibly interesting video from Ryan Sable. Uh, this is the Corsicana storm as it passed between Mart and Grosbeck, taken by my son who's chasing it. Look at that. That's an interesting uh, video there. Thanks for sending that in. Obviously, um, can't tell exactly exactly what we're looking at here but it certainly is concerning and that's that's the the storm that we were looking at on radar that uh, had the most impressive looking rotation so uh, thank you ryan for sending that in that's huge thank you hey ryan hey it's brian i've got the uh i should have good service out here i've got the uh, mesocyclone uh, the lowering on my uh on my on my stream if you want to take it okay so we're going to take um Oh, wow. Look at that. We're going to take Brad Arnold's stream and we're going to go look at where he is. He's still close to the storm that, um, that went through Kaufman. All right, so this one's no longer tornado warned. But it is. Uh, but it is still producing rotation, and it actually looks like it might be trying to ramp back up a little bit. A new tornado warning has been issued. And there issued. we go. <laughs> a new tornado warning was just issued for it. So that's for Hopkins, Hunt, Kaufman, Rains, and uh, Van Zant County in Texas. New tornado warning. Take shelter immediately. This is the storm that Brad Arnold is showing us, and, and we just got a good view of the, the lowering on it there. Uh, and it looks like this one's going to try again uh, to produce a tornado. So hopefully everybody for, uh, up towards Lone Oak and uh, Flats and Emory are taking shelter. And Brad Arnold's going to keep us updated on what's going on out there. That's the storm. Looks impressive again. These storms down here to the south continue to look impressive. Like there's so many areas of rotation. So many Christmas ornaments. You see all the red and green here. But just nothing really substantial. Nothing... Um, that's kind of holding weight, I guess, except for that uh, storm up north that we can't even see on radar. So that's good news. But these storms are still pretty much discreet, and uh, they're moving into that air mass, that uh, area of, uh, you know, better nader's use. And uh, things are only going to go downhill from here as they get closer to Athens and, and Fairfield and stuff. So make sure you guys are ready for that. We, we're still watching a potentially developing tornado go through Mejia right now. It's going to go up towards uh, Curvin and Streetman. Uh, then we have the one near Corsicana, two areas of rotation over here. Um, and our most, the one that we have the most eyes on, all of our storm chasers are giving us a view of this one that's uh, near McCoy and Flats. All right, but and, and there's no tornado down with it right now, but it looks like one may be developing. And then up here to the north, uh, way up here, at the border of Texas and Oklahoma in the most radar hole place on earth, um, there is a tornado on the ground and, and we can't tell you much about that other than it looks like it's throwing debris up uh, in the air pretty high based off of uh, correlation uh, coefficient. It's going through or near Arthur City right now. Next in line, we've got um, Ord, Grant, Hugo, Sawyer, West Fort T uh, Tosin, Virgil, High Hill, Spencerville, <coughs> North Sobel, Kareen, and Pine Knot Crossing, and all of these places are in Oklahoma. So take shelter now. The very uh, dangerous situation unfolding here. This is a view from Paris, Texas. Somebody's sending this, this in. You can see a little bit of a lowering there. Timothy, thank you for that. Remember, guys, don't take, uh, don't worry about taking pictures if you're under a warning. Get to say, get your safe spot. Uh, here's a look at the um, 
Uh, Dallas Tower Cam as that line of storms moves in. This will bring some gusty winds, some hail. Not really as concerned about tornadoes at, in Dallas at this point. Uh, Sturgill here. Sturgill says, uh, I'm in Hunt County, and I took a video of the clouds crashing into each other when it was forming. Look at that. Thank you for sending that in. Strong tornado. A strong tornado is more than likely on the ground here uh, on the border of uh, Texas and Oklahoma near Ord. And uh, it looks like a lot of that damage, a lot of the debris that we're seeing was probably picked up to the west of Powderly near a uh, cavernous. So I'm wondering if we're hearing anything. I wonder if there's any news coming out of that area. Um, if, if we have anything, um, uh, I'm sure we'll be alerted to it. But as of right now, I, I don't think we're hearing anything. see I'm seeing in chat I'm seeing in chat that all kinds of concerning reports but I'm not hearing anything is there any Andy have you are we hearing anything out of Lamar like have you like is anybody saying anything about what's going on over there? Um, yes. Uh, there. So, so, so far, we do have reports of a house flattened, uh, destroyed in uh, Lamar County. Um, also, filtering through here really quickly because yeah, there, this is all in Lamar County. There, there's definitely some damage being reported. A possible semi flipped people trapped in Lamar County. Um, and uh, from what I can tell there, this, uh, tornado debris signature is reliably up to about 27,000 feet, uh, in the atmosphere for, uh, via higher tilts. So this is uh, honestly incredibly impressive to me and very, very, very bad. I, I really hope that it has since lifted and is not impacting the community of Grant, Oklahoma right now. Uh, but if it hasn't, then Grant, or I'm sorry, Sawyer is next in line and also Fort Towson along this, along Highway 70 in this confirmed tornado warning headed into Choctaw County in uh, Oklahoma. So yeah, we do have damage reports. This is a very, uh, this is a significant event for sure. Uh, we have some research analysis that is backing it up uh, from our analyst team. So, um, so if you know anyone in Sawyer, it's Im imperative Fort Towson, Sawyer along Highway 70, it's imperative that you call them. You get this information to them if they don't know already. They need to be in their tornado tornado safe spots um, within like the minute. No panic, of course, just safely and uh, calmly. Don't forget anything and just get, get in there and prepare. Andy, are you talking with uh, Heidi and Sam? Are, are they working on getting information or, or is, am I coming to you like, I want to make sure that we um, that we get everything everything that you just told me. Any new information that we get like that, I, I want to make sure that we're getting that out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that. I, I mean, honestly, we were just kind of stunned from how far okay. away from the radar it is, but we're still able to confirm it. So, yeah, that that is all filtering in literally right now. So, okay. um, I imagine that you know, give uh, give Heidi another minute or so, and then we can compile some information. All right, sounds good. Guys, we've got uh, a lot of people uh, who are working on this in, in the background, compiling uh, uh, what we know about what just happened here near Paris, Texas, um, and, and whether or not it's still going on, which, by the way, we should assume that it is and, and be running, uh, not walking to our, our safe spots in Hugo, Sawyer, and uh, West Fort Tos Tosin, Virgil, all the way up to High Hill, uh, because it does look like a significant uh, tornado um, just went through an area near Paris, Texas, if not through Paris, um, uh, especially near the town of uh, Cavernous and Powderly, uh, from what I can tell. Um, so let, I'm, I'm looking for more information on that. We're, we're trying our best to, 
to find everything that we can. And remember, it's it's hard for us to tell the story here because there's a radar hole. Like there, we can't tell you exactly what's going on there. Uh, and then also, if the town, if a if an area was just hit by a tornado. It, it, it'll take a while before we start seeing pictures and videos and reports because that's not the first thing people think of. Uh, so, um, yeah, we've got, we do hear, we are hearing of uh, damage. We just don't know the extent of it just yet. Uh, let's see. The radio feed is on in Lamar. A responder with two uh, severe uh, critical PT with him. Uh, Brandy is hearing some bad reports in Lamar. Okay, guys, if if you can just kind of compile uh, something to dump uh, here, let me know whenever that's ready, and I'll hand it over to to Heidi. Uh, uh, but for now, I'm going to go back into like radar mode and, and making sure that we're letting the people downstream know what's coming, just in case this is still on the ground. Sawyer, get to shelter. A potentially deadly tornado. Hey, is Ryan, right for Brad. Um, I'm headed up. I'm almost to Emory right now in Texas um, on this storm, on this tornado storm, storm. Looks like we may have a donut hole in region. Okay, and our storm chasers like are still uh, um, dealing with uh, new tornadoes and other storms down in Texas. And we're going to go back and forth between those. And our, our people are, are working on what's going on in Tex in uh, uh, Paris. And as soon as we know something, we will go to them. We could have a tornado on the ground. Or, uh, the uh, velocity scan on the last update almost all but confirms that. Hold on. What did he just say? Hey, Ryan, looks like we may have a donut hole in reflectivity, uh, meaning that we could have a tornado on the ground. Ref or, uh, the uh, velocity scan on the last update almost all but confirms that. Okay, so Brad Arnold, the voice you're hearing is Storm Chaser Brad Arnold, who is on this storm that's tornado warned for Point, Lone Oak, uh, areas near Emory and McCoy. Uh, he's saying that this, this one looks pretty mean uh, from his point of view, and we could have a tornado developing here as well. So hopefully everybody's getting into their safe spot near Lone Oak in Texas. His feed is down, so I can't show you what he's seeing. Um, and then a new tornado warning has we been got issued. a tornado warning for LaFleur and... Uh, Sequoia County in Oklahoma. Uh, and then we still have multiple tornado warnings down into Texas as well. A new tornado warning has been issued. New tornado warning for Freestone, Limestone, and Navarro uh, counties in Texas as well. That was that one just popped up there. That's uh, the extension of that one. Uh, this includes Streetman, Richland, uh, and Eureka. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, we, we have the storm down here near Koss and Thornton. That's not tornado warned yet, but probably will be soon. All of these storms in this line, this broken line, are producing tornadoes or about to produce a tornado. So everybody needs to get ready. It's, it's, it's tornado time. This is what we were concerned would happen, uh, and it's happening for uh, places like Fairfield, Athens, Canton, um, Sulphur Springs, Cooper, and, uh, of course, now in Oklahoma. In fact, that latest warning in Oklahoma is way up here near Fort Smith, Arkansas. Um, let's switch to the Fort Smith uh, radar real quick, and let's show you that. There you go. A big rotational area near uh, Tucker and Cowlington in Oklahoma. That's uh, producing a tornado warning uh, almost up to Fort Smith. Almost includes the town of Fort Smith, uh, but uh, outside of that, it includes uh, Brent, Gans, Muldrow, Rolland, and Remy in Oklahoma. Take shelter now. That's a dangerous storm. You can see it that's probably got a tornado in it right now, and it's, and it's probably going to get stronger as it comes up towards Roland. And this is also going towards Fort Smith. If it lasts that long, uh, we have to be concerned about that. Man, um, we got seven warnings now. Uh, the confirmed warnings are down in Lamar, Choctaw, and Pushmataha counties in Oklahoma and Texas. So um, uh, meteorologist Andy Hill is wanting to chime in. Let's, let's go ahead and hear from him. Hey, Ryan, I shared a picture of the uh, the tornado that's currently on the ground or it has been on the ground doing considerable damage. 
um, in those counties in Oklahoma. Uh, it, it, in earlier in its life, you can see the image there in stream text uh, near Paris. When it was near Paris, it looked like that. So um, that is that's something that definitely developed, probably widened and became more of a wedge tornado. If I had to guess. Also, I did. I was about to mention the Fort Smith um, near Fort Smith, Arkansas. It's a it's a port. It's approaching Fort Smith. It will likely go to the north of the of the metro. There, our analysts were actually on it five minutes ago, and I I've been doing so much that I almost had time to compile and tell you guys about it. But uh, the National Weather Service again, beautiful at their jobs. Thank you guys so much for helping us out with this too. We wouldn't be able to do it without the National Weather Service. So. Again, all the all the tornado warnings right now are proving to be exceedingly dangerous. Uh, in addition to what we're looking at there, the ones near West Tawakoni and East Tawakoni there um, to the northeast of Terrell, uh, where Storm Chaser Brad Arnold is, that one is an increasingly concerning now as it establishes a single updraft and is able to uh, wrap around and possibly produce a tornado uh, soon here. So we're also watching that uh, warning very, very closely. Okay. Thank you, Andy. Uh, if you're just now tuning in, this is what the tornado looked like near Paris uh, earlier. Um, now, like Andy said, we're super thankful for the uh, National Weather Service. Uh, there, there was a warning, obviously. Um, everything was done right by everybody. But if, if anybody didn't get the warning up in this area, if, if there was any sort of lack of communication that led to people not being fully aware of what was going on up there, it is nobody's fault other than whoever is responsible for there not being a radar up here. I just want to make sure that that is known. Like It's unbelievable to me that we likely just had a significant tornado go through a populated area, and these people didn't have a daggone radar. And they live in America. Like, it's dumb. Dumb. Anyways, um, we're going to go through these top to bottom, all right? I'm going to cover all these tornado warnings uh, from top to bottom. Andy, interrupt me if there's any major developments with any of them that I'm not currently talking about. Starting okay, up here interrupting you, Ryan. with the one. <laughs> I'm uh, interrupting you to look at this video and stream text really fast. Okay. All right, let me pull it up. What is, what is this from? Gotcha. Okay. All right, so here is a video. This is on Facebook from Colton Sanders of uh, the, the, the tornado as it crossed by a cavernous on the south side of 1499. Wow, that's a big one. Oh, oh my God. That's, that's not just a big one, that is a, that's a monster. That didn't hit. Oh. Like, I, I don't know what it hit. But all you can do is hope that it didn't hit something where there was a lot of stuff to destroy. Because it's gone now, if it did. Uh, anyways, I'm going to go through these warnings. Obviously, we've got a big tornado that just that, that definitely happened up here uh, near the border of Oklahoma and Texas. We're, gonna, we're hopefully compiling news on that right now. We're going to come through and tell you all about that. But we have multiple tornado warnings, all right? And, and I'm going to go through them here. We've got one going towards Fort Smith. Uh, this is up here in eastern Oklahoma. We've got a tornado warning for Gans, Muldrow, Rowland, and Remy. Um, it takes shelter now, okay? These things, uh, especially up here in Oklahoma, we've seen what they're capable of. Uh, it, this could ramp up and produce a big tornado uh, near Fort Smith, or if it's not right now, it might in the next couple of minutes. So it takes shelter immediately. This storm, the one that prompted the warning uh, and, and the put down the big tornado near Paris, Texas, is still tornado warned, and it's still showing a, a pretty you know solid area of rotation as it moves uh, near Spencerville and Fort Towson. Okay, 
Uh, this is a, a, a very dangerous storm. This is the, the tornado that you just saw. We can't show you much about it on the radar, but we can tell you that it's in this general area if it's still down and it's moving up towards Spencerville uh, through Fort Towson now. We're in, we're, we're going to keep an eye on that one uh, as we get uh, closer, as it gets closer to the radar site. Let's go to uh, Radar Omega. Let's come back to our storms uh, in Texas, right? Uh, all of our storm chasers <laughs> pretty much are on this storm that went through Kaufman earlier. Now it's going through County Line and Point. And I, I don't know, I don't think it's producing a tornado right now, but it's certainly, uh, it's got a lot of rotation. It, it's looking very interesting again. And it's um, about to, it could be about to produce another tornado near County Line, Cumby, and Shirley. So, of course, we'll hear that from our storm chasers uh, if we... Um, uh, if they see anything. Okay. And of course, you guys can keep up with the storm chasers in the app as well. If you have the radar Omega app, and if you don't, there's a link in the description, click on Brett Adair's picture there and you can see his feet. All right. You can see like, here's Br uh, Brandon Kopic. You can see where he is relative to the storm. You can click on it. Just oh, again, there you go. It um, super awesome thing that you can only do in this app. So uh, if you want that, go check it out. Now down to the South, uh, we've got that storm that went through Mahia, still tornado warned, um, and the rotation, uh, the rotational area is getting ready to cross Interstate 45 between Richland and Fairfield. If we want everybody off the road there. We want everybody to be aware up towards Winkler, Eureka, and uh, Rural Shade that we have a potential tornado on the way. That's actually, that's pretty intense uh, rotation. So there might be one developing a right there. A new tornado warning has been issued. And um, we have another storm down here near Koss and, and Thornton that's not tornado warned, but might be here soon as it continues to uh, ramp up. We have another new tornado warning in Oklahoma. Uh, where is that one? Second, I want to find it. Okay, so it's another extension of the warning that um, is coming from that storm that produced the Paris tornado. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Okay, Riley's going to go first. Okay. Okay, so Brad Arnold is approaching the area of circulation on the storm he's on. He said he's fairly confident that there is a tornado on the ground. Okay. Yeah, that storm, Ryan, is the one near point to the northwest of Emory where Brad and Brett are. And Spotter Network does confirm at the moment that there is a, a tornado on the ground that was near East Tawakoni. Tawakoni. That one's hard. So uh, just around point, we did observe a bounded weak echo region there on radar. So uh, definitely a very dangerous storm that's going to move uh, up actually towards Sulphur Springs. So Sulphur Springs, not currently in a tornado warning proper, but Hopkins County is parts of Hop Hopkins County. I would recommend everyone in Sulphur Springs. I know I saw some of you guys in the chat uh, to get in their tornado safe spot right now. Bring us with you. Be uh, calm and prepared. And also, if you know someone there, then be sure to tell them now. Uh, we have reason to believe that this is an extremely dangerous storm that we'll be tracking very close to uh, this area in Sulphur Springs and Hopkins County. So I want to give you guys an, an updated or an enhanced look out there just in case. Um, and then also, I want you, Ryan, to look at Streetman. That's the southernmost tornado warning that's active right now. Uh, again, I think you went over that, but I just wanted to reiterate that the rotation is uh, quite tight. We've got a couple of going on there. Um, and I, I hope that's enough. And I believe that uh, actually we've got Heidi coming up next soon here. So she'll change the lights for you. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. Streetman. Yeah, th this one definitely looks like it's uh, ramping up. Take shelter now if you haven't already in Streetman and Eureka. And the lights are orange. Okay. So that means we have breaking news uh, of some kind. So let's go ahead and talk A to new tornado warning um, has been uh, issued. Heidi, uh, meteorologist Heidi uh, Oberlin. Uh, go ahead and let us know what you've found out. Hey, Ryan. I don't have much to add on what Andy said a little earlier. We haven't really had any major damage reports um, New in the information. last 15 minutes this or so, tornado but warning coming out of Lamar upgraded. County, just to kind of reiterate everything, there have been multiple structures damaged, multiple injuries, cars damaged, down trees, down power lines, 
and there are some reports of people being trapped as well. Um, and then all reports are from pa uh, Paris, Powderly, and Subner communities right now. And I believe Andy might have said this earlier, so I'm just going to reiterate it again. Uh, uh, there was a first responders home that was destroyed. Um, and then there's also just lots of multiple injuries coming in. So as soon as we get some more, I will alert you and let you know. Okay. Thank you very much, Heidi, uh, for the information. Also, Riley, go ahead. Uh, Brad Arnold has a tornado. Okay. All right. Um, so that's the one that just went confirmed, right? Like that's their storm. Yep. Okay. Brandon, Brett, and Brad are all in the area. Um, Brad's feed's a little choppy right now, but he did see the tornado and it is on his stream now. Okay. All right. So guys, we have another tornado down on the ground right now, um, uh, north of Emory. All right. It's Brad Arnold is, is very close to it, but his feed is a little choppy. Obviously the cell service and is, is a little bit not reliable in, in this exact area, but we do have a tornado on the ground here, uh, north of point, uh, moving up towards a uh, brochure and sulfur Springs, Texas. All right, we want you to uh, take shelter and make sure you're getting ready uh, for maybe uh, another powerful tornado here in, in Texas. And this one's going to be down towards Brashear and Sulf Sulphur Springs. We do have a view from Brett Adair. Let me show you this. This is where Brad Arnold is. This is where the tornado is. This is where Brett Adair is. All right. Okay, here we go. We've got, uh, we've got Brad's feed now. I don't see the tornado. Um, Brad, are you able to see a, a tornado still, or um, we just got your feedback, so uh, let us know what's going on whenever you get a chance. Uh, and I'm also going to talk to Brett Adair, if, if I can get a hold of him. Service is terrible. Oh, boy. I was able to see it momentarily. It's lifted again. I'm trying to get in better position now. Okay, so Brad was able to see it momentarily. It's lifted again, but it's probably going to come back down uh, very shortly uh, here in um, uh, southwest of Sulphur Springs. Sulphur Springs is a big area. It, it, there's a lot of people up here. So hopefully, if we've got anybody watching in Sulphur Springs, we're all getting in our safe spots. If we've got anybody that knows anybody that lives in Sulphur Springs, we are letting them know. We're calling them. We're texting them. Hey, this is the real one. This is the real deal. Let's take our um, safety precautions now. Um, this is not one to ignore all kinds of video is coming in of the storm that went through. Ryan, I can't, I can't get these, these trees are pissing me off. It's about to cr cross the road right in front oh, of me. Okay, here we go. I see it. So there you go. That's the, that's the rotating part of the storm there. Um, right in front of Brad Arnold. Uh, this is the, this is the storm that's coming towards uh, sulfur Springs and you can see the rapid uh, motion right in front of them there. Look at that. A tornado is forming right now in front of us here, uh, move just to the north and east of Point, uh, moving up towards uh, Sulphur Springs, Texas. Please take shelter immediately. That looks like it's going to be a big one. If that continues, that's, and, and that comes down all the way, that's going to be a big one, uh, moving up towards Brashear and Sulphur Springs. And unfortunately, we lost his feed there uh, temporarily. Um, it's coming back. I'm going to put up the mul Nope. Okay, here we go. I'm going to come back to him. Wow, he is underneath it. He's literally right under it. So there you go. Uh, this is coming up towards Brashear and Sulphur Springs. You're going to want to take shelter um, as soon as you possibly can if you haven't already. All right, this is then going to go uh, towards Divide, Shirley, Rockdale. Uh, it's going to cross Interstate 30 there uh, near Sulphur Springs before coming into Sulphur Springs. I don't know if it's going to be on the ground by the time it gets to Sulphur Springs. I don't know if this is going to let up or what, but as you can see, something is going on there, uh, and you might as well get into your safe spot uh, right now, okay? Uh, so there you go. Um, that's that storm. We are also continuing to uh, be concerned about the area to the north in Oklahoma. Pickens, Bethel, Sherwood, uh, Mount Hermon. Uh, Smithville, Beachton, all these places. That's the big t storm that produced the giant tornado in uh, near Paris. Uh, that's coming towards you now in those areas. So please take shelter uh, immediately. Additionally, Fort Smith, the storm that was producing the uh, 
Tornado near Fort Smith. Looks like it's let up a little bit, but we still have a tornado warning for Rolland, Remy, and Liberty. The What you see on your screen, though, is um, uh, Storm Chaser Brad Arnold's live view of uh, a developing tornado near Miller Grove in Greenview. His exact location is near County Line. So if you live down here, you know where County Line is. Okay, you know where Miller Grove is. Somewhere in between that is where this tornado is trying to come down right now. It's going to move up to the north and east towards Greenview. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Now we've got contact with the ground. You see it? Yeah, and, and just look at how big the overall circulation is. So if this fully realizes itself, it, this, that's going to be a big one. And, and I can't uh, express enough how directly in the path Sulphur Springs, Texas is here. Yeah, there was a little bit of debris you could see on the ground there uh, near Miller Grove. So, um, okay, that's coming towards um, uh, Sulphur Springs, Texas. Get to shelter now. I have a lot of really heartbreaking video uh, from Lamar County, uh, Texas, that I, I do want to share with you guys because I know we got a lot of people watching from a lot of different places. But I want to make sure we effectively communicate the danger here for Sulphur Springs before we get into that. I know we've got people worried about their families. Ryan, did you see that across right in front of me? Yeah, I see it. We, we all saw it there. Touchdown. Uh, and it's, that, that's going to be a big one if it continues. Stay safe. We've got you pulled up full screen. Um, Anyway, I know we got a lot of people worried about uh, the storm to the north and all the damage that's uh, happening up there in uh, northern Texas. We are going to northeast Texas. We are going to get to that. But I want to make sure we stay here with this one. All the tornado warnings that we have right now look like this. We have a confirmed tornado warning for Hopkins, Hunt, and Rains counties in Texas. Do you get to shelter now. We have a confirmed a tornado, tornado warning, warning for has been issued. Uh, Choctaw and Pushmataha counties in Oklahoma. Confirmed for, uh, once again, Hunt County in Texas. And then we have radar-indicated tornado warnings for McCurtain County, Oklahoma, Freestone and Navarro County, Texas, and most recently, Sequoia County, Oklahoma. So lots of, there's lots of warnings right now. There's lots of things happening, uh, lots of developments. Uh, but that's, what's, that's what we're dealing with here, okay? So a tornado briefly making contact intermittently with the ground in front of Brad Arnold, that's moving towards Sulphur Springs. Take shelter. This is why just moments ago in Choctaw, uh, oh, I'm sorry, in, in Lamar County, Texas, we had a big tornado come through. We had a very big tornado come through. And you can see here uh, some of the damage uh, that's come from that. Look at that. So this is from Seth. Thank you, Seth, for sending this in. Uh, looks like some pretty significant damage to those homes over there, from what I can tell. Trees uprooted. Oh, that ho wow. Uh, that's a, that house is completely destroyed. Um, here's another video of that tornado. Holy smokes. Gee. Yeah, that's a violent one. Insane motion. And then um, here's a, a photo of it. This is the, the tornado, once again, that happened up there near Paris, Texas. You can see that this was a big wedge at this point. All right. A new tornado warning. We've got a new tornado issued. warning for Freestone and Limestone counties in Texas. Uh, lots of news coming in, lots of different uh, things uh, we're trying to focus on. But the, the main thing is, is if you see your county name come up on that screen or scroll through the ticker down below, you got to be taking shelter. You got to. All right. I've got more videos. I, I, we, we have to. It's important that we show this stuff. Because... Um, it makes people take it more seriously. If there's another tornado getting ready to go through Sulphur Springs, what's going to make people take shelter is not blobs, red and, and green on, on the radar. 
it's showing them what what these storms are capable of. And the damage reports coming out of Lamar County are just terrible. Look at this. Reports of damage are coming in into our newsroom. This is a CBS DFW from Lamar County. Fences were torn apart and some homes have sustained uh, significant damage. So now uh, we're kind of focused on this storm that's approaching Sulphur Springs. Sulphur Springs, once again, pretty large area, pretty populated area. A, to a tornado was on the ground just moments ago with a storm that's getting ready to go right through Sulphur Springs. If you're in Sulphur Springs, it's raining, it's hailing right now. It's a pretty intense storm. That's getting ready to stop. Okay, that's getting ready to stop. And what's going to happen is the sun might even come out, but you're, you're going to be in this clear slot here before the actually dangerous part of the storm comes through. Okay. And, and it looks like there's still a tornado down. I just got a Brad's feet is so choppy. It's hard to tell uh, exactly what I saw there, but I'm pretty sure I, there's still a tornado on the ground uh, with this storm and it's getting dangerously close to um, Sulphur Springs. Brad, I don't know if you can hear me. Is that still down? Is that in front of you down? He's like going through the... Yes, it's a cone. Okay, all right, yeah. So this is a cone tornado on the ground right now moving towards Sulphur Springs. This is dangerously close to some very populated areas. I don't have the ability to fast forward or rewind on this. I wish I could because it's not just, it's a big one. It's not just a tiny little scuff on the ground uh, anymore. This is actually a bit uh, a pretty concerning looking tornado uh, moving straight towards the Sulphur Springs area. Um, okay. Uh, velocity couplet on this uh, tells me that the tornado is right in here south of Brashear. It's going to continue to come up towards Rockdale and Sulphur Springs over the next little bit. And anybody who's not in their safe spot right now in the path of this thing is putting their life in danger, in extreme danger. And unfortunately, I, I don't have a better uh, feed for you here, uh, but like we, as soon as he gets off this dirt road, I, I believe that we're going to see this, um, this tornado as it moves into Sulphur Springs. New information, this tornado warning right, here we has go. been upgraded. We have a PDS tornado warning now. National Weather Service has issued a PDS tornado warning for uh, Hopkins County, Texas. A PDS tornado warning means that this is a particularly dangerous situation. Uh, it's one of the highest level warnings um, that they issue, and they only do that uh, whenever we believe that... Um, uh, a, a, an area is about to be impacted by a, a, a bad tornado. So Hopkins County, get to shelter now. Riley, go ahead. Um, if you look at Brett Adair's stream, there is a ton of traffic on the road in Sulphur Springs. So uh, Brett Adair is in or near Sulphur Springs, and it looks like there's a lot of traffic. Um, go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan, we have reason to believe that there's a, a pretty broad, so large uh, tornado debris signature in that particularly dangerous situation warning. And uh, per the radar trend, if you play the loop, uh, there's also a pretty good reason to believe that some area of the city town of Sulphur Springs is going to be impacted by this shortly. So again, please contact people. If you know them there, tell them to get to their safe spots immediately. Um, that this definitely is a, a walk click a walk quickly moment. Brett Adair is right in the path of this, so we're about to get some and we're about to get something awe uh, inspiring from um, uh, Brett as this thing passes through because definitely of a viable tornado debris signature um, over nine thousand feet above the surface. So this is not insignificant at all. Okay, um, Frank or, or Andy, if you can talk to Frank, if 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 we can put Brett Adair's feed or brad's either one actually don't touch him don't touch him let me pull this brett up here has, it is. Uh, um, we've got a live look at the tornado right now through brad arnold's feed you can see it there um it's still making contact with the ground it's still large it's still uh dangerous and it's moving Guys, can you see it yeah uh, moving right towards sulfur springs 
Uh, okay, now if somebody can move uh, Brad or Brett's, either one, Brad or Brett, if we can move their feet into the number one position so it's above my head whenever we go to radar, um, that'll be very helpful. Okay, um, so Sulphur Springs, the whole town, you need to be in your safe spot. There is a tornado on the ground. It's coming right for you. There's a PDS tornado warning. Um, this is a, one of the most dangerous situations you'll ever find yourself in in November in Texas. All right. A uh, new PDS, PDS tornado, tornado warning, warning for Hopkins County. Um, we, it, it does look like uh, this thing is uh, sending up debris. Uh, and uh, possibly pretty far into the air. So if this does move through at least some part of the, the Sulphur Springs area, it will continue to do damage there, potentially significant damage. Let me zoom in to the uh, uh, kind of like at a mesoscale level here. Let me tell you what I think's happening here and kind of give you a, an update on where exactly I think this tornado is and where it's going to go as we wait for uh, one of our chasers to get a, a little bit of a better view of it here. Right now, tornadoes on the ground near Brashear, just to the south. Okay, this is going to cross over uh, Interstate 30. This will actually go over Interstate 30 if it's still on the ground, um, and then go through the western side of Sulphur Springs. We're talking about Clayton Homes, VSS Transportation Group, Atlas Survival Shelters, um, AG Concrete. Uh, the uh, Jill Bennett PhD pharmacy, I think, uh, right there near Texas uh, 313. The, and this is going to parallel that uh, commercial zone near uh, Exxon, the, the Exxon right next to the grocery supply company, and uh, Lake Coleman. So if any of those places sound familiar to you, if you know what I'm talking about, that's where I think the tornado is getting ready to go through. If you can drive to Encore Electric Delivery, or um, the Southwest Dairy Museum in Texas in 15 minutes, you are dangerously close to a big tornado. And my goodness, we can start to see the, uh, the, the storm in all of its glory here through um, Brett Adair's uh, live feed. He is in Sulphur Springs right now. So if we have anybody in Sulphur Springs who is, you know, kind of waiting on this storm to come and maybe you're tempted to go outside and look, don't worry, we've got you covered. Stay inside, get in your safe spot. We've got a video of it here. This is the storm as it approaches Sulphur Springs. And um, this is what's prompted that PDS tornado warning. All right. Uh, we want everybody in the town to take shelter, brace for impact. It does look like a strong tornado may come through here soon. Uh, it looks like Brad Arnold has actually come across some debris. Yeah, Brad Arnold is driving to the south of Brashear where the tornado likely crossed the road not too long ago, or at least a strong part of the storm. And um, you can see debris all over the road. Brad, we've had your feet up. We've seen it multiple times. I'm, I'm just wondering if, if you still see it and uh, if you think that debris you just went through there uh, was associated with the tornado or maybe just the core of the storm. So once again, the western side of Sulphur Springs specifically uh, is what we need to be watch, um, looking out for. Uh, but the whole county... Hey, um, I don't see it anymore. Um, I think it may have lifted. It doesn't mean that it can't produce again. I will say there is, there is damage to a house. I stopped to take a look to make sure everything everybody was accounted for. It didn't look like anybody was home, but the house, it, the roof was gone, uh, and the walls had collapsed around the side of it. So it's, it was a significant tornado, it looks like. Also, I just, I just uh, tweeted you a picture if you want to put that on there. All right, thank you. Um, let's talk to Brett. Brett, I see you're in line to uh, see, see the storm as it comes over the, the buildings there. I don't know if you've talked to Brad any, but he saw this thing. It was on the ground for a good period of time. Looks like it might have just recently lifted, but it could definitely come back down right as it comes up on you there. Just, I just want to let you know we're looking at you. We're watching, and just keep us updated if you see anything. Uh, good deal, Ryan. I'm actually watching this pretty carefully. I've got the drone in the air. I don't see a tornado at the moment, but... Uh, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm watching this thing from the air right now. It's really rotating pretty rapidly. Okay. All right, I'm looking for uh, the picture that Brad sent me. But I'm not seeing it. I am seeing a lot of other pictures, though. Uh, this, is this, this is the storm. This is the tornado here moments ago. This is what could be coming for um, uh, the Sulphur Springs area. We want everybody to take shelter now. It looks like it might have lifted, at least briefly. Um, but it could come back down at any moment, okay? Uh, here's another view of that. This is, this is more... This is more like what I saw through Brad's feed. This is exactly what we were seeing there. Uh, a particularly dangerous situation is unfolding in the town of Sulphur Springs. A, a, a tornado-worn storm uh, and a storm that was just producing a, a dangerous tornado just moments ago um, is getting ready to move through the western side of Sulphur Springs. Take shelter now. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan. Um, I, I have reason to believe through Brett's footage and also um, uh, he sent out, he sent up a drone so that we could see the, the wall cloud and whether something was on the ground or not. I have reason to believe it's not currently on the ground. We were crossing fingers that it spares any part of Sulphur Springs or the vicinity. Um, and also, I wanted to relay that now northeast of Streetman, where south the cell to the southwest of Chris and Zach, they're both getting in a position to intercept this. It's looking quite um, quite consistent, and also probably um, it might produce pretty soon, from what I can tell. Okay. All right. Thank you, Andy. Um, let's come over here to the web, and let me show you the picture that Brad took. This is it. This is what we saw on stream. This is the, the tornado that was moving towards Sulphur Springs. Thankfully, it looks like it more than likely has lifted. A new tornado right warning the last has minute been here. issued. So hopefully the town of Sulphur Springs and the western side there is spared from this storm. But we want everybody to stay in their um, safe spot right now. And this could produce again. This could come back down uh, as it gets closer to Sulphur Bluff and Tira. This is a big tornado warning. We want everybody to continue to take it seriously. And here we go. This is this is live video right now of the Sulphur Springs area. That's the base of the storm. And there is no tornado attached to it, thankfully. All right. But don't come out. Don't come out of your safe spot yet. Let us, let us we'll guide you through this. And um, once it's over, we'll let you know. Okay, so let's come back to the radar and let's take a look at uh, some of these other storms. Uh, the one that, um, wow, yeah, the one that Chris and Zach have lined themselves up for down here near uh, Crossroads in Athens. Uh, it does look like it's trying to ramp up and, and produce a tornado here if it hasn't already. A new tornado warning was just issued there that uh, includes Log Cabin, Athens, Eustis, and um, Murchison. So, we want you to uh, take shelter uh, now in Athens, another pretty large uh, population area that could be directly impacted by a tornadic storm. You can see the rotation here. There it is, moving right towards Chris and Zach Hall, uh, who will be able to give us a video feed of this if it does produce a tornado. We got another uh, tornado warning up here, moving into uh, Canton. Could be a tornado down with that one as well. And look at this, guys, more storms. More storms are forming. We've got a little cell popping up north of Tyler. We've got this one down near um, uh, Crockett, north of uh, or west of Jacksonville, Texas. These will do the same thing that these have done and likely produce new tornadoes near Mount Pleasant, Pittsburgh, Gilmer, and uh, Jacksonville. So get ready for that. Uh, our storm that just produced a uh, tornado to the south and west of Sulphur Springs is still showing signs of rotation. And it's still looking pretty concerning, uh, but we do believe, thankfully, that it's lifted for at least the time being. Uh, but we, we want you to stay in your safe spot in uh, Sulphur Bluff, of course. We have one tornado warning left in Oklahoma. That's going to be for Pickens and Smithville. All right. So hopefully if you are in uh, McCurtain County in Oklahoma, you're taking shelter. 
And that's that's it. That's all six warnings that we have. Most of them now are focused down here in uh, Texas. And we've got storm chasers on these two storms. We've got Brett Adair and Brad Arnold up here uh, on the Sulphur Springs storm. And we have everybody else on the Athens storm. So the, the lights are orange. So that means we have some news. Uh, go ahead, Heidi. Hey, Ryan. I'm just uh, getting some news out of Hopkins County in Texas. A new a barn tornado was warning by lightning has been issued. And is actively burning right now. And at least uh, a report of one resident is completely destroyed. And we also have reports that people are trapped in a vehicle. And as soon as I find out more, I will let you know. All righty. Thank you very much, guys. It's uh, meteorologist Heidi Oberlin who's helping out with the uh, research team and uh, everybody in the background who's doing their best to compile information about what's going on. We try to relay the news on top of like the the future. We try to do the forecast as, as well as talk about the news because we know that if we if we say there's a big tornado getting ready to go through X town and we get a bunch of people's hey Ryan, I'm gonna from fail. Town and then we don't mention storm, it afterwards. Uh, it's not good. Sulphur Springs. It looks like it's uh, weakening considerably, um, especially on reflect two. It looks like it's going to uh, merge up with that one. Uh, so I'm going to drop down south to the one that's in Canton. I should be able to go and get it. All right. So the storm that produced the tornado near Sulphur Springs is weakening. Thank goodness. It does look like the tornado threat for the most part is over uh, for the Sulphur Springs area, but we want you to stay in your safe spot at least for the next 10, 20 minutes and allow that storm to go by just in case there's some sort of last push of uh, energy into the storm. Now we're gonna start focusing a little bit farther to the south on these storms uh, near Canton and Athens. I I'm, I'm really concerned about Athens um, in uh, Texas. This could be a, um, a strong storm uh, getting ready to move through there with a, a tornado in it. You see the big broad mesocyclone, the rotation there uh, near uh, Trinidad and um, Crossroads. If that tightens up any at all, uh, we could see another tornado come down and come right for another metropolitan area in um, uh, Texas, very close to Tyler as well. Uh, Chris Hall is our closest storm chaser to this. Let's hear from him. Um, Chris. How's it going, man? We see that you're close to this storm that's moving towards Athens. It looks pretty concerning on radar. Are you seeing anything uh, that is concerning in real life? Let us know. In real life, no. Uh, but if anything is down, it is rain wrapped. We're just ahead of the rotation. I'm not seeing anything in the way of a wall cloud or anything yet but that can change very quick because it is very, very warm and muggy outside right now at my location. <laughs> okay, thank you, Chris. Uh, Storm Chaser Chris Hall there. And, and um, okay, Zach Hall and Vince are all near Athens. So we'll talk to them as they get closer. And Frank, if you're listening, if we could put, uh, if we could put Vince in the number one spot, uh, that would be great. All right, coming back to the radar here. Um, we're looking at all these storms. Once again, we're seeing new supercells form out in front of these cells that we're watching. That is a bad sign. These storms will have to be watched closely as they are in an environment that could produce more tornadoes very quickly. Uh, these storms can go south uh, in, a, in a blink of an eye. Uh, so um, we've got to watch the one near Tyler and Jacksonville here as we go forward. And thankfully, we've got uh, a lot of good people, weather analysts a new and tornado watch has been issued on the team that are helping us out with that. And we have a new tornado watch. I'm retweeting it. I am retweeting that. And here's the graphic. So this tornado watch goes until midnight tonight. Um, and it includes Russellville, Arkansas. It includes Little Rock. It includes Camden, Texarkana, Tyler, Shreveport, Lufkin, all the way down to Huntsville and Conroe in uh, Texas. So this is a little bit of Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. 3.9, almost 4 million people in the path of these storms. A few tornadoes are likely. Isolated hail up to ping pong size possible. And scattered wind gusts 
uh, up to 70 miles per hour likely. So there you go. New tornado watch. We're, this is going to go all the way till midnight. Uh, midnight Central. And it's currently 530 Central. Uh, foggy, froggy, foggy morn. Thank you so much for that. Thanks for all the support in the chat, guys. I'm, I'm seeing it intermittently. I always try to go back and look at those afterwards. Uh, I'm being told that we don't have any working um, uh, communications. We're not hearing anything out of uh, Freestone or Limestone counties. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, so if there was anything that happened there or anything that's happening now, it might take a second for us to find out uh, what exactly that was. Um, once again, Vince Welty, Zach, and Chris are getting ready to intercept this storm, which still looks really impressive on uh, velocity. doesn't look as impressive on reflectivity, but it's actually just concerning because it could be a rain-wrapped uh, tornado. Um. We're watching the storm that uh, is near Brett Adair uh, that just went through Sulphur Springs, still showing signs of rotation. So uh, Tira and Sulphur Bluff needs to stay sheltered. Otherwise, I think this is the one that we need to be watching coming into Athens, Texas right now. Uh, let's come back up here. L let's take a look at the Fort Smith radar and look at the storm that's moving into uh, Pickens, Smithville, and Oklahoma. And there's, yeah, there's a lot of rotation with that storm. It's hard to tell if there's a tornado down with it or not. So everybody in um, McCurtain County, Oklahoma, needs to be in their safe spot right now. Get there and get there quick. These things can, uh, you know, things can go sideways pretty quick in a situation like this, especially the farther into northeast Texas and southeast Oklahoma these storms get because we're blind. Uh, the radar hole is just unbelievable over here. Devin says, I'm in Sulphur Springs and the Texas hospital in the basement. Will I get hit? I don't think so, but you need to stay there until the warning is allowed to expire. I think you're okay. I do, but I, you're, you're going to want to stay, stay in your safe spot. Uh, for a little while longer. A new tornado warning has been issued. A new tornado warning was just issued for Hopkins, Lamar, and Delta County, Texas. So Lamar County is now under the gun again for potentially another a tornado as these storms, the second round of storms is coming up into the issued. Paris area. There's two storms. There's two tornadic storms that could be coming up towards tech, uh, Paris uh, this evening. Both of them have tornado warnings on them, so let's get back into our safe spots in Lamar County. We're up to nine tornado warnings currently in effect. That's, uh, that's the most we've had all evening. Wow. Let's come back down here. Take a look at all these again. Uh, there is a tornado warning for Greenville, Texas. This storm looks like it might try to uh, do something here near Caddo Mills as it goes up towards Greenville, so we definitely want to get to shelter for that. Still the most impressive, the most concerning, I guess, uh, storm is the one that's coming into Athens that all of our storm chasers are so close to. So if, uh, we, I, don't know if, I don't think there's a tornado down with this right now, but if there is one soon... We, you will see it. You'll see it here because we got Chris, Zach, and Vince all uh, converging on it. Yeah, nine tornado warnings currently in effect. Uh, wow. So Tyler uh, Pardon, Tyler Pardon, I think is his name, was incredibly close to this. Um, Tornado in Greenview. Check this out. I, I retweeted this. My goodness. So when we started the stream, when we talked about this yesterday, uh, all everything leading up to this, this is what we were talking about. We we have these 
discrete supercells popping up, producing tornadoes, and then kind of congealing into multicellular messes uh, that then lower the threat. But the, the thing that's happening right now is every time we get a line and we think that the, the threat might be starting to become linear, new cells pop out in front of it. So that's what just happened there. Now it's happening again with these cells. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with uh, Hawkins and, and Winona uh, with that cell as it moves up towards uh, Gilmer. This one too, the one near Brushy Creek in Texas. That's, that's probably at some point going to uh, cause some problems for us. Yeah, I'm, I'm still looking, uh, still looking through, see if there's any updates. Okay, go ahead, uh, Andy. Hey, Ryan. This is the most concerning tornado warning to me. I've been hesitant on relaying it um, because our analyst team has been doing a ton of work trying to understand what's going on near uh, Pickens, Oklahoma, in McCurtain County. Uh, that's the southeastern Oklahoma tornado warning split between Fort Worth or Fort Smith and. Um, Tulsa's coverage area. So both both uh, offices have now warned it. Uh, there is no noteworthy um, debris signature on this. However, there has been a semi-consistent bounded weak echo region and also very strong velocities that are um, supposedly not truly representative of what's happening. It seems to be, <laughs> according to our analysts, it seems to be in an area of non-uniform beam filling. So there's some artifacts in the radar here they're not showing us the true um, current um, situation in the storm, what we're looking at with these with this data. So these data, sorry, it is plural. But this is the same cell that has had a history of producing um, likely a significant tornado that we saw earlier around the Paris, Texas area. It is the same one. Um, I in, It's already over Pickens, so Honobia or... Uh, areas near La, in Lafleur County, headed up towards Hevener. I remember the pronunciation of that. Um, that the cell is incredibly dangerous, and I would um, advise getting in your tornado safe spots if you uh, live uh, along Highway 259 in McCurtain and Lafleur counties, up towards Hevener and north of Smithville, Oklahoma. All right, thank you, Andy. Go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan, I'm being advised by Zach Hall that he has a massive wall cloud on his stream. Okay, thank you. All right, so for real quick, I'm going to show you this. Um, we have um, uh, lots of rotation and, and a concerning looking storm here near Pickens, uh, Oklahoma, like Andy was talking about. We want everybody up here in LaFleur and um, uh, Pushmataha County and uh, McCurtain counties, all everybody up here in uh, Oklahoma uh, to take shelter because this is a very uh, concerning looking storm. It's the same one that caused all the problems to the south and west. Uh, Zach Hall and, and our storm chasers are seeing something interesting down back down in Texas, though. Uh, so let's, let's see where they are. And I don't know if I can pull up. Zach's feed right now or not? I can't tell if it's down, but like Zach, Chris, and Vince, all three are very close. This is where they are, are very close to the center of uh, like circulation there. So they very well could be seeing something uh, interesting. Vince has given us the clearest view right now, um, but I'm not necessarily seeing anything. I think Zach. Brandon, Brett, where is Zach? Okay. All right, yeah, so he's frozen. <laughs> Every time these guys get close to a tornado, the, the sales signal goes out. I mean, it, it <laughs> I don't know what's going on there, but uh, Vince is still uh, transmitting beautifully, and he's, just, he's right behind Zach. Uh, so let's see if we can't talk to Vince. Hey, Vince, we've got you pulled up. Um, uh, Zach's a little bit in front of you, and he's saying that 
Uh, he's seeing a wall cloud. Um, however, his feed's down right now. We're wondering, we've got you pulled up. We're looking through your stream, but we're wondering if you're seeing anything out of your driver's side window or if anything's going on out there. Well, my camera and everything broke today, so everything you're seeing is delayed. I'm on quite the, uh, the, the backup system here. Uh, I have spun around. I'm now sitting uh, in kind of the left side of the road. I, just, I don't know if you're looking at the right part or not, but there's definitely a huge wall cloud there. We're going to have to go around the north side of Athens and keep up with this. I think the best bet is to either track north or northeast with it since they all seem to produce. But what you're looking at on the stream right now, um, if, uh, if it's just to the right of the road over the uh, yellow sign there, that's the wall cloud there off to the right. So definitely a massive wall cloud. So it needs to be watched closely. All right. Thank you, Vince. So these guys are right under the uh, rotation. They're right under the uh, rotational area uh, of the storm near Athens, and, and none of them are seeing a tornado, so that's good. That's good. Uh, wall cloud, yep. A potential tornado soon, yep. But no tornado right now. Excuse me. Uh, we do have uh, lots of damage uh, coming in near uh, Mid-City, Texas. Seeing some tweets on this. Wow. Wow, look at that. Mid-City, Texas. This was posted just 10 minutes ago from our friend Thomas. So there's lots of store, uh, search and rescue going on. Where is that? Where is Mid-City, Texas? Is that associated with the, um, the Paris tornado? Yes. Okay. So that's, uh, those pictures came, came from the uh, Highway 271 area north of Paris and Powderly, uh, where the, the big tornado hit earlier. And the lights are orange, so we have some news. Uh, go ahead, Heidi. Hey, Ryan. I just wanted to kind of revisit on the Paris tornado. Or um, We are getting reports that media is saying that large brick homes have been destroyed in the area. And the local fire department is also reporting that people are being found trapped in rubble. And then from another source, I just received the reports of people are being reported missing. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, meteorologist Heidi Oberlin keeping um, uh, an eye on everything in the background. She's gonna have quite a busy, busy evening, I believe, as more of these storms are impacting uh, small towns across Northeast Texas. Uh, we're going to start hearing more and more stories uh, about what's going on here in Texas and Oklahoma. It sounds pretty bad in Lamar County, Texas, uh, so far. Um, and uh, once again, more storms are popping up. Oh, look at look at this. All of these supercells are either about to produce a tornado or or have just produced a tornado, or, or you know they're they're producing a tornado right now. Uh, and we're going to continue to see this for the next several hours at 6.51 p.m. Eastern. We are probably going to go until midnight or 1 a.m. Eastern. Um, and uh, maybe even beyond that. It just depends on when the tornado warnings stop coming out. You know what I mean? So um, it's definitely picking up. Things are escalating quickly here. We've got seven tornado warnings. And... Um, we're just going to relay all of this information as we get it, not only on the current state of these storms and whether or not they're producing tornadoes and where they're going, but also the news of what just happened in these towns as that comes in. Goodness. Uh, and a lot of these pictures uh, of the damage and stuff, I I'm showing them here, obviously, on the, uh, the stream. But I'm also retweeting them on Twitter. If you guys want to share them yourselves or see them uh, up close, you can find those on Twitter. Uh, here's a video uh, from Braden. Uh, this is Greenview, Texas, just south of Sulphur Springs. My goodness, that's the tornado that was moving right towards Sulphur Springs moments ago. I, th I think we're fine. So we've seen a couple of tornadoes today for sure. We have, we've had one that we know 
was like very intense. It's destroying brick homes. Um, and uh, we, we've also saw this one. A this new one almost tornado went through warning, uh, has Sulphur been Springs. We got this from uh, Brad Arnold, uh, Braden. A lot of people saw this one and thankfully it lifted right before it got into the town of Sulphur Springs. Yeah, there's a lot of storm chasers out there. The Thank you guys, by the way, for tagging me and stuff and 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 helping me find uh all this information. I'm trying my best to relay as much as I can while also making sure I'm paying attention to the new warnings and stuff that are coming out. Wow. There's a lot of it. I'm uh, yeah at Ryan Hall y'all at Ryan Hall y'all there's another incredible video of this it's from Braden Is that Braden yep so currently there are seven tornado warnings okay um this is, uh, we've got a tornado warning for uh, Red River County, Texas, Smith, Upshur, and Wood County in Texas, LaFleur and Pushma, Pushmataha County in Oklahoma, Delta, Hopkins, and Lamar County in Texas, Henderson, Navarro, Collin, Hunt, Kaufman, Rockwall, Van uh, Zant, and McCurtain counties. Um, all those except for McCurtain were in Texas, and then McCurtain County is in Oklahoma. That's, that's all the warnings that we have right now. A new tornado warning has been issued. And a new tornado warning was just issued for McCurtain County in Oklahoma. Wow. Back up to eight. This is the, the newest one that's catching my attention here that includes Betty, Gilmer, Pritchett, and Big Sandy. This is one of the new sales. Remember how we were uh, talking about how... Um, uh, these cells out near Tyler need to be watched. Well, we've got a warning on the one that popped up over Tyler now. Uh, this is maybe producing a tornado near uh, Betty and Gilmer here soon. Uh, the new warning up here in uh, Oklahoma is um, associated uh, with the cluster of storms in southeastern Oklahoma. Um, let me see here. If I can't show you guys, I want to walk you guys through all of this slowly but surely hold on i've got a lot of buttons i have to push here to make this happen okay so <laughs> here's all of the tornado warnings in uh, oklahoma right now most recent one the one that was just issued there if we can't zoom in on it okay yeah so that's the one um near uh, Smithville. Okay, so Smithville takes shelter uh, immediately in Oklahoma. Uh, we, then we've also got this new one down here in Texas. A new tornado warning for, has been issued. Uh, uh, Clarksville and Bogota. All right, now we just got another new tornado warning. Back up to nine for Hopkins, Rains, and Van Zant County in Texas. So we, we are just seeing these things pop up like crazy. Um, starting from the bottom, go through them one by one. Let me actually zoom out here. I want to make sure that the whole picture is up on this radar. And then we're going to go to Radar Omega. And we're going to go over these warnings one by one right after we talk to meteorologist Andy Hill. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan, uh, not a confirmed tornado warning uh, yet, but the one that I mentioned earlier in southeast Oklahoma now has a deep tornado debris signature. Uh, just south of Hanobia, Hanabia, in uh, McCurtain County, crossing into Lafleur County at the moment. That is headed up towards uh, Highway 59 uh, to the northwest of Page and might cross near Hevener if it stays on the ground. All right. Thank you. And that's another very concerning looking signature right there. Moving up towards uh, Ludlow, it's going to cross Highway 144. As it goes towards Muse, Linux, Big Cedar, uh, and all these places, that's 
it could be another very big tornado uh, in, in progress there. Um, hopefully everybody is hunkering down and taking shelter. Short Mountain, if you know where Short Mountain is, uh, it's moving up towards uh, Little Mountain and um, uh, Hanobia Mountain, all these uh, kind of uh, hilly areas here in southeastern Oklahoma. Uh, everyone needs to be taking shelter. You're not going to be able to see it. More than likely rain wrapped and you're in a hilly terrain. So don't worry about looking for it. Get to shelter now. Um, let me see if I can see anything on velocity. Yeah, just nasty, nasty looking velocity there. You can see just to the east of um, uh, Hanobia and uh, to the west of uh, Ludlow is where this thing is really cranking up. And if we look at the correlation coefficient, uh, the last update that we got down there, you can see that more than likely we've got some debris going up. So this is a dangerous situation. Please take shelter in McCurtain County. Uh, and then this storm has been going for a while, okay? Probably not going to give up anytime soon. Let's go ahead and give a heads up for Hevener, Sugar Creek, Hall Creek, all the way up to the Oklahoma and Arkansas border near Brawley and Hartford. If you know anybody in these areas, tell them what's going on. It's a very dangerous situation unfolding out here in Texas and Oklahoma this evening. Um... Lots of rotation on this storm near Hawkins, moving into Sandy Grove. Um, one of the more recent uh, tornado warnings that was issued in Texas uh, near Gilmer uh, is looking uh, pretty interesting. And, and this storm, probably more than, well, I would say all, all of these storms here are probably in some of the, like the best environment uh, for a tornado. So I'm, I'm concerned about how discreet this one is, how all by itself it is. This one could become uh, something that's pretty bad down the road. That's going to go towards Pittsburgh, uh, Dangerfield, and uh, Mount Pleasant in Texas over time. Uh, we also are concerned about uh, Clarksville here, who, which is under a tornado warning in Texas. And um, that storm is eventually going to make it into Ida Bell and Broken Bow in southeastern Oklahoma. Currently have eight tornado warnings. We have six professional storm chasers out there going after them. And we have seen with our own eyes, at least three tornadoes out of this system, but there, I, I'm pretty sure there's, there've been more than that. Um, a, and we're starting to see a lot of damage reports coming out. So Josh is sending me these pictures. Look at this guys, uh, destroyed homes and downed trees in powderly Texas near Paris. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's a big one. That's a very significant tornado that went through there. Once again, very unfortunate um, that uh, probably a lot of really effective messaging uh, was maybe missed in some avenues um, due to, more, more than anything, a lack of uh, radar coverage. Hopefully, uh, not hopefully, but... Maybe uh, events like this will will talk whoever is in charge into um, putting more of those things. A new in. tornado warning has been issued, and a new tornado warning was just issued for Wood County, Texas. Wood County, Texas, take shelter now. I'm trying to sift through some of this stuff. I'm getting so many pictures and videos uh, sent in, and, and like I'm retweeting a lot of them. Please go follow me on Twitter, y'all. Um, and all the people that I'm retweeting, follow them too. Uh, there is some just incredible imagery coming out of some of these tornadoes. Oh, wow. Look at this. Uh, Paris. Per Paris Fire Department, multiple people are reported traps in, in their homes. We've heard this from uh, Heidi uh, after a tornado passed through. But look at that picture. That's a destroyed home right there. And we still have multiple, multiple ongoing tornado warnings right now. We're, we're still in the middle of this event right now as we continue to watch these storms move through. Look at all this. 
even more sales popping up down here. More problems uh, that we may have to deal with in the near future. Uh, tornado warning and potential tornado uh, coming together near Athens, Texas. Nothing down right now, but could continue to cause a problem as it gets close to uh, Murchison. Uh, so we want you to take shelter up there. This is another radar hole, so it's hard for me to show you everything that's going on over here. But we also have a uh, developing tornado maybe near Gilmer, Texas. That That's a dangerous storm. Get to shelter over there. This storm near Bullard, moving up towards Tyler, is starting to rotate. I would say that we might see a tornado warning for Tyler here before too long. And uh, we still have a pretty concerning storm moving towards Bogota and Clarksville in Texas. Now, let's go back to Oklahoma and check in on our storm that was near Pickens earlier and Ludlow and see what's going on with it. Still at a very impressive velocity area and what looks to me like uh, a very large uh, CC drop, uh, which is indicative of a uh, tornado lofting debris here so we might start hearing something out of uh Hanobia and Ludlow here soon if we haven't already as far as damage goes because that's if that's what I think it is that that's another that's another big one yeah if you're in Tyler Texas you're not under a warning a new tornado warning has been um, issued but get ready there, there's a storm coming and there you go. Radar confirmed tornado warning for LaFleur County. And eh. so, yeah, that's, that's going to be our storm up here um, in Oklahoma that we're watching. A radar confirmed tornado is moving uh, from Hanobia uh, and Ludlow up towards Muse and Lenox. So take shelter immediately. This is a dangerous storm. Okay. This is the same storm that has caused significant damage just to your south and west. Uh, we've got reports of injuries, people trapped, uh, full homes being torn apart. This could happen again um, in your neck of the woods up here. All right, Lenox, Muse, Big Cedar, Whitesboro. Uh, let's see here. Octavia, take shelter. Um, multiple tornado warnings are in effect across the region. If you're in a warning, seek shelter immediately and find the most interior room or the lowest floor of your home or building, whatever you're in. Currently have seven, one more than half a dozen tornado warnings uh, in effect. And the videos and pictures are just pouring in. Uh, this is another uh, video of that tornado near Emory, Texas earlier. That's from uh, Zanio. I think I'm saying that right. Wow. I appreciate you all for tagging me and stuff. There's just so much. <laughs> There's so much uh, in my Twitter mentions right now. It's uh, it's hard to go through it all, but I think that we we have pretty much ex gotten everything out there. There's a lot of pictures and videos that we'll compile and show in a minute. Um, but for right now, that's all the the latest news kind of stuff that we have. Uh, here's a video from uh, Tyler. We showed these pictures earlier, and it's just crazy how many uh, storm chasers were on this storm and how many were close to it. That's a dangerous kind of tornado. That's what almost hit Sulphur Springs earlier, but more than likely a tornado even bigger than that uh, is somewhere in this mess near Muse, Oklahoma. Okay. Um, so please take shelter if you're out here. Take this one seriously. 
and um, we'll let you know. We'll let we'll we will let you know whenever the uh, threat has passed. Storm near near Gilmer is still looking really interesting. No, like. No imminent signs of uh, anything extremely dangerous, but certainly rotating on a broad level. The one south of Tyler uh, is also looking more and more interesting. If I'm in Tyler, Texas, I I've got three storms. I've got three storms that look uh, pretty concerning closing in on me. So I'm, I'm not under a tornado warning in, in Tyler, but um, I'm preparing for one because it's bound to happen at some point if these, as these storms get closer. I know we got a lot of people watching in Tyler. That's why I bring it up. Uh, how many have hit? And uh, what, what were their intensity? I We don't know that yet. Uh, there's been two or three tornadoes for sure. There's probably been a couple more than that that we haven't seen or got confirmation of. We certainly won't know their intensity or what they were rated uh, until probably a couple days from now. The most intense tornado that we've seen today looks like it was up there near Paris, Texas. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Brian, a couple of things. Um, I'm most concerned about two areas in Texas right now. One of them is not tornado warned at the moment. It's a part of the QLCS, actually, just to the east of Greenville, Texas, in uh, Hunt County. It's about to pass over Campbell along I-30 right now. I believe that's some tight rotation. The the um, correlation coefficient there is not a CC drop. It's in lower reflectivity. But I am concerned about the um, possible couplet that is there. Um, on radar. And uh, the other area I'm concerned about is near Alba. That's to the southeast and Brad Arnold and Brandon are uh, close to that cell. It's it's um, portrayed significant rotation for a few frames now past 10 minutes. So those are my two uh, immediate areas of concern besides our uh, confirmed tornado warning in southeast Oklahoma. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> Meteorologist Andy Hill. <laughs> keeping an eye on all the storms uh, in the background uh, and this one that's coming towards Brad Arnold does look pretty uh, uh, interesting, pretty concerning uh, near Quitman. So hopefully everybody in Alba, Yantis and Quitman are in their uh, safe spots. Uh, additionally, not tornado warned, just to reiterate what um, uh, Andy was saying near Campbell um, uh, as a part of this line of storms, even though this is not uh, uh, maybe a discrete supercell, we can still see a tornado kind of form here, and especially in little elbows, little little divots in the line like that. Um, and we could be seeing one trying to form here near Campbell up towards Commerce. So y'all, heads up. Heads up, y'all. A new tornado warning has been issued. And we just got a new tornado warning. Uh, for Van Zant County, Texas. And we're, we're going to zoom in on that right here in a second. And I'll show you the details on that, okay? Um, but that is our eighth warning. Okay, so that, that one is for uh, where Chris Hall is. It includes Edom, uh, Ben Wheeler, and Van, and Martin's Mill. Uh, so take shelter if you're out there in that. Uh, Janet Davidson, thank you very much for the very generous super chat. Everybody say thank you to Janet, $100 super chat. Uh, if it wasn't for people like that and all you guys who have been awesome today supporting us, uh, we couldn't do a lot of what we do. And of course, uh, of course, uh, shout out to Barry Bones, our mascot, who is still watching the most concerned and weather aware weather dog on the planet. Barry Bones has his own Twitter. You guys want to follow him? I'm retweeting this. Please seek shelter. That's what he said. Uh, and by the way, Barry, well, during my break, um, I, I got your package. Barry Bones sent me a package. And this is what was inside of it. Look at this. I have a little picture of Barry to hang up on the wall. How about that? <laughs> That's cool. 
We need them. We need more of these. I'm sure there's a lot of people watching right now that would want one. All right. Uh, back to the radar. Um, uh, multiple tornado warnings, eight uh, tornado warnings uh, currently in, in effect. Um, and we're, we're really kind of focusing on a couple different areas. One of those is the storm that's getting ready to cross where Brad Arnold is. So let's talk to him. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, he is in a uh, he is in a dead zone right now. No service. So we'll talk to him here in a second. Uh, but also, we're watching these storms uh, that are moving near Gilmer up towards uh, Pittsburgh and Mount Pleasant and uh, Tyler. Okay, so none of these are looking as concerning just yet, but they are. There is a tornado warning for areas near Gilmer and Betty. Uh, but and I wouldn't be surprised if if the the one near Chandler here uh, produces a tornado warning for areas near Tyler. All these places that I'm saying, by the way, are in Texas. We'll talk about Oklahoma here in a second. And the other tornado warning that we have is for Bogota and Clarksville. I currently can't tell much about that from the radar, but um, as we know. <laughs> From experience earlier today, that doesn't matter. Uh, everybody in any polygon in, in the Northeast Texas needs to be taking it seriously today, despite what we can or can't see on the radar. Yet, uh, hey Brad, um, we see that you're closing in on another pretty intense storm. Um, just keep us updated on what you're seeing. Uh, oh, I just got your feedback, so I, I can see what you're seeing now. <laughs> but just give us uh, an update whenever you get a chance. Oh, wow. So Brad's on another beautiful storm. And this is, uh, this is tornado warned. This is what's moving up towards Quitman and Yantis and eventually Winsboro and Picton, Texas, okay? Definitely something going on there. And Brad is trying to contact hey, us. Brian. But it's, it's hard to hear him. It's hard to hear him because of the lack of service. But what you're looking at live right now on the screen. Yeah, so I'm looking actually over a lake right now. Okay, I'm... We're going to wait until we get that whole message in, and then we'll play it again. But this is a live look from Storm Chaser Brad Arnold, who's looking at a lowering, um, pretty concerning area of rotation uh, with this storm that's moving towards Quitman and uh, Winsboro in Texas. Doesn't look to me like there's a tornado on the ground right now, but um, there very well could be one coming together. Uh, so we want everybody in their safe spots. Uh, let's see here. Ghost, thank you so much for the super chat. It says, thanks for what you do. Uh, let's see. GG Farms, thank you. Jeff says, I'm from uh, Eastern Texas. Thank you. Camp, Camp Alicious. J Row, everybody say thank you to J Row. You guys are being super supportive in the chat. I'm trying to look at the chat as often as possible to answer questions whenever we have these moments where we're just waiting for updates from either the radar or a storm chaser. But, um, I'm sorry if I can't read everybody's questions. Uh, I work with a trucking company and one of our drivers got flipped over. Thankfully, they're okay. Man, I'm glad they're okay. Wow. All right, here's another view from Paris, Texas. My goodness, guys. We're okay. This was taken oh, right after the tornado oh, hit. Hey, don't worry. We're okay. I mean, 
mean, is that not send chills down anybody else's spine? I think these guys just literally, a tornado just hit them. They're wet, getting rained on. You can see the shock. My God, that one. This is this is that Paris, Texas storm. This is the the main one that um, that we've been talking about for most of the day, as far as relaying news and, and reports of what happened in the aftermath. Um, and it that looks like very very significant damage. It's the same storm that's pr producing a uh, tornado warning uh, near Whitesboro right now in Oklahoma. So hopefully everybody up there is taking shelter. And hopefully everybody under every tornado warning that's out right now is taking shelter. It's hard it's hard to focus in on all of them at once. They are all dangerous right now. So let's treat them all equally. One up here near Clarksville looks pretty still looks pretty gnarly. It's on the edge of the uh the radar hole. So we can't tell much about it. But meteorologist Andy Hill does have something to say. So go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan. Actually, that just went uh, radar confirmed. So they have now updated that tornado warning. I a new tornado was just warning about to break in to tell issued. you there's another um, notable tornado debris signature, at, uh, unfortunately, at 9,700 feet. So, And you should be looking at this from the Shreveport radar, by the way. That's how you're going to see this. It's headed towards the Bagwell, in between Bagwell and Clarksville area in Red River. Has there is issued. a tornado on the ground right next to you um, in Bagwell, Texas, about to cross towards Idabel. I know that Idabel is populated in southeast tip of Oklahoma in the Curtin County. Once it po once it passes the Red River, Idabel is in immense danger. Um, in fact, I would say you already are if this tornado manages to stay on the ground for a while. It is doing considerable damage to show up on the radar from 10,000 uh Oh. He blue screened again. Okay. All right. So uh, thank you, uh, Andy. He'll, he'll be back with us here shortly. Um, but, yeah, there's a big tornado down right now. Uh, south of Bagwell and moving towards Clarksville, then up eventually towards Idabel. Uh, let's get everybody in their safe spots right now. That's a big one, y'all. The big nasty tornado. Uh, get to shelter uh, immediately. And uh, let's hear what um, meteorologist Heidi Oberlin has to say. Go ahead, Heidi. Hey, Ryan. Um, I just wanted to mention that there has been some confirmed um, structural damage out of Henderson County, Texas, which is the town of Athens. Um, a tornado still may be on the ground from that. And then Smith County, Texas, um, first responders are taking shelter in Tyler, Texas, as the storm passes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so it does look like there was some damage in and around the, uh, the Athens storm. I'm almost certain Heidi's going to be coming in telling us soon about damage near Bagwell and Clarksville. This is a big one, another big one on the ground right now, uh, moving up there. Uh, let's see here. It's going to cross uh, Highway 82 here shortly. And, you know, Idabel is is a populated area for sure. But the, the areas just west of Clarksville, there's a lot of stuff out here that this tornado is going to hit. All right, Lehigh Defense, Batesville, New Shamrock Cemetery, um, the Red River Inn. Uh, Stone Chapel Cemetery, uh, there, and there's all kinds of little campgrounds and, and little places like the Pine Grove Presbyterian Church, all these places along Highway 37 and uh, crossing uh, 82. Uh, these are the places that I'm concerned about this big tornado getting ready to cross through. I hope and I think that the downtown like Clarksville, the city of Clarksville is, is not going to take a direct hit here. Um, but we still want Clarksville in their safe spot. All right. So we've got a confirmed tornado on the ground in Red River County, Texas. Uh, take shelter immediately. There you go. Look at that. And the, uh, what, whenever I look at this map, what we're looking at is this correlation coefficient. When it drops, it turns blue and it indicates to us that, um, uh, debris uh, is being, uh, uh, lofted into the air. Uh, probably pretty high. A new tornado warning has been issued. Uh, let's see. We got a new tornado warning for Camp Morris, Titus, and Upshur counties in Texas. At this point, 
If your county shows up on the screen, take shelter, you guys. No need of what no need to wait around and see what kind of tornado it is. Probably the kind you don't want to be around uh, unsheltered. This is a picture somebody sent in to us uh, of the tornado warned supercell near Clarksville. A new tornado warning has been issued. Now we got a new tornado warning in Arkansas. Scott County, Arkansas is now under a tornado warning. Uh, so there you go. A tornado warned supercell near Clarksville, Texas. That's a, a picture of what we see. I, I don't see anything definitive here. But definitely a nasty looking storm uh, approaching Clarksville right now. Brett, oh my goodness, where in the world did Brett Adair come from? He's on it. Look at that. There's Brett. He's going to be on this storm in a matter of minutes. So we're going to have a storm chaser giving us a view of this thing uh, to tell us if there's a, well, I'm almost 100% certain there is a tornado down, or at least there was a minute ago. Uh, Brett's going to be able to tell us if that's still on the ground. He may also be able to tell us if there's any significant damage here near Bagwell as he crosses the road there near Detroit in Texas. Yeah, Brett Adair. <laughs> Brett Adair out of nowhere coming in uh, to save the day. Once again, super thankful for our storm chasers, which, by the way, you can see all of their feeds here. Shoot. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to see some of the pictures and videos of the damage in and around Athens, Texas. Oh, and it looks like Reed Timmer. Reed Timmer is on that storm near Bagwell. Reed Timmer is on the storm uh, near Bagwell. So he's on our storm. I don't know how long ago this was taken, but this is on his Twitter. I retweeted it. I don't know how long this was taken, but... Uh, a long ago this was taken, but there's a, a tornado developing right there. And he just posted this a minute ago. So it, this, this could be pretty up-to-date footage here of what's happening there. You guys know Reed Timmer. Go follow him on Twitter, and I'm sure he's live on YouTube. Uh, Oliver KDS, thank you so much, man. You guys don't have to do that. Another very generous super chat. Everybody say, say thank you. Yeah, that's it's, this is a very a new tornado warning. Very dangerous issued. situation unfolding here near Clarksville. Yeah, like Reed Timmers, <laughs> Reed Timmers right underneath it, man. And Brett Adair is getting dangerously close. I'm just, I'm, I'm really just waiting on updates from them. The debris signature here, uh, the correlation coefficient drop, meaning that um, the you, debris is in the air, uh, is quite evident near Bagwell. Um, so that tells me that um, this is still intense. It's probably still. Uh, doing damage down here. Uh, in fact, there might be somebody uh, behind the scenes here that can explain that a little bit uh, better than me. If, um, if we've got Ben uh, at the ready, meteorologist Ben Price, uh, if you can maybe explain to the people here briefly of what a, uh, a correlation coefficient drop is, what we're looking at when we look at this little blue dot here in, in the midst of all the red, uh, whenever you're ready, Ben, if you want to Take it away. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Um, so the correlation coefficient is essentially showing uh, how different um, reflectors are in the atmosphere. So the radar goes out, sends like a bunch of pulses at once, and hits those raindrops. And that's what you see on reflectivity. But if there's a bunch of different sizes of reflectors in the in the uh, 
range shaft, that will cause a lower correlation coefficient. Basically, there's less uniformity um, in the volume that the radar is detecting. So things like debris is much larger than raindrops. Um, so you put a bunch of debris in the atmosphere and that correlation coefficient goes down because there's less uniformity of the reflectors that the radar is hitting. And so that's why the um, correlation coefficient drops when there's a tornado that goes through. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much, uh, meteorologist uh, Ben, another uh, vital part of the team and kind of keeping up with all these storms on the radar and helping us uh, uh, make sure we're not missing anything there. Uh, speaking of not missing something, uh, look at this, another really uh, nasty looking um Hook uh, developing on the storm south of uh, Pittsburgh, moving up towards Dangerfield. Um, and my goodness. A new tornado yeah, that one, has that been one, issued. we got to watch that one closely as it moves up towards Dangerfield. Uh, and then uh, just several more tornado warnings. Uh, there, there are like three tornadic circulations hovering around Tyler, Texas. A new tornado warning. My goodness. Warning has We're been up issued. to 11 tornado warnings now. If you are in Tyler, Texas, you got to get to your safe spot. This look at this. Like I'm not kidding. One tornado maybe developing or possibly even on the ground on the east side of town. On the west side, you got two. This one down here south of Chandler looks nuts. Uh, that's going to be a bad situation. Hopefully, uh, everybody in Tyler, Texas, is running, not walking uh, to their safe spot because that's uh, that does not look good there. Uh, also, south of Pittsburgh and Dangerfield, you guys need to be running, not walking to your safe spot. Additionally, anyone to the north of Clarksville um, is also under the gun for a significantly dangerous storm, potentially a, a deadly storm, uh, producing a big tornado here south of Albion. Uh, th there are several tornadoes either developing or on the ground right now uh, in Texas and it's going to be hard for me to keep up with all of them. But basically, if your county name pops up uh, on that warning ticker, whenever it, uh, it pops up, you got to go. You don't have time to think about it. You don't have time to wait and see if it's a good one or a bad one or a radar indicated, whatever. You got to go. Get to shelter now. I'm really concerned about this one near Pittsburgh and Dangerfield. Hopefully, we're effectively communicating the risk there. Um, hopefully... This one that's moving north of Clarksville, hopefully that is is going to die out or or kind of um, I guess downgrade a little bit in its intensity before it gets up towards Idabel. There is still an opportunity for that to happen, but right now uh, a big tornado is on the ground um, near Dimple. Okay, so if you are in Dimple, uh, Texas, up there in Red River County. You got to get to shelter. There's a tornado lofting debris into the air. Like uh, Ben said earlier, uh, this just tells us the different size of things in, in the atmosphere. If you got a bunch of raindrops up there and you throw a wood plank or a shingle, the radar can like notice that. It's like, oh, well, that's different. It doesn't correlate. So let's drop the correlation coefficient. And that's what's happening. We're seeing a bunch of shingles or hopefully not shingles, maybe tree limbs. Uh, up in the uh, the air here near Dimple. And that's going to continue to happen as it goes up towards Greenwood and Ackworth. All right. Tyler, Texas. Uh, I can't stress this enough. Three, I repeat, three uh, tornadic supercells are uh, uh, like literally they're just like circling around the city. There, nothing is happening in the town right now, but it might be here soon. So get to shelter now. The lights are orange, so we've got some uh, news updates here from Heidi. Go ahead, Heidi. Hi, Ryan. I um, kind of just want to go into this whole Tyler, Texas area. Um, the fire department there has told their responders to go ahead and seek shelter. Um, also, there are many uh, people, first responders, that are headed to Paris, Texas to help out. And then Red River County, there are reports that multiple people are trapped in a closet after their house was hit by a possible tornado. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Heidi. Once again, out of everybody on the team, I think that uh, he's gonna be extremely busy over the next little bit. It sounds like another very bad situation 
is uh, unfolding, and, and we're learning some uh, uh, bad news out of uh, Red River uh, County, Texas, up there uh, with the storm that we've been tracking with the correlation coefficient drop. And one of these storms on the southern side is also going to cause some problems down here. Uh, so hopefully everybody is sheltered right now. We also have Riley wanting to chime in. Go ahead, Riley. Hey, so more on Tyler, Texas. I just spoke with Zach Hall. He said there's many areas of rotation. I'm not sure if you've seen on his stream, but the lightning is insane. And it's only been picking up. Vince Welty is also in the area, but I'm not sure if we're able to see his feed because he's having issues, but you can always watch that on the Radar Omega app. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Riley. And the lightning is absolutely nuts on Zach's feed. I don't know if you guys are keeping up with that and able to see uh, what's going on there above my head as we uh, watch this, but just huge uh, cloud to ground bolts of lightning uh, dropping around Tyler, Texas. I, I can't imagine the, uh, it, it, there's a lot of people that live down here and that's gotta be a scary situation. You, you're under a tornado warning. You're, um, you've got three tornadic circulations around you. You've got all this lightning, but here's what I want the people of Tyler, Texas to know. You don't have to be scared. You can be prepared. All you got to do right now is not worry about anything else other than getting you and your family into the most interior room of your home. Okay. Um, basement, storm cellar, that's best. Garage, attic, that's worse. Anything else is good. All right. Let, but let's try to get into a closet. Let's try to get into a bathroom with minimal glass, with as many walls between you and the outside world as possible. Hunker down. If you got a helmet, if the kids have football helmets, baseball helmets, whatever it is uh, on the way to your safe spot, grab them, throw them on. Sounds ridiculous. Could save a life. The number one way that you're going to get hurt in a situation like this is by pieces of your house falling on you. All right. So if we do have a tornado that comes down here, it goes through your neighborhood. You got to do everything you can to protect yourself from it. And we'll, we'll get through this. All right. Tornadoes are small. Towns are big. Not everybody in Tyler or their surrounding areas are, are going to have anything bad happen. But if it does happen and it comes through your neighborhood, it's better to be prepared uh, than scared at the last moment, not knowing what to do, running around, you know. So um, everybody take shelter near Tyler, Texas. Um, and then I, I can't stress this enough. The, the storm up here near Pittsburgh, Texas, that's moving towards Dangerfield. Uh, I mean, it just looks dangerous. It looks in- incredibly uh, well organized. It's got a nice hook on it, uh, and it is rotating. Uh, so, um, oh my goodness! Holy smoke! Okay, here's a picture of the tornado west of Clarksville, Texas. This is the one that we've been looking at for such a, a long time now on radar. Uh, that we've that we've been showing you this. You see this, this blue dot. That blue dot is there because of this. This is a massive, massive wedge tornado on the ground right now, to the west and to the north of Clarksville, and it's getting ready to move into Oklahoma. This is making a beeline towards Idabel, Oklahoma, which is a, um, a pretty populated area. If we know anybody, if you know anybody, if you know anybody who knows anybody that lives in Idabel, Oklahoma, or any place a new like PBS that, in that warning general has region, issued. you have to tell them what's going on, okay? Several people will be seriously hurt. You can't survive a tornado like this unless you know it's coming and you are prepared for it, Okay. So I know we got a bunch of people watching right now. Part of the reason we do this is because we act as a collective and we do whatever we can to get the word out to people. Let's make sure that everybody in this area knows what's happening here. Let, uh, let's come back over to the, the radar. A massive debris signature. Thousands of feet up in the air. Uh, indicates that lots of debris is, is hovering above this tornado right now as it, as it gets sucked up. And unfortunately, if I push, push this into motion, watch. There's, this is when we can first start to see the tornado down here near Clarksville. Uh, that, that's what we're looking at now. And if it continues moving in the direction that it's going right now, it's going to go straight into Idabel. And a meteorologist, Andy Hill, wants to talk to us. So go ahead. 
new information yeah, pretty this tornado just warning east of has been upgraded. not a confirmed tornado warning big uh tornado debris signature from fort smith fort smith yeah okay well we got a pds tornado warning from uh in Arkansas. that would be for that one yeah, yeah okay. that's that one just just issued managed uh, to get it out there just to, <laughs> this, yeah. i'm um beside myself right now <laughs> okay all right thank you um andy I'm looking at the right thing. Oh my God. Yeah, there it is. Near Hevener. Oh, wow. Okay. Right on the eastern side of is this Hevener or Hevener? Whatever it is. Um, we have another massive tornado on the ground right now and a PDS tornado warning uh for um uh McCurtain. Uh, is this McCurtain County, Oklahoma, I believe? No. Okay, Sebastian County, Arkansas, and LaFleur County, uh, Oklahoma. A PDS tornado warning. Uh, uh, oh, seriously, guys, we have multiple giant monster tornadoes on the ground. One of them up, is up here in um, Oklahoma, moving into Arkansas. Uh, I hope that that didn't hit the town of uh, Evener or, or Hevener, um, but, but it might have. Um, and that might be why we're seeing this sudden uptick in uh, debris signature. But anyways, this is now going to continue to move up past Sugar Creek and then eventually up towards Hartford in Arkansas. Uh, you got to take shelter. All right. This is not a joke. This is the most dangerous tornado situation you've been in in a long time over here. OK, so please take shelter and, um, you know, we're going to get through it. Get into the most interior room of your house. Uh, or building whatever you're in and uh, stay there until uh, the warning gets dropped. I got to come back down and look at the, our storm that's coming that went north of Clarksville and now is approaching Greenwood and Ackworth because this is another, this is a second one. We have simultaneously two big tornadoes on the ground right now uh, that are going to cause big problems uh, in, in, two different areas okay one of them's up there in oklahoma and arkansas this one's on the border of texas and oklahoma greenwood and ackworth if everybody in those towns aren't in like a, a very safe spot right now their life is in extreme danger so i just want to make sure that that's known and then we've got to we really got to start getting in our safe spots in ida bell oklahoma ida bell crossroads and broken bow uh, these places are next in line for a potentially a devastating uh, uh, tornado uh, as this uh, c crosses the Red River here. Uh, those are our two main uh, things that we're looking at right now. Those are our scariest, I guess, looking storms. But there are so many other uh, tornado producing thunderstorms out here, guys. Uh, we currently have 10 counties, 10 counties under a tornado warning. And it all starts down here near Tyler, Texas. Uh, we've got a bunch of tornadic circulations around Tyler. That's where all of our storm chasers are, and, and we're keeping an eye on this. Um, so we want Winona, Tyler, uh, Edom, uh, Lindale, uh, all these places to be in their safe spots. Uh, but we also have some tornadic rotation up here near Winsboro and a very strong area of rotation near Pittsburgh and Dangerfield, uh, which could be producing a tornado soon if it isn't already. This is going to go up towards Naples, Texas as a well. A new tornado warning has we been just got issued. a new tornado warning for Smith County, Upshur County, and Wood County, Texas. And we're now up to 11 tornado warnings. And kind of back up here to get into our most serious areas where we got to pay attention here uh, is the storm that's approaching Idabel. Um, Oklahoma that is uh, currently producing a massive tornado that looked like this probably 20 minutes ago. This is what the, the tornado looked like 20 minutes ago. This is what could be heading straight for Ida Bell, Oklahoma right now. Please, please take shelter. You cannot, you cannot uh, survive something like this on accident. All right. You got to know what's coming and you've got to know what you're doing uh, to take shelter and protect your head uh, protect yourself from flying debris. Um, let's see here. All right, and then I, I'm also going to uh, come back up to the storm in near Fort Smith, south of Fort Smith. This is still producing a big tornado uh, north and east of Hevener, Hevener. Uh, let me let me let me tell you a little bit more about where I think that is exactly. Shoot, man. Yeah, that's, it's still huge. It's still big. It's still ripping up debris. 
Um, goodness. So this is past the town now. Okay, this is past Forest Hill. It's moving up towards Monroe, uh, Trestle Ford, Apex, West Hartford, and Hartford. So if you live uh, along Highway 83, between Forest Hill and Hartford, on the border of Oklahoma and Arkansas, you are in the path of an extremely life-threatening storm. A big tornado is down on the ground right now. A damaging, deadly tornado is ripping up stuff, and it's on its way to Apex. It'll probably go right through the little town of Apex here, right on the border of um, uh, Oklahoma and Arkansas. Some of the places that'll be directly impacted are places like the Cedarville Church, all right, um, Sugarloaf Creek. Uh, it's going to parallel uh, Highway 96 as it crosses into Arkansas there. And then places like the Jackson Cemetery uh, are in uh, the direct path of getting hit from this storm, all right? We're hoping that this stays west of Hartford, but it could go right through Hartford. So hopefully everybody from Hartford to Huntington in Arkansas is in their safe spot right now. Uh, okay, let's go back down to the south. Let's take a look at our storm that's approaching Idabel. It's unfortunately in uh, a tough to see spot. This is um, another radar hole, but we know what this storm, we know what this one looks like. All right, we don't need the radar. If, if we completely lose the radar, we're just going to assume that it's going to continue to look like that all the way through Idabel. Everybody in the entire city should already be in their safe spot. If there's anybody left out on the street or not in their safe spot, it's almost too late. It is almost too late. You got to get there and you got to get there fast um, because this is a, a life-threatening situation. It's not... It's not a joke. It's not a regular tornado warning. It's not a regular Oklahoma storm. This one's the real deal. You got to go and you got to go fast. Um, this is what the radar looks like. This is the velocity. You can see that there's a huge area of rotation here, but it's distorted a little bit because we're on the outer skirts of the, uh, the radar field of view. Uh, the number one thing that's telling me that we're still seeing a big tornado down is this. We, 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 we see the uh, correlation coefficient drop uh, we see the the debris signature, and we are so far away from the radar center that the fact that we can still see that uh, is quite astonishing because it means that the, the debris is up in the air pretty high. Uh, and that's going to come up towards Ida Bell here shortly. Let me, I'm, I'm also going to do the same thing for you guys. Uh, I want to kind of tell you where exactly I think the storm is where the tornado might be and where it's going just to kind of resonate with the locals a little bit more. Unfortunately, the next thing that this tornado is going to hit is either right in the middle of or right next to the Rikers Retreat RV Park, which looks to me like a big one. If we've got a bunch of people out here in RVs in this area, it's, the, it's one of the most dangerous situations you could possibly be in in America right now if you're in an RV in the path of this storm. OK, um, we've got to get to a sturdy shelter if there's some sort of, uh, you know, community center bathroom, if, if, if it's made out of bricks, if it's attached to concrete on the ground, that's where you need to be. You got to abandon the RV. Um, uh, this is also going to go through the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, what is that lake there? Uh, Osprey Road. Uh, and then on its approach to uh, Idabel. Um, it'll enter the town if it stays on the ground. There it New is. New information. This tornado warning has been upgraded. Okay, it's official. This is a tornado emergency. Um, uh, this is a very rare situation. Um, this only happens during tornadoes that are almost certainly going to cause uh, just a catastrophic damage. Okay, this is a catastrophe about to happen in Ida Bell, Oklahoma. Not saying all this stuff to scare you. I'm just really trying to hammer it home to anybody who's left that maybe thinks, oh, I've lived in Oklahoma my whole life. I'm, I'm all right. No, you ain't. Okay, you got to go. This tornado, this massive tornado is going to enter the town on the southwest side near the Bypass Church of Christ and the Elite Green Leaf Dispensary. All right, if you know where that is, that's where the tornado is going to hit first. All right. It, 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 this thing could be the size of the whole town. So it's really like null and void for me to like try to name out these little places 
but if it, if, it, if it has a point to it, if it's small at the bottom, uh, then from there, it's more than likely going to enter through the Thunder Road Bar, um, Fat Tabs Barbecue, uh, Gemini Coffee Shop. You guys, you, if you know where the O'Reilly Auto Parts is next to Brahms Ice Cream, uh, in the Auto Zone and the Walmart, that's where this tornado is going. It's going right through the center of commerce in Ida Bell, Oklahoma. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan, and just um, uh, also to mention all of our viewers, you know, everyone who's trying to get information for Ida Bell, make sure you're listening carefully, but also everyone who is not in Ida Bell or doesn't know someone in Ida Bell, please make sure to take a mental break. Uh, in case this is overwhelming, it can get overwhelming very quickly uh, as we uh, see what happens with the situation. Please hope for the best, cross your fingers, whatever you do. Um, this is important. Thank you. Thank you very much. Meteorologist Andy Hill is a very uh, important message there. Uh, and hopefully, my goodness, hopefully we, we've got everybody sheltered in Ida Bell. I, I don't know how the message wouldn't. I mean, we've, we've been calling this out for a while. Hopefully everybody knows what's going on. But now, if there are people in this town that are listening to me, all we can do is brace and uh, just get ready. It, it's I, I can't tell you exactly where it is, um, but it is um, it's close, and it's going to come through here. Uh, hopefully, it's it's over pretty quickly, um, but uh, it'll come through the town uh, from the southwest. It'll exit to the northeast. There's a chance that it dissipates before it gets there. We don't know if that's going to happen, but it, I, I I we don't want to assume that's what's going to happen. But it's right. It's knocking on the door of Idaho, uh, Ida Bell, Oklahoma right now. If there's anybody that's just now tuning in, um, what you're watching is there's a tornado outbreak going on right now in uh, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Texas. And uh, we're getting ready to see a huge tornado uh, go straight through the town of Ida Bell, Oklahoma, um, uh, or at least... We think that's what's going to happen. It's hard to tell. We're on the outskirts of the radar thing here, but um, uh, we're trying to make sure everybody is in their safe spot. Uh, go ahead, um, Andy. Oh, never mind. Uh, uh, no, <laughs> sorry. I, I got something. Don't oh, okay. look at the stream text. We got a video of it near Clarksville, what it might look like coming towards Idabel. Oh, my goodness. Okay. All right. So here's a video. God, that is not... That is not something you see every day. Uh, this is the video of the massive violent wedge tornado uh, near uh, Clarksville, uh, Texas earlier. And this, is, this might be what it still looks like as it enters uh, Ida Bell, Oklahoma. If that's what it looks like when, as it enters Ida Bell, Oklahoma, the, the, the city will be, once again, it, it'll be a catastrophic event. Not saying those words to scare you. Uh, I just really want you to understand the severity of what's going on here. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Yes, Ryan. Middle tornado warnings, northeast Texas, west of Dangerfield. Tornado just went through Cason, Texas. It is on the ground debris signature. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so we're going to come back to that uh, right here in a second. It is important. We have the tornado emergency for Ida Bell. We're going to stick with you there, uh, but it's, it is important that we also take a look at this. We have another big tornado on the ground near Dangerfield. We've been talking about this one for a while. Hopefully everybody's in their safe spot. If you're not, you got to get there now. A big tornado is developing just to the west of the city, and it's moving up towards Naples, Texas. we got a correlation coefficient drop. This is ripping up trees, maybe people, pieces of people's homes, and throwing it into the sky, and we can see it uh, on radar here. This is quite possibly the third massive tornado um, that we've seen drop here. And, and they're all three still on the ground right now, I think, um, as this one goes to the north and west of Dangerfield towards Naples. That one's getting stronger. That one's getting massively stronger as it approaches Omaha and Naples. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another A new there it PDS, is. PDS tornado, tornado, tornado warning, warning for uh, Bowie, Cass, Morris, and Titus counties in Texas. If you're in Omaha, Naples, um, or any of these places. Once again, this is one of the most dangerous situations you have ever been in in your entire life. I don't care if you're 60 years old. You, this is something that you've got to take seriously. All right, um, you got to get into this, your safe spot. You cannot. 
you, you can't survive these kinds of tornadoes by just riding it out in the living room. All right, you got to go, you got to get into the, your storm cellar, hopefully, or the most interior room of your home. Uh, a wide spread tornado outbreak is currently underway um, uh, in Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Texas. We're going to cover all these um, uh, in depth here as we go forward, but I just want to remind everybody, um, if you're under a tornado warning right now, run, don't walk to shelter, protect your head. That's the thing. That's the main thing. Protect your head, wear a helmet, grab the daggone mattress off of the bed. Okay, if, if you're getting into a closet or something, literally pick the mattress up off the bed, take it with you, put it on top of you and your family until the thing passes by. If that's all, you, if that's the best you can do, that's what we've got to do. New information. This we've tornado, got a confirmed warning, tornado has been warning upgraded. Uh, now for Upshur County, uh, Texas. Confirmed tornado warning for Upshur County, Texas. We've got seven tornado warnings, one tornado emergency. Right now, at this very moment, a large tornado may be going through the town of Idabel. Uh, it's hard. It's really hard to tell exactly what's going on with that storm because we're on the outskirts of the radar there. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, radar hole is uh, keeping us from being able to see what, exactly what's going on. But more than likely, the tornado is still with us there, and uh, it's going through Idabel. So hopefully everybody's in uh, their safe spots, and uh, we're going to get through... Uh, this, as it continues to go off to the north and east, uh, it'll get real loud. Uh, and it's going to be quite the, the bumpy ride here for the next 10 minutes or so. But once it's over, uh, the, the thing that's, that's uh, kind of um, not good for Idabel is once this tornado has passed, you're still going to have another 20 minutes of like severe thunderstorm type weather afterwards just because of the odd way that this storm is set up. If I put this into motion, notice the southwest to northeast motion. Um, once the tornado goes by, you've still got a hail core, probably some 50, 60 mile an hour wind gust and rain that's gonna last for several minutes after the tornado goes by. So you're gonna wanna stay sheltered um, after the, if you have the ability to, you're gonna wanna stay sheltered uh, after this thing goes by. Hopefully you're wearing shoes, by the way. Uh, if anybody is in the path of these storms that hasn't taken shelter yet, like let's say you're in Broken Bow up here in um, Oklahoma, or let's say you're in Naples in Texas, Marietta, uh, Bassett, or Sims, or Boston, and you're, run, you're getting to your safe spot right now, get the helmet, get the shoes, okay? If your house is significantly damaged or your neighborhood is significantly damaged, and then maybe you have to evacuate, after the tornado goes by, you're going to want to be wearing shoes to walk through a, a nails and broken wood and metal and all this stuff. Make sure you are taking shoes for you and anybody that you're taking with you to your safe spot. Um, might be the last thing on your mind, but you're going to be glad you had them afterwards. Uh, okay, uh, we've got news from Heidi. Go ahead, Heidi. Hey, Ryan. Um, the news that I have right now is in regards to losing power. So in Douglas County, Missouri, I guess a storm moved and at least uh, 650 customers are without power. And then I'm also being told that uh, case in Texas, that town is without power right now as well. Okay, thank you, Heidi. Uh, I'm sure we're gonna be hearing a lot uh, more about these storms that are moving through uh, our tornado emergency and our uh, PDS tornado warnings uh, as we go forward. I'm, I'm concerned about Naples, Texas. Uh, I'm going to zoom in and do a, um, uh, do like a mesoscale kind of look at where that tornado is right here in a second. But just everybody in Naples, Marietta, Sims, and Boston, every single one of you guys need to be in your safe spot. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming we ha we're not hearing anything from Ida Bell yet, but a really unfortunate thing that just, that I'm just now seeing is that it does look like there's a little bit of an uptick in the drop in, in correlation there after the storm passed by the town center. So this thing might have been on the ground still in, in a significant way as it went through Idabel. I, I think we all assumed that was the case. I was just hoping for the best, uh, but it, it does look like maybe pieces of Idabel are now uh, being reflected to us in the sky uh, from this radar and now moving up towards Broken Bow and Eagletown. 
Uh, let's check in on our storm up here uh, near Fort Smith. A new tornado warning has been issued. Okay, I think I, I think this one has. I think it looks better. So the one that was coming up towards Hartford, um, still there. It, we still have a strong storm. We still have some rotation, but I don't think that there's a big nasty tornado on the ground anymore. So that's good news. Hartford and Huntington up here in Arkansas. It looks like that storm's kind of letting up a little bit. You're gonna want to stay in your safe spot though. Uh, because maybe a new area of rotation is forming up right here. All right. Okay, so that's Arkansas and Oklahoma. Um, Ida Bell, uh, right here in uh, Oklahoma, that's the, the tornado emergency. This storm, after it gets through Ida Bell, is going to go towards Crossroads and Hill Chapel and Broken Bow and Tyner. You guys are going to want to take shelter immediately and i can't I, I can't tell you exactly where the tornado is here if, for anybody that's just now tuning in um i can't be as precise with the ida bell storm because it, it's in what we call a radar hole there is no radar that is properly servicing uh this area like we can see in other places you a gotta get with warning. your local has been issued officials and demand that we get a new radar site down here because this is nuts all right, go ahead, um, Riley. Zach Hall has a tornado on the ground reporting power flashes. Where is he? He is Hawkins. Hawkins, Hawkins Texas. Big Sandy area. All right. Thank you very much. We One of our storm chasers has a tornado on the ground. Zach Hall. By the way, if you're just now tuning in, um, we have a team of storm chasers out here trying to keep an eye on this for us. But it has. it's just went like crazy uh the storms are all over the place and they're moving faster than what our storm chasers can um why do i not see zach's location hey zach can you give us an update ryan myself and vince are just east of hawkins texas just saw a very large power flash uh, unfortunately we're not able to make out a whole lot there's a lot of lightning though uh it definitely you know a stronger circulation just here off to our west okay so that's this is where they are vince welty and uh, zach hall are near big sandy texas hawkins is just to the west this is the area of rotation that might be producing a tornado right now they think they saw a power flash and that's going to be coming up towards Pritchett here soon. We've also got a big area of rotation up here near Gilmer. A new the entire town of Gilmer needs issued. to be taken shelter now. Looks like Brandon Kopic has found some damage. Big tree in the road here um, where he is. Okay, so he is near Kaysen. So what you're seeing here is damage from the tornado that's now moving towards Naples. So Brandon Kopic. Oh, wow, this is really interesting. So there's significant damage in front of Kopic here. And this is where he is. Let me take you to the radar. This is Copic's location. Brandon Copic's right here. And I know it's hard to see red on red. Let me switch to a different color. Uh, this is where Brandon Copic is. Okay. Now watch. This was about 10 minutes ago. Uh, there. That's our tornado. So it started picking up debris right over that road he's on. Has been issued. And now it's carrying it up towards Naples. A big tornado on the ground moving towards Naples, Texas um please take shelter immediately uh okay new lots of new tornado warnings coming in uh, just a reminder it's important that if you see your county uh, or your town show up on screen at any time today you got to take shelter everybody everybody should be taking shelter no matter if it's a tornado emergency a pds a, a whatever you want to call it um let's go uh and, and andy if you've got something uh, go ahead yeah. Yeah, I've got a few things, Ryan. We've got a tornado on the ground south of Mansfield, Arkansas. Uh, that's just south of the, the radar site of Fort Smith. So that is doing damage now. It's not confirmed yet. Will be upgraded soon, I imagine. South of Mansfield, headed towards Mansfield uh, itself along Highway 7196 uh, junction there. In addition to that, we know the Ida Bell, Oklahoma Mesonet site has been damaged and is no longer displaying information. And then of utmost importance is um, making sure that we have Naples, Texas front and center. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, meteorologist Andy Hill. Uh, go ahead, Riley, if you got something for me. Yeah. So Brandon Kopic is behind the storm that's about to go into Naples. 
you can see on his stream that there's trees down. It sounds like that's what the road looks like for miles. He's saying that there's major, major tree damage. And yeah. All right. Thank you, Riley. Guys, these are, these are the kind of tornadoes you see in movies. Okay. This is a big, big deal. Please take this seriously. Every warning that comes through needs to be treated as if it is you're, you, you're like, I just, I know I, I'm a part of the, these communities. I know how this is perceived. There are some people who are not taking this seriously, and those are the ones that are going to get hurt and possibly perish. Don't let that happen. Okay. Um, go ahead, Heidi, if you've got something for us. Yeah, so Red uh, County, uh, Red River County, actually, um, they are currently with half the residents are without power. So that brings us to a little over 2,500 residents. In Morris County, Texas, there's a report from a dispatcher reporting um, lots of damage in the area. All right. Thank you very much, uh, meteorologist Heidi uh, and Andy and everybody. I, you know what? I'm just going to leave. Heidi, Andy, and Riley, and everybody up, and you guys just chime in whenever you have something. All right, go ahead, Andy, if you've got something. All right, yeah, I've got a tornado on the ground, a correlation coefficient drop, tornado debris signature north, or just just south, rather, of Durham, Arkansas. That's our northernmost tornado warning to the east of Fayetteville, which is a population center I know. Uh, so that tornado is apparently on the ground uh, via the data that we have and is headed towards Huntsville, Arkansas, to the east of Hinesville in Madison County. So if you know somebody in Huntsville, Arkansas, that tornado is currently on the ground and tracking uh, to the north-northeast there. I, I, in addition to that, um, I don't think Mansfield, Arkansas, was ever upgraded to a confirmed tornado, but it is... Um, either i believe it weakened right before it, it made it to the town so we can hope for the best there uh, but that was also on the ground so um definitely multiple um multiple tornado yeah okay it intensified on that latest scan i see it now uh, so unfortunately mansfield the west side of it may have taken a, a hit from this uh tornado that is not confirmed yet by the national weather service Okay, um, and if Frank is listening, can we put uh, Brett Adair or uh, Brandon Kopik in the number one spot? Uh, we're going to tackle these top to bottom. The, the warning up here near Fayetteville, Arkansas, uh, this has got a tornado on the ground. It's going to come up towards Georgetown, Wesley, and Huntsville. New information. <sighs> Take shelter this now. We've got Madison County and Washington County, Arkansas now with that confirmed uh, tornado uh, warning. This is uh, hunting between Huntington and Mansfield. There's likely a big tornado on the ground at right now. Um, a new PDS tornado. And now we've got a PDS tornado warning for uh, Sevier County and McCurtain County. So Sevier County, Arkansas, and McCurtain County, Oklahoma. That's a PDS tornado warning uh, out here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, ring the alarm on that. If you're in McCurtain County, New information. Um, this tornado or warning. Sevier has County in Arkansas or Oklahoma, you got to take shelter immediately. We now have a confirmed warning for Franklin County, Arkansas, and Sebastian County, Arkansas. Every tornado warning now, pretty much, is confirmed that there is a tornado on the ground with it, and a, and they are all looking pretty big. All right, so. Um, Let's zoom in on this. The one that's coming through Mansfield in Huntington right now, this is a big, nasty, dangerous tornado. It's going to go towards Abbott and Crossroads and Milltown and Washburn. You got to go. You got to get to shelter now. Go ahead, Riley. Uh, Brandon is not being allowed to continue on the road that he is on, but he's reporting that there are injuries in the pass of the tornado, and they're trying to do what they can to find those people and help them out. All right. Thank you very much. Um, uh, so we've got that, that's down there near Naples, Texas, and we're going to go to that storm right here in a second. Um, actually let's, let's go on there now after we look at the one that just went through Ida bill. Okay. So I know we got a lot of people listening in Ida bill and I don't know what happened there. I don't know if we've heard anything yet, but this is, um, 
it does look like a tornado hit the town and it's still on the ground and it's south of Broken Bow and it's moving towards Tyner and Eagle Town. You got to go. You got to get to shelter. This is a dangerous situation. And they just extended that warning out in, into Arkansas. It includes uh, uh, Cheatham and DeQueen. Let's go down, down, down to um, closer to Naples. And Oh, yeah. So this is in Naples now. This is entering the town of Naples. Hopefully, when we called this out, uh, you know, 30, 40 minutes ago, everybody got to shelter. Uh, but the storm that um, uh, produced all the damage down here where Brandon is, uh, is now moving into the town of Naples. It could very well still have a big, nasty tornado on the ground, uh, and it's it's going right through the town, y'all. Uh, I, I, like everybody should be in their safe spot. Next in line is going to be Dalton, uh, Brian's Mill, Darden, uh, Sims, Old Union, and Carbondale, uh, and New Boston. All right, this is a dangerous storm. Uh, you've got to get to shelter. These are not playing around. All right, these are life-threatening um, oh, like rare kind of tornadoes that you don't even see very often in Texas. So please, please get to shelter. And we're going to kind of uh, watch these near Fort Smith now. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan just shared a picture of the tornado earlier on in its life that is now impacting the area around Naples, Texas. So let this serve as another a stim another stigma so that people take action in the Naples area. And eventually now Boston, Texas is now in the line of fire in um, what county is that? Bowie County, Bowie County. All right. Thank you, Andy. Um, what you're looking at on the screen is a, a tornado that was on the ground just uh, not too long ago. This is what's moving through the Naples uh, area now, New Boston. You're at the edge of the warning. You might feel like you have time, but it's the time is now to get get to your safe spot. These are big, nasty tornadoes, and uh, you're next in line. Uh, so get there now. If you are in McCurtain, Red River, uh, McCurtain County or Red River County in Texas, you got to take shelter. If you're in Sevier or McCurtain County uh, between Arkansas and Oklahoma, uh, you got to take shelter. Bowie or Bowie, Cass, and Morris counties, uh, PDS tornado warning there. Uh, reported confirmed tornado in Washington and Madison counties in Arkansas, uh, Franklin and Sebastian counties in Arkansas, and then um, a confirmed uh, tornado in Upshur, Texas. The only two tornado warnings that exist right now that we don't know for sure if there's a tornado down uh, are in Logan and Scott counties in, in Arkansas, but I can tell you just from looking at the radar that those that there probably is. A tornado down there and i think we've got something from both heidi and uh, riley uh heidi you can go first i don't have anything for you ryan i'm sorry oh, okay. um i'm sitting here though really checking the feeds and everything as soon as i get an update i will let you know all right <laughs> the lights are flashing so much i think i'm just seeing colors uh, it, riley was it you do you have something Yes, I do. Um, if you pull up Brandon's stream, you can see he is in the road, and that is a boat on top of a car. A house got leveled, and their trees are almost completely gone from the path of the tornado. I'm working on getting pictures from Kat, who is with Brandon right now, and I will put those in stream text when I have them. Okay, if you can uh, let Kat know, uh, because I'm sure Brandon's going to be really busy but if at any time they get any sort of new information that might need to directly come from them over the air cat can come through on zello too uh and just kind of i, I can talk to her that way but uh, thank you very much uh, riley uh for that brandon Kopic is uh in in a uh, pretty significantly damaged zone down here uh to the south of naples texas and that's the storm that just went through the town of naples a new um, tornado warning has been issued my goodness. And we got a tornado warning for Camp, Cass, Marion, and Morris counties in Texas. And now I think we've got something from uh, meteorologist Heidi, right? Yes, you do have something for me now. Um, there is a reported of a large tornado on the ground in Upsur County near Highway 11. First responders are struggling to reach impacted areas due to debris um, and many power outages. This is being reported by Upsur County Public Safety. All right, thank you very much. Keep us updated. Um, uh, once again, guys, 
all of these tornado warnings, all of these purple polygons that you're seeing contain extremely dangerous storms uh, with, with more than likely tornadoes on the ground. We've got to get to shelter in Pritchett, Gilmer, uh, Lone Star, Dangerfield, uh, Boston, Sims, all these places in Texas, and then in Oklahoma, um, Broken Bow, Goodwater, uh, and then in Arkansas, DeQueen, Gillum, and uh, in Arkansas, Greenwood, Charleston, Boonville, Waldron, and uh, Huntsville. All of these places that I just mentioned could be in the direct path of, of a monster tornado. We're talking, you know, a, a, a violent one. So please take this seriously and get to shelter. We're going to look at um, some different storms from some different vantage points here uh, through the Radar Omega uh, platform. Looks like the, the rotation, man, this is such a mess of a storm here uh, south of Fort Smith. Uh, we had a big tornado. Wow. Look at that. Look at the motion on this real quick. We had a big tornado down here near Mansfield. Um, it, and it kind of like curled up, went almost due north in, inside of this storm, raced past Dayton, um, Arkansas, and now it looks like it's lifted. So that's good. But we're still, we could see a new tornado come out of this at any time, and that's coming, going towards Charleston uh, in Arkansas. Um, let's see here. Can we see anything on this storm that went through Idabel and Broken Bow? This still looks like uh, a tornado is down here near Broken Bow. That's going to be coming up towards Granis and Wix. Take shelter now. Um, I'm going to come back. A new tornado warning has been issued. Got a radar indicated tornado warning in Logan County, Arkansas now. Uh, let me go to Shreveport. And I think, um, go ahead, Andy, by the way. Hi, Ryan. Um, two areas of immense concern, Bassett, Texas, along Highway 67. A strong rotation is now evident there. Um, so Bassett, Texas is now uh, very, very soon to be under fire, um, minutes away from possible impact by a tornado. And also, I, I do, um, I am pretty confident that the tornado that impacted Idabel is back on the ground to the west of Eagle Town. We have a deeper correlation coefficient signature there. Uh, lower values so a tornado debris signature likely there will head straight toward granis and wicks in arkansas along highway 71 and 278 junction all right thank you very much uh, this is the storm near bassett um this is the one that just went through naples and it's so the town of Bassett is imminently within the next couple of minutes about to receive a direct impact from a large dangerous tornado uh, then Sims after that. Everybody in the town needs to be taken shelter or your life is in extreme danger. The storm that went through Ida Bell and that I believe we're going to start he hearing about here soon, uh, the, the, that tornado's back on the ground. It's, it's in uh, eastern Oklahoma uh, near Eagle Town, and it'll be moving towards those towns in western uh, portions of... Uh, Brian, you got a Arkansas, copy. It's Cat. Uh, near Granis and Gillum, okay? And that is uh, Cat who is with Storm Chaser Brandon Kopic, who's got an update for us. Let's hear from them. Uh, yes, we're listening. Go ahead. Yeah, so currently Brandon is inside a house right now that just got absolutely decimated by a tornado that blew through here just south of Case, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. To my left, directly to my left, there is a pontoon boat that got lofted into the air. I'm seeing just debris of the house all around right now. Cars flattened, there's branches, power lines are down. It's, my goodness gracious. All right, so that's an update from Brandon Kopic out there who is uh, helping with search and rescue, uh, which is something that Brandon and a lot of our storm chasers often do uh, during situations like this. Um, uh, and unfortunately it's needed and it's probably needed on a wide spread basis out here. I, I can't imagine how many people are currently in a downpour in a hailstorm, and like, like their house is crumbled around them. Like that, that's happening right now to maybe, you know, uh, lots of people in these areas that have been uh, impacted. So hopefully people are getting to them. Um, but it might take a while. Uh, Riley, go ahead. Um, I have a picture or a video of all the damage in stream text for you, including that boat. And you can see that it had been thrown across the street from where the house was. 
All right, I'm going to pull that up. Um, guys, bear with me here as uh, obviously this is becoming a... This is becoming a, 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 a really big deal. It's a, it's a lot to keep up with. We're going to take it one step at a time. Here is that video. Let me start it over here. There's the boat. Oh, wow. My goodness. Yeah, so this is... This is... The, and look at that truck that's like halfway uh, off the side of the cliff too uh, but what i was getting ready to say is this is the beginning of the damage path so if you remember when we looked back at um the the tornado progression on radar what we see there all of that damage is coming from uh possibly one of the weaker points of the tornado is from what we saw on radar anyway so uh, everywhere to the south and west of Naples and right up to the city might be experiencing similar or worse damage, uh, which is quite unfortunate. Uh, we're, we're getting so much uh, kind of like pictures and videos in. Uh, I'm going to try to go through some of this here, but I got to get back to the radar and relay some new information on the, the new warnings that are coming in and where the storms are going next. But we have major damage in Red River County, Texas. Uh, See here, Gary falling of Ida Bell, Oklahoma. So I don't, I don't think we have any. Do we have anything from Ida Bell yet? Are we hearing anything out of that town? Uh, go ahead, Andy. Uh, not that I know of, Ryan. But what I do know is that there is likely the storm that's about to impact Bassett and Sims headed towards Boston, uh, Texas, has cycled and is definitely now putting down a new tornado right along Highway 67. Uh, I do believe that Bassett is about to take a head-on hit from this tornado, so I hope everyone was able to get safe spots there. And uh, Sims may a be brushed or warning very close has been issued. Um, an encounter with this tornado headed towards Boston. We have Storm Chaser Brett Adair in DeKalb, Texas, right now on Highway 82 near I-30. So if you know anyone driving on I-30 as well, east of Mount Pleasant, please let them know they're headed into a dangerous storm. And uh, I think Brett Adair might be able to give us a look at this, but he is approaching it from the wrong side, I think. So um, that's about the best we can do with that storm. All right. Thank you, meteorologist Andy Hill. Bassett, the town of Darden and Bassett, south of Ward Creek in uh, Salome in uh, Texas here, is about to take a direct hit from uh, a, a tornado. You got to be in your safe spot. You got to be in the most interior room of your house or preferably underground and brace for impact. We got to get everybody there. We know for a fact that these storms are not only producing tornadoes, but they're producing the kind of tornadoes that flatten well-built homes. So you've got to do everything you can uh, to protect yourself in a situation like this um, because it's, it's not going to end well if you don't. Um, uh, so we don't want you to be scared. If you go and you get in your safe spot now, as soon as the warnings are issued for you and you stay there and you, and you brace for it and, you, and you're ready for it, you're going to be less scared, and that's what we want for you. Um, this is a video of the tornado that went towards Ida Bell earlier. This, once again, this is not something you see every day, even in a place like Oklahoma and Texas. This, this is, un, this is especially in November. Okay. So these are the kind of tornadoes that we're seeing right now. And this is why we're hearing of all this damage, uh, you know, people trapped in their homes. We're, we're hearing of, uh, uh, you know, uh, well-built homes being flattened. We're, we're hearing of cars being thrown off the road and power outages and all this stuff. It's because every time you see that PDS warning pop up and, and the, the, the tornado emergency that we had, this is the kind of tornado that we're dealing with. This could be similar um, to uh, the kind of tornado that's moving up towards New Boston right now, okay? So uh, if you're in Bassett, we're, we're getting hit by a tornado now, and it's gonna move up through Sims, uh, pretty much following Highway 98 and paralleling uh, Interstate 30, and it's gonna come right into New Boston. So we want everybody up here uh, to take shelter now. Um, let me see here. Uh, I'm gonna go back up to the uh, Ida Bell storm and 
Take a look at uh, Eagle Town. Looks like there was a big correlation coefficient drop up there just moments ago, and it's still we, we can still see it uh, as it moves towards uh, Cheatham, or I, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, but now the same storm that produced that, that tornado that we were just looking at, that same storm is moving very close to the uh, Oklahoma-Arkansas border. It's likely got another big tornado down, just as big as that. But now it's dark, right? You can't see it. You're definitely not going to see it. And it's coming up towards Kellum uh, and uh, Ch uh, Cheatham. I, I, hopefully I'm saying that right. A new and PDS we have another tornado warning um, PDS tornado warning uh, for Little River County and uh, Bowie County, Texas. That's uh, Little River County, Arkansas. And I believe that was, uh, yeah, Bowie County, uh, Texas. Sorry, there's just a lot. There's a whole lot uh, happening right now. Um, so get to shelter up there and uh, brace for impact in Cheatham and Kellum. Uh, all the way up towards uh, uh, Vandervo Vandervoort, Wikes, Mina, Nunley, Acorn. All these places in Arkansas need to be in their safe spots. And, uh, of course, New Boston. Very, very important that New Boston is uh, getting ready and bracing for impact right now because a big storm, uh, possibly a big tornado, is heading right for you uh, right now as well. We currently have multiple uh, tornadoes on the ground. Uh, we have eight tornado warnings. I think we peaked out at 11 j just moments ago. And we are still several hours away from the end of this. Okay? It won't be until uh, the, the cold front new information kind of this uh, tornado uh, warning catches up with all upgraded. these storms and sweeps them up and, and no new uh, prefrontal cells form. It won't be until that happens that we're done with this supercellular <laughs> kind of uh, tornado outbreak, all right? And we just got another confirmed tornado warning. Um, and remember, we got Little River and Bowie counties in Arkansas, uh, Sevier and McCurtain County in Arkansas and Oklahoma, um, uh, Bowie in Texas, Cass and Morris counties in Texas, uh, all under confirmed or, or PDS tornado warnings. We have confirmed tornadoes in Montgomery, Pike, and Polk counties in Arkansas and Franklin and Sebastian now we have regular radar indicated tornado warnings for Logan, Camp Cass, Marion, Morris, Upshur, Logan, and Scott counties in Texas and uh, Scott counties in Arkansas. So that's what we've got going on right now. The, the two biggest tornadoes that I think we're dealing with right now is the one north of Eagle Town moving into Arkansas and Oklahoma and the one that's coming up towards Boston in Texas. That's That's a... Yeah, that's a really, really bad looking radar signature there. So we need everybody in Boston to get to shelter. We've got Brett Adair, storm chaser Brett Adair coming into Boston. He might make it there just in time, but he's in a really dangerous spot. He's in a really dangerous spot. So hopefully he's safe about it. Uh, a new tornado warning has been issued. We've got a new tornado warning in Howard County, Arkansas. And we've got our news update from Heidi. Go ahead, Heidi. Hey Ryan, um, the mesonet outside of Idabel, um, I guess the tornado moved pretty close to that site and there was a 108 mile per hour wind gust that was reported there. All right, thank you so much, uh, Heidi, for keeping us updated on everything. And um, yeah, I, I don't even know where to start, honestly, with trying to break these down. I, I really, something's telling me to kind of stick with this one near Boston. Um, I really hope similar to the, what we did with Ida bill, uh, we really need to effectively communicate to the people of Boston and the surrounding areas in Texas and Northeast Texas, that this is the real deal. This is not a joke. This is something that you've got to, you got to take shelter for, or you are unnecessarily really putting your life at risk here. Uh, I'm going to reach out to Brett Adair. Um, uh, Hey Brett. We're on the edge of our seats uh, watching your feed there. Be safe, but just keep us updated on what you're seeing. The, the radar looks absolutely nasty uh, as the storm approaches Boston. All right. Yeah, uh, if, if anybody's just now tuning in, what you're watching is a, a really a devastating uh, event is, is, is occurring here, a, a 
widespread tornado outbreak is underway in uh, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Texas. We've seen some big tornadoes uh, move through some pretty populated areas. Many homes have been destroyed. Uh, lots of people displaced. We're hearing about injuries. Uh, and who knows, you know, how, the extent of that because it's dark. A lot of these places, it's still raining. Uh, and the, the first responders can't even get to the right places because trees are blocking the road and stuff. So uh, it, it, it is a very bad situation, but it, it is moving out of some of the harder hit areas. So, uh, for example, places like Paris, Texas, I think the threat for the most part is completely over for you. Um, and the farther east this line gets right here, the better off we are. Everybody in front of it still under the gun. Everybody behind it is starting to look better. Uh, go ahead, uh, Andy first and then Riley. Okay. Hey, Ryan, there's a, a couple of areas of concern right now. There's a tornado pass or a possible tornado near Lone Star, Texas, passing pretty close to where Brandon team is helping people. I think they should be out of the way of any tornado risk there. Uh, in addition, Vince and Zach are getting raced, chased by a tornado right along uh, Highway 155 there. Um, it is marching down on their door. I think there's a bit of side lobe contamination there, but I'm not sure. Um, it looks pretty dangerous, and they're right next to it. In addition to that, Brett is core punching right now to get ahead of this um, it, I, I, incredible tornado debris signature that's going to brush Boston and New Boston to the west. Brett is barely out in front of this thing. If we can somehow, if Brett's feed is, if, if we can main that when he, it's like minutes away, um, that storm will be headed towards Arden. Uh, the Arden and Aline area near Ben Lamond in Arkansas uh, down the line once it crosses the Red River. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Riley, what you got? Uh, I just have an update from Brandon. There is multiple very bad injuries in and around the Kaysen area. EMS is on scene, and the full extent of how many people need help right now is unknown. There it is. Another New information. Emergency. This tornado warning has been upgraded. All right, we've got a tornado emergency for Little River County, Arkansas, and Bowie, or Bowie County, Texas. This is our second uh, tornado emergency of the night um and if anybody doesn't know the tornado emergency is uh, the rarest and highest level tornado warning that could possibly be issued and it is only issued whenever a um uh, a significantly catastrophic is event is about to unfold uh, and that's what we believe we're about to see here at, near boston texas brett adair is right in line of this thing i i i brett is a smart guy okay he's and he's a good storm chaser i hope he knows how much danger he's in right now but he he is continuing to move to the east and i believe he's going to be able to give us a, a view of this thing as it grazes boston to the west a a a, a tornado emergency is in effect here and uh you, you guys got to get to shelter let me zoom in and give you a, a little bit of a better look and to exactly where this is and where it's going. Uh, let's see, correlation coefficient. <sighs> My God, look at this. This this giant blue blob here is debris in the air, and it signifies where the tornado is. It's paralleling Interstate 30, moving up towards uh, New Boston and West uh, Boston. It's going through Old Salem right now. The tornado, this huge tornado, is is going to engulf the entire Highway 82 and Interstate 30 intersection. Um, I I really hope nobody's on this interstate right through here. That that's going to be a that's going to be a bad situation. But uh, New Boston and Boston on the western side of town, a massive a new tornado, tornado warning is currently uh, underway, and it's going to continue to cause problems. Um, all the way up uh, through into Woodstock, past Highway 8, into Arkansas, uh, near Foreman, Rocky, Comfort, uh, Wallace, Arden, and Wilton. All right, that's our tornado emergency here. And that is one of the most insane debris signatures for a tornado you'll ever see on radar. And uh, go ahead, Heidi. Yes, Ryan, I just want to let you know that I just got a report uh, that 911 dispatch is confirming multiple homes are destroyed in Ida Bell. All right. Unfortunately, 
Uh, Heidi is coming through, kind of, just kind of confirming uh, what we feared there. Um, with uh, more than likely, that town is uh, is having a hard time right now. Just from what we've seen on uh, radar, I would be surprised uh, if there's not a significant, uh, you know, disaster that's uh, that's happening there right now. And 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 I I just, I just hope that everybody's all right. Unfortunately, a similar situation is about to unfold on the western side of New Boston and Boston and Texas. And um, I'm going to try to I'm going to try to tell you where I think this tornado is. It's so big, it, like th this tornado is likely so big that it's almost pointless for me to tell you like which Walmart it's next to, because it, it, it could literally be a half mile mile wide. And uh, it could be near two Walmarts at once. If you, if you know what I'm saying, like if you're from this area, you know where uh, the season of lights uh, is. You know where the ASI uh, Corporation is. You know where these places are. It's somewhere in there is where this big uh, tornado is. All right. Uh, on the western side of uh, New Boston and Boston, uh, some places that are in the direct path of this thing, we're talking about minutes from now, uh, is the Pulaski Cemetery, G&G &G Tracture, uh, Dixie Branch, um, let's see here, Gary Wayne Cemetery. Thankfully, a lot of this area on the western side of New Boston is is kind of rural, but there's an, uh, like, if this tornado... Obviously, we can't tell you exactly to the like the pinpoint area where where it is, but if it's even slightly lopsided or, or making contact with the ground on the eastern side of this blue correlation coefficient drop, then we're worried about uh, Papa Tim's Crawdad Hole, which is a, a, a restaurant, uh, Love's Travel Stop. Um, and, uh, of course, everywhere around that Pulaski Cemetery, I really do believe if you're familiar with the Highway 82 and uh, Interstate 30 intersection there is a big, you know, there's overpasses, there's ramps, off ramps, on ramps. You've got the Pilot Dealer Tiger down there. You've got the uh, Love's uh, gas station. That whole area is smaller than what this tornado looks like. It, it could be. All right, so that, that whole area could be in the tornadic circulation right now, uh, and it's going to continue to move off to the north and to the east. Watch out over there towards Little Country Greenhouse, uh, New Covenant Life Church, uh, and then more significantly or, or more uh, maybe a couple minutes into the future, uh, we're talking about uh, maybe uh, Highway 8 near Woodstock and uh, Arden and Comet uh, being next in line for this thing. And we've got an update for um, Riley. Go ahead. Hey, Ryan, Brett Adair has the tornado on stream and he's going to get as close as safely possible. All right. Sounds good. Um, where is Brett? Okay. All right. So we're, we've got Brett pulled up. Uh, Brett Adair is on this storm that's got the tornado emergency on it. And he says he's got it on stream. I'm not seeing it, but of course... I'm sure we'll get a video here soon from him a as well. A new tornado warning has been issued. It doesn't Brett matter if we can see it or he not. Can smell it. He said you can smell it. He said you can smell the debris in the air. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, Brett Adair is uh, really close to this tornado. I mean, it's kind of nerve wracking just watching this video because literally right behind him, I believe, is is this giant. Uh, monstrous tornado um, we might see it here illuminated by a lightning strike or a power flash um, if if we he can point us in the right direction but anyways what we're looking at here is storm chaser brett adair who is just north of boston texas and he's given us a view of this uh dangerous situation where we've got this tornado emergency um and it does look like a, a this huge tornado is still on the ground um this tornado emergency is for Little River in Bowie counties, okay? This is, goes into Arkansas. This is going to go west of Texarkana, all right? Uh, and it's going to cross the border between Arkansas and Texas right there near Arden. And it's going to probably continue to cause problems at least until Arden, all right? So everybody needs to be uh, running, uh, not walking to shelter in that general vicinity. I, I don't know if I see anything through Brits or not 
but it's there. Like it's somewhere around where he is. That's where the tornado is. And it's, um, it's a big one. Hopefully everybody's in their safe spot. We also have um, a potential uh, tornado uh, coming together or, or dropping right now near Lone Star, Texas, south of Dangerfield. And of course we have that big tornado up there near uh, Wicks uh, in Gillum and Granis in Arkansas. I, I'm, cr I'm trying to stay focused on uh, this one near Boston though, because I know we got a lot of people watching from that area. We, we do continue to get reports in from Idabel, uh, Paris, and all of these places that we, we've been covering for the past several hours. It doesn't look good. Places just to the south and west of Naples um, are seeing um, just significant dam damage. We're, we're hearing about tons of injuries. First responders can't make it to the, the, the places they need to. Power outages galore. Um, it's just it, this is looking like a worst case scenario right now that is unfolding in uh, Oklahoma and Texas. A widespread, very memorable uh, tornado outbreak is currently underway. Every single tornado warning, every single tornado warning that is issued from here on out needs to be treated as if it's a life or death situation because more than likely it is. Uh, debris is currently being lofted 20,000 feet into the air near Boston, Texas. See here from the, the 3D splice of the correlation coefficient, 20,000 feet into the air. That's how high up the debris is being flung. And uh, here, it's giant. All right, so people are seeing it somewhere. Riley, do you know what chat's freaking out about? Uh, yeah, you can see the tornado on Brett's stream in between lightning flashes if you just sit there watching you will see it it's huge so you have to be ready for it to be huge because it almost fills up the entire frame of the camera on his stream okay i'm gonna leave his uh feet up sorry guys i didn't know that it was visible um yeah yeah we saw it two times two times two lightning flashes full almost full of the like half of the whole screen okay if if anybody can get a quick clip of that uh, I'll i'll replay it uh, so we're watching Brett Adair's uh, feed here, and this giant tornado, it's, it's hard to even see it, uh, according to what uh, these guys A are new saying. tornado warning. Uh, but has it's been visible issued. here through Brett's uh, live camera. This is north of Boston, Texas. It's just about to cross the, uh, the Red River uh, area here. Sent that to you, Ryan. You can see that's a, that's a still of Brett's stream. Okay. Oh, man. That is, uh, I don't even know. I don't know if you guys can see this clearly or not. It might just be all these studio lights pointing at my glasses. <laughs> but, like, this is ginormous. Uh, let me try to draw the outline here. That's the tornado. That's what's visible. That's what's on the ground at this very second in... Um, Texas to the north of Boston, a monster nighttime uh, damaging tornado. A new tornado warning has just been about issued. to move into Arkansas. Uh, Arden, Arden needs to be taken shelter. Uh, Foreman, Arkansas needs to be taken shelter. Aline, Ashtown, uh, Ashdown, uh, Wilton, all these places need to be running to shelter right now. The storm is not playing around. Oh, here's an even better view of that. My God. Look at that, y'all. Look at that. Holy smokes. Uh, once again, there's not a lot else I can say other than get to shelter. In, in, in a situation like this, you've got to hunker down. You've got to protect yourself. You can't, can't ride this one out in anywhere other than the most uh, interior and protected room that you have. Uh, and this is this is north of Boston, Texas right now, and it's moving directly towards Arden, Arden, um, uh, Arkansas. This is right around the uh, the area where um, uh, Texas, Arkansas, and Oklahoma meet. It's to the west of Texarkana. Shoot. 
and our storm chaser Brett Adair is following this thing. So he's he's positioned himself kind of perfectly to keep up with it. But it looks like we've lost his feed. It looks like he's frozen right now. So I'm coming back to the radar to show you what we've got uh, there. And th this is it. This is where the tornado is right now. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Hey, Ryan. Hughes Springs, Texas, that's east of Dangerfield, east of where Brandon, Vince, and Zach and Chris are. That is now on the ground. Tornado debris signature just went through parts of Hughes Springs. In addition to that, we have two new areas of interest that we are not focusing on right now, and that is the southernmost tornado warnings near Rusk, Texas. Uh, the first storm has passed through Rusk proper. It is headed towards Henderson, which is a 13,000 uh, population town. And then we also have a another tornado warning just to the south of it that will uh, parallel this northern storm and pass near areas of Recklaw and um, Laneville, Texas. So down south, the, the storms are starting to organize as they head towards the Henderson and Carthage areas in Rusk and Panola counties in, te in East Texas. Okay, um, we have more tornado warnings coming out. We have more storms to, to kind of try to divide our uh, attention uh, across. These southern ones do look pretty concerning. Rusk, Recklaw, Cushing, uh, Gallatin, Henderson, uh, Laneville, all these places in Texas. You've dodged a bullet so far today, but now these storms are kind of coming into your area and more than likely will produce uh, tornadoes here shortly. Um, additionally, we've got a tornado on the ground uh, that just went through or near Hughes Springs, uh, south and east of Dangerfield, and that's going to continue to move off to the northeast up towards Marietta and Douglasville. I am just going to go through all this stuff again. Uh, Brett Adair is following a massive tornado that just went through the northwest side or to the north and west of Boston, Texas. It is now entering the uh, the border between Arkansas and Texas. Still a big tornado down there. It's coming up towards Arden, uh, Arkansas. And then back up here in Arkansas, let's switch radar sites here. Let's come to the Radar Omega app. We have a bunch of uh, tornado warnings up here as well. Um, over here near Baker Springs, uh, we've got a big area of uh, rotation and potentially a, a, a tornado down um, over here as well. Uh, yeah, and that's going to move up towards Macaulay, Nunley, Mena, Acorn. This is in Arkansas. And then we've got a, a big mess of tornado warnings up here just to the east of Fort Smith. But thankfully, none of these look like they're currently producing a tornado, uh, although they could be. So we want everybody in, in Ozark through Coxville to Boonville and Magazine, Arkansas to be taking shelter now. Still the most concerning uh, area of interest is going to be down here in uh, in Texas. Couple different places. If still the storm that's coming into Arden uh, now in Arkansas. That's that's a big one. Uh, PD or tornado emergency uh, kind of uh, was issued for that storm, and then um, we've got a huge tornado showing up now, uh, just past Hughes Springs. We saw it pop up there, and now it looks like a, another significant one. Uh, moving up towards Marietta and Douglasville, as you can see on that last scan from the correlation coefficient. The the blue there, the deeper the blue, the less correlation we're, we are having with the rest of the things in the atmosphere. That means that there's a bunch of there's a bunch of raindrops and hailstones, uh, and then there's shingles and tree branches and leaves and you know pieces of of things that shouldn't be there. And the radar knows that, and it tells us by dropping the correlation coefficient. So that's how we know for sure that there's a big nasty tornado on the ground right there uh, moving up towards Marietta and Douglasville. Everybody in Northeast Texas, East Texas, uh, Western Arkansas, um, Northwestern Louisiana should be awake right now and hyper vigilant, ready to get to shelter quickly. Okay, so if we know anybody in this area uh, near Texarkana, for example, even Shreveport, Louisiana, Jefferson, um, let's see here, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Nashville, Arkansas, all the way up towards Clarksville, Arkansas, Russellville, anywhere that's in, you know, the next hour or two that's in the line here for these storms needs to 
stay up and, and watch these storms as they come in. And it might be 10, 11, uh, midnight before they get there. Uh, but as we've seen, th this is no joke. This is a widespread tornado outbreak of uh, extreme significance. We, we're, we're hearing about a ton of injuries and damaged towns, neighborhoods, houses. Uh, we don't want anybody out in front of this thing to be surprised by it. There's no excuse at this point. We have Lord knows how many people watching this right now. We've got pictures and videos of some of the most in insane tornadoes you've ever seen. And we have the internet. Everybody downstream should know now what's happening and what's coming. A new tornado warning has been issued. Uh, and you can help me do that. You can help me spread the word there uh, by sharing this stream or, or, or the stuff that I'm tweeting out uh, as far and as wide as possible. Does look like... Yeah, that tornado is still down there uh, near Marietta. That's going to continue to move up towards Douglasville. Um, maybe, maybe the big tornado that went through north of Boston that's now moving up towards Arden, maybe that one might be weakening a little bit. I don't know for sure. We don't want to say that for sure. We want everybody in Arden to uh, get into shelter and stay there, but I'm hoping for the best. Uh, Reed Timmer tweeted out a large wedge tornado just took my drone uh, from a gas station in New Boston, Texas. That was six minutes ago. A large wedge tornado just took my drone from a gas station in uh, New Boston, Texas. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan, um, to the southeast, south of Ozark, uh, Arkansas, that's to the east of KSRX radar. There is now a debris, a tornado debris signature um, with a very tight and small couplet that's going to pass over Highway 23 to the west of Altus, Arkansas, and possibly east of Ozark. So I, I don't even know how to pronounce that, but um, along Highway 23 slash uh, Highway 64, the Highway 23 and 64 junction, that's where this uh, tornado is located. I believe it now has a debris signature and it is not a confirmed warning. All right, thank you very much, Andy, for the heads up there. It does look like this is producing a tornado. It's going to be moving into the Whitaker Village, uh, Sutherland uh, Crossroads, uh, Hunt, Coal Hill, and all these, uh, honestly, it looks like a lot of um, little uh, subdivisions and uh, kind of residential areas near I-40 uh, to the east of Ozark. So please take shelter uh, if you're out here. This is a dangerous situation. This one might be quick but it could still be inc incredibly powerful uh, and damaging in, in nature. So don't think about it. Just get there, get to shelter now. Um, and we'll let you know whenever it's time uh, to uh, leave that uh, sheltered spot. We're still needing to be in our safe spot near Marietta and Douglasville as well. We are also uh, needing to be there in Arden. Um, it's hard to tell. It looks to me like, the big cease the debris signature associated with the, the, the tornado that maybe sparked the uh, tornado emergency. It looks like that is dissipating a little bit, but the velocity now uh, and the reflectivity down here looks way more intense. So we, we could see a recycling. We could see another tornado start to come down here uh, as this big storm comes towards Arden. It doesn't matter if it's a new tornado or the same old one. Everybody there needs to be taking shelter because this is going to be uh, a life-threatening event uh, in, up here near Aline, Arden, in Wilton, uh, Arkansas. Man. A new tornado warning has been issued. New tornado warning for Johnson and Logan counties in Arkansas. All kinds of, uh, all kinds of crazy stuff going on with our storm chasers. We're, we're losing their feeds quite often, so I can't pull them up. But as soon as we get uh, any new information from them, I will try to... A new to. tornado warning has been issued. Uh, go ahead, Heidi. Hey, Ryan. Um, it looks like that tornado that went through the New Boston area uh, took a direct hit along and across um, Highway or Interstate 30. Um, I'm getting reports of major tree damage being found. And then also out of Bowie County, um, have a report of a first responder that has reported a power line that is down on his home. All right. 
Uh, thank you, Heidi. Lots of damage reports coming out. And um, we're going to continue to hear those. This is this will be a long night of um, hearing about damage. And uh, tomorrow, too, I, I'm sure there's going to be all kinds of really heart, heartbreaking and, and kind of uh, bad stories coming out of some of these storms, especially the ones uh, near Paris, Texas, uh, Idabel, uh, and Clarksville. Um, and uh, hopefully, um, it, not as bad, but it, it does look like it's probably going to be the same kind of story over there near Boston. Uh, those three, this corridor right here today, uh, between the border of uh, Texas and Oklahoma along the Red River, has just been devastating uh, for uh, tornadoes today. Uh, over here uh, on Twitter, we've got another picture uh, from uh, Brett Adair earlier of the giant tornado that was uh, just to the uh, north of Boston, Texas earlier. This is a, a picture of that. We had that live here on the stream. Um, and, and there's a lot of stuff like this coming in, by the way. It's like there's so much um, uh, imagery of the damage and of the tornadoes that I want to... Um, a new tornado share with you, but we, we're, we're trying to delegate the time here to uh, all of the important information, all the new warnings, all of the progression of the storms. Uh, wow, this is this is another shot of that massive wedge. New information: This tornado warning has been upgraded. Uh, near New Boston, Texas, uh, Bowie County, Texas, Cass County, Texas, upgraded to a confirmed tornado warning. This storm, okay, first of all, uh, the massive wedge tornado there that went through uh, Naples and uh, New Boston, uh, that is the storm that's currently on its way to Arden, uh, Arkansas, so please be in your safe spots. Um, but I want to kind of take our attention back to the south a little bit uh, towards this storm that we've been watching since Lone Star and Dangerfield and look at Douglasville and Marietta. This storm... Uh, starting, so we, we saw the C, the tornado debris signature here. Um, we saw, I, I think it looked like it was trying to weaken out a little bit, but now we're starting to see it kind of jump back up. So uh, maybe a, a, a tornado coming back together south of Marietta coming towards Douglasville. We need everybody in Douglasville, uh, Texas to uh, take shelter New information. now. This tornado warning has been upgraded. We got a confirmed tornado on the ground in Franklin County, Arkansas. Franklin County, Arkansas. Take shelter now. Arden, Foreman, and Aline, you're in the direct path of a very dangerous storm with a tornado on the ground. Uh, let's get into that safe spot uh, immediately and don't come out until uh, we give you the all clear here or you see your county uh, disappear from that ticker at the bottom of the screen. Still got a uh, dangerous storm over here near Altus and Coal Hill in uh, Arkansas up near uh, Fort Smith. Um, but my goodness, there's just so many different areas to, to focus on. Uh, this is a, a really concerning area down here near Baker Springs and Hartley. Everybody from Hartley to Shady to Faulkner Springs, Macaulay, uh, Dallas, and Nunley in Arkansas needs to be taking shelter as this giant storm has multiple areas where it could be putting down a uh, tornado right now. Looking at the Shreveport radar, this is where we see most of our activity. <laughs> Big time... Um, contamination can't really, really tell what's going on there south of Marietta but more than likely it's a, it's a big tornado and as you can see from the correlation coefficient we still have this area of interest that tells me that there's likely still a tornado that's going to be coming up towards uh, Douglasville here very soon and it could look like all these tornadoes tonight every single one of them that happens they, they could look like this uh, in fact, this is what one of them just looked like moments ago near uh, New Boston. New information. This tornado warning has been upgraded. Confirmed tornado on the ground in Johnson and Logan County, Arkansas. If you see your county listed, you got to take shelter. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Hey, Ryan. I'm uh, immensely concerned for Rec Law, east of Rusk, Texas, uh, in Cherokee County. 
Uh, that is one of the most concerning rotations to me that has not yet produced a definite tornado debris signature, but is currently warned for radar indicated rotation. And as we have uh, 12 tornado warnings right now, just want to remind you guys, it is okay to take a break. If you are watching the stream to re deliver information, that is really important. Uh, but if you are watching the stream, you know, for any other reason, um, it's okay to feel overwhelmed, get up and, you know, get a snack and drink some water. Okay. All right. Thank you, Andy. Go ahead, Heidi. Hey, Ryan, I do have some information coming out of Idabel. Uh, news reports are reporting widespread damage on the east side of town. Uh, emergency responders, they don't want anybody in the city right now unless they're first responders or residents. And this is per Idabel Area Emergency Management. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, so... We've been keeping a, a very close eye on all these storms up here in, in the Arla Tex, uh, in, in the Texarkana um, area, and the, we're going to continue to watch those like a hawk. But now we also have to really start to think about these storms to the south as they're starting to look really intense. Like Andy said, near Recklaw, uh, that one's going to produce a tornado more than likely sometime here soon as it goes towards Cushing and Mount Enterprise. So... If you live down here or if you know somebody that lives down here, we've got to start thinking about this area warning has been issued. as well. Um, Montgomery, Polk County, Scott County, and Yale County, Arkansas, confirmed tornado on the ground up there. Uh, so we're worried about this storm that's going to, going to make it up towards Mount Enterprise uh, and uh, maybe even eventually Carthage. And I, I think we should have some subscribers. We probably have some people that uh, watch the channel pretty regularly from this area because... I know that we've been with you guys for uh, a tornado outbreak and at some point over the spring. Um, and uh, here we are again. Uh, if you know anybody that could use uh, our, the guidance that we're providing here, uh, just let them know that we're going to be here until this thing is over. And um, uh, you can let them know that the, this is probably going to end up being a pretty serious situation as this approaches uh, Beckville, Carthage, DeBerry, uh, and all these places. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan, um, there's a there's a deeper tornado debris signature west of Douglasville, Texas. Brad Arnold is currently driving straight into it. And I have um, I have uh, relayed to Riley, you know, urgently for him to not go any further. He cannot outrun this tornado. Um, he is driving right into it. So he definitely needs to stop. I think we got the info through to him. I don't know if we have his feed or not, but he is way too close to this thing. All right. All right, Brad, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but uh, you are, if, if you can't see this tornado right now, we just want you to know that you are extremely dangerously close to it and you're getting, you're driving like right up to it. So just let us know if you see anything. Um, so I don't, we, we don't have Brad's feed, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully he just heard us there and he's going to get back with us. There he is. this um i'm watching the rain direct or wind direction with the rain as well no power flashes um i've had a couple limbs that have start, started falling um but as of right now i haven't really seen anything um but obviously i will uh i'm just taking it slow i'm not i'm not going to drive right into this monster all right thank you brad i mean he is right <laughs> if he's not seeing it i don't i don't know what's What's going on there? Because like it should be right. It's either right in front of him, um, and he's just barely missed it, uh, or uh, he, and he's probably about to come into the debris there. But uh, we've got a tornado on the ground here, west of Douglasville in Texas, moving up towards Mod. Uh, if Brad Arnold sees it, he will let us know. He'll probably chime in here in just a minute, telling us about the debris on the road. Um, but that's going to continue up towards Mod, Texas. Make sure you're ready for that. Uh, as this continues to churn up uh, towards that direction. Still really concerned about the storm near Recklaw. Um, and still looks like we have a tornado down or a, a big mesocyclone waiting to put down a tornado near uh, north of Arden now and near Aline, Arkansas. And um, my goodness, man, there's so many... 
There are so many of these things. It's hard to keep up. Um, uh, let's come back up here to Arkansas. Yeah, big area of rotation still moving towards Pine Grove and Highland. Bucknob, Harvey, Odin, and Sims in Arkansas take shelter now. If you haven't taken shelter in Clarksville, Harmony, Hillcrest, or Ozone in Arkansas, you need to do that now as well as you're under a tornado warning. Uh, also, we got a tornado warning way up here in Green Forest and Berryville in Arkansas, almost up there towards the border of Missouri. That's how far north and east uh, these polygons are uh, occurring now. Just un unreal uh, the how widespread and, and significant uh, this tornado outbreak has uh, turned out today. Once again, I want to show you probably the most uh, kind of impactful footage I think that we've seen so far, and it's this just a movie like tornado uh, and this is the one that eventually went on to hit Ida Bell uh, Oklahoma uh, and um, it was our first uh, uh, tornado emer emergency that's that's the kind of a tornado that that we, we've been dealing with tonight and unfortunately it's the kind of tornado that we will continue uh, to deal with over the next several hours as these storms uh, they they will eventually die out they, they will eventually kind of congeal into this big linear storm mode i don't think anybody passed little rock uh to the east of el dorado or shreveport uh, I, I don't think anybody to the east of that has anything like like this to worry about but the threat will remain especially for damaging winds uh, overnight through uh, you know in into the early morning hours tomorrow but our big tornado outbreak will hopefully start to wrap up here sometime within the next couple of hours but it's not over yet um, let's come back down here and analyze some of these rotations. Uh, Rec Law and Cushing, you've got to be getting into your safe spots. Laneville, Mount Enterprise, get ready. These storms down here still look quite concerning. Uh, the storm that just went by Brad Arnold, uh, is still, looks like it's still may, I don't know. It, it might've lifted right there over the road where Brad is. But it's there's still a tornado debris signature just to the west of Douglasville, and we're assuming that it's still down. And Ahmad needs to be in their safe uh, spot. Uh, Aline, uh, Ben Lomond, and Locksburg in uh, Arkansas needs to be in their safe spot. And geez, man, looks like there's another uh, rotational. Uh, area popping up here near Kilgore, Texas. That's near Longview. That'll probably get a tornado warning here soon as there isn't one right now. So Longview, Texas, watch out. Know what you're going to do when that tornado warning comes through, okay? What do we got going on up here uh, on Zach Hall's feed? Let's see if we can't hear any. So Zach Hall is near Kaysen. West of Dangerfield. Uh, let's just get an update from him. Hey, Zach, just looking for an update. What's going on out there, man? Hey, Ryan, we got trees down. It crossed up here um, near this. I'm not sure what creek this is. I'm Ryan, can you copy me? I'm not sure what creek this is that I'm sitting on right now, but it crossed right here. Crossed probably about a quarter of a mile in front of me. Yeah, I got you, Zach. Ryan, we are near Cason, Texas. Significant damage in this. Uh, vehicles destroyed, trees destroyed. Uh, significant law enforcement first responder response. Uh, we're trying to do everything we can. This uh, force ran really hard. We're, we're trying to make our way north now. All right. Thank you, Zach. Um, significant damage. Significant damage is being reported near New Boston, Texas, as a strong tornado passed through. Uh, thankfully, everyone where Ben Williams is and where he's sending these pictures in from, uh, thankfully, everybody here specifically was okay.
so many, um, so many different uh, pieces of information to share here. Here's an interesting uh, tidbit from Matthew Capucci. It appears the new Boston area tornado that crossed Interstate 30 in Texas lofted debris 30,000 feet into the air. That's almost six miles high. Uh, there may have been a, a handoff with a second tornado as it crossed the highway. Dangerous circulation still in southwestern Arkansas. 30,000 feet. That doesn't happen unless it's a... Uh, Unless it's a very significant uh, tornado. The, the first big tornado that we saw today happened down here uh, near Paris, uh, Texas. Okay. And this is, this is just one of those videos that is uh, really oh, kind of explains. Oh, this family was taking shelter. Tornado okay. hit their house. It's completely destroyed around them. And then in the immediate aftermath, uh, yeah, you can see the reaction here. Uh, of course, uh, we've got Storm Chasers down there. We've got Brandon Kopic. Uh, we've got Vince Welty. We've got uh, these guys that'll probably, if if and Chris, they'll probably stick around uh, afterwards. And we are going to do everything we can to help these people. Uh, I, I know there are some people asking about that in uh, in the chat, uh, and that's something that we always try to do. So yeah, we'll be down there. The y'all squads always shows up and we'll be doing it again this time. Uh, Nathan. Nathan says, look at the size of that tornado. Uh, this is a storm chaser. A new PDS near, near tornado, the new Boston warning tornado. You has can been see issued. it behind him there. Unbelievable stuff. We got a new PDS tornado warning for Little River County and Sevier County in Arkansas. And once again, that's a PDS tornado warning in Arkansas. And I believe that's going to be for this storm right here. The same one that we've been tracking since Naples, Texas. Uh, it is now... Uh, producing um, a, a tornado that's moving up towards Ben Lomond and Locksburg, uh, Locksburg, Arkansas. Please take shelter now. This is a large, dangerous, violent tornado uh, that will completely uh, destroy things. Okay, so especially if you're in a mobile home, if you're in an RV or something like that, you cannot remain there. Uh, downstream in, in uh, places like D Dirks, Provo, up near New Hope in Arkansas. If you're in an RV mobile home, get out now and get to a more sturdy shelter. Another view from Storm Chaser Brett Adair's feed um, as that storm went through New Boston. The imagery there's a lot of it yeah that last uh pds tornado warning uh it includes locksburg dirks and provo uh go ahead uh, heidi hey ryan um i do have some news out of hughes springs that they have a firefighter that's been injured but they're also in need of additional responders to help uh, with storm damage aid right now all right, thank you very much. I, I'm surprised we, we don't see any sort of um, uh, tornado debris signature yet, at least from what I can tell. Uh, I'm probably, yeah, I'm on the wrong radar. But uh, this this storm here is is very strong. It's ramping back up as it moves up towards Locksburg, the one that they issued the PDS warning for in Arkansas. That's the one uh, that we really got to not take our eye off of as we go forward. And it doesn't look like I was necessarily on the wrong radar. There's just not a good one. 
to look at this storm with. As soon as this stream is over, I'm starting like a campaign. We, we, we've got to like, we've got to do something, man. So it's, it's election time. We've got to get somebody to like get on our side and make sure that there's something done to fund a new radar in this daggone area. It's completely l ridiculous uh, how sparse the coverage is. Uh, tonight we had two, I believe, was it two or three? At least two tornado emergencies uh, in November. Uh, it's something that you, you don't usually expect. Uh, but I, I, I do think that the National Weather Service, Storm Prediction Center, and everybody involved uh, did an incredible job with forecasting. Uh, we've been talking about this for days leading up to it, so hopefully the message got out there. It's important to understand that it's not over. Uh, ben Lomond, Locksburg, and all these areas here in uh, Arkansas are still under the gun uh, for a very significant tornado here in the near future. Uh, and there are more storms that are forming. We've got a little sail trying to pop up south and east of Murfreesboro in Arkansas that might try to cause some problems. Uh, these cells down here near or south of Henderson near Mount Enterprise, uh, those also might cause some problems. So we're, we're going to watch them closely. Uh, go ahead, Heidi. Hey, Ryan. I just got some news out of um, Idaval that there are several people who are trapped under collapsed homes and buildings. Um, but it seems like the, uh, the areas that was hardest hit is parts of Denison Road and roads that are behind Bypass Church of Christ. They were the areas that were especially hard hit. All right. Thank you so much. Can I get... Um... Andy, are, are you able to give me a, a new tornado a, a warning five has been issued thing here? I've got to, I got to do something real quick and I'll be right back. Yeah, I can get you, Ryan. All right, uh, guys, I, I'm going to take a real quick st step away from the computer here. And um, Andy's going to kind of talk to you and, and I'll be right back. All right. Go ahead. Okay, thanks, Ryan. Uh, so then a second, guys, we have eight current active tornado warnings. Three of them are confirmed, or I'm sorry, two of them are confirmed, and one is a radar indicated particularly dangerous situation. Should it uh, produce a tornado on the surface, it is one that may be uh, worthy of a particularly dangerous situation, and that is the one a new tornado going, warning uh, has been on issued. Arkansas Highway 71 between Ben Lamond, Lamond, and uh, Locksburg. So um, we're we're ra we're waiting for that cell to essentially produce something that we can actually track, um, because it is again just in an area that we cannot a new observe tornado unless something significant happens, so that we can actually get data that tells us what's happening because it's just too far away, it's just too high up in the storm. Um, all right, so my goodness. Uh, I want to give a an extended heads up. Y'all watch out for Texarkana, who is actually, you, you guys are now in a tornado warning proper. There is no tornado on the ground right now with the storm that is headed towards Texarkana. Um, but this cell has a history of producing tornadoes. So I want everybody in the Texarkana area along I-30 there uh in bowie county bowie county and also miller county arkansas bowie county texas uh, to be in their safe spots please no tornado on the ground yet but we have observed a cyclical tendency with this supercell which means that it has the chance to complete a cycle and thus drop a tornado on the surface again so please be sure if you're in the texarkana area to be in your tornado safe spot bring us with you into your most room of your house basement or a storm shelter if you have one bring us with you and bring something soft and fluffy and large to cover your neck with just in case things get bad all right and bring your shoes bring your shoes bring your pets all right don't forget anything important and do it calmly we believe in you that's why we're here uh all right so another 
Uh, another interesting storm Ryan just covered is Laneville, Texas, and that is in Rusk County. It looks like Henderson, Texas may have been spared. There was some uh, mild rotation that passed over Henderson, Texas. That cell is now exiting the town proper. And um, and then uh, Laneville is under a more intense threat at the moment. Short-term threat near Laneville, eventually extending to Brockfield. Brockfield, Brockfield along um, uh, Road 315 and Highway 79. This storm will likely track to the west of Carthage, Texas, in Panola County. So areas west of Carthage, Texas, along Highway 79, will likely see this um, cell, which has the potential to produce a tornado uh, near Laneville, Texas, currently. Okay, so that's headed west of Carthage. Uh, hopefully, Carthage avoids any um, encounter with that. In addition, Mount Enterprise, friends in that area in Mount Enterprise, Texas, the storm is two year northwest and should not affect the town proper, but may affect the outskirts to the north, un including Brockfield and uh, sections of Highway 259 north of Mount Enterprise. Okay, so again, Texarkana, please be in your safe spots. And um, also in our Arkansas areas um, around Locksburg, Dierks. Dyerks in Howard County. Uh, it's very important that you guys are in your safe spot. There's also another tornado. There's a couple of tornado warnings to north of that. One in Polk, Montgomery County. Um, I don't know if I just saw a power flash on Brandon's stream. Not sure what just happened there. Um, Polk, Montgomery, and Scott counties in Arkansas. There's a tornado warning there passing to the northeast of Board Camp and headed west uh, to the west of Odin and headed northeast eventually toward Danville in Yale County. It'll be a while before it reaches I-40 in areas of Russellville, but uh, an extended y'all watch out ahead of time. We still have multiple hours left in this event, and these areas, including Russellville, are in a an, an, an elevated risk of severe weather of all forms from the Storm Prediction Center, uh, expert meteorologists, okay? So um, Russellville, please stay tuned. Do not go to sleep uh, in areas along I-40 up there. If you're in Fort Smith, you're good. Storms have passed you. Cold front has passed you. You're good. Just please don't go out and flooding, localized flash flooding. If you are in you know, the DFW metro, you're good. Tyler, Texas, you should be... Um, hold on one second. Tyler, Texas, you're fine now. Just some heavier showers with the cold front. Um, anywhere west of Tyler, Texas, along I-20 and I-30, you are fine now, okay? So just want to give some all clears uh, to anyone. Anyone in Oklahoma is fine now. All of Oklahoma is out of the risk. Um, and then uh, Fort Smith proper in Arkansas is out of the risk. If you're in Little Rock, you are still in the risk. Russellville and areas along I-40 there, you are in the risk tonight. Please stay tuned. Texarkana, you're in a tornado warning right now. Areas of... Um, I-20, Interstate 20, to the east of Tyler, uh, you are still in a risk briefly. As you get to Shreveport, you have to have you have to be looking out for the next few hours. Okay, hopefully that's a good update for most of our viewers here who may be in the path of some of these storms today. And of course, please uh, make sure you are taking a hydration break. All right, thank you very much, uh, meteorologist Andy Hill. Um, uh, that's the latest from him. I, I, I during the, um, during my break, uh, I, I was looking through Twitter and, and looking at, uh, yeah, some different stuff and, and there's a whole lot of, uh, information that's like just now coming out because there are, are areas that, uh, have just kind of been cut off, whether it be due to, you know, nobody able to reach them, no power, no internet, whatever. Uh, so we're starting to hear some uh, some more stuff from areas around Idaville and places like uh, New Boston. Uh, so I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about that uh, in the near uh, future. Uh, but here's a video from uh, Zach Hall, uh, who's one of our chasers out there. Um, and as you can see, there's significant damage near Cason, Texas. Large trees destroyed and vehicles heavily damaged. Um it's unfortunate how many kind of roadways uh, were directly 
uh, hit by tornadoes this evening. That's probably where a lot of the uh, injuries and stuff are going to come from because, I mean, it's nighttime, it's storming, and then a tornado comes out of, out of you know, like a lot of people aren't prepared for that. Uh, and it's not, I guess, uh, common uh, for somebody to be uh, up to date on the latest warnings and stuff while driving around. Uh, so um, hopefully everybody's all right in that situation. We do still have multiple uh, tornado warnings, multiple concerning areas of rotation and and uh, potential, uh, you know, tornadoes that are coming down and, and that have been down. Uh, Carthage, uh, Texas, is now under a tornado warning. We talked about you guys earlier. Uh, that's going to go through Bratch Field, I think, first, and then Clayton. So get ready over there. Texarkana is officially under a tornado warning. Uh, and our, our most impressive signature, our, most, uh, our strongest storm, I think, right now uh, is up here in Arkansas. And it's getting ready to go up through Dirks and Provo. So make sure you guys are uh, preparing uh, for impact up there. Um, so, yeah, th this is going to be a really strong storm as it goes through Texarkana, by the way. It's, we're under a tornado warning over here. But I can't, I don't know if we've actually got a, a tornado down. It, it, but it doesn't matter. This is going to be some strong winds. Very strong winds uh, coming through the entire town here. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some big-time power outages in the near future over here. But hunker down, get in your safe spot, and just uh, prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Uh, I'm, I'm really concerned about the southernmost storm. It looks This one looks to me like it's in that spot where it could potentially uh, put down another uh, big tornado and kind of last a while as you can see there's not a lot of anything down here to kind of ruin its uh, inflow there is a fast approaching squall line back here though which is good news the, the farther east this goes the better off uh, we are um, and, and by the way dallas you're fine you're in the clear dallas is good now uh, i believe athens texas is good now uh, canton texas is good now Greenville, Rockwall, McKinney, Sherman, Bonham, Durant, uh, Paris, Sulphur Springs. All you guys are, are, are in the clear now. Ida Bell, um, Fort Smith, Arkansas. Um, you're good. Uh, the, the worst is past you. Now we're worried about, or we're most concerned with, I should say, uh, areas near uh, Henderson and Carthage points east towards Greenwood and Shreveport, Louisiana. Jefferson and uh, Linden points east towards places like Texarkana. Uh, and then, of course, up here into uh, Arkansas, Russellville, Danville, Hot Springs, Glenwood, Hope, Arkadelphia. You guys are next in line for these big storms. Hopefully they don't continue to... <laughs> kind of do the same things that they've been doing uh, off to the west. No doubt, though, uh, that we will see more tornadoes this evening. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really, like, I, I keep going back to this storm, the one that just went through Laneville. Um, I, I, I'm interested to hear if, if we heard, like, of any sort of damage or anything in Laneville, because I, I believe... I mean, it looks like it could have been producing a tornado there, and if it was in Laneville, then it still is. But if it wasn't, it's right on the cusp of doing so, and as it gets closer to uh, Beckville, Durgin, and uh, Carthage, uh, we'll have to watch it closely. Tons of um, support out there. Uh, thank you guys for um, uh, helping me spread the word and, and everything. I, I just very quickly want to try to take some of your questions uh, through the chat because I know I haven't been able to do that much today. We'll see if we can't uh, take a look at some of what's uh, going on here. Yet there are currently still eight tornado warnings. All right. We've got the PDS tornado warning for Howard and Sevier County uh, in uh, Arkansas. 
And we've got uh, reported or confirmed tornadoes in Montgomery, Johnson, Logan, Bowie, and Cass counties. And then everybody else, even up there in Taney County, Missouri, is under a radar-indicated uh, tornado warning. A new tornado and now there's warning another one has been issued. Pike County, Arkansas. And we'll go take a look at that up close on the radar right here in a second. Uh, but first, um, uh, Craig Sharp says, very scary storm still showing up on radar Omega in Illinois and Indiana. Be beware of strong storms and winds tomorrow. Thank you for that. Mark Phillips, thank you. Casey, thanks. She says, uh, thanks for doing what you're doing. You and your team are saving lives. Wow. Look at all. The thank you guys for the support. Uh, Kathy, uh, what a tremendous uh, service you provide. Everybody say thank you to Kathy, Denny. Denny, my goodness. Um, and uh, Texana Roofing and Waterproofing LLC. Please, everyone, be safe and let us know if we can help you with anything. Marty Thomas says, Ryan, thank you for this service. Guys, thank you for all the support. And, and once again, um, especially, I think we're uh, at some point this evening during the stream, I definitely want to wait until the, the severe threat is actually over, but we are going to uh, launch some sort of a sticker or something on the website where you guys can uh, purchase it and, and then all the profits from that are we're going to give to Chris, Vince, and, and Brandon down here in Texas to go around and, and help people out down there. We're, uh, after the hurricane, we, we gave people new cars. We bought generators for people. Uh, I want to do the same thing for these people in Texas, but we'll worry about that once the things start to calm down. All right. But thank you for your support. Uh, okay. Uh, if you're just now tuning in, a, a, a tornado outbreak is underway uh, in Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. We've got a very dangerous storm uh, moving towards Carthage, Texas, and I want you guys to understand that uh, this is probably going to be a, a pretty strong storm by the time it gets up there between you and Beckville. So go ahead and start getting into your safe spot now. Texarkana is about to get hit by a train of um, just really strong storms with uh, isolated tornadic uh, rotations in them. Uh, so uh, hopefully Texarkana, everybody up here is in their safe spot. Stay there, stay hunkered down through the duration of this. There's also going to be a risk for um, uh, flash flooding at some point as these storms slide over you. And um, uh, let's see here. We also have that uh, tornado warning up here. Well, multiple up here in Arkansas that I want to take a closer look at through the Fort Smith radar. Look at the velocities. Big rotating storm going through Odin and Sims right now. Take shelter all the way up there towards Harvey in Arkansas. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to want you to take shelter in Clarksville, as well as we've got a big uh, tornadic thunderstorm moving through here. And then we do have that tornado warning in southern Missouri. Nance and, and Protum, you're next in line for that, but it doesn't look too impressive to me on radar right now. Still mostly concerned about the storm west of Nashville, Arkansas, and uh, the one approaching Carthage and uh, Bratchfield in Texas here. So that's what we're going to kind of focus on. Uh, go ahead, Heidi. I am getting reports of significant damage that's inside the city limits of Hughes Springs, Texas. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Hughes Springs, um, Idabel, Paris, Boston, Naples. These are just a handful of places I can think of off the top of my head that, are, that we've heard reports of significant damage coming out of it. Cameron, thank you for becoming a member. Ken Cooper, thanks for becoming a high risk member. Y'all are awesome. Uh, Logan, oh, look at this. Look at this. You love to see it. This is what I really, we're, we're all coming together right now and, and like we're, we're doing awesome things. This is what I'm most happy to see right now. If we can all write a letter to our congressman, uh, like Logan here, uh, regarding uh, the, the radar network in the South. If, if everybody was watching this, we had 30-something thousand people do that. My goodness, talk about the difference you, you, we can make because that's how that works. You pay taxes to, to be able to know if there's a tornado coming. <laughs> and if you can't know as good as your neighbor because you're farther away from a radar site, you deserve one closer to you. 
So um, I think that that's a, something that we that we could get some help on from from the government, you know, especially during a time like this where they actually need you to vote for them. Go ahead, um, Heidi. Hey, Ryan, I'm getting some more information now out of Idabel. Um, the south and the east portions look like they took the biggest direct hit. Search and rescue is in progress. Um, there looks to be a wide damage swath and it is also being reported that debris lofted to the height in the sky that's indicating an EF4 plus tornado. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, it does look like a, a very significant uh, tornado went through Idabel. And uh, I think a lot of these, once we start getting the ratings from the National Weather Service, a lot of these are probably going to be EF2, EF3 plus. Um, unfortunately, just from what I've seen so far, obviously there's no way of knowing for sure. There's no, there's no point in pre-rating them, but, um, definitely they, they looked like they're on the strong side. So, uh, let's see, uh, hey, William Tinder just gifted 10 Ryan Hall memberships. Thank you so much. You guys, thanks for all the support. Um, let's see, camp says, how would you rate this all day event of storms and tornadoes? My heart goes out uh, to all. Uh, appreciate everything you and your team do. Keep everyone updated. Um, how would I rate it? I, I don't know. I, I, I can't think of a way to, to, to rank this or, or rate it right now. And I, obviously, we won't know exactly the extent of what happened until the damage surveys and stuff are done. But this is definitely, this is going to be a memorable uh, uh, tornado outbreak for everybody involved. I mean, just look at this. This is not um, this is not your everyday average severe weather event out here. So I, I'm, I'm still in the middle of it. We're, we're still in the middle of it here, so I can't kind of reflect on it yet. But I'm sure that this is going to be uh, one of the one of the bigger ones. And my goodness, um, more just outpouring of support from people like uh, Ronald. Everybody say thank you, Ronald, and Wise Wolf Gold and Silver. Thank you uh, for all you do, Ryan. The family is watching like a hawk tonight. That's a $500 super chat right there, y'all. Awesome. That's awesome. You guys never fail to, um, I don't know, <laughs> make... Uh, kind of like help us do what we're trying to do. So thank you. I, I, I don't know what else to say. I'm speechless. You know, you know, we're, we're appreciative of it and we're going to put it to good use. Um, all right, Carthage, um, the storm that we've been watching that's coming towards you is a little wobbly. So watch, watch how the, there's, there, there's a really tight uh, couplet down here near Laneville. And as I push this farther into the future, it kind of lets up a little bit. It also looks a little bit less rigid as far as the couplet goes on the side. So hopefully that continues to be the case. And we don't see this thing curl back up and form a big uh, um, uh, tornado here as it comes towards Beckfield. But we still want you in your safe spot. We still want you in your safe spot. Texarkana, same for you. No really... Um, definite sources of uh, rotation here, but the big tornado warning has got to be taken seriously. Everybody in Texarkana and Ogden needs to be in their safe spot. When the storm gets by you, you can come out, but thankfully there's no really scary looking signatures of a uh, tornado debris signature or, any, or anything like that right now for those areas. In fact, it looks like a lot of that uh, might be taking a, a really brief uh, breather. Uh, it's likely going to kind of ramp back up a little bit uh, before it completely calms down. But uh, I do want to take the, a moment to kind of show some of these pictures and videos. Leslie says, my sister, cousin, and grandma uh, all live north of Paris. Their houses have minimal damage, but uh, uh, their neighbors, these are the neighboring houses, man. Yeah, that's uh, that's bad.
Thank you for sending that in. Uh, Nate says, always the best coverage. Thank you so much. Uh, Brick says, I've been watching from Michigan all day. My heart breaks for all those affected. Braden, thanks for becoming a member. Barbara, thanks for becoming a member. Tiffany says, I live in Maud. But I'm currently on the eastern side of Texarkana. It's very loud and windy outside right now, and lights are flickering in my safe spot. Stay in there. You're going to be all right. This is, it's a pretty loud storm. It's a pretty strong storm moving through Texarkana, but I don't think there's a big tornado in that one, thankfully. Lots of strong winds, probably some hail. Aiden, thank you. Thanks for tuning in from Canada. Uh, Brian and Dana, thanks for becoming members. Yeah, we're going to continue to see new like amateur uh, video uh, come out of these things. I'm, I'm already starting to see it. We'll, we'll have a lot more to like a lot more of this will be visible tomorrow. Go ahead, uh, Heidi. Hey, Ryan, I just have a quick update out of Paris. Um, an emergency shelter has been open there in the town for anybody who's displaced from the storms today. Um, it's at Lamar Avenue Church of Christ and also Paris area water uh, customers. They're being asked to reduce any water usage right now until further notice in the area. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, very important information there. Hopefully everybody got that. Um, lots of, lots of news coming in, lots of uh, updates. Uh, D Ramirez says we've been watching from Lake Creek, Texas and are very grateful for the warnings. And yes, uh, we are riding our reps to get better radar husband already did. Thank you very much. This like, uh, with the amount of people we watch, we have watching right now. I'm not joking. There are probably so many representatives and co like Congress people like, like getting emails and, and actually thinking to themselves, wait, what, like what's going on? What are they, what are they talking about? It's unbelievable that we might be able to make some sort of uh, difference there because not everybody knows about it. Not everybody knows that how important it is to have more radar coverage. So maybe, maybe. Thank you all. Uh, Satan, uh, Sadie says, I'm watching from North Mississippi tonight. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. You guys don't have to thank me, by the way. I, this is, I, I, I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> no sacrifices made by me. I, I would be here looking at the radar, uh, whether or not we were live. So thank you for giving me a, a reason to do it and, and making it, uh, uh, useful for people. Where is the radar gap you're complaining about specifically in some of the hardest hit areas today? Uh, in southeastern uh, Oklahoma, northeastern Texas, uh, Paris and Idabel both uh, could have had much better sort of, um, I'm not saying that it was bad. There were warnings, the National Weather Service, everybody involved in this situation did a good job, but it could have been better if there was any sort of lack of communication or, or like confusion that, that went on between the media or the people that are, you know, getting the warnings. It happened because of that lack of coverage here in the uh, in, in this area. If there's a, a tornado warning, for example, uh, down here uh, near uh, Carthage, like there is right now, I can zoom in on this and I can circle where the circulation is. And, and within like a two or three mile radius, I can tell you almost exactly where that tornado is. I can't do that. I can't do that for the people of Idabel. I can't do that for the people of Paris, Texas. I can't do that for Hugo Pickens. And, and several other random areas throughout the United States. And it's like, why? Why does one town get it and the other town doesn't? And they both pay the same taxes. 
It's a good question to ask. I don't know the answer, but it's uh, it should be asked. <clears throat> Uh, here's a radar loop of our tornado outbreak this evening. Uh, go ahead, Heidi. Hey Ryan, um, I am getting reports that Trinity Baptist Church in Idabel has some heavy damage done to it. And just looking on Google Maps, um, there is an elementary school right next door to it. Um, it's right at Washington Street in Northeast Lincoln Road. That is that northeast area in Idabel that seems to have the heaviest damage. And there is also um, a seafood restaurant that's right beside it as well that looks to have suffered a lot of damage as well. Okay, thank you very much. I, I think if, if you guys remember, I, a lot of those locations um, we, we called out while we were watching the um, uh, the rotation come into Idabel. Is the seafood restaurant the crawdad place? Do you know if that's the, the same one? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so... Um, Oh, hopefully, you know, people were, were there watching because literally 10 minutes before that place was impacted, uh, you know, even without the, the ideal radar coverage, um, we, were, we were trying our best to figure out where this thing was going to go. But uh, Andy's wanting to say something as well. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan, uh, a few things. Um, there, I'm going to note some um, – the, the, this oh my goodness yeah just overwhelmed sorry guys i'm going to note the um rotation that the storms with rotation that are still of concern tonight for the remainder of the night we still have active tornado warnings and anyone in those warnings should be heeding them however our uh, our storms of concern are the ones uh the one just east of henderson that's going to pass between henderson and carthage in addition to that, there is one near Alto, Texas, to the south, that is in a uh, discrete cell, still in some good thermodynamics. And uh, lastly, outside of our current tornado warnings, all the way down uh, to the east of New Braunfels and uh, Seguin in Guadalupe County, uh, down near I-10, the very end of the line, almost the very end of the line, has actually got some slight rotation on it. Um, not as great kinematics down here, so not as likely to rotate, but still some support uh, for a possible quick spin up near Lulling or Harwood along I-10 to the east of San Antonio. Um, and then in addition to that, the, the overarching theme tonight actually is, it, you may remember if you've been here all stream, we said we were going to stream until midnight in the risk area, basically, because that's how long the tornado uh, watches are lasting for. But what we've been observing is the cold front that is driving this and you know, for, it's forcing all these storms up and uh, promoting a, a dynamic warm sector in front of it is actually moving far, far, far more quickly than any model uh, showed earlier today. That saved us. Not everyone got saved from that, but that saved a lot longer of an outbreak possible because conditions are still would still be ripe in these areas that are getting now swept through the cold front. So uh, those areas are now stable. I saw someone ask about Longview, Texas. Uh, you guys are just getting some rain with the front itself now, but beyond that, you will be fine once the rain passes. So I just want to i just want you know the context to be heard and understood that the cold front moved way more quickly than uh, was modeled and that actually helped us uh, you know reduce in a sense the amount of tornadoes that could have happened tonight uh and this afternoon into tonight rather the whole day so um that's that's of important note some meteorology behind the scenes that we've been observing it's important to note trends and uh, that is definitely a good trend in the grand scheme of things we're happy that happened so um and th there's a few other things too like i believe that this stream has been instrumental 
in multiple ways. Ryan's uh, rants about the radar, they're well justified, of course. And another part of it, I think, is that when we are able to, you know, safely communicate the remnants of this, just quick spin ups and the, the QLCS that we have going on here with the cold front throughout the rest of the night, that we should take a moment to decompress. <laughs> we could, this stream is definitely worthy of a, a, a sort of a podcast ending, I think, because I mean, I don't know. I don't know what other outbreak really comes to mind for you, Ryan, in terms of coverage like this, even just as a viewer. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And and we will do that. Yeah, hopefully we can start that sooner the, than later. And, and, like, and like he was, uh, like he was saying, um, this is technically the cold front, right? This big line of storms here. Uh, the, the air behind it is stable. The air in front of it isn't. The faster this progresses into the unstable air, the more overall air becomes stable. Uh, so um, that that's what's happening here. And, and because it's happening fast, uh, this is likely going to turn into a linear uh, damaging wind event very quickly. Uh, and and we can kind of focus on the aftermath, focus on the um, re still relaying news, uh, and of course uh, having a a little roundtable uh, discussion here about what just happened, and uh, maybe even what we can do all together uh, to to help out. Because I still believe that there's going to be um, there's going to be a lot of people homeless. There's going to be a lot of people that lost everything. There's going to be a lot of people who need. Um, I, and obviously there's going to be a lot of ways to get assistance, uh, you know, this, but there are some things and some certain scenarios where people have a hard time and that, and that I like to try to use what we've created here to, to go in and, and pick some people and, and, and really try to help them out. So I, I think we're going to be able to do that uh, with this one as well. And, and hopefully every severe weather event in the future, that's the vision for uh, what we're doing here. A quick, update on what's going on with the weather overall we we are down to three tornado warnings a record low uh <laughs> for the stream almost well at least since everything started taking off uh, those warnings are in arkansas and texas we have howard severe um logan montgomery perry scott and yale counties in pike counties in arkansas and then we have panola and rusk counties in texas under tornado warnings. We have no more uh, really like scary looking areas of rotation to kind of zoom in on. The most uh, concerning storm that I see still <laughs> is gonna be the one west of Carthage uh, moving towards Beckville. And, it, and even, even it is less impressive uh, than what it was earlier. But I, this one still has an opportunity to kind of kick up a little bit uh, before the cold front crashes into it. Uh, whereas the rest of these up here to the north are kind of infused with it. Um, and they're losing a lot of that warm air that they originally had access to. We got uh, uh, some more storms popping up out in front of the cold front. Like over here in Louisiana, we got a little bean that just popped up north of Minden. And um, we've got all these little storms that are, you know, trying to pop up here. But they're just flying right into the cold front. So... Um, we'll see what happens with them. We're going to be here with you for a while. And if, it, of course, as warnings come out and as new information comes out, we are going to be hopefully, uh, so the, the first ones that you hear it from, uh, because that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to rapidly relay information with no buffer, no producer. Um, it's straight from the source to you. That's the way we like to do it. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm still looking through Twitter, uh, trying to find any more updates, any more pictures, videos. There's a ton of stuff out there. Uh, but I, I don't think I, there's anything uh, pressing just yet. Oh, here is... Um, Okay, so here's the Trinity Baptist Church in Idabel. And this is one of the places that we called out um, as the storm was approaching Idabel. I, I, I don't think anybody was there. If there was, hopefully they got the message. Uh, Andy, go ahead. What do you got? 
Yeah, Ryan, if we're going to get a new tornado warning uh, with that's outside of the, the cold frontal line in Arkansas, I think it'll be this one near Cushing uh, and Reclaw, Texas. Again, it's the southeast of Reclaw this time, but it will still head up into, um, I believe, to the west or relatively pretty close to Mount Enterprise, Texas. Currently not tornado warned. However, it's been exhibiting tight rotation. Uh, for a while now, if not increasing rotation. So if we do find another tornado warning in Texas, uh, I believe this is probably our candidate down here. All right, so uh, Cushing Mount Enterprises, uh, we are still looking at you uh, for maybe having to deal with another one of these storms producing a tornado. Pretty good rotation down here. Uh, it's lining right up with Mount Enterprise and Cushing, and it's still away from the cold front. So until this kind of crashes into this storm and uh, it loses its uh, discreteness, then it, it, we've got to be concerned about it producing a uh, a tornado. So let's let's watch out and know what we're going to do when and if that uh, warning comes through. Okay. Uh, here's another great visualization of the radar hole thing. Uh, this is on Twitter. I'm going to retweet this. Um, but everywhere you see where that's not in the yellow doesn't have adequate radar coverage. So there's a big area in uh, Missouri here, southern Missouri. There's, well, there's two big areas in Missouri. Also in northern Missouri, there's a huge portion of the middle part of uh, Minnesota. Uh, there's a, a really uh, a big area that gets on my nerves between Alabama and Mississippi. It's like This is like one of the places on earth where the most tornadoes happen. And uh, there's, there's a lack of radio, radar coverage down there. Uh, up here near Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, and of course in Texas today and, and a little bit of uh, down there near southern Arkansas. Uh, so there's a lot of radar holes out there and it's not easy to fix them. I'm sure. I'm sure the like the funding isn't there. That there's something, like it, it like the reason that they're not there isn't because somebody's purposefully being mean. I I don't think so. <laughs> like it, it's either a lack of understanding, maybe from the people who are in charge of the funding who don't understand how important it is, or um, just there's not enough urgency. Like oh, I know that's a problem. We'll get to it one day. So, like, maybe, maybe if if we continue to kindly uh, reach out to the um, uh, the elected officials in in these areas and and try to get a resolution to that problem, we can solve it. Uh, go ahead, Heidi. Hey, Ryan. I just have a small update. Um, it's out of Cass County, Texas, unsure of the exact location, um, but there is a report of a nursing home that has a roof blown off, and there is also a report of a quarter mile worth of damage in that area as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. That, that Guys, that's meteorologist Heidi Overland, who has been uh, doing a great job this evening keeping us updated on everything that's going on. She's monitoring, helping us monitor like uh, scanner feeds from volunteer fire departments and emergency management services and uh, talking with uh, people, our, I'm sure uh, some of our people that are on the ground that are sending us reports and uh, our researchers and scouring the internet like, and she's putting uh, together all this stuff for us and relaying it to us as fast as possible. So thank you so much, Heidi, Andy and Ben and everyone in the, uh, in the background. Sorry, I'm reading. I'm reading stuff on uh, on Twitter. Um, uh, 
I, I do want to say a huge thank you uh, to everybody who also um, tagged us in stuff on, on Twitter today. It's, a, it's one of the ways that, like, in a rapid-fire situation where I'm trying to share, uh, you know, especially if it's from, like, a town or a city or a fire department, you guys are, like, tagging me in these little updates uh, on Twitter and stuff, uh, or pictures or videos of a tornado out there. Uh, it's, uh, that is important uh, to helping me be, being able to see it. Uh, so it, it just kind of like pops up on my uh, notifications page. Uh, so you guys are awesome for being a part of that. Here's an interesting. Um, yes. Wow. Here, here's a really interesting GIF or animated image that Sean put together. He says, well, here's a look at all of the outlooks done for today from day seven. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center did an absolutely amazing job forecasting the event, uh, including all the people um, involved. That is that is insane. Uh, th this was we started talking about this over a week ago. Storm Prediction Center uh, put out that seven day uh, uh, day seven outlook. Uh, they put the the enhanced risk out uh, three days out. And they put the uh, moderate risk out today. It is a slam dunk. Slam dunk f uh, forecast uh, from the Storm Prediction Center and really everybody involved. Yeah, it's part of it could, part of it could be um, uh, due to the fact that the areas are rural, um, but it doesn't matter. It, sh it shouldn't matter if you're in a small town or a big town. You should have access to. The radar, <laughs> because once again, you, you pay taxes. We all pay this. Like, it's not like it, you, you pay more taxes if you get better radar coverage. It's not how it works. Uh, go ahead, Heidi. Hey, Ryan. Um, this is just a report to go kind of back to Ida Bell. This is from the National Weather Service out of Shreveport. Um, they're reporting that there are numerous trees and power lines that are down in the area, but they are trying to get command shelters. Um, they're in the process of getting them set up right now. All right, thank you. It's going to be, uh, I, I believe, Ida Bell, Paris, uh, areas north and west of Boston. It's going to be a pretty significant cleanup effort up there. Currently, we've got search and rescue going on. Um, and once again, we've got Chris Hall. We've got a bunch of storm chasers out there that are probably going to stay the night tonight and go right out to these areas tomorrow and try to help people. We're, we can buy tarps to put over people's roofs. We can... We're going to do all kinds of unique stuff to try to help people out here. And uh, really briefly, I do want to plug how you can help us do that. All right. If you go to shopryanhall.com right now, uh, we've had people in the background working on this right at the top of the website. Let's get links in the chat from the moderators right at the top of the website. You got this y'all squad shows up sticker right here at the top. You can pick your price, pick your price, pay whatever you want for the sticker here, as long as it's within this uh, range. And 100%, 100% of the profits from that sticker are going to go uh, to uh, all of our people that want to help out down here in Texas. And we're going we're gonna to help people out. Whatever it needs. I don't know what people need, right? So whatever that ends up being, and we'll find out tomorrow without any hesitation, no matter how much it costs, no matter how much it needs, people need, uh, we're going to take the resources that we get from this. Uh, and, and everything else that's going on tonight and move it uh, towards the people of Texas. So if you want to help, go to shopryanhall.com, get you a sticker. Um, also, I mean, we got a bunch of other stuff on here too. So we'll, we'll put the profit of everything into it for the next 24 hours or so. But more, the, the sticker is, is the main thing because it doesn't cost much for us to produce a sticker, right? So there's more profit there. If you want a shirt or a hat or something, go for it. But just know that there's... There's just less profit margin there. Um, and your dollar is going to go farther with the sticker. All right. Um, so once again, that's shopryanhall.com. Hopefully we get uh, links in the description. And then uh, we're going to come back over here to the radar uh, to, to tell you, thankfully, thankfully, we are down to two tornado warnings. Neither of those are incredibly uh, pressing. All right. N neither of those are, are promoting the idea that there's a tornado down right now. So thank goodness. I, I, I think things might start dying down or dwindling down a little bit here uh, within the next little bit. 
Uh, we still got a big line of severe thunderstorms that's getting ready to come through southwestern portions of Arkansas, and it's getting ready to move into northwestern portions of uh, Mississippi or Louisiana. There will be a couple more um, tornadic troubles tonight, uh, but I think for the most part, our big significant tornado outbreak is coming to an end. So that is, that's a good thing. We're not leaving you though, don't worry. We're gonna to continue to stay here and relay the news uh, and uh, just kind of talk about what happened and we'll be here with you at least for another couple of hours. Wow. There is, there's currently uh, 400 people on the site and I'll show you that map here in a second. Uh, if you're just now tuning in, a, a tornado outbreak, a, a rare November tornado outbreak of uh, incredible proportions is wrapping up uh, in Arkansas, Texas, and Louisiana. We still got several hours of severe weather to go. I don't a want anybody tornado to think warning a, has been issued. Perfect example right there. I don't want anybody to think that this is over. We're going to see more tornado warnings. We're going to see more um, spin ups. We're going to see more damage tonight. But what we just witnessed. The severity of that is over. That part is over. Thank goodness. Uh, but here's that most recent tornado warning. We've got a nice uh, piece of uh, rotation down here near Briggsville and Pleasant Hill. This is going to move towards Plainview uh, and um, north of Arkadelphia. Uh, so make sure you're uh, taking your safety precautions uh, down here. And then also we've got uh, Kirby and Caney Valley in the path of another little area of rotation a little bit farther to the south. So, um, see here. Okay, yeah, this is this is where that tornado warning was just issued. Caney Valley, Amity, uh, Amity Rosboro, uh, Caddo Valley, and um, uh, Pleasant Hill, Lake Hamilton. You are under a tornado warning. Take shelter immediately, please. All of our tornado warnings are in Arkansas right now. I have such an incredible headache. I don't know what happened, but it just suddenly came out of nowhere. Uh, but anyways, all of our tornado warnings are um, in Arkansas right now. We have no tornado warnings in Texas. We actually just have the one severe thunderstorm warning in a little part of Texas right now, so that's good news. Uh, here is something amazing to see. Uh, every little blue dot here on this map represents one of you guys that's on shopryanhall.com right now buying one of those stickers to help us help people that um, uh, have been negatively impacted by severe weather. There's one guy. We got one guy in Australia down here on the uh, opposite side of the world on the site. Thank you. Uh, and this is where everybody else is. I really appreciate all the support, guys. Um you're just now tuning in. We still do have a tornado watch that extends from Little Rock all the way down to Shreveport. That's going to last until about midnight. And the most recent tornado warning includes Amity, Caddo Valley, and uh, all the way up to Hot Springs, Arkansas. Oh, boy tell you what if anybody's having problems right now <laughs> uh, ordering that sticker try it again in two minutes because there was something I bet was forgotten and I'm going to fix it right now sorry about that Uh-oh. All right, there it is. Okay, sorry. Sorry, everybody, if you've got it in your cart, refresh. Hey, Ryan, it looks like Chad fixed it. Okay, all right, well, I fi uh, 
Okay, hopefully I didn't unfix it by also fixing it. Hold on. <laughs> it, it, refresh it and try again. You should be good to go. Sorry about that. We're, it's good now. Um, <laughs> yeah, there, there's six, there's 700 of you waiting to check out. If you refresh and, and try again, it, it should be, it should be good. Uh, go ahead, Heidi. If you have something. All right. Sorry about that. My computer froze the minute you said that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just have another report coming out of Hughes Springs. Um, it looks like their volunteer fire department took a possible um, hit tonight. Um, it looks like it suffered a lot of damage. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, ben, if we've got meteorologist Ben still on the hook with us, um, uh, maybe if you could come through and, and give us a brief explanation of uh, what do you think, what do you think happened tonight? G g give us a, a little bit of a, an explanation as to why this was such a significant event. And um, uh, yeah, I got a lot of people in the chat just asking like what happened, what was different about this than a traditional severe weather outbreak? What do you got for us? Uh, well, it was, uh, there was pretty much a lot of warm and moist air for November, especially, but, um, mainly it was a combination of that surface layer, warm and moist air combined with, um, like an upper level trough, uh, that gained like a negative tilt, which allowed it to put cold air over top of that warm and moist air, uh, which created enough instability in that moist layer. So, um, when the front, the cold front came to that, we we're talking about there ahead of it, like prefrontal troughs that allowed to initiate these lines of convection that we were talking about. Um, and that spawned those tornadic supercells. And there is a lot of turning in the winds with height because of, um, this surface layer coming from the Gulf of Mexico and then the trough coming from the, uh, the Rocky mountains, uh, was coming like more westerly while the, uh, Gulf of Mexico air was coming from the South. And so that turning with height created a lot of spin in the atmosphere and these, uh, supercells were able to become tornadic and they're able to stay discrete long enough, which, um, kept their chances high to be tornadic because, um, that cold front stayed behind long enough for, uh, these storms to really ramp up in intensity. Whereas if you're talking about like a normal November cold front system, it would come through really fast and we just get a big squall line going through. But this was a very interesting setup and that that didn't happen and it allowed for uh, tornadoes to develop. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, meteorologist Ben Price there coming in with uh, the explanations. Um, uh, this has been a, a, um, a pretty significant uh, severe weather and, and tornado uh, outbreak. Um, and I think it, once again, I, I do want to con like explain that the National Weather Service, Storm Prediction Center, everybody involved with this did an absolutely perfect job. It's amazing what we're able to do in today's day and age with forecasting. Um, and I, I just think that it couldn't have went better. Uh, I don't want my complaining about the radar holes to reflect negatively on anybody other than whoever is in charge of budgets. Those are the bad guys, okay? Nobody in the weather like industry is bad. Okay. Uh, now there's close to a thousand of you on the site. Thank you. And, and we've already, we've already sold like 300 of these stickers. So, uh, we should, we should have tens of thousands of dollars, um, by the time this is set and done to, uh, utilize down there in, in Texas, we already had like 10, 10, $20,000 left over from last time. Uh, so we should be able to make we should be able to make a huge dent uh, in the um, the problems that people are experiencing down there. So that, that's huge. Couldn't do it without y'all. Um, and, and and by the way, I, I as things are winding down, I do want to remind everybody that's watching right now. Uh, this is this is my channel. Me, Andy, Ben, Heidi. This is what we do. Uh, we've been talking about this storm for a week. All right. If you would have been subscribed to this channel, you've been you've known this was coming a week and a half ago, pretty much. 
Um, and what we do is we, we talk about it leading up to the event. And then whenever it happens during big, severe weather events, uh, we go live and we do live coverage. If you think this is useful, if you would like for me to, to be here uh, whenever something like this, or even it doesn't always have to be this intense, but when something similar to this happens in your neck of the woods, whether it's a severe weather outbreak, a tornado, a hurricane, a blizzard, anything like that, consider subscribing to the channel um, and uh, turning notifications on because this is what I do. I have I, I've dropped everything. And uh, I only like just sit on YouTube all day and obsess about the weather and how we're going to tell people about it. <laughs> it's my job. Uh, so if you want me to be here, if you want to see more of me in the future, um, subscribe. It helps a lot. It helps a whole lot. Uh, is Texarkana good now? Yeah. Texarkana is good. Um, New Boston's good. Naples is good. Orr City's good. Longview's good. Henderson's good. Uh, Tyler, Texas is good. Dallas is good. Fort Worth, Waco, McAllister. All of Oklahoma is good. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Um, if you are in uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas, Fayetteville, Green Forest, uh, Monette, Springfield, Missouri, go to sleep. All right. I know it's kind of early. It's like nine, ten o'clock. But if you're tired, go to sleep. Uh, the only places maybe we should be staying up and in, in, in remaining concerned uh, about the weather here for the next little bit is going to be just to the east of this progressing cold front. Uh, maybe near Magnolia, uh, Arkansas, Spring Hill. We've got a big severe thunderstorm warning that goes from Scottsville up through uh, Bossier City near um, Shreveport. We might want to keep an eye on that. But for the most part, this is, the, this is coming to a close. And, of course, we've got these tornado warnings up here in Arkansas that we need to stay up for. If you're in Hot Springs, you gotta you got to wait for that one to come through. Uh, if you're in Danville, Belleville up here in Arkansas, uh, you've got to wait on that one. But once the cold front passes, we are good. And yeah, thank y'all. Lots of stickers going out. Every time some, uh, someone is buying one, you'll see a little, there you go, a little meteor fly out from where I am in Kentucky to the location. It's cool animation. Now, I can't go through and tell every city in the U.S. to go to sleep. All right? If you're close to those places and to the West that I just said, you can go to sleep. Whoa, somebody in, uh, somebody in the UK just bought one. We'll get back into the, uh, the news there uh, pretty real quick. Uh, with some some more of those tweets, but I do want to go through the the chats as well. Uh, Jeanette uh, said, or Janet uh, says, uh, thank you for your dedicated coverage. I'm sure you'll be on the ground soon, helping out. Uh, much appreciated to all the Ryan Hall y'all gang. Um, a lot of the gang were already there. Once again, I, I Chris and I, I know Chris has texted me. <laughs> I don't. I haven't heard from anybody else, but I know for a fact that Chris is is staying. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But there's probably going to be a lot of us um, that are, that are going to be down there. And uh, I, I, might, I can also just hop on a plane and head down there as well. Um, whatever it is, no matter what, all of these resources will be used down there, uh, whether it's directly by me or through the, the hands of Chris and, and Brandon and whoever decides to stay behind down there. We'll, we'll make it work. Um, but thank you for that. Uh, Cameron says, I'm going to buy a Powerball ticket. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll personally fill the radar holes when I win. I, I love it. I hope you, I hope you win. Uh, thank you for becoming a member. Uh, Britt Flip, Sean, thanks for becoming a slight risker. Zachary Smith, thanks for becoming, uh, becoming a member. I'm losing my ability to talk. 
Uh, Wildfire says, just because I have family who live in a radar hole. Uh, let's see. A toad in the garden says, first live event with your channel. Uh, no rain for San Antonio, but prayers for everyone affected and great job staying on top of everything. Thank you so much. Hey, Thank Brian, you. I don't know if I was interrupting. I'm sorry if I did. Uh, we're just outside of Hughes Springs currently. They have uh, actually um, told us that they don't need any more search and rescue. Uh, so we're going to move on up towards the Naples area. And if they don't need it, we're going to go on up towards uh, Ida Bell. And uh, we're probably we're going to call it a chase here. I just figured I'd let you know. Hey, Ryan, just wanted to give you a quick update. We're heading east through Texarkana right now pretty much considering the chase over, but uh, we were informed that there were no mutual aid requests in New Boston. There was some decent damage in town, but uh, from what we were told, they didn't need any additional assistance. Obviously, had some fairly significant injuries earlier in the day, but overall, I think uh, it was a substantial day, but it could have been a lot worse. All right. Thank you, uh, Chris and Brandon. Uh, and then we've got uh, Andy. Uh, Andy's wanting to talk to us. Go ahead, Andy. Hey, Ryan. Um, I have an important note to make. Uh, it took me a long time to find another tweet that showed that Ida Bell tornado when it was in Clarksville, and you could see how fast it was moving. Do you remember that one? Yes. Every a, a few of those tweets got deleted that were, you know, because it's a chaser's footage, right? Yeah. But then I found a, a new source that, of course, had taken it from Facebook and posted it on Twitter again. This one had 2,000 likes. I doubt that one will be deleted as soon, so I made a quote tweet of it, and I believe that, I, I, okay, I'll get a little a little hardy here, but I believe that in this case, showing a video like that is of utmost importance to spread in the sense that uh, th there's really good evidence, and this is from Carly's video in Joplin, the Joplin, Missouri tornado from over a decade ago, that not even six or seven actionable stimuli, you know, seeing the news, hearing a tornado warning, getting it on your phone, you name it, learning it from, you know, going outside, learning from your neighbors, what's happening, not even six or seven of those were enough to make people actually take legitimate and proper action in a tornado warning. So if one more exists, one more stimulus, like seeing a giant tornado on Twitter, in you know in the current event that could be the that could be the deciding factor for you know maybe 10 people or maybe 100 you don't know that so i made i quote tweeted that i'm gonna post it in the chat right now okay so look at that tweet right now it's in the chat posted a few times i got the blue dog icon there okay so go and look at that tweet i think it's more important to show this this tweet, this uh, video, even though it comes from a chaser who is trying to do this for a living, you know, perhaps, or is just doing this for a hobby, I don't know. But, and we can't know that unless they say so. But I think it's more important to show this than it is to license it in this very instance because the saving of lives is more valuable than making sure that this person gets, you know, three or $400 uh, toward the gas cost that it took for them to drive down. I want to support this chaser all the same. I'd love to pay however much they were going to license it, right? I'd love to just give them that directly because you guys support us. We can just give it to them. I would love to do that in exchange for being able to get many more impressions on a tweet like this. Okay. So that's that's what I have to say about that. If you if you want the the reasons why I posted them in the replies to that tweet, it's in the chat again. Right. There you go. Yeah. There's, that's, I believe that that's important. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. If you are, uh, and first of all, I thought that this video, I, I thought it was an amateur, like somebody standing on the side of the road on their porch or something taking that video. I didn't I personally didn't know it was taken by a, a storm chaser. Um, but if you are somebody pointing a camera at a deadly violent tornado and you're posting that on Twitter, Facebook, anywhere on a public platform, what are you doing it for? Like what, like what was, was the point? If, if the answer was just to make $500. Okay. Uh, but like, it, it, you know, if you're, if the answer is to, to let people see it and let people downstream understand what, what is happening. Great. Like that, that's what you, that's what you should be doing. 
But I understand if you're a storm chaser, that that's incredible footage. You'd need to sell that to the Discovery Channel and whoever makes the next documentary. You know, uh, who if 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 somebody like me even wants to make a, a video recapping the event, I'll pay you for it. But you're you're tweeting it publicly, no watermark. Uh, to me, you're just a very good citizen. You're a good person trying to help people like me out, warning people downstream. Um, it, it, it would take too long to sign the paperwork and, and, and make it all uh, official. But the tornado's over if, if you want to do it that way. Uh, so that, that, that's a pretty hot take. I'm sure a lot of the storm chasers that work with me might not even agree with me. But, like, I don't care. Like it, that's, that's dumb. Like if, if I see a video of a tornado that's heading for a town and I know through, like, I know it's scientifically proven that if I show that to people, it could save lives. I don't care. I'm showing it. I don't care. So yeah, I get, I do get, I get it. I get why somebody might be upset and I try to not show storm chaser stuff. I didn't realize that's what that was. It was, uh, I guess stolen. Uh, by somebody else and reposted a bunch of times. Uh, K-pop pop says, thank you for feeding my weather nerd soul, uh, saving lives and helping those affected uh, from severe weather. Y'all are true gems. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you. We, um, you know, none of us involved with this do this. Like, seriously, like the thanks aren't due. Like, we, like this is we all love doing this as like a, like this is once again my job. This is Andy's job. This is like what we do, um, and it's what we want to do. Uh, so, we're more thankful for you. Like, you guys are the reason it's legitimate. You know, the fact that we have so many people that tune in and put their faith in us. Uh, Krayler says, what radar software do you use? Radar Omega. That's what I've been using for the most part today. That's what you're seeing right now on your screen. And it's what I use on my phone when I'm out and I just need to check the radar. It's what I use on my iPad. Radar Omega, iOS or Android. You can get it right now. There's a link in the description. They're a big supporter of the channel. So anytime you, you get that app, it, it helps me and it helps all of us. This is an expensive operation, so we, <laughs> the, the you know we we try to uh, work with people like like Radar Omega that we actually like, uh, and we know you guys will like the help with that. So uh, Riley, what do you got? So on the topic of Radar Omega, I am the Discord assistant admin, and I just came to oh. mention that we are giving away eleven free copies of Radar Omega in the Discord server. So. We will post that link in the YouTube chat, join the server, join the giveaway, and 11 people are going to get Radar Omega for free. Absolutely awesome. I forgot about that. Um, so first of all, Radar Omega does cost money. Sometimes people balk at that. <gasps> money for a radar app? Well, you, if, if that's your reaction, you, you've never used a, a, a real good radar app before, okay? Because the ones that are professional level, the ones that meteorologists would use, or the ones that are actually going to be as detailed and, and as uh, good as the ones that, you know, I use and stuff, they're, they're going to cost a couple bucks. And that's what Radar Omega costs. But if you go to our Discord server, uh, we are doing a giveaway if you want to be a part of that. So for 11 copies, everybody else should just buy it. But try your luck in the Discord server. Russellville, um, Russellville, somebody asked if, if Russellville was going to be okay. Yes, but a pretty strong storm is coming towards Russellville. There's a radar uh, indicated tornado warning that ends right before Russellville, and they might, they might extend that. I don't know, uh, but it's definitely not an area where I would go to sleep. I would stay up, be hypervigilant, be ready to take shelter if they issue that warning. But for the most part, you, yeah, you're going to be all right.
Uh, Aaron says, this is why I want to be a meteorologist. I'm not in school now, but I bought books uh, and I'm going to start learning. Your streams help tremendously. Thank you, Aaron, and good luck. Uh, Jordan, Jacqueline, thanks for becoming a high-risk member. JT, thanks for being a member for eight months consecutively. That's awesome. Uh, and K Knights, Knights, thanks for saying, thanks for the super chat. Says I'm, I've been watching from Alabama all day. Thanks for what you do. By the way, somebody in chat says, why won't he update the hot springs tornado? It's simply because I, I, there isn't one. Okay. There is a tornado warning. And, and like, all I can say in this situation is get the shelter, right? There's no tornado. There could be one that spins up at any moment. So get the shelter and stay there until the warning has been allowed to expire. Uh, but this is what the storm looks like. It's getting closer. There, there's going to be some strong winds. It starts right here near Amity. Um, and then Ulma, Lenox, Bismarck, Pleasant Hill, all these places, you'll start to see the wind ramp up a little bit over the next 10, 20 minutes. And it'll come through hot springs. But I think the tornado threat has diminished quite a bit. A quick reminder that 100% of the profits from shopryanhall.com are going to go towards our efforts of helping people out in Texas. Looks like so far uh, we've done about $10,000 $10, uh, in stickers. So thank you all. Thank you, thank you so much, really, for the support. Is that blue on the radar, cold air? No. Uh, what you're seeing as blue on the radar is some of the lighter precipitation. The color table um, that I use here, um, it, it, uses, it, it shows blue uh, wherever the, the lighter precipitation is. Nader Navigators is out there helping people. Look at that. Everything's bigger in Texas, especially our hearts. Chasers and residents are giving a helping hand to families in need after the Dangerfield, Texas tornado. A lot of people give uh, storm chasers a hard time for like clogging up the roads and in, in, in these areas uh, during times of severe weather. But you, a lot of times. You're going to thank a storm chaser for being there in a situation like this because you know, most of these guys, when, when the storm's over or whenever they come across something like that, um, <laughs> they'll, they'll stop and help you. Uh, whereas if they weren't out there, who, who would be there, you know? Who else is purposefully following just behind a damaging storm? Uh, looks like uh, the Oklahoma Fire Department did con already confirm uh, a, fa a fatality in McCurtain County. Uh, McCurtain County Emergency Manager Cody McDaniel is telling us that uh, uh, more people are trapped in Pickens and Ida Bell with homes damaged and power lines down. We are down to one tornado warning left, and that's uh, the one that includes Hot Springs, uh, Clark, uh, Garland, Hot Spring, and Montgomery counties. You guys are under a tornado warning, but I believe the tornadic threat is decreasing. We're mainly just worried about some wind now. That's the main thing. Uh, 
Uh, can Little Rock go to sleep? It's up to you. Uh, these storms are probably going to be strong by the time they get to Little Rock, but I don't think there's going to be a huge... I don't think there's a reason to stay up all night and wait for them necessarily. But make sure you have some way of getting warnings. Uh, one of the things that we have on, on our website, if you want to get it in addition to the sticker and stuff, is a NOAA weather radio. Or if you don't want to get it tonight, next time you go to Target or Walmart or someplace like that, um, it gets you a NOAA weather radio. You can get a WR120 for like 30, 40 bucks. Or you can get a WR400, a little bit more expensive. But you put batteries in that thing, you plug it in, and you can go to sleep every night. I don't care how many naders are coming. And that thing's going to wake you up. If your county gets under a warning, you can program it to where it only alerts you uh, when things happen close to you. So a NOAA weather radio seems like outdated technology that only your grandpa uh, would want to use, but it's still to this day one of the best ways uh, to protect yourself and, and make sure you're safe during a severe weather event. Uh, Heidi, go ahead. Hey, Ryan. I just have a small update out of Kaysen, Texas, Mount Moriah Church and Highway 49. Um, it looks to be heavily damaged with debris crossing the road there. There is also reports of serious injuries. Uh, people had injuries to their head and that there were people screaming for help in that area. All right. Thank you very much. We um, are continuing to get uh, really concerning reports and information out of these areas. I see a lot of people from the United Kingdom saying that they're finally able to uh, to buy. Uh, is that something new? <laughs> I didn't know that we you couldn't do that before. Like seriously, there's so many of this. I appreciate you, Simp. Simparo. Karen says, Ryan, we appreciate everything you and your team do to help keep us safe. Much love from St. Joseph, Missouri. Uh, Kenneth says, tonight is the exact reason why I'm getting proper storm spotter training. Storm chasing is going to be a hobby for me. Uh, but it will go beyond that with getting the word out fast and as, as fast as possible. Well, way to go, Kenneth. Uh, Chris B says, I'd listen to your podcast, whether or not see what I did there. Yeah. Whenever, so as soon as this tornado warning is allowed to expire over here near hot springs, um, we'll, we'll just have a little bit of a round table discussion with Andy, uh, Heidi, Ben, and, and whoever else. All wants tornado to be warning have been allowed to expire. Oh, there it goes. It's gone. Uh, and then, you know, whoever wants to go to sleep, go right on to sleep. Um, and, uh, Oh, me and Andy will continue the, the uh, conversation, I guess, until I want to go to sleep, <laughs> which it probably isn't going to be too long from now. I, I, I have a terrible headache and, and it just literally, as soon as the thing started to calm down it just kind of hit, it hit out of nowhere. All right, so all warnings have been allowed to expire. Uh, Andy, do you have any? Uh, do you have anything else that you want to start? Uh, a little bit of a recap, a conversation on anything that you want to touch on or talk about as as far as what happened tonight. Um, I mean, I'm sure I have plenty, but. Quite honestly, I'm I'm pretty content that I'm I'm content with our coverage today. I think we did, I I think we did a, a great job. I I don't think we really missed anything. Um, there were a few times where I I was gathering info to break in, and then you know the National Weather Service is really fast and efficient at their job and relayed the tornado warning before I could do that thing where I I break in and you're like oh. 
he just nailed it <laughs> at the same time. It's all about the timing, right? People like the timing, but in reality, like we're all looking at it at the same time. National Weather Service has to coordinate all the uh, all the information, actually, you know, type up some things or copy and paste some things in to send it out to the public. So they take the same amount of time and look at the radar just as quickly as we do in all reality. It's just that we have a sort of platform that doesn't depend on needing to take a few minutes to make sure everything is correct and drawing a polygon and sending it out. So we are um, cohabitant, we're, we're mutually beneficial with uh, the National Weather Service in being able to utilize their information to double check that we're correct. And to also, you know, like we serve, I think we serve uh, beneficially to each other, symbiotic, so to speak. Right. Meteorology, symbiotic meteorology. Um, but so that was a that was for our coverage. Um, the other part of it is that I I'm also um, I'm pretty pleased that the cold front did speed up as much as it did, so that this event was actually shorter than uh, initially expected. Even though it's not over, of course, but. Um, we're in a position now where we can talk to you guys. We can read the chat and actually, you know, get questions from y'all or comments from y'all. I, I honestly like, you know, how how much I've covered with this today, how much I've done. I'm more interested personally in hearing from the chat. Do you guys have any unique perspectives on what we did today? No matter how long you spent watching this stream, did we help you? Did were you able to relay information to a family member? Did you learn something? Do you think we missed something? Or do you think we fell short on something? These are all important perspectives that you guys can share to us. And we would have no idea otherwise, because we're overwhelmed in a sense. We're, we're, we're doing all the things that we do behind the scenes here. So uh, the chat's gonna blow up here. I'm didn't we'll do our absolute best, but like I um uh, and for everyone who's like asking about ratings, that that will be done over the following few days. Surveys from the National Weather Service employees take time, so um, uh, I would encourage you guys not to pre-rate. There is no point in saying was it an EF four, was it an EF three. It doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't matter. It affected communities all the same, no matter what number is assigned to it. We use the number thereafter for information and uh, relevance. You know. Okay. Yeah, I love it. Um, yeah, so we're monitoring a, a chat here. But, but how cool is this, too? This is something you don't get on uh, TV news. You know, here we are. We just did, what, eight, nine hours? I don't even know how long we're into this. Uh, seven hours or something. Um, and we just poured our heart and soul into this coverage. And now as soon as it's over, we're like, okay, what did we do wrong? <laughs> Critique us. Uh, and, like... I think that's cool. I think one one of the reasons why um, uh, we we possibly uh, or or have been able to make this a better experience for everybody is because we we do that. Um, we the only thing that matters to me is the end result for you. Is this is this helping you? Is there something that we're doing that's not helping you? Tell us about it, and then we'll try to fix it. So eight hours. All right. Cool. Uh, include damage photos. Okay. <laughs> well, we, we've, <laughs> we, we've shown that pretty much everything that we've seen, it, it'll take a while for that to, to come out. I think if your town is hit by a tornado, the first thing that you do usually isn't take pictures, you know? <laughs> so, but they, they are coming out and, and speaking of that, here's, here's that uh, Trinity Baptist church in uh, I, Idabel, Oklahoma, once again, which was completely decimated. And, and this picture alone can, can kind of tell you more than likely what we're going to see from other parts of the city um, as we get into daylight tomorrow. The first and most important thing during a situation like this, search and rescue. Then you take your pictures, uh, and then we go from there. I did see someone say that they felt overwhelmed and exhausted. And um, to me, that says two things. That's good that you are interested and involved in this. It, if you are interested in weather and you know you you feel the desire to also share information because it is life saving in any context you can't predict, um, depending on who it reaches. Um, that's good. It shows that you have dedication. You have the right heart. You have the right mindset, and it also means that you care. 
because yeah, I, I got overwhelmed too. When I shared that video on Twitter, I, or I saw it at first and then I, I wanted to share it later. I got, that was the overwhelming thing for me tonight is knowing that something like that could persist into a populated area. So when you get overwhelmed, that's why some people in chat have, I've seen it. They don't like it. They're like, oh man, this guy always tells us to drink water or, you know, get up and take a walk around <laughs> when you're just watching the radar. Or even if you have it open on the side all the time, like it, it, it is important, no matter what these people say, no matter how much they would clown on me, so to speak, uh, it's still going to be important to a lot of people. And they're not taking that into account. They're just thinking about themselves. Right. And, and speaking of being overwhelmed, uh, this was meteorologists Heidi and Ben's first time <laughs> being on the air with us. Uh, and it, it was kind of... Uh, I, I imagine it, it must have been a little overwhelming uh, for you guys, Heidi. What What do you think of uh, today? What was your experience like uh, uh, leading the news? And I, I know it's still coming in, by the way. But like, what do uh, you have any thoughts uh, about today? Let's say I definitely got my feet wet. <laughs> <laughs> um today i mean honestly there could be for at least for me personally i can't speak for somebody else but for me to come into this position today this is the best way for me to do it um this is the way i i work best under stress so this is a perfect scenario and i think for you know whatever events that we have down the road i'm ready <laughs> this is like the best way for me to like get into and dive into things Awesome. And I, I think you did a great job. Uh, and, and you too, Ben, even though I, I think we probably cut to you a little bit less than what we normally would, just because of the, uh, uh, the just the craziness of everything. Uh, but uh, Ben, if you have any statements or anything you'd want to say about uh, today's event, uh, let's hear them. Yeah, well, it certainly was hectic. And obviously, I understand the uh, uh, the tour warnings come first, obviously, that's the big thing that we need to get out there. Um, and I work with, you know, all the analysts and Andy in the background, kind of looking at a bunch of different of the cells. So it was, a, it was pretty, um, it was, uh, pretty hectic just trying to go from cell to cell, looking at and all the potential for tornadoes and all of them and trying to get that information out quickly. So that's, that's what I was doing in the background when I wasn't put on to talk about the, uh, you know, how the CC drop is and how this environment set up and all that. Um, but overall, yeah, it was a pretty hectic outbreak event. Um, but, uh, and, um, but I was happy to be here and happy to help out in any way I could. Yeah. And I, I do want to say, um, we went into the stream actually today. We're, we do plenty of pre-stream planning, guys. We went into the stream today, and I fully wanted to give a natural introduction to Heidi and Ben as best I could. Um, I had a wonderful time hiring them, actually. I got to do my first HR work with Ryan and actually do interviews, and they were uh, they were stars. They were stellar. And um, I could clearly see that the, the drive exists in both of them. They are also both in situations that uh, would be, uh, you know, possible to flourish, blossom in a position like this, like, uh, I guess, what Ryan saw in me, right? So I, I'm super happy that I got to play the part in welcoming um, Heidi and Ben onto the team, both degreed meteorologists. They are going to be on the team just like I am. And... Um, and I mean, they excelled today. <laughs> I, if today were my first day on this uh, on this channel, like it, back in March, that was my first day. I, if you know, I was just after winter set. You know, if this were my first day, I I, I don't know. I <laughs> I would have been like, all right, I'm sorry, but I got to dip out. Not sure I can do this. <laughs> A little too exhausting. But now I understand the mission and how to translate it into the most efficient. You know. Uh, um, relay of uh, weather information possible, but also also serve as a platform for spreading important outlooks and perspectives and mindsets when you approach information like this. Instead of every other, every single other, you know, to, in any capacity, every other um, weather YouTuber that you may see, they'll be doing their coverage and they probably will primarily focus on just the weather, just what's happening, just this and that. But 
what you don't see and what I loved Carly so much. We're still good friends, by the way. What I love from Carly so much is she always focuses on the human element too in these situations because they kind of forget the people behind where these storms are, what these, who these storms affect. You kind of forget them. And that's why I made that tweet earlier about the stimulus and the actionable tornado warning stuff. That's what I find important. But, um, and that's why also I had to take precedence when we were getting active tornado warnings over introducing Vin, because I really wanted to introduce Vin and be like, yeah, Vin, back and forth. This, uh, these prefrontal discrete supercells are so cool. Let's talk about them. And then, you know, right when I was like, okay, Ben, I'm going to introduce you during this break. And then it's like, oh, Confirm tornado, confirm tornado. I'm like, okay, well, you know, we got to give out the information. There's the right place and right time for each part of this. And I think this is the right time to uh, definitely introduce our new meteorologists who you can learn to love and trust, uh, you know, as much as you do for me, if even if that's none, <laughs> whatever, whatever you, what, however ingrained in this channel you are. <laughs> I got a good one here. Uh, Luke mm -hmm. sent. Um through Twitter, types of headaches. He said, this, is ex this explains my headaches. It's not a migraine, it's not hypertension, it's not stress, it's dealing with radar holes. Uh, I, I know I've had a lot to say about this tonight, uh, but I'm interested. I, I, what do you, like Andy and Heidi, Ben, whatever, whoever wants to chime in, do you guys know something I don't? Is there, do you know the reason why we have these holes? Do you know why it's so hard to get them filled? Uh, and, and do you maybe have any ideas as to what could be done uh, about it? Um, I can start. I don't know. But what I did learn, I actually learned something new today in a radar hole. You know, if you have a significant enough tornado, you can actually see yeah. the yeah, tornado true. debris signature, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> even 15,000 feet off, which is not good. Right. It's not good, but it is actually a certain and confident uh data signature i i was i was uh, surprised by that in both a good and bad ways i suppose so learn something new every stream but no i don't know why there are radar holes um i i'm sure i've come across some perspective on it in the past but you pretty universally pretty ubiquitously i see people do not like them meteorologists anyone alike in the scientific field right so um, Ben, I imagine Ben might have something to say about this. Um, I I know for, on a large scale, it's mainly funding and bureaucracy. Um, you know, trying to get those things through. It's through the government mostly, and the government works pretty slowly. Um, and meteorologists obviously hate that. Uh, even the meteorologists in the field don't like how slowly it moves. Um. But there was a tweet that I was reading this morning saying, like, because people were complaining or saying that the radar hole is going to be a problem for today's severe weather event. And there was a tweet that I was reading where there are some private companies creating contracts with the NWS to put, uh, to actually build radars in these radar holes, I like a, a private company putting radars up so that uh, people can use those. So I think there, there's, in the process of getting those filled in a faster way, which is, you know, through private companies that can be done a little bit quicker than maybe a government can. But um, yeah, that's, that's my input on that. <laughs> so essentially, Ryan, I think we don't have a legitimate so, reason. So my, com <laughs> my comments and ranting are, are justified and I, I'm not like, I'm not just talking out of my butt, right? Like I, like this is a problem that I need to be talking about. <laughs> so it seems <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it's the daggone government's fault all right so that that's who we're blaming here uh, anyways uh, riley i don't think riley has any specific comments about that but he does have something to say right riley well actually i do have comments about radar okay. holes because there has been a private company to add radar sites in a radar hole before if you go on radar omega to western north dakota you'll see there's three brown dots those mm -hmm. are uh, radar sites that private companies added to fill that radar hole because that was one of the biggest radar holes that there was and then also radar 
we have had a ton of mods say they want to add to the Radar Omega giveaway. So we now have Wes giving away 11 copies, Jared's giving away five copies, Sam's giving away five copies, Joe's giving away nine copies, and Matt is giving away another five copies. So that brings our total up to, I want to say 30 copies. I'm not quick with math. 35 copies. Awesome. So if you join the Discord server, 35 copies of Radar Omega are available for free. Free Radar Omega. Join the Discord server. It's fun in there anyways. You can learn some stuff. Got 12,000 yeah. weather nerds all crammed together in the same server. Sometimes it's it could be a little much, but most of the time <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. And we've got a great moderation team in there. And uh, you, you can talk. With Andy, me, anybody that, that's hanging around in the uh, the Discord server, ain't that right, Andy? Yep, I'm there. I'm the third name in the list of users there. You'll see me instantly. So um, I wouldn't recommend just like mass pinging me, but I, I like <laughs> I love talking to the community, just like I love talking to the chat right now. This is a unique that we get to talk to only most of you right now and no other time, right? Because you guys are only on the you're only on YouTube. But if you want to get involved more in the community and you want to see me or learn meet the mod team like we've done past meet the staff videos and those are always super cool uh they're there <laughs> we're we're there actually we're just there discord is a cool platform i know it can be intimidating to some people um but we have every resource to really make you feel at home to inspire you to learn more about weather to share your pets pictures of your pets <laughs> you know anything you really want it's it's a it's a great place to do it but you know um, beyond that i'm still reading the chat for um perspective perspectives you may want to add to the stream although we did see quite a few and uh, over like you know 500 comments i didn't really see more than just y'all did a great job which i mean that 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 does speak volumes to us when you know 95 percent of that is the same comment that we received so uh again a lot of people oh, new tornado, tornado warning <laughs> a new tornado warning okay that's in issued. baxter in fulton county arkansas uh this is part of the qlcs the cold front um i Let's... just want to quickly say something about carly though because every time people ask about carly and i am such great friends with carly i always want to give her a shout out carly as you know is the recent uh news head and relay and she and i worked really well together uh on this channel carly has a life okay i don't have a life right now outside of ryan ryan has made my life uh definitely mean a lot more than it used to <laughs> to more people at least i i was still important to a few but you know what i mean um and carly she got married she wants to go to grad school she's running her own youtube channel with that human element behind storms you know i did this, this it's the best place for her to go i fully support her okay that's all you guys need to know all right um i i do want to point out uh real quick before we get back into uh any sort of a conversation where that tornado warning is um and it's it's up a here in northern um uh, arkansas uh near the the border with uh, missouri um, and it's in a radar hole, kind of. Uh, but uh, there is some uh, rotation here, but it's not incredibly, uh, I guess, intense. Um, definitely take shelter in Henderson, uh, in Ott, uh, to south of Bakersfield. Uh, this is a strong storm. There's going to be some very strong winds and maybe a spin-up tornado. We don't have a big one down like we have uh, seen a lot today. And then we also just got another new tornado warning south of arkadelphia that's going to be for this uh, qlcs uh, storm that's got an embedded a uh, little bit of a rotation in it uh, near gordon and red springs so watch out and delark and fairview and sparkman uh, for this uh, potential uh, dangerous storm to maybe drop a brief spin up tornado the these are going to have damaging winds and, and you, you you need to obviously not be outdoors you need to be indoors you need to be in a safe spot uh, but um i don't see anything on radar that would indicate to me that there's a big you know imminent uh, tornado disaster getting ready to happen in, in these areas so 
the tornado warnings are called out. Your counties are listed down in the ticker below. As long as they are there, you need to be in your safe spot. And then when they are gone, you can come out. Okay. Yes. And someone's asking for radar hole merch. We thought about that before. Um, what do you think, Ryan? <laughs> well, so I, I'm hearing a lot of people talking about these private companies buying radars uh, and, and just setting them somewhere. Um, like, what, what does that cost? Like, could, could we sell enough T-shirts to buy our own radar? You know what I'm saying? Like, is that something that we could do? Yeah. Do you think? Uh, over time, we figured that out earlier today, I think. Well, I know we the Doppler the, on yeah, wheels yeah. thing. I, I know that. Would this oh. be about the same or would this, is this some, a different kind of, uh, like in order for it to be useful, for example, in the way that we would need it to be on a day like today? Um, uh, <laughs> yes, a Doppler 88, you know, you know a WSR 88D. Yeah, probably a little bit more than what you were quoted, <laughs> if you remember. But at the same time, I do want to hear what chat thinks about this. Just just a passing idea. You know, we have nothing cement concrete. Uh, but what if we what if us, the team had, you know, we have our chasers, right? What if we had designated chasers that also have their Doppler radars on wheels with their trucks so that we had the radar data? And we could make it open access, but also show it on the stream because we, you know, our chasers are going to these events constantly. Wouldn't that be dope? I'm pretty sure it would be. <laughs> but uh, that's just a passing idea, okay? Y'all don't need to know anything else about that besides the fact that we're thinking up these uh, absolute bangers of ideas behind the scenes. Yeah. We, we keep thinking of things that we could do that are awesome. And then it's like, man, it's like a million dollars. Like if, if, if we can ever think of something that's less than a million dollars, we'll be on it, you know, but mm -hmm. that, I, and that's a lot of t-shirts, you know, and that's a lot of, uh, uh, <laughs> uh views on a YouTube video. So uh, we'll, we'll get there one day maybe. Um, but I think it's cool that we're even thinking about it. We're dreaming it up that that's how dedicated we are. Right. Like, like, seriously, like, and I'm not kidding when I say that I would love one day to spend a million dollars on a radar. I mean, what do I get out of that other than uh, being able to, uh, you know, show you the storms better in, in, in a specific area? Like, that's something that I actually want to do. I would, I would spend multiple millions of dollars on multiple radars if I had them, if I had that many of dollars. <laughs> but, um, so, it, you know, a lot of times it sounds like a joke when we're talking about this kind of stuff, but these are real, uh, they're, they're far out, they're far fetched, but they, these are real uh, aspirations and dreams that we have. And, and it's cool because this is our job. Our job is to do the, the weather in a, in a way that's, that's never been done before. That's interactive. That's exciting and, and reaches new people. And I think in order to do that on a, on a, on a high level, we get, we get, we, we might have to spend a million dollars on a radar every once in a while. And I, it's something that, uh, uh, I'm really uh, considering. Uh, so if we can't get the government to do it, which that, that would be the best way. Um, we, we might fill in some of those gaps uh, with, with our own means, if possible. Something that we're just thinking about. Mm -hmm. And while we're thinking about that, um, let's also think about our active tornado warnings again, because of course we're going in and out. Uh, we do have two active warnings. Um, of course, you can, as mentioned before, you can keep track of the counties in the warnings. Right now, the more concerning one is near Gurdon, Gurdon uh, Arkansas along I-30. And it is heading to the northeast towards the Lark, Willow, and eventually Sheridan and areas well down, well down the path um, uh, south of Little Rock. So the southern periphery of Little Rock may eventually see this cell in particular. It does look like an embedded supercell in the line of storms. So these have the tendency to produce rotation uh, and thus become tornadic even through the night. Uh, as we see, the other tornado warning is up on the Arkansas-Missouri border near Henderson, Arkansas, along Highway 62. Uh, that is what we like to call a bookend vortex. So that the essentially the northern edge of a, a line of storms like we're looking at here that northern edge likes to spin the right direction 
typically the right direction uh, to produce uh, possible tornadoes should it, should it be in the right environment. So uh, we, we do monitor the northern edge of a line of storms like this, a cold front uh, line of storms, because you know we can get valid tornado warnings up there on the northern periphery, even though the environment is much worse, much less moist or um, uh, basically just not conducive for tornadoes. That sort of um, push the physics up there, the dynamics of the atmosphere up there alone are enough to circumvent the need for those favorable conditions and actually give us something worth a uh, warning from the National Weather Service. So that would be for um, Baxter and Fulton counties up there on the border, east of Mountain Home, west of uh, Viola or Viola. That is headed over Moody uh, and areas near West Plains, Missouri, and Howell County. Um, if I had to guess, I would say that the northern, I mean, both tornado warnings are, it's a tornado warning. I'm not going to guess anything because that is not the point. In the tornado warning, you get in your tornado safe spots. Um, if you do have a family member sleeping right now in a tornado warning, it would be ideal if they're, if I named their town and it was directly in the path, then it would be ideal that they are not asleep for that, if possible. Uh, that's always what you want. You want them to be in the safest part of their house. Uh, okay, but yeah, beyond that, Ryan, that should be a good coverage. The, I mean, the the Delark Curtis cell, the Southern Arkansas tornado warning does look decently concerning. So we'll keep an eye, a close eye on it for sure. Yep. And uh, just to reiterate real quick, uh, any any of these towns out in front of the storm need to be taking shelter just in case you haven't heard. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go a little bit closer up on Radar Omega and, and read out some of these smaller communities. Uh, Griffith Town, Gravel Junction, Delark, Manning, Joan, Brown Springs, Faber, Knoxville, Round Hill, Willow, uh, and Rolla in uh, Arkansas. Uh, you need to be taking shelter because this one uh, this one does look like it might be a stronger storm and uh, you're you're going to want to be sheltered for this one uh, these warnings are for clark dallas hot spring baxter and fulton counties all in arkansas if you are in any of those counties take shelter now and uh, we'll keep you updated as new information comes in um uh, real quick want to talk about some twitter drama um, so th there's a, currently a, a, a big debate going on uh, amongst uh, weather Twitter about whether or not people should uh, tag at Ryan Hall y'all on pictures. <laughs> Actually, Ryan, there is something more important than that currently. Oh, okay, let's yes. hear about it. There is a tornado debris signature east of Curtis. So that will head just west of Delark toward Willow, Arkansas. That's Leola this. and Sheridan, yeah, it is the southern okay. one. All right. So there is, once again, there is a uh, cause for concern here with the storm. All the, the, the towns that we uh, that we just named off are, are, are still, it's the same uh, deal. We want you in your safe spot. Uh, but now it looks like, uh, it looks like we, um, uh, we have a tornado down, and we know that because we've got a little bit of a tornado debris signature here. We've got a tornado putting things in the sky that necessarily uh, shouldn't be there uh, and that's going to go towards uh Delark. a new tornado watch has been issued uh and um beyond that towards willow here over the next little bit so we're gonna we're gonna kind of uh hyper focus on this for a little bit as it is a a, a very important problem and hopefully we can get the message out to people in griffith town and gravel junction that maybe uh within minutes um, we might have a, a tornado come through here uh, very soon. This is not a, an incredibly um, populated area, I guess. Um, but this is, uh, there. there's definitely some houses and, and some businesses out through here. So we want to make sure it's 10 p.m. Uh, people might be trying to go to bed. Uh, the, the overall threat from these storms is, is decreasing. Every once in a while, this something like this will pop up. And we don't want it to surprise anybody. So if we know anybody in Griffith Town, Gravel Junction, Delark, Joan, Round Hill, Willow, Brown Springs, or any of these places down here in Clark, Dallas, or Hot Spring counties in um, uh, Arkansas, uh, we need to let them know that we've got a new tornado 
another tornado uh, down on the ground here, and it's coming uh, up towards uh, the uh, eventually towards Rolla and Brush Creek. All right, maybe, maybe if this lasts a while, we might have to worry about this all the way up towards Sheridian. But these kinds of storms uh, typically uh, don't last that long. So hopefully we, we see this kind of dissipate uh, within the next couple frames. But right now, it does seem like uh, we've got a storm lofting debris uh, into the air. Uh, let's see. Chris has an update. have a report uh okay I, I so here's the radar this is the tornado coming towards griffith town and gravel junction i do want to check in on chris uh chris uh, I, I know you're still out there uh, in and around uh, this area new information um this where tornado some of the damage happened from earlier upgraded. tornadoes uh, and if you've got time if you're not in the middle of search and rescue right now it, it, whenever you get the chance please give us an update on what's going on out there and, and the specific areas that you're covering so uh, that's that just got upgraded to a confirmed tornado, um, and we've known that it's down for a while. But that just that adds to the uh, confirmation there that this is a dangerous situation, and you need to be uh, taking it very seriously in Griffith Town and Gravel Junction. Please take shelter, um, and it's going to come through within the next couple of minutes. And I want to emphasize before we go any farther in this broadcast, I, I don't know exactly how long we're going to go, but if, if this tornado goes away, for example, in 30 minutes and we get back into another uh, conversation, uh, this, these kinds of things could happen off and on multiple times throughout the night. Uh, it doesn't matter if I'm live or if we're talking about uh, hey, Ryan, whatever sorry, like, it, very during a situation like at. this. Oops. Uh, we're Let's currently coming into the Naples, Texas area. Uh, lots and lots of tree damage uh we have another chaser already in naples that are they're gonna help us uh, with search and rescue if we can find anywhere we can go that law enforcement will let us go to help assist with search and rescue uh, i am search and rescue certified so uh, we're going to try to help as much as we can uh, but as of right now a lot of tree damage uh, multiple roads are impassable at this time uh, if you don't live in the area, I would not suggest just coming out and sightseeing at this time. Uh, it's just not a not a good time. Uh, but we're we're going to continue on off to the north. If if we can't get anything in Naples, we're going to ride on up towards the Paris and uh, Ida Bell area. All right, Chris. I, I'm assuming you're you're going to stay in that general vicinity tonight. Um, so just just let me know your plans at some point. And um, I don't know if uh, Coppock's going to be staying in the area or not as well, or Vince. Uh, but as long as we've got one of you that stick around, uh, we've, got, we've got a ton of resources thanks to the Y'all Squad. And if there's anybody that needs help, it doesn't have to be tonight. If it's tomorrow, I know that like uh, law enforcement's not letting a lot of people into certain places. But if, we can, if you can find somebody that needs something, uh, let me know and we'll work it out to where that they can get it, okay? Um, Copy that. We're coming into Naples, and I've already got damage, so uh, stand by. I'll, I'll give you an update as soon as I can, and I'll try to reset my stream. All right. All right, so that's an update from Chris Hall, Storm Chaser Chris Hall on the ground out there helping with store, uh, search and rescue. Lots of damage, lots of damage. We are getting lots of unconfirmed uh, casualty and, and fatality reports. And I know a lot of that stuff is floating around in the chat and, and, and on Twitter and stuff. The only thing for sure that I know so far is, 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 uh, is there's been one confirmed uh, fatality in McCurtain County. I could be wrong on that. If we have any update from, uh, from Heidi or anybody on more solid numbers, let, let me know. But, <clears throat> um, uh, as as we get that confirmed number, we we will let you know. And I'll, even after the stream's over, like I'll we'll, we'll have tweets and stuff going out. So uh, just make sure you follow us on all platforms if you want to follow the story as it continues to unfold. Right now, if you are uh, just now tuning in, um, we are kind of focusing on this storm, this tornado warning in uh, Clark, Dallas, and Hot Spring counties in Arkansas, uh, because we do have a tornado on the ground down here. Uh, south or in west of Griffith Town. 
and um, if I can get the latest frame here, uh, I'll show you a little bit more about that. But uh, uh, this is what it looks like. This is the debris, and we do think it's still on the ground. And it's going to go right through the Griffith Town area, or just to the north. And then we're going to see it come into Joan, Joanne, or Knoxville, and Brown Springs here within the next couple of minutes. All right. Yeah, it actually looks like that tornado is taking more of a west path than I mentioned. Um, definitely more like po Poyan, Poyan, and Prattsville are closer to the uh, the supposed path that uh, the tornado is taking. Uh, currently along Highway 270. It should stay east of Malvern and Rockport if we have viewers there in that area. So um, I would definitely be looking out mostly for for Poyan or Poyan right now, that town. Ooh. All right. Yep, so that's uh, our latest uh, confirmed tornado warning. We only have one tornado warning right now, and it is uh, it's that confirmed warning there. Uh, and, and that last scan, that latest scan that just came in on the velocity does look a little bit, I don't know what just happened there. It, it looks a little bit less intense, but I think that's something, it, it, it doesn't matter. We still, have, we still have the tornado debris signature. We still have a tornado down here, and that's coming up towards uh, Brown Spring. So uh, take shelter, even downstream a little bit near Poya and Prattsville, like uh, Andy was saying, uh, heads up because this could last all the way up towards that this uh, area. And, and Brandon Coppock, Brandon Coppock out of nowhere is right next to this storm. What the heck? He's way up here in Arkansas. Um, and uh, I don't know if he's going to be able to get in front of this thing or not, but uh, we do have a storm chaser on it. So there you go. If there's a tornado down, uh, I'm sure we'll hear about the damage from him uh, at some point soon. Uh, and we got an update from Riley. Go ahead, Riley. Brandon is trying his absolute hardest to get to this um, tornado warning and see if there is a tornado on the ground. Okay. All right. Well, keep us updated on what he finds, if he finds anything. Uh, <laughs> I was just looking at the Radar Omega here, and I see Brandon Kopik's icon pop up. I feel like I'm... A hundred miles away from the last place I saw Brandon Coppock, which just kind of blew my mind. But uh, there you go. He's on Interstate 30 going northbound. Um, just a quick reminder, even after we end the stream today, if Brandon or Vince or Brett or anybody like that is still streaming, uh, you'll be able to keep up with them in the Radar Omega app uh, just by clicking on them like this. There you go. And you'll be able to see their little icon and their relative position next to the storms uh, i don't know i, I can't tell I, I think i think this is trying to let up a little bit we still have a, a tornado debris signature here and we need everybody in brown springs in favor to take shelter now confirmed tornado our umpteenth one of the day uh, hopefully our last, but we can't say for sure um, if that's going to be the case or not. Just going through Twitter here. I do... Um, ah, never mind. You guys are funny. Some of the memes on Twitter here are really cracking me up about the radar holes. Has your headache gotten better? No. <laughs> it's gotten progressively worse. I don't know. Worse. I don't know if you can tell. But, um, yeah, that's... Uh, it it's gotten worse. I'm all right though. I think it's just from talking, talking for six hours straight. 
but I'll be good. I'm being optimistic here, but it looks to me like the, the, the tornado debris signature associated with this storm is spreading out a little bit. And maybe that means that the tornado has lifted. It could come back down, though. Um, if it's not currently down, hopefully we're all in our safe spots in Brown Springs. Uh, but up there towards Donaldson and uh, Landers and Rolla, we need to remain in our safe spots, but hope for the best and uh, know that there's a, a chance that this stays together all the way up through there, but hopefully it's falling apart. Light sensitivity? No. No, it's it's definitely, it's something dumb. It's something, it, it, like it's not that big of a deal. Probably need to drink more water. I agree, Ryan. Uh, also, I do agree. I do not think the tornado is on the ground currently, but I do think this is a very dangerous storm nonetheless. Should be treated as the same. Um, they, the chat wants to know about the Twitter drama. I'll let it happen. <laughs> the chat what? They want to know about the Twitter drama. Oh, well, there, there's two things. One thing is uh, people are making a big deal out of our sticker, of course. Um, uh, it, it is... So shopryanhall.com, I want to make this known. I want to be 100% like transparent and open about this and, and just tell you exactly what the website says right here coming from my mouth. This is not a charity. I don't have a charity. I'm not responsible or smart enough to have one. I don't even know how to start one, okay? So the way that I do this is if we want to help somebody, I call Chris Hall and I give him my card number. I'm like, go to Lowe's and get $15,000 worth of generators and give them to people. How do I get that money? Through uh, stickers on the website. Um, it, I, it's not like, <laughs> there's no other way for me to get it. <laughs> like if, if I want to help somebody, if you guys want to help somebody, this is a, a great way to do it. Obviously, there's a million charities. There's the Red Cross there's all this other stuff out there. You guys know about that stuff. You know that it exists. You can donate to those. Uh, but if you want uh, to, to have Chris and, and Brandon and me uh, use those funds in whatever ways we see fit, maybe if you want to see it unfold, you know, in my next video, I'll have clips and, and videos of what we did with your contributions up for you to see. If you want that, you know, do, do it our way. Do it, do it the way that we want to do it. To me, it's just... We've got people down there. People need help. Why not help them? And, and we've got thousands of people watching. Why not utilize this? Uh, I, I think some people just think it's bad taste to put up a sticker and, and sell them after a tornado. I, I, I get it if we were like doing anything other than immediately turning around and putting that money into the people's uh, communities that just got hit by a tornado. And it's not like the sticker says Ryan Hall on it. It's not like it's an, it's an advertisement for me. <laughs> You know, it's a sticker. We, we have to give you something. When you buy something, we have to send you something. That's how it works. Maybe one day I'll just start a, a charity and, 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 and people will be less mad about it. But I just, I, you know, I, I'm just trying to get uh, resources and money to people down here. And I, I'm doing it the only way I know how. I'm a YouTuber. Give me a break, okay? Um, and then there's another one where uh, people are, are upset because there are so many, because we have so many people watching, uh, and I encourage them to help me find uh, information online. Um, uh, people are upset that I am, t I am being tagged so often in weather information, pictures and, and videos and, and, and stuff like that. Um, I want you guys to know that's watching. If you ever see that sentiment online, ignore it. Those people don't like it just like people are begging, constantly looking for something to complain about. There, there is no reason for that to be a problem. All right. Like you, if you tag somebody in, in a tweet, like th th that causes a problem for nobody. <laughs> Um, and, and like, I think some people are saying that you should tag the national weather service instead. Like they are not already seeing it. Like they don't already have a huge team of people. Like they're incapable of finding information without you tagging them in it. Like, I, I, I don't know. I I'm, I'm just seeing a lot of this stuff on Twitter and I, and I wanted to uh, have a podcast about it, Andy. I don't know. <laughs>
<laughs> what do you think about it? And and real quick before we get into that, I do want to say that it the storm here that has promoted our uh, tornado warning does continue to look less and less impressive. It's still a dangerous storm, so we want to stay sheltered, but uh, we're going to kind of wean our focus off of it a little bit. So, yeah. Uh, honestly, I don't have anything to add from what you said. <laughs> Okay. On on at least on the sticker matter, it's I I honest I don't know I don't get the downsides or or like any I don't even need, really even get any supposed upsides with it. It just is what it is. Like it is a way to show that you watch this channel or you like what we do here, and it's a way to directly you know have a designatable fund to exactly what you want to support when you get it. I, I don't know if there is another upside or another downside to it when it's just plain simple. Right. And a big problem of it, a, a big problem is I, for, for whatever reason, pay too much to attention to Twitter. I think there's a small little echo chamber of, uh, of people who, who uh, cause a ruckus. And I, for some reason, even though I don't follow these people, I see it. <laughs> it pops up at the top of my newsfeed. It's like the Twitter algorithm knows <laughs> I don't follow anybody that's involved. I don't like it, but it just pops up at the top of my newsfeed. So I, maybe, maybe I just need to delete my Twitter account. What do you think? Probably would be good uh, for my mental uh, health, <laughs> but wouldn't be good for the operation here because outside of that, Twitter is a really useful tool for what we do here. Yes. Yeah. It's unfortunately essential as we like to say. <laughs> But it's also a good way to connect with you guys. And, you know, if you've ever tagged either one of us or you tagged me, probably if you tagged Brian, he didn't see it. But if you tagged me, I did see it. I, I'm able to still go through everything. I take the time. And if you, even if I don't interact with you at all, just know that I did see what you sent along. So if you're trying to help, I, of course, I'm going to appreciate that. I love it. Uh, Rosemary says, uh, drink a Mountain Dew for your headache. And you know what? That would probably hit the spot. I'm not kidding. I would probably do something. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it's easy. It's easy for everyone to to dogpile and bag bandwagon on it. It's just overwhelmingly negative. But we actually are a beacon of positive um, results. Is what I like to say on Twitter. Yeah, sure. It still kind of mixes in. It, it can entrain. There's a meteorological term for you. Entrain the bad. Uh, in the good, but I think we are a we are a positive beacon on Twitter with what we do uh, as an extension of what we do on here on uh, YouTube. So while it's easy to bandwagon and everyone say that oh it sucks it sucks everything is bad and we shouldn't be on it, it genuinely is useful and we can make it good while still being open you know, like open conversation, open interpretation, uh, constructive and, and so forth. Um, so don't, don't completely shut it out. It's an important resource for us. I don't want to, I don't want everyone to only feel it negatively. You know, I, I still think it's, uh, essential, especially in the context of, uh, social meteorology and how that was super important, uh, in play tonight, you know, with the chasing video that we wanted to tweet, tweet out, uh, but, you know, copyright's probably an issue, it, things like that. Like social meteorology does rely on Twitter in a, in a significant way that we can't, we can't say it doesn't like that would be, that would be kind of preposterous if we said it didn't, it, it's another stimulus to serve as getting info out. And if we have a lot of those, then yeah, it's a bit messy, but if we have a few that work and we have a few that we know we can use well, then it's, it's fine. And if, you know, if it does go down in a dumpster fire outside of our control, then so be it. But for now, I, ha, me having uh, a concentration in forecasting, climatology, and also how, and also basically social meteorology and all the classes that I've taken uh, in my degree, I think that this is a beneficial platform to um, have, uh, have in terms of uh, promoting and providing good, efficient social meteorology. Great. I agree. I'm trying to see how long. How long have we been going? Uh, I got eight you. hours and fifty minutes. Okay. Okay. Cool. 
Um, yeah, I think that um, I think that everything we're doing is great. I just uh, I, I I just wanted to talk on uh, some of the things that that I was seeing here and, and 99% of everything is obviously incredibly positive. Uh, but I, I guess that, um, I, I'm also, I'm always like looking for criticism. It, it's one of the ways that we've, we've built the channel. We listen for what people think is wrong. We look into it. We, we, if it, if it is wrong or if it is, if it could be better, we make it better. And, um, I think sometimes the what I perceive as criticism is literally just garbage, it, and, and it's it's not constructive at all. Uh, but I'm used to it coming from a good place, for, from one of you guys watching in the comments section of a YouTube video, uh, somebody who genuinely needs uh, information. But I guess at, at some points, whenever you start to reach such a large audience and 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 you know stuff like that. There, there are people who probably don't even watch our content that are complaining about us out there. And I just need to learn how to tune that out. And I'm working on it. I'll get there. I appreciate y'all. So what are some of the things that you've seen just here? Um, I, wait, I'm sorry. What? What are the, what are the things in chat that you've seen here that I, I assume you were talking about chat? Um, you know, while we want to respond to 99 per the 99% of the positive and nothing needs to change comments in the chat that I, um, was there something in particular that you were looking at now when you were thinking of that? Um, no, just the general consensus of how, uh, positive everything is that, that that's kind of what I was, uh, um, uh, talking about and, and yeah, if, if that makes sense. But. Another thing, yeah, it, and in context of this, I want to make sure that people aren't generalizing this either because a lot of people can think that, oh, always preaching positivity, always, always positive. That can be toxic in and of itself. What we're trying to say here is we are naturally positive because of what we're doing. Because of the operation we're, we have here, we are naturally positive. It is not forced. It's not forced at all. It's it can be tough to be positive sure when you, when you see you know a large tornado go through a populated place like Idaho Oklahoma probably experienced today but it's not forced it's not a forced smile it is genuine uh so i need to i want those of you who may be kind of iffy on like oh this guy always wants to be positive or i always want to be positive or something and how i'm being, maybe it's superficial it's genuine not superficial Um, uh, so yeah, by the way, the tornado warning is, a uh, has been allowed to expire. Um, and we now are back to zero, no tornado warnings out there. Uh, we still have a tornado watch, uh, that encompasses a pretty large area from, um, pretty much all of East Arkansas down into central portions of Louisiana. Uh, but the storm threat, once again, is is slowly diminishing, becoming less of a uh, significant problem as we go later into the evening. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm still I'm surprised we haven't received a whole lot more uh, information on uh, some of these towns like Idabel. Like I'm sure it's coming out slowly but surely. Uh, but this is something I'll probably do a video tomorrow on the extra channel. By the way, if you guys aren't subscribed to Ryan Hall, y'all extra, uh, make sure you do that. We'll probably do some sort of update on what happened uh, tonight on that channel tomorrow. And um, of course, we're going to have Chris uh, Hall and, and probably a couple other people down there working to find and see if anything is needed. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, I feel like to an extent that the severe weather coverage is, is once again wrapping up. Um, Andy, do you got? Is there? Do we need to keep the conversation going? Is there anything else you want to uh, talk about here before we start wrapping the whole thing up, or what? Uh, I mean, I'm always down to chat about anything that people want to ask us because it's such a unique, uh, you know, in this time of year, it is pretty unique to be able to host this medium of communication. So, you know, I'll always be for continuing, but it's up to you. Hey, listen, if there are questions, if there's stuff in the chat, if there's stuff people want to ask, um, 
Let me know. Uh, let us know. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go. Um, so what are you and, and Riley smiling about over there? What's going on? He wants to say the official total for the radar that we want to install. <laughs> oh, does, does he right. know? Ra radar Omega responded. It's been done before. So $500,000 plus maintenance. And there's two options. You could A, fix a smaller radar hole in high res with an X-band radar. Or B, fix a 300 mile in diameter hole with a C-band radar, and both are just under $500,000. So we only need to sell like 500,000 t-shirts and we'll be there. That, that ain't even bad. <laughs> I, we could, we could, I'm not kidding. We could, we could buy a radar. This is my new goal. This is my new goal. We're, we're going to do something at some point to, to raise money for a Yaldar. And that's what I'm calling it. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, and, the, <laughs> and the first hole we, 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 we will fill is going to be down here, uh, near, uh, I don't know where, where are we going to put it? Um, probably literally right in the Hugo, uh, antlers region, somewhere down here in, uh, Southeastern Oklahoma. And then we'll, 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 we'll put another one in Mississippi. We'll, we'll do one by one if we have to. We're going to have the Yaldar one day, one guy. Is it guys, anytime that we plug a t-shirt in the future, you, you just get one, all right? <laughs> uh, by the way, if, if, if anybody missed it earlier, uh, Barry Bones, our official mascot, um, has sent me this. I got a package in the mail today, uh, and it's a very nice photo of Barry Bones, uh, and I'm going to hang it on the wall. I might put it as a part an official part of the uh the the set behind me here but i just wanted to because i know barry is watching uh, i just wanted to say thank you uh barry bones i think i tried to mention this earlier before all heck broke loose um but yeah that's super cool we got it uh steph brought in uh our dinner earlier and she also checked the p.o box and that was in there if um so yeah, maybe one day we can get uh, Barry Bones on the air here as a part of the, uh, the podcast, too. And, of course, you guys should follow Barry on uh, Twitter if you haven't already. Um, let's see. Also, um, thanks to everybody that uh, tuned in and subscribed today. We've got uh, al we're almost to seven hundred eighty thousand subscribers. I don't know how much we started off with today, but we've certainly gained subscribers. Thanks for uh, doing that. We're we're gonna have all kinds of uh, new content here soon, and um, we are going to uh, continue to kind of uh, do what we've been doing for the past two years and and, and growing and expanding and. Uh, getting more people on board and and, and getting y'all dars. So if you want to be a part of, of the ride, uh, subscribe now. What was that? And speaking of y'all dars, uh, we do have a tornado debris signature that I did confirm with my analyst like three minutes ago. I asked them, I was like, why is that still on the ground? And they're like, because it's on the ground. So <laughs> there is a tornado on the ground south and east of Malvern. At the moment, it is pretty tough for me to see. Like the the velocity is not tight, but we do not have an active tornado warning for that. So that is a dangerous storm. It's going to head very close to uh, Perla and Gifford, east of Malvern, along Highway 270. Um, what I expect is happening here is this is actually a tree eater. Um, it's very possible that in this area. Uh, in Arkansas, we could be in peak foliage uh, at the moment. And what that means is that CC, you know, your correlation coefficient that Ryan tells you about, there's stuff floating in the atmosphere that shouldn't be there. Uh, leaves can make that show up really easily. So if you have a powerful rotating gust, even if it's just a fart uh, and it lasts for a little bit, uh, and it's not going to do more than maybe a few shingles off anyone's roof. It, it might still show up like a deep, uh, debris signature, like we see right there, uh, just east of Malvern. So, uh, of course it's still a dangerous storm. Should it be heavily localized in its damage? You never know who's going to get exactly, um, hit by it as it, as it uh, travels along. So if you are in that area, please take shelter. 
Um, I would be surprised if there were no tornado warning issued for this, but at the same time, I can understand that this may be an instance where um, the the potential leaves from all the fall foliage are really what's making this show up and look like a, a you know, like a, a, a huge deal, which it may be too. It, we have no right to presume that, but there are alternative theories that I want you to be aware of. <laughs> Okay. And what I mean by a fart is a brief gust, y'all. Come on now. <laughs> uh, all right, Andy. Um, once again, there is no tornado warning here, but we should, if anybody's watching in Ta Traskwood or Malvern or uh, near this um, suspicious area up towards Haskell and uh, Benton, uh, you, you, you should, uh, you're watching because you want to be more weather aware than usual, right? So just go ahead and be Take the precautions and because it does look like something's going on here. There is rotation. Um, and then you, we've got that um, drop in uh, the correlation coefficient. Yeah, some, something is trying to come together there if it's not already come together. And so if, if they don't issue a warning here soon, I would still get to, to shelter there in Traskwood. Storm Chaser Brandon Coppock's really close to this. Like he, and you can see his feet above my head. Like he's, I mean, a couple miles to the west of, of where this tornado is, maybe. Uh, so we, we'll know soon if he sees anything. Uh, obviously, he's too far away right now, and there's a lot of rain. Uh, he can't tell us anything at the very moment, but he should be in a situation where he'll be able to at least see something as this goes off to the north and, and one of the reasons why we switch back and forth between the reflectivity the uh, velocity and the correlation coefficient so often is because when one thing sh looks like there might be a tornado um, and another thing doesn't uh, that kind of lowers your confidence a little bit <laughs> sorry when all three of them line up like earlier today when we were looking at some of these uh, big tornadoes we had the big hook echo debris ball on uh uh, the reflectivity, we had a tight velocity couplet on velocity and we had a correlation coefficient. It's like, okay, like, boom, that's a, that's a big tornado. Uh, in this situation, we've got the, the, the tornado debris signature. We've got a little bit of velocity couplet and really not a whole lot, uh, to go off of with the, uh, reflectivity. So maybe that's why we don't see an official warning from the national weather service, but uh, nevertheless, uh, if you're watching this right now, you've got a little bit of an extra heads up in Traskwood just in case this stays a concerning problem here over the next little bit and they do issue that warning. So there you go. Uh, emergency response is showing up uh, near a Naples. A new tornado oh, there warning it is. has been issued. Um, Texas and Chris is down there. He's just giving me an update on that. But, uh, okay, a, t a tornado warning was just issued uh, for this storm. And it includes Traskwood, Haskell, Dentoni, Benton, Belfast, and all these places. So there you go. Another reason to always watch the Ryan Hall y'all streams. You got a big time heads up on that one. Although now it looks like this is probably <laughs> going away. Uh, we don't want to speak too soon um, uh, because it definitely could hold together as it goes up towards Traskwood and, and Benton. But um, take shelter. Uh, you've got the official warning now. We'll hear from Brandon here soon, I'm sure. And he'll let us know if he's seeing anything. Hydrate, Ryan. Okay, sure thing. I have drank three bottles of water through the duration of this stream, so I think I'm doing all right. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Do you keep up with how much uh, water intake you're getting during the streams? Do you know how much you've drank today? Uh, I'm probably at about... 14, 15 ounces, so maybe a good, a good tall glass. Um, but yeah, my voice still sounds like this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I have vocal stamina like I do, but that's one of the things that I'm pretty happy about for being a, a meteorologist, especially on a social platform. I am a thirsty guy. E even when I'm not talking all the time, I, I, I drink, a, I have to drink a lot of water. So um, I, I appreciate the reminders. You guys are are awesome. Uh, 
it is pretty interesting that we have this risk today, but the risk tomorrow is next to, you know, it's minimal for only a few places and next to none for everywhere else. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, I, I was talking earlier about how some of the, uh, like the like the lower low level jet and, and, and all this stuff uh, as the storm ejects off to the northeast continues to be impressive um, in the future, uh, but nothing else does. And, and maybe we can talk a little bit about that, uh, about why the threat is decreased off to the east, but not until... Riley tells us uh, this very important information. All right. So we heard from Brandon, there is leaves falling out of the air and he may or may not have seen a power flash. There was a bright blue and purple flash, but he has no way to confirm that it was for sure a power flash. All right. So Brandon, you know, Brandon, it would make sense that leaves are falling in the air because here, here's where all the leaves are being picked up right south of Malvern. Now they're lofted up into the atmosphere and they're, they're kind of spread out a little bit between Magnet Cove and Traskwood and they're starting to fall here where Brandon is. So we, we had a leaf NATO more than likely here and um, I, I do think it has since let up. Uh, but certainly still some very strong uh, winds and maybe even another one forming here soon as it comes towards Traskwood. So it's nice to get that uh, confirmation of uh, leaf rain uh, from uh, Brandon Kopic there. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, people are sending me links on Twitter now to buy radars that like there's you can just there's links to them apparently. <laughs> just add it to the cart. On Amazon or something? Do they come pre-wrapped? I don't know. I, I hope so. How would you wrap a uh, radar? What would you make it look like? Uh, oh, like wrapping the radar like with vinyl? Like with a graphic? Yeah. What what would it look like? Um, uh, like the ray dome, like the dome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of, I don't know, like a basketball or a baseball or something, something fun. Because all of them look like golf balls, right? Yeah. So uh, I've, we've got to be different. Uh, I do want to say real quick too. Uh, we've we've shouted out the Storm Prediction Center. We've 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 uh, patted ourselves on the back a little bit tonight, uh, but we we've left out all of the the National Weather Service offices. Uh, most specifically, um, uh, the Little Rock office and the um, uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, office. They've been amazing uh, tonight with warning issuances and real time information. Um, uh, they are really the ones uh, that are saving lives uh, uh, tonight. And, and, and I think that a lot of times the work that they do goes unnoticed because a lot of times what they do is they present the information to people like me and your local TV weather guy. And it, it kind of, they're the ones that end up getting it to you. But a lot of the, the hard work uh, that's, that goes into this is being done by the people at, at the National Weather Service. So we... We want to give them their uh, their props as well. Um, uh, go ahead, Riley. So Brandon said he cannot confirm a tornado, but he can contain or he can confirm that there is a bunch of zappy boys. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Brandon is plumb near close to Little Rock, man. I swear he was in Dallas two minutes ago. Brandon's halfway home now following this storm. Chris is still down here uh, near Mount Pleasant and some of these places. I think he's going to head up north towards Idabel. 
Um, and he's, he's, he's probably going to be our main instrumental uh, piece of the puzzle as, as trying to get um, supplies. and If there's anything needed up there, he, he's going to be the one that helps us do that. And that's we can talk uh, everybody else into turning around. Dag gone. It looks like on that last scan that we might have had a, another little uptick in the debris signature, but it's very displaced from. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Hey, Traskwood, stay in your safe spot just in case. Brandon Coppock's down there. He'll let us know if he sees anything. We do have a tornado warning for Grant Hot Spring and Saline counties in uh, Arkansas. Uh, Benton, Haskell, Bryant, uh, all these places are under the gun here for a very strong storm, maybe a tornado, uh, and we want you in your safe spots. But thankfully, that's the only tornado warning we have out there tonight. I don't think Brandon's going that fast. I think that I just wasn't paying attention. Or like it's that just goes to show how quickly eight or nine hours goes by whenever you're in the middle of broadcasting a severe weather event like this. Like you can drive from Dallas to Little Rock um, while also stopping on the side of the road and getting videos of tornadoes in the time that it takes to. <laughs> read out tornado warnings on YouTube. Like it's just, it's a, it's a weird thing. And I, I think I just didn't realize how much ground he'd covered. Michael Joy says, thank you. He's been a, a, a high risk member for 13 months. Michael, thank you. Lisa, thank you for the super chat. Uh, Siege says we bought a radar starting Ryan, starring Ryan and Andy. Yeah, that's that. That'll be the, the documentary that comes out about that. We bought a radar. Uh, Eric says, um, great job tonight, team. I was on the whole time, and your whole team get a, did a great job. Breathe deep, take stock, and keep going. Thank you. You guys are so nice. Returned to nature, became a high-risk member. And in the the big five hundred dollar super chat from Wise Wolf Gold and Silver is still showing up up here. I, I can't believe I still can't believe that. I think that's that's one of the biggest ones we've ever gotten. Uh, so thank you for that. That's huge. Do you think West Tennessee could see severe weather? Um, a very very small chance that these storms make it into into West Tennessee. If we're talking about Memphis specifically, yeah, maybe. But like we're not talking about tornadoes or anything uh, at that point. I don't think we're talking about gusty winds, heavy rain. Uh, but even literally as far east as Jackson, um, <laughs> from Memphis to Jackson, the, the the probability goes from maybe to no. This is going to rapidly deteriorate and become less and less of a problem the farther east it goes. Brian, thanks for the kind words. Uh, Bonesy says, I'm a trucker in Little Rock. Do you think I'll be fine? Yeah, I think you'll be okay. There's going to be a severe thunderstorm come through. Um, uh, and like it's had a history of spinning up a, a little tornadoes here. And that might continue through the Little Rock area. But 
it's highly unlikely that it'll cause any sort of widespread problems and the probability of your truck specifically being in the, the exact wrong area here is, is very low. But definitely be aware of what's going on. There's a big storm coming. Um, but it'll be over within an hour, an hour and a half or so as this, the front sweeps by. Uh, any snow going on behind the cold front? Yeah, we've got snow in Oklahoma right now, back there towards uh, Woodward. And in the northern panhandle of Texas, it is snowing right now. That's how. That, that's one of the reasons why the, the storm system was so strong. We've got a big pocket of cold air down here. Lexi, thanks for the super chat. Anna says, Ryan and team, y'all have killed it tonight. We appreciate it, and I agree. Everybody's done great. A new tornado warning has been issued. Got a new issued. tornado warning down in Louisiana. Look at that. No. To this. What is I was going to I was going to mention it. I was watching it because one of our analysts brought it up. We're still watching, guys. Uh <laughs> yeah, it's just the west of Ringgold, Louisiana. Okay. I, I'm sorry. I I failed. Oh, I failed good. you. You're good. <laughs> but uh there is a new uh tornado warning. Uh, right down here to the east of Shreveport uh, for this little area of uh, rotation. That's going to move into Ringgold and uh, Armistead uh, here within the next little bit. There's definitely some rotation there. There is, n there is not, a, a uh, once again, a sign of a, of a big tornado here, but it's important that we stop worrying too much about that and we just take, we just take shelter for any tornado warning. And that's what we need to do down here in uh, Louisiana. And I don't have the county names. There they are. Blenville, Bostier, Lincoln, and Webster parishes. Good. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> Uh, Y'all need to uh, uh, take shelter here as uh, we might have a, a brief tornado coming down out of the storm. Broden says, you were the reason why I got back into weather. I love that. I'm glad that we that I can make that happen for you. And um, stay into it. And you might... Um, you, might it, you might find something... Um, what am I trying to, I, I'm, I've talked too much, man. Keep staying with it, dude. I love it. Austin uh, said, uh, thanks uh, for all uh, you and the y'all squad do. I would love to meet you someday and thank you in person. Austin, we'll make that happen. We'll, we'll make that happen. I don't know how, but, uh, yeah, we will make that happen. Uh, what's the risk for tornadoes in Wisconsin? Very, very small, very low. Zero. Zero, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Catherine, thank you. Kelly, thanks. Yeah, you want you know what I think of the, the rest of the night? Because so many people, you know, they always want to know, or is it going to hit, hit my spot, hit my spot? The rest of the night... It's extremely unlikely that we see anything more than literally just a, if you are in a warning, if you do get a warning for your area, a severe thunderstorm or a tornado warning, uh, any, any sort of warning there, all you have to do is when you get that information, um, quickly grab yourself a nice comfortable beverage and then just you know, bring us or bring some form of entertainment in your tornado safe spot into your room of your house or basement and just chill there. Just chill there till it's over, chill there for an hour, maybe even 45 minutes. Um, and I, I just, I highly, highly doubt that there will be anything more significant than that. And if there even is, then you're in your safe spot and you're having a good time, as good of a time as you can in a storm. And that goes out to all my friends who do have weather anxiety in the chat. Uh, shout outs to y'all. Absolutely. Um, and I completely agree. We never, you never want to uh, undermine or, or kind of like downplay a, a tornado warning, but we're starting to see now a more traditional, okay, we've seen this before. Here's the tornado warning. There might be a tornado. We're going to take shelter just in case that we're no longer 
telling you to run for your lives and, and do everything you can to, to, to protect yourself. Um, you, you want to go, you want to get in your safe spot and take the tornado precautions. And the, these will continue to happen off and on, uh, even after we end the stream, probably here soon. Um, so yeah, just, just so you know that, um, very well said, uh, from Andy there. Uh, I, I do want to, uh, really quick plug what my Twitter one more time. If anybody isn't following, uh, at Ryan Hall, y'all on Twitter, please do so now. It's the best way. It is the best way to keep up with me outside of YouTube. If, if this is the, um, you know, if we're going to talk to each other tomorrow, it's going to be on Twitter. So if you, if you want to do that, uh, go over there and give me a follow. I'll also be retweeting a lot of information tonight um, about, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, all, you know, news and, and, and updates from Chris and everything that we're doing down there. All that's going to be coming from uh, Twitter. And as you can tell, I, I need to stop talking. <laughs> Yeah, let us all talk for you. We we've got Twitters too, y'all. Even Ben and Heidi, they we I think, yeah, I think pretty much we influence Ryan and I influence both of them to make Twitters. So. <laughs> like we we'll talk to y'all on there too. You know, when we're not streaming once every two months. So, uh, I just I oh I also wanted to say, <laughs> by the way, I slept two point five hours last night, and I have been here for all nine hours of this stream and I'm feeling good. So that's how I know I'm in the right spot. <laughs> <laughs> that's nuts. You get, you get some rest. Um, <laughs> and also all, all of our um, uh, storm chasers uh, out there, hopefully they're able to find somewhere to uh, stop and, and get some rest this evening. A lot of them drove a long way to get there today and uh, they got a long drive home. Some of them aren't going to go home for a couple of days like Chris who, um, I will be sharing information about all that with you on Twitter. Um, and yeah, a huge shout out to all of our mods. We had a lot of people watching today. I think um, we've reached a total about 700,000 people with our live stream today, uh, which is one of the, the top ones for severe weather uh, goes like usually um, during a, a tornado outbreak or something like that. Uh, we don't get over six, seven hundred thousand on uh, every every time. In fact, it's it's very rare that that happens. So, thank you. Uh, that's that has nothing to do with uh, me. That's all you guys sharing and, and and liking, hitting the like button, getting us out there on the algorithm. Uh, thank you for allowing us to reach so many people. I think we also had uh, around forty thousand concurrent viewers at one time. Um, the amount of people that is 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 hard to fathom. It's a lot, <laughs> and uh, I, I, I refuse. It's hard for me to believe that that's not creating some sort of significant uh, difference out there because I also believe that those people, a lot of those 42,000 people are people that normally would never in a million years switch on the local news, okay? So uh, that's big. I don't know how many people we had watching on TikTok. Hi, TikTok. I haven't forgot about you, uh, but uh, sure, surely we've had um, uh, a bunch of people on there as well. Uh, we're just about to hit 780,000 subscribers. If you want to help us do that, hit that subscribe button. Uh, follow me, Andy, and uh, everybody else in the, the uh, on Twitter. And anybody who, if 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 we want people to come follow us, uh, you can uh, put our your links in the um, uh, in the chat there, and we'll we'll spread the love right as we head out. Also, all of our storm chasers, you can look up Chris Hall. Uh, Brad Arnold, Brett Adair, uh, Vince Welty, Brandon Kopic, uh, and um, uh, Zach Hall, Vortex Chasing. They all have their own YouTube channels, Twitters, and, and Facebooks and stuff too. And uh, if you want to follow them, uh, that, that would be great. Thanks to everybody who has went to shopryanhall.com and got themselves a sticker or anything today. Um, once again, all the profits, 100% of the profits are going towards... Uh, our efforts to uh, help people in Texas. And, and if for whatever reason um, we, we've, we've got F leftover funds, it just piles up for the next time. Uh, so f like, for example, if I can figure out how to work this website, 
because we just crossed over. It's it's midnight, so it's saying we made no sales today. Okay, <laughs> for example, uh, we we sold you know twelve thirteen thousand dollars worth of stickers uh, during this live stream. Um, that just adds to the pot. We already had about that much sitting there waiting. So now we have uh, you know twenty thirty thousand dollars um, worth of uh, resources to give to Chris and and who and whoever else. Um, uh, it, that's going to be helping us down there to, uh, kind of get, uh, those, uh, you know, stuff people need to, we're going to get that from the stores and from the, uh, uh, the, the places of uh, the distribution centers, uh, to those people tomorrow through them. <laughs> All right. Um, is there anything else, uh, we want to touch on before we close out Andy, Heidi, anybody, Riley, Nothing. We All covered good it here. All right. So, how many how, have we picked the winners of Radar Omega? Like, how do, how are we doing that? We are drawing on Monday. Okay. All right. And and hopefully, did we have a lot of people go in and join? Uh, I think. Oh God, I can look. I know we had over like three hundred people join. It was ridiculous. Every single mod in the server hates me now. <laughs> okay. We went from 12,293 members to 12,841 members. Wow. Okay. So one last call there. We are doing a Radar Omega giveaway in the Discord server. Uh, uh, if you want to try your luck on that and you want to deal with Discord, go in there and, and, and do that. But if you don't want to do that, download Discord uh, via the link in the description. Uh, click that link. It'll take you to the iOS or Android store. It's this app. It's what I've been using today to guide hundreds of thousands of people through this tornado outbreak. You can have it for eight bucks. <laughs> it's the same thing um, on your phone or on your uh, tablet or whatever. And um, uh, it's it's a life saving tool. It's a, it's an awesome thing to have in your in your arsenal. Uh, and once you learn how to really use it, and if you follow along with me enough during these live streams, you'll be able to be a pro at it. Um, it it's an un, it's a, a priceless uh, thing to have, in, in my opinion. So um, download that. They're big supporters of the channel. Uh, so the more you support them, the more they support us. And um, it, just the better all around. And it's a win-win for everybody. You don't lose. If you get the app, you're going to like it. I promise. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Ryan, all I have to say is that it, we, we are hitting a different crowd now than the last time I said it. So I'll say it again. The rest of the night for everyone who is getting some rain, thunder, and lightning, if you're in a warning, it's the type of warning, almost 100% guaranteed, it's the type of warning that you go to the interior room of your house with a nice beverage and an entertainment source. Uh, take your Nintendo Switch. Take your take a book. Take us. Take whatever, and just um, just chill in there. If you get a warning, otherwise enjoy the rain. Enjoy the rain and the thunder. Hopefully something doesn't strike too close to you, so it scares the you know scares you out of your pajamas, so to speak. But that's I I I seriously think you know at the very worst, maybe someone will be locally affected by this and lose a few shingles on their roofs. But um, this is definitely the the close of the sphere weather, and I um, I think that you guys will just enjoy an, a nice storm. So hopefully that can help solve your storm anxiety for those of you in Little Rock, um, uh, Jonesboro coming up. You know, anywhere that's going to see some maybe some heavier rain tonight. That's 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 it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you, Andy, and thank you everybody. Uh, that's it. I think we're going to call it a night and we are going to see you all very soon. Hopefully not uh, too soon uh, with like breaking severe weather coverage, but uh, we'll be back with videos and uh, we, we've got all kinds of plans uh, for content and stuff in the future that will involve. Um, you, you guys are going to like it. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel and uh, we will see you in the next one. Goodbye.